Since we're nitpicking this incredible show anyway, why the f*** does Morty have a coat hung up on the wall here? Does he really have no closet? Or is this a trophy from a serial killing? Rick turns on a light, but the obvious light on the ceiling does not light up, coming from some magical source in a room with only one switch. Come on, I got a surprise for you. Come on, hurry up. Gotta get, ow, gotta go, ow, gotta get out ow, of here. you're tugging Come me on, too hard. Surprise. Exact conversation I had with my college girlfriend during Jean-Claude Van Damme night at our local BDSM film dungeon somehow makes it into the show. Look, if you want to know what we're up against here, the mother moon is drawn with such care here that they included the phasing shadow. The level of thought that went into this show is astounding. Well played, show. Well played. I built it out of stuff I found in the garage. Did you, though? The trash can and the flashlight, sure. But I'm pretty sure you had to get this high-density bubble glass and these giant screws custom-made. Where did you find the giant cylinder base for the spaceship in the garage? It also looks like most of the stuff that you attach to this thing wouldn't aid in flying, but hinder it. Why would Rick even install seatbelts in the first place? Does he strike you as the kind of person while throwing together a junk-crafted space-time ship in his garage, stops for a second and thinks, but first, safety. How are these two so close when Rick clearly landed several feet away when he fell out of the ship? Opening title spoilers. Also, I know Rick and Morty wears its references on its sleeve, but this opening theme song couldn't be more Doctor Who if Tom Baker and David Tennant were in a threesome with the ghost of William Hartnell while Russell T. Davies watched. Also, also, intro promises an episode where Morty is a robot and doesn't come through ever. There are two or three other things in this the intro promises and doesn't deliver, and I'm calling my local adult swim about it. What is this pink liquid? Are the Smiths drinking Pepto for breakfast? I mean, with his family, I guess that might make sense. I mean, if you told me Jerry ends up mixing it with whiskey and has a fondness for barbed wire, I wouldn't say you were wrong. Two plus two. Four. Jessica. Hilarious that Rick said that school was exactly this, and it happens as soon as Morty gets to school. But this isn't the first day, is it? What did they get taught in the time leading up to this? You know what I named these? My little Mortys. Do you know what I want you to do with them? Rename them? <laughs> Honestly, this kind of joke deserves a sin removal, but he's dreaming about this. So he's dreaming about Jessica showing him her boobs, having her call them her little Mortys, and then negging her for it. It's like he mastered Neil Strauss as the game, but is only good at it when he's dreaming. Hey, we got, we gotta get, get the hell out of here and go take care of business. <coughs> What's with Dirty Sanchez always having goop in his mouth and the constant belching? With this level of acid reflux, I'm guessing Rick's ulcers are on the verge of ending his life. I'm just saying if we don't find out in a future episode that the belching and the mouth splooge is actually caused by an interdimensional species that lives in his gut bacteria, I'll lose a lot of respect for the show. Now if you just stick with me, Morty, we're gonna be- Holy crap, Morty, run! Predator pauses predatoring, prioritizing panicking protagonist punchline past partaking of perfectly palatable people. We're gonna die! First act ends on a cliffhanger for a commercial break, only to return with Rick and Morty no longer in danger and the monster gone, and nobody mentioning it again. And sure, that could be some sort of comedic point about the worthlessness of commercial cliffhangers, but you'd think a show like this might acknowledge it a little bit. Just take these shoes, Morty. I convenience them out of my lab coat of conveniences. These things really bring it all together. <laughs> You have to turn them on, Morty! Sure, Rick looks like a total asshole for not telling Morty about turning the shoes on before he fell into the ravine, but Morty's kind of an asshole for being this trusting of Rick and deciding to dive in head first without even a question. <laughs> Morty survives this. Is he immortal? Yeah, it's a cartoon, I get it, but in what alternate universe can a leg broken in at least three places continue to stay elevated like this? I went into a future dimension with such advanced medicine that they had broken leg serum at every corner drugstore. Nice, echoing of the Back to the Future line there. But what kind of place is it that people are breaking their legs so much that a broken leg serum is a viably mass-produced medicine? Rick separates this seed, but there is somehow a full seed in each half. Now, knowing this show, that could completely be intentional, and is some sort of paradoxical joke that will be retconned into a storyline in season 42. But the pickings here be slim, so for now. I'm gonna need you to take these seeds into the bathroom, and I'm gonna need you to put them way up inside your butthole, Morty. Morty full of grace. And they'll fall right out of mine. I've done this too many times, Morty. Sure, Rick is a quasi-evil, drunken asshole and an unreliable character overall. But didn't he tell Morty, What do you think, I can just do it all by myself? And now he's saying he's done this lots of times? Maybe Rick just wanted to spend time with Morty, I'll grant that. But I'm taking my sin and going home. Come on, Morty. Please, Morty. You have to do it, Morty. Man, Rick says Morty at least a hundred times in this first episode. I'm sure it's on purpose for some sort of comedic effect, but damn, the effect wears off quick. Why didn't you notify us? Have you not been getting the message? I've been leaving with Morty's grandfather? Sure, this principle is dumb, but if he's been calling Morty's grandfather and leaving messages that apparently have been going unheeded for two months, wouldn't you try and call the parents at work? Isn't that how you got in contact with them this time? <laughs> Wait, is there just an unguarded portal just lying around at this airport? No employees, no other people waiting in line? Oh, look, honey, it's our son with Albert Eindouche. I mean, Dickel the Tesla was right there, but 
Sure, whatever. Sure, this background joke is hilarious because it's a towing company that has a mascot that's a tow with eyes named Tow, whose catchphrase is I tow, which could both be interpreted as I am doing towing, as well as hello, my name is Tow. But the important thing to note here is that toes don't bend like that. I didn't know hanging out with you was making me smarter. Temporary super intelligence is just a side effect of the mega seeds dissolving in your rectal cavity. Oh, really? Then why did Morty only show super intelligence when you asked him questions to fool his mom and dad? Feels rather convenient, but how can I hate this show? The synths don't matter. And I needed those seeds real bad. Not in this episode, you didn't. Meaning those seeds are about the MacGuffiniest thing to ever mac all over my guffins. Boy, you really got me up against the wall this time, Jerry. Look, I'm fine with the speed at which Rick made this smart dog helmet, but he must have already had this thing built, except for like one screw, to simply go to his garage and use a drill for two seconds and produce a finished product. Go to the bathroom. Not sure how impressive that is. He clearly just flushed the toilet because he didn't have time to climb on top of it and actually use it. Jeez, Rick, in the time it took you to make this thing, couldn't you have just, you know, helped me with my homework? Morty would be amazing at TV sins. I mean, the guy teaches high school math. I, I didn't take him for an active dreamer. I see someone hasn't seen Stand and Deliver. That's on you, Rick. Summer's phone shows Snuffles very close to Jerry, but he somehow ends up two feet away from him when it cuts to the next shot. Oh yeah, this should play out just fine. You said the same thing, equally sarcastically, at our wedding, and guess what? Is it just me, or is the Jerry and Beth marriage way sadder than it is funny? Also, sitcom husband constantly does and says stupid things. Sitcom wife gets irritated with him to the point where no one understands how they would have ever gotten married in the first place and had kids, but somehow they make it work just barely cliche. Why would I negotiate with you? Because we're both rational adults that don't want anything bad to happen. And because I have a human shield. How is Rick able to human shield Mrs. Pancakes since she was clearly behind Mr. Goldenfold when all this started? Goldenfold landed the plane and he's created a mechanical arm to pluck Mrs. Pancakes out of the air while he lets us fall into a giant bed of lava! <laughs> Damn, that shit is absurd and funny. I think Morty's ability to know exactly what Goldenfold did and give a full report of it is what sells it. I'll just go ask her to tell Goldenfold not to kill us when she wakes up. Whoa, whoa, Morty! The trick to incepting is making people think they came up with the idea. Oh, really? Then what was that shit on the airplane then when you pretended you were going to blow it up? How was that top notch incepting, Rick? Looks like Goldenfold has some predilections so shameful he buries them in the dreams of the people in his dreams. I don't think Goldenfold is nearly that shameless about his fantasies. You remember the first episode? That guy was just standing there while Morty unconsciously grabbed his boobs and he leaned into it at school. It's like some sort of legally safe knockoff of an 80s horror character with miniature swords for fingers instead of knives. Why would he need to be legally safe, Rick? Why would he need to be legally safe. Okay, fine. God damn it. This show is clever and funny and all the things. Three sins off. It was only with years of selective breeding and genetic altering that this noble beast was transformed into man's subservient little buddy. Convenient TV's position is convenient. Where are my testicles, Summer? First off, why is Snuffles terrorizing Summer of all people over this? Second off, as a super genius dog, you damn well know where your testicles went, buddy. You shall now call me Snowball because my fur is pretty and white. Snowball must have gotten this idea when researching video clips about David Duke. Let's go. Where the f*** was this asshole the whole time? Do you mean that Snuffle Snowball meant to go in and chastise Summer over things she wasn't responsible for, hope her parents would wake up and go into her room to see what the matter was, then dramatically reveal this other dog when the time was right? We're trying, trying to, to get accept me to get an A in math? So how is Rick planning on getting Morty A's in all of his other classes? Is he just going to inception every one of Morty's teachers every year of school? Inception marathon? Inception-thon? He keeps saying we can run, but we can't hide. Like, if the truth was that we could hide, it's not like he'd be sharing that information with us. You know? This is a hilarious Rick and Morty discussion about a trope in horror movies that characters never really think about. But I'm wondering why they can hide when Scary Terry has been popping out of nowhere throughout this Inception dream sequence in places where he shouldn't know where they are. Hi, honey. You're home early. How was your day? I have a lot of questions about this little life that's occurring in a dream inside a dream inside a dream inside a dream. But mainly, I want to know how these not Krugers use hand soap. Get off my back, bitch! Inceptic abuse. I love you, Melissa. I love you too, Terry. Why is this boner? Look, while my sin hat wants to question everything about what's in this room right now, this domestic scene for Scary Terry and the claw marks that are everywhere that suggest a sex life that is better than yours or mine deserves a sin off for detail and hilarity. This must be a dream because we just saw this teacher push open a door with a doorknob on it. Makes sense because he ain't turning that doorknob. Don't even trip about your pants, Dog, here's a pair on us, fool! And where exactly did Morty get the pants from? Because I can buy many things that happen in this episode, but Morty getting bright enough to know how to mediate the dream within a dream world is not one of them. These halves don't belong together, bitch! That's centaurist. This is because you don't give Morty Smith good grades, bitch! So, I know they're making fun of Inception in this episode, but even while they're making fun of it, Rick was adhering to Inception's rules about making it seem like the person came up with the idea on their own. So I don't know how the Scary Terry Rocket subtly puts the idea of giving Morty better grades into Mr. Goldenfold's head that 
makes him think he came up with it. I'm entertained, mind you, but this seems to be going against the rules of even an Inception spoof. I know one thing for sure. I'm giving Morty an A in math. That's great, but what is the wet on Mr. Goldenfold's shirt, since all he had was a bowl of wheat thins? They just couldn't do this thing without a dog's playing poker reference, could they? Well, at least I didn't really crap my pants. No, no, that happened before you went to sleep, Morty. You're sleeping in your crap right now. Wait, was that even something that happened? I don't remember Morty saying he crapped his pants at any time in this episode until now. Like, it's something that we were supposed to be aware of already. Sounds like he just wanted to wallow in a little bit, show. It's pretty bad, Emperor Snowball. We're gonna need to do another operation. If Snowball Snuffles is so smart, then clearly he would know this is Rick behind the dog mask. I see dogs walking out of an animal shelter into a warp to some other dimension. But is this supposed to be all dogs, or just the ones in Rick and Morty's town? Also, this puts the onus on the series to never show dogs in this world ever again. I could just send holiday inflatables, because seriously, how did that become a thing? But it's much easier to send the fact that you put Rudolph right in the middle of your driveway. Also, you shovel an immaculate path to the sidewalk, but only half of your driveway? What are you, monsters? Put it in the stocking summer, or I'm joining Facebook. <gasps> <laughs> a teenager caring about Facebook. <laughs> You're adorable, 2013. Also, Facebook. Is this a mirror at the bottom of the stairs? Was the goal to both check your appearance as well as block traffic in the most dangerous part of your home? Okay, look, I know the show is going for a quick joke here with his giant Morty melon somehow fitting through that opening. But why does the show go to great detail with some areas of physics but approach this one by literally jamming its head up its hole? Just hold your breath until the process is over or your lungs will collapse. And then he doesn't, and yet he's fine. Hey, Dad, where's Morty? Uh, he's busy. Yeah, great joke and all, but even Beth should be a little surprised surprised at the naked, near-death bad Santa whose chest her dad currently has a giant needle jammed into, right? Welcome to Anatomy Park! Roll call mortals. The Anatomy Park train has only one small entrance exit for a train with three cars. And what the f*** is up with these stairs with no rails that lead to your certain doom if you fall? I love details like a pardon our dust sign for an amusement park inside a human body, and I'm certainly laughing, but who is this sign for? The park isn't open yet and doesn't appear to be close to opening, so there are no customers affected by it. And if the park has has been open this whole time, we're talking about a logistical nightmare from the customers getting shrunk and enlarged at the Smith House without anyone seeing it and figuring out where the hell homeless Reuben is to inject them into his body. Reuben's seen some rough years, Morty. Don't judge. You don't agree to have a theme park built inside you if your life's going great. Why is this saying not a t-shirt? Who are you? Why would this guard be concerned with anybody who shows up here? Not like anyone can illegally trespass into this homeless person's body unless Rick specifically inserts them. It's weird that the security guy here shoots bullets at diseases instead of like vaccines or penicillin. Can we talk about Jerry's sweater for a second? The colors in the middle section should be reversed so that the red sections are green and look like Christmas trees. Unless, of course, these are intentional green arrows pointing down to an entirely different type of Christmas cheer. I watch them. Sometimes from a chair and sometimes from a closet. Almost always dressed as Superman. Cut, Ken? Nearly all human lungs contain a strain of these bacteria, but the scar tissue keeps them... dormant. If the scar tissue's already been tampered with, then why did the tuberculosis wait until Germ Oliver said something about it to attack? What is that horrible smell? Must be your own breath, because you're breathing air from inside your helmet from the attached air supply. So smell really shouldn't be an issue. Keep your eye on Annie. She was written up several times by her manager at the churro stand. Later on, Annie will say, Actually, I studied Dr. Bloom's work. So did she get written up because she was constantly in Dr. Bloom's lab learning everything? Seems like someone who was allowed to study the work of the main boss wouldn't be stuck at the churro stand getting written up for whatever reason. This also seems to indicate that the park was open, but I still haven't gotten a definitive answer on that. It's a road of wonder, a trail of food. It's a path way to break up the bad and good. Rhyming food with good. Gonorrhea can't see us if we don't move. Wait, I was wrong. I was thinking of a T-Rex. Why the f*** would you be thinking of a goddamn T-Rex? Because of the movie Jurassic Park that you're referencing throughout the episode? Like dinosaurs and infectious diseases are in any way related enough to confuse the two? If it works, we'll be regular sized in a few minutes. You mean there's a growth ray inside Reuben? This guy jokes about Reuben not being in a room with white carpet or upholstery. And good for the show for thinking of the gnarly aftermath of such a move. But seems like in a world of impossible science, they'd have found a way to escape without the grisly measure. That's bubonic plague. So a couple questions here. First, why did you leave it roaming free in your backpack pocket? If you had this plan to sell bubonic plague to the highest bidder, wouldn't you have a container to put it in? Second, why the hell was there bubonic plague inside Reuben? What the hell? <laughs> I'm sorry, does the grandfather really think that his wife and Jacob are going to have sex right now on the couch while his granddaughter and her boyfriend make out in the same room? The aristocrats! 
Also, did these closet door flaps open individually like this? Or even at all? Would you like to ride the bone train? Why are you doing this bit? We're gonna die! Morty would be retorting at TV since. What the hell is that? E. coli outbreak. Is it though? Because those are clearly bacteriophage viruses. And E. coli is a type of bacteria and not a virus. Suck my fat virology expertise, Rick Wads. Would this fuse continue being lit while in space? My guess is no, but I should probably send myself for even thinking about it when it comes to an episode about an amusement park inside of a homeless man. Reports from all over the country have been coming in about what appears to be a giant naked man over the continental United States. How fast did those reports come in exactly? Rick just kicked him out of the spaceship and enlarged him like three seconds ago. I'm pretty sure that dynamite would have exploded before any news outlets had the chance to make their detailed naked guy graphic overlays. I guess I'm gonna have to be that guy and point out that Ruben is now the size of the entire continental US, so his face should be covering way more area than a city block. The nipple hole. Beautiful. Agreed, but I have to ask, why is there even gravity now that inner space has gone to outer space? What the f***? When the bone train went off the rails, Hepatitis A was looking at it go past him and crash into this nipple area. Even if he jumped to grab the train, how would he have gotten inside in the time it took for the train to crash? It's Hepatitis C! Did we have some sort of relationship with him? I think they're just like that. I think they're just good guys. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll gladly remove a sin. Wouldn't this life is rough picture show the golf ball actually in the rough rather than on the green where the hole is? Actually, I studied Dr. Bloom's work. I, I, I believe I have the knowledge necessary to create an entirely new, much safer park. Jurassic World. That's it. That's the sin. That's Atari 2600 Donkey Kong sounds coming from these 2013 devices. It's time to upgrade our gadget noises, Hollywood. This is just sloppy craftsmanship. Rick would be excellent at biology sins. Also, dissecting a rodent with the garage door open. What's with mom? So you're saying that she's acting weird? On a good day, everyone acts weird in the world of Rick and Morty, yet still I have to ask, why is Rick digging in this rat? He knows he's in a simulation. He knows the rat has sloppy craftsmanship. So what is he looking for? He doesn't need more proof. Way to go, Morty! Celebrating math. Also wearing an orange shirt and gray tie with a yellow sweater. Interesting. Whoa, whoa. Peeking into a child's classroom window as an adult. Also, since Rick knows Morty is a simulation, why is he going through this charade at the school? Rick would immediately be getting the Zygerians to show their hands so he could plan his escape. You know, if you tell us, I'll be your girlfriend. Oh, uh, you will? Seems like a rare opportunity, Morty! Simulation or not, soliciting sex from a student for bribing purposes will always be a sin. Take a shower with me, Morty. What? At times like these, I wonder how the writers begin their creative process. Does it start with, let's put child nudity in this one? Do they have a jar containing tiny strips of paper with random bullshit? suggestions aimed at making everyone incredibly uncomfortable and at the start of their brainstorm they grab several and slap them together why is this scene lucky for us they're also really uncomfortable with nudity i just want to know how rick knew the location of the school showers in the first place why go through all the trouble of animating this split second peek into the locker room and not put anything interesting in it at all something is drawing a lot of processing power you have more important things to worry about alien scum these fans aren't cooling the computers properly they're limping along sort of teeter-tottering back and forth and before long your cpus will overheat it's a real problem Trimming your nose hair while driving. I'm not sure that I can ask this question without breaking my own brain, but here goes. Why is Jerry separated from Rick from the start? They're both inside the same simulation, and yet the aliens are surprised that they've got another human? They're literally looking down on a massive simulation with two simultaneous simulations happening within it. There should be no surprise that Jerry is here at all. Are the writers hoping to avoid revealing the twist to us, the viewers? Or are the aliens purposely zooming out on Jerry's inner simulation to Rick's inner simulation, forgetting what is real at all? F are we in the simulation too? <laughs> I broke my brain. Keep your hands off your ding dong! It's the only way we can speak freely. Because, for some reason, the aliens are unable to simply listen to the conversation. They must look and listen. National Apple Farmers of America, welcome to our ad agency. But how would the Zygerians know this much detail about Jerry's workday when they didn't even mean to nab him? And on top of that, they only have a simulation operating at 0.5% capacity. Simple question, gentlemen. Assuming gender. This scene just reminds me that Dave Ramsey has forever tainted the beauty that is Baker Street. F***ing Dave Ramsey. Well, all is forgiven because right now I've got an erection the size of an East Coast lighthouse. Hey! I'm going to make love to my wife! How big does Jerry think lighthouses are? Because I'm not even seeing evidence that a pup tent has been pitched. Morty, relax! It's just a bunch of ones and zeros out there. Binary code shaming. Leaving your car door open. Is sex really worth giving someone the opportunity to steal your car or running the battery down? 
Actually, yeah, I guess it is. But for the principle of the matter, I'm still a sinning. Making out with dead skin cells excreted from a scalp. I would definitely be onto the simulation after seeing this. Everyone knows yellow Pop-Tarts can't jump. Depantsing a child rather than yourself. Pop-Tart square pants. Moments ago, they're running through an alien spaceship and quite suddenly they're racing through another planet? We don't care about Plutonians. We care about why Jerry is here at all. Moments ago, they're running through an alien spaceship and quite suddenly they're racing on the moon? We don't care about the moon landing. We care about why the Plutonians are here at all. Man up, Jerry. I may need you to work the lasers. Putting Jerry in charge of the lasers. Doors are closing and time is running out, but the protagonist's spaceship makes it out just in time, cliche. Oh, because shooting at the person you want to steal information from is a great idea. And yes, this is a simulation inside a simulation inside a simulation, but the darkness of it still matters. You simulated my grandson's genitalia? You looked at your grandson's simulated genitalia. You win. Can we go home now? I don't know. Can you? Grammar police. Sure, we do it too, but we actually spent five years at Grammar Police Academy to get our certification. Up until now, I had to brush off my frustration with English appearing in the alien spaceship. Clearly, they have their own language, we see it here and here. So when the signs were in English or the doors were labeled, I had to brush it off that this was a simulation and meant to continue to deceive Rick. But now, here in this moment before extinction, there is no reason for we did it to appear on the screens for our benefit. Also, there is no reason for this mixture to be combined at the helm of the ship during an office party when there are plenty of labs up in this ship. Also, also, Rick and Jerry survive this. Waggling your tongue when you really don't need to. Woody, I already told you, it's not your family! Sure, but can we talk about what they're trying to do? Because Not Jerry seems to have you well in his grip and able to kill you easily, but is just standing there waiting for this scene that's just an excuse to justify a title sequence clip to end. Why would this facility, as part of its infrastructure, have a button that remotely controls this Ghostbusters-style trap that Rick had in his hand? Isn't that something he just brought to the adventure? You make a request, the Meeseeks fulfills the request, and then it stops existing. Rick, knowing about this Meeseeks box, makes so many of his previous decisions in this show completely unnecessary. As disposable as these beings are, why wouldn't he use them as at least an extra pair of hands to complete all his adventures with Morty? I'm Mr. Meeseeks! I want to be popular at school! Ooh, okay! This me seek shtick is a brilliant way to play with the be careful what you wish for trope, but in a world where the genie allows you to wish for infinite wishes. God, this show is just the best. This village is terribly poor, yet the giant that lives in the clouds above has untold treasures. Jeff Bezos. Also, this world not only happens to have the Jack and the Beanstalk story from our Earth in its reality, but r &M also just happened to land in the village where he lives. Just a reminder that even the most brilliant shows need some little blue convenience pills once in a while to keep their stories firmed up. In conclusion, a friendship with Emma Smith is the most valuable and enriching experience of your young life. Mr. Meeseeks was able to call an assembly at summer school just to say great things about her so that she'd be popular. And it looks like the entire school is on board with a magical blue what's-it they've never seen before in his pro summer message. Also also, holy hell, what kind of acid trip was the designer of this basketball court on? The key area, or free throw dick as it's more commonly called, is completely out of proportion and reaches almost a half court, which would be fine except the other half of that court appears to be more like a third of the court and doesn't even seem to have any markings. Plus, that far hoop, which is clearly not retracted and should be at the standard 10 feet, has to be at least 20 feet off the ground based on the scale of the bleachers underneath it. And, speaking of those bleachers, why are they behind the podium when all the space in front of the podium is available? And how did they even get them there? They clearly don't fold in, so did they move this here in one Piece? This is a gymnasium of lies. Ugh. I know Jerry is a dim-witted sad sack, but wouldn't shaving two strokes off his golf game suggest that he's somewhat competent at golf? If the guy can't even hit the ball off the tee, then isn't the real request shave a thousand strokes off his golf game? Let me try something! Why did they bring the Meeseeks box with them on the golf course? Do they expect to need extra Mr. Meeseeks during this tutorial? Can you help me get two strokes off of Jerry's golf swing? But if the Meeseeks are aware of their own process and abilities enough to call other Meeseeks to help with what I asked them to do, wouldn't that impact their perspective on their own purpose in a way that negates my original request? I guess what I'm asking is... How many seeks would a me seek seek if a me seek could seek me? Are Rick and Morty from a spider verse? Because I don't know how you climb a mostly flat surface like that without a little accidental radioactive spider venom. Me seeks don't usually have to exist this long. It's getting weird. How does he even know this? I've about had it with the discount blue man group's existential paradoxes. Here we are, you know, walking down the courthouse steps. Why would the courthouse steps lead all the way down to the non giant world below? Wouldn't the steps at the giant court lead to other places where the giants regularly go? Also, did everyone else in the courts just stay inside? Was the Rick and Morty trial the undercard to a much more important trial? Why did Jerry bring everybody back to the house for his lesson? How are you supposed to learn this inside a living room? Was he trying to hit a ball inside his house? Was he just trying to swing the club? Because I'm pretty sure he succeeded at the second thing, but what do I know? Tennis confuses me. What happened to Beth's new hair? She had a new style a minute ago and now it looks like the old Beth. Why did you even rope me into this? Cause he roped me into this! Well, the him over there, he roped me into this! Well, 
Yeah. The CinemaSins hiring process. Well, well, what do you know? Look down there. Looks like some kind of tavern or something. The thirsty step. I mean, the twelfth step was sitting right there. Stop fighting me. Just let this happen. Holy sh my surrealist sci-fi comedy show just went super dark. The creators have even said they wanted this scene to reflect the trauma of assault and not be funny at all. But here's my question. Is this really the place for it? I'm all for victim sensitivity, but seems to me the most sensitive thing to do would be to not unexpectedly reference real-life trauma in a place where most wouldn't be expecting to have to deal with it. These me seeks are never given verbal instructions. Are we changing the rules so that they can just intuit what their purpose is now? We heard Jerry leave the house when he told the me seeks At this point, my golf swing is more your problem than mine. And he was wearing the green golf shirt, but now he's in a suit. But wait, neither Jerry nor Beth told the Meeseeks where they were going for dinner. So maybe after Jerry left, he went upstairs to get dressed and came back down and told the Meeseeks where they were going. But why did he clearly go outside after telling them that? There's only one door in the living room that would open and close, and it goes outside. Come on, Rick! Quick, get stolen! What do you got? Read him and weep. Oh. Rick slow rolls the stair folk. Rick rolling? At this point, I'm kind of wondering how the Thirsty Step stays in business. Their location is awful, and most of its customers couldn't possibly make it up here easily. <laughs> so we're just saying hitting a tomato with a metal shelving bar into a large pot about 10 feet away is equivalent to improving your golf game two strokes? Well, okay then. Jesus. I didn't know the Meeseeks had such a huge arsenal. Did they knock off a gun store on the way to the restaurant, or did the Smiths have a hidden gun room? I'm a bit of a stickler, Meeseeks. What about your short game? And yet more proof that the Mean Seeks get to decide when their purpose has been fulfilled, meaning they could have bailed at any point, and the entire premise of this episode is null and void. And now that I've been this much of a pedantic asshole, I can disappear. Also, the literal request was to shave two strokes off of his game, and Jerry got more than that by merely learning how to drive the ball. So go f*** yourself, stickler Mean Seeks. Your job is technically done. Jerry, look, we don't have a perfect marriage, but... I'm not going anywhere. Define anywhere. <laughs> See you next week, everybody. The fourth wall is my least favorite wall, yet I'm sad somehow every time it gets broken. The mysteries of the heart confound us. Letting Jerry help Morty with homework. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but if you have the flu, stay home. Does he mean stay home and don't go to the dance or stay home and don't go to school? Because you shouldn't be at school if you have the flu. And if you're not at school, how would you hear this announcement? Why is this announcement? Also, episode of a cartoon from 2014 predicts how selfish humans are when it comes to protecting others from a rampaging virus. The flu season dance is about awareness, not celebration. You don't bring dead babies to Passover. Well, someone's not getting invited to my Passover celebration. Hey, wait a minute. Where did Jessica's friends go? Eh, try not to worry about it, Morty. You're a good kid. Is he, though? In this episode alone, he asked Rick to help him essentially roofie Jessica, so I think a little more honest parenting is in order, Jerry. What the shit is the purple meat on Jerry's sandwich? Ah, well, I remember feeling that way about a young lady named your mom. And that's not an urban diss. But it works so much better as an urban diss. In fact, that's a pretty epic your mom joke that he just ruined. F***ing Jerry. We have ice. We have no ice. Rick is a dick to carbonated sodas. Wait a minute. Did Rick go into the kitchen to get orange juice? Does Rick seem like the kind of guy who drinks orange juice without adding the vodka? Yeah, I'm just going to... Check on your mom. And apparently leave out the mustard, mayo, an open orange juice pitcher, and an unstarted sandwich. Do you want food poisoning, Jerry? Because this is how you get food poisoning, Jerry. And ants. A hair, Morty. I need one of your hairs. This isn't Game of Thrones. My favorite part of every episode of Game of Thrones was when the CSI team came in and solved the case. There's a calculator of some sort on the right side of this love potion making machine here, but when it cuts to the wide shot, the calculator is on the left side of the spout. Your continuity errors will be the death of you, Rick and Morty. Jeez, did this Brad kid go to the dance in his usual high school attire, just adding a tie? That's actually pretty funny, but I'm sending it anyway. That's you. Not that this is the point, but shouldn't Brad already have the flu, considering Jessica was already sneezing at school today, and he ran right into her sneeze mist earlier? Brad got sick immediately. Is that how the flu works? How come you're not at this stupid dance everyone loves so much? Screw that. I don't want to get sick. So, wait, Summer, are you saying you're backing out of our trip to South Dakota? Cartoon dry humping. Jessica, get a hold of yourself! The flu-love potion combo, which made Brad sick in seconds, should already be running rampant through this gym considering it was in the punch and the air conditioning. But it waits until someone scolds Jessica before taking over the entire school. Still being proud of a swimming championship nearly a hundred years later. Whipped up an antidote. It's based on praying mantis DNA. They mate once and then they, you know, decapitate the partner. Science. I, I basically mixed this with a more contagious flu virus. Why did you need to mix it with a flu virus when everybody at school already has the flu? These serums, they don't work on anybody related to you genetically. I mean, thank God, but that still is a serum of the highest convenience. The only thing that is known is 
how cute he is. I love him so much. I want to make love to him. How did these news anchors even get to their jobs if they were obsessed, Morty-loving, praying mantis creatures? Also, where did they get a picture of Morty that quickly? That's almost creepier than the love potion. How is this virus already spread to other countries? The news station was hard enough to buy, but at least it was potentially local. And this is going to be an issue for the rest of the episode, so instead of bringing it up several more times, I'll just add 10 cents here. Wait, so everyone knows where Morty lives all of a sudden? What the heck? Is that a Morty doll? How did they manufacture that? Well, I'm glad we saved all those horses. Why? Did you short the glue industry? How did the flu mantis concoction get all the way out to the horse hospital? Have people been drive-by sneezing around this place? I'm Mr. Crowbar, and this is my friend, who is also a crowbar. <laughs> I can't imagine a world where Jerry actually deserves a sin off, but I'm giving him one regardless. If people from other countries are whiffing the antidote already, wouldn't they have a period of time when they turn back to normal before morphing into these abominations? That's what happened to everyone else. How did this guy's underwear stay on and intact throughout all these transformations? Here's another thing. Rick made the love potion for Morty using his DNA, and that's why his family wasn't affected. But he made the mantis potion in the Every Animal on Earth potion without Morty's DNA. So why aren't they also turning into trauma creatures right now? Hold on. Mad Jerry Fury Road. Mad Max Jerry Road? Furious Jerry Maximum Mad? Max and Furious presents Rhodes and Shaw? The Fury... Is there any reason for Beth and Jerry to get out of the car and fight these things? They were doing just fine running over all of them. What's the goal of coming out to purposely kill these things other than to pad this episode's runtime? Boy, Morty, I really Cronenberg the world up, didn't I? Don't be so hard on yourself, Rick. The world doesn't look too much like M. Butterfly. Here, Morty, put this on while I do a little bit of scouting. Why does Morty need to wear this thing while Rick does his scouting? What computer works just because someone's wearing a backpack apparatus? Okay, so we're about to find out that this is one of the infinite realities that original Rick found where a parallel universe Rick was able to get everything back to normal. And the Rick and Morty we see here are not the original Rick and Morty team, which is what the show wants you to think. So why is this universe's Rick and Morty just now getting back to the house after a newspaper was published explaining how everything went back to normal? The answer is don't think about it. It's not like we can do this every week anyways. We get three or four more of these tops. Yeah, but that violates the Cinema Sins and therefore TV Sins Charter, where we were told to think too deeply about it. It's too convenient. Yes, you don't follow the same rules, and you definitely shouldn't because nothing creative would ever get made, but that doesn't mean that we're not sinning you for this replace the dead Rick and Morty in a different universe bit. I'd grown super fond of the original Summer Beth and Jerry, and now I'm going to have to be cool with exact replicas with no differences whatsoever? You owe us an apology. Also, you only get three or four more of these tops? Has Rick ever watched anything on network television? Leaving the refrigerator door open. He's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes like a doll's eyes. Glad Summer could helpfully write Jaws on this box in case you didn't know the reference, but what happens when she decides to do the Englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain? Not enough room on the box to explain that reference then. Why would you need these kind of lines in a galactic parking lot? Shouldn't it just be a series of different sized squares for vertical landing and takeoff? Also, what's the deal with these parking lot lights? They're illuminating a building that's already lit up and neglecting the rest of the parking lot. I mean, it's different from the stuff on Earth. They have sex dolls on Earth and something tells me Morty knows way too much about that. Aliens on another planet not only speak perfect English, but their stores have open and closed signs written only in English. Like what if you passed away or died or something? I wouldn't even have anything to remember. All the cool stuff we did, you know? Remembering your late grandfather every time you use your sex robot. So we're just going to pretend this isn't happening? Well, not with that attitude, we aren't. Rick, why would you let Morty bring that thing into our house? I mean, we know Jerry has no power, but why did Beth allow it in the house? The real question for Rick is, why did you buy that for Morty in the first place? Really, simply drinking from the carton is a sin, but it's doubled when you're drinking from the carton after having sex with an alien robot. Sorry, them's the rules. Intervening with puberty? You'll turn him into Rafe Fines and Red Dragon. First, it's clearly Ralph Fiennes. I mean, learn to pronounce things. But also, referencing Ralph Fiennes from Red Dragon instead of Tom Noonan from Manhunter. Just a few seconds ago, Morty was robo-railing so hard he had the downstairs lights swinging. But these knickknacks just stay put on his headboard? I don't even know how these stay put when he's not deep droiding. This thing could grow to the size of Delaware. Pretending like Delaware is large. Or exists. I've gone too many episodes without sending this, and I can't hold back anymore. That sock has never been moved from that spot in the garage, and it drives me absolutely insane every time I see it. Whew. My therapist will be thankful I don't have to discuss that with her anymore. Portal question 253. If you can't see through the portal, how would this creature know exactly where and how to grab Summer? Still think it's a good idea to go through holes without a wiener? Wubba lubba dub dub. Sorry, I just always wanted to do that. So maybe a sin on me? Eh, that's fair. 
Great, now I have to take over a whole planet because of your stupid boobs. I can't tell if the show is aware and poking fun at victim blaming or just casually using it for a laugh. And considering the damage that kind of thinking does every day, this is either a sin for the show's attitude or the idiots who think this way. Also, watch what you're saying about boobs, mister. Those things are like universally beloved. It goes Tom Hanks, pizza, then boobs. And honestly, Hanks and pizza better watch their back. Why do TV families always store their fruit so close to the floor? Also, storing bananas with your other fruit is a terrible idea. Bananas release a gas that makes other fruit spoil quicker. Crap, that was actually somewhat educational. Um, bananas look like penises. Saved it. There's your hands. There's your hands. Title of my sex tape? And that's how we play handy hands. <laughs> oh, you are going to ruin that kid, Morty. Could be worse. He could be showing him Caillou. What's the opposite of wubble a dub dubs am I right, ladies and gentlemen? It's bad enough you're breaking the fourth wall, but now you're throwing test questions our way too? I'm tired of Zoom classes, leave me alone! Having a section of a newspaper simply titled News. Spider in Sector C is still alive. Plan your route accordingly and expect delays. So this world's just gonna be a bunch of sexist jokes now? I mean, admittedly super hilarious sexist jokes, like that restaurant that's called Just a Bite of Yours. <laughs> the weather report said, is anyone else cold or is it just me? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> sorry, I mean, um, that's racist. The females are placed into educational programs, the males, they get to play outside. The original plot outline for Boss Baby somehow makes its way into this episode. Yeah, you know what I have to say about that? <laughs> oh, I cannot believe my ears, I... Rick survives this fart. Can we talk about these ear arms for a second? We've seen them active, so we know they aren't just vestigial. So how does the musculature work? Part of the reason you can control your arms is in the shoulders and chest. And sure, maybe they have some thick traps hiding under that hair, but what about the pecs? Shouldn't they have some sort of chest muscles where their cheeks would be? And that would mean they would also have boobs there too. Six arms should mean six boobs, damn it. Also, do you know how hard it would be to hold your arms up like that all day? Those arms should be dangling down like flaccid, fleshy earrings. Also, also, does this mean if they don't apply deodorant, they have B.O. right next to their nose? This is terrible design, and the god of this universe should be punished to the maximum extent of celestial law. Was this really the time to make that point, Summer? Kids. This is for you, Daddy. Well, I guess we know where this episode stands on the whole nature versus nurture debate. Good news, parents. What you do doesn't make a difference. Only handcuffing four of the six arms and doing it via two separate handcuff sets with a foot of chain between them and in front of the body. This does nothing. Look at the tag. Read it. Where was that tag hiding? And is that really where a tag would be on a top like this? Mark. Jacob. These are names of the penis. Look, a lot of what these alien ladies are saying about men is very true. But we give our penises way more interesting names than Mark or Jacob, like Boomerang or Big Rick or Count Schlongula. If you think my top is cute, you cannot execute. Johnny Cochraning. Morty Jr. smoking? But where did he get the cigarettes? He hasn't gone outside and no one else in the house is a smoker. I don't want to masturbate. I want to conquer the planet. Oh. Just like this generation to not be able to multitask. Also, this race is so horny, they just drop sex robots on them and then have them all impregnated within minutes. So I think his murder boner would be accompanied by a, well, boner boner. But first, a deep sip from a very tall glass of I told you so. Mm. Mm. Those are gulps, not sips, you noisy imbiber. Running wild, running hot. Show makes fun of motivating characters with songs, and that is just not acceptable. Without Survivor and Robert Tepper, Rocky would have never been able to beat Ivan Drago. And don't you forget it. Also, movie steals the footloose scene from Hot Rod. Hey, stop that! Thinking honking your horn will stop an alien monster from destroying your car and potentially killing you. I never got that impression from reading Marmaduke. Well, show wants us to believe that a kid in the 2010s would be reading Marmaduke. See, see you guys next week. See everybody oh, next man. week. This joke literally only works one time the first time it airs. Unless you're the kind of fan that plays your Blu-rays or streams weekly to be more authentic. Why don't you just prove you're a better fan than the rest of us by having weekly viewing parties where you can all quote lines from the show and sing songs about how great it is and crap, I just invented a religion, didn't I? I know animation is tough, guys, but why is the end table behind the couch now when it was between them just a few seconds ago? You show us your concept of good TV and we'll crap all over that. TV sin 
Titan's mission statement somehow ends up in the script? Didn't Snowball and the other dogs in this universe leave in episode 2? Why do the Smiths still have this bed out here? Sure, it could be that they're just too lazy to get rid of it, but after a quick cutaway to Jerry, it's now gone. So that's a continuity error in at least one way, and maybe even two. You can probably guess which way I'm leaning. How about Showtime Extreme in a world where man evolved from corn? Welcome to the Rick and Morty Improv Show. With all the hits and misses an improv show entails, it'll be just like the everyday programming on Channel 62 in the movie UHF. The fact that this gun was duct taped to his back, and yet the duct tape somehow stays in place after he grabs it to pop this other corn doesn't even have a kernel of truth to it. What, too corny? Letterman from a timeline where Jerry's famous. They stumble upon shows that directly relate to themselves on a TV with infinite worlds and infinite shows, and I find that infinitely convenient. No, the other thing, go back! Really? All right, fine. Why would the TV go back immediately to the guy eating when Rick changed channels twice since they ran across this disgusting show. This episode is a treasure trove of quick, hilarious visual gags, like bottomless baseballs or a version of Game of Thrones where everyone's a little person except Tyrion. <laughs> I've never loved my pause button so much in my life. Here, these scan your retinas and let you view parallel timelines. And I happen to be carrying this thing around with me at all times. Check out this refrigerator! Only $200! Pretty hilarious that because ants in his eyes Johnson can't see, he thinks the dryer is a refrigerator. But did anyone help him shoot the commercial? Wouldn't someone correct him that he's pointing at dryers? This commercial isn't being shot, edited, and broadcast live, although that would be quite the trick. I've heard of fire ants, but are there fireproof ants? Because those ants seem just fine despite being engulfed in flames. I don't see anything. So there's a chance you weren't even born. I thought the headset scanned your retinas and matched them with your parallel universe cell. So why would the headset go through parallel universes where summer doesn't exist? Also, if these goggles also land on realities you don't exist in, they would be rendered basically unusable. With infinitely possible universes, the chances of you landing on one you actually exist in is infinitesimally small. A Mexican armada shows up. And their ships are sombreros? Seems kind of racist. Alien invasion tomato monster Mexican armada. Mata brothers. I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of sins suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. It's called Two Brothers. Two Brothers. It's just called Two Brothers. I don't know what I like best about this episode, but hearing Justin Roiland laugh at his own bull might be the most honest and funniest part, but leaving in the laughter of you cracking yourself up seems a bit distracting and over the fourth wall line, even for this show. So, no, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And I'd be on DiCaprio's yacht, banging Kristen Stewart. Since these goggles are directly connected to the DNA of the person watching, shouldn't it disconnect once removed from the scan? We just discovered a show called Ball Fondlers, but you guys clearly backed the wrong conceptual horse. Yeah, but Ball Fondlers is just the AT. You can watch regular limited cable to watch that. Fake doors is our website! This website doesn't work, which seems like a sin, so you realize it is owned by the company that owns Rick and Morty. So it could be an inside joke about how just like the doors and the ad don't open, neither does the website. Or it could be because this is an alternate universe, so the website wouldn't exist in this one. Like with many Rick and Morty observations, I'm left wondering if it was accidental oversight or intentional genius. But here's a sin anyway, since it made my head do hurdy brain thinking. Huh. Making himself a sandwich now? This top piece of bread has nothing on it, which means he has put the peanut butter on a slice of bread and then jellied on top of the peanut butter. One ingredient per slice, you monster. Also, he sets the dirty knife directly on the countertop. I can put up with a lot in this world, but people who set dirty utensils on the counter can go straight to Hellman's. Still here? Still selling fake doors! What? This might be one of the funniest things they watch on Infinity TV, but what kind of world is it where a guy who sells fake doors can afford a commercial that runs 90 seconds or longer? Paid for by... Trunk people. Man, that trunk people emblem seems really offensive, but I guess the trunk people chose that. No room is safe from the turbulent power of turbulent juice. Was that a movie? Or like, does it clean stuff? As usual, Morty would be amazing at TV sense. Baby Legs, you're a good detective but not good enough because of your baby legs. I'm totally down with the random vibe of infinite cable possibilities, but why would baby legs wear a diaper? Is this guy an adult, but like a baby can't control when he goes to the bathroom? So I'm partnering you up with regular legs. Is everyone with regular legs named regular legs? Or does this guy's legs stand out amongst his peers as the most regular, which would be a contradiction in terms. Also, this feels like an average everyday weird cartoon you can already find on Cartoon Network. It's in the same vein as Assy McGee. Here we go! That's the sound I make when I'm trying to run fast. This is basically Beck Bennett's office boss character, and when you're stealing from 2013 SNL, you may want to rethink your sketch premises. That out there? That's my grave. Wow, those graves are so freshly dug and moundy that it's pretty incredible no one from this family has stumbled upon them. These graves are more obvious than the ones Ron Perlman sees at the end of The Last Supper. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. If 2019 were a movie, this would be the tagline on the poster. 
2019. Mrs. Sullivan always planned to leave everything to her cat. I understand this is infinite cable, but why does Rick somehow always end up on a movie trailer rather than simply a movie? Oh, Mrs. Oh, Sullivan. Wow, this movie is G-rated? What does it need to even get to a PG? Not to mention R. But I imagine in their world, Gaspar Noe finds ways to push the envelope. I guess Jerry ate someone else's toe? Because all his toes are intact in the shot. While this reflection in the birdcage gives us a perfect image of a sad Beth, the reflection itself seems completely impossible given the POV. And it doesn't even appear to reflect the cage itself. Oh, come on! As if the odds weren't astronomical enough that they would even land on anything about themselves, both Jerry and Beth happen to land on the same reality? I've never stopped thinking about what might have been. Wow, a pretty unexpected heartfelt whammy at the end of this episode full of randomness. This show is so good. Hey, Rick, I have to make a project for the science fair this weekend. You think you could help me out? Science fairs. Well, I mean, traditionally, science fairs are a father-son thing. So girls never have to participate in science fairs? That's unfair, fair. And racist. Eating pancakes with butter and no syrup. Oh my god. A brand new sentient robot would say, oh my gears. Just saying. Whatever this guy is doing. Balancing plates on thin air. I see they fixed the shelf, but they changed the animation, so add another sin. Uh, eh, I make my own stuff. And the animators make their stuff up on the spot, too. The skull candle and, uh... Floating elephant carcass are brand new additions to this counter. I'm a man of science. <laughs> and I'm a man who likes consistency. Why is the elephant in a jar over here now? Not to start a whole nother GIF GIF debate, but does the glue have a label on it claiming to be sticky giz or jizz? But, you know, spelled with a G for some reason. Why do we have to corrupt glue? Why does glue have to be perverted? Being limber enough to flop your legs on the floor like this without pulling any ligaments or dislocating your pelvis. Jerry was inside the house and could have walked through this door to the garage, but instead circles outside to the garage to enter in dramatic fashion? Is he smart enough to think about entering for dramatic flair? This aftershave made women want me, but it also made me impotent! Oh my god! How can I not see this coming? Because... because you're impotent? Hey, the huh? serum should counteract the negative effects. Injecting someone with your serum without their explicit consent. I like my devil fights to have a lot more finger zapping and brimstone and a lot less back and forth slapping. So what was the ironic punishment for buying the vase? How does a scary ghost go along with your theme? This vase helps your flower stay alive, but it's also haunted is a joke that steps on the theme and you're just being lazy. I'm King Flippy Nips, ruler of Pluto. We discovered you quite by accident. Which is interesting because Pluto was also discovered quite by accident. It was when Saturn was going in and out of Uranus and then about to hook up with Neptune. You really gave it to those guys at NASA. The Plutonians abduct Jerry so that he can declare Pluto a planet. And I'm sure that's amazing for their egos and all, but why do they think Jerry has any sway over the rest of Earth? Didn't they hear how NASA responded? This is what you do when your B story has nowhere else to go. Well, I'm going to get the curses removed at Curse Purge Plus. You know, the guy on TV. And of course, Rick is on the television right this second because TV show has to news position. But why? She could have just as easily said, you know, the store across the street, as we find out that's where it is in just a second. Also, this TV wasn't even on 20 seconds ago. Whoop -a -lop -a -lop -a -lop! But how exactly did Rick get a store bought and up so fast? Rick is not the devil. He can't just make a store appear overnight. Also, how sh is the shopping district if first in Maine had a vacancy? Also, also, how did Rick know Mr. Needful was going to this window at this exact moment? The center of Pluto, Mr. Smith, is made of a substance called plutonium. Pluto exposition. Pluto's position? Ex Pluto position? Pluto goes from planet to asteroid to meteor, and finally, poof. A great visual, truly, but where did the Pluto dust come from? His hands were empty a moment ago. Oh my god. That's the devil, Summer. I wish this desk was lighter! Absolutely none of the wishes Summer makes on the monkey's paw come with any backfiring curses. What a waste of a monkey paw. But how would Mr. Needful know this? He was passed out while Summer was making her wishes. Mr. Needful, how could you even think of doing something so horrible? I'm the devil. Can the devil even kill himself? If he's the devil, it implies he sort of lives forever, right? I can take out the eternity and the padding, and then you'll have some time traveling mittens. And at what point does anyone ask what the cost for the item will be? These items are literally priceless, and not in a good way. I just got bored. Everybody out. How Jeremy and Cinema Sin staff meetings. Are you telling me four billion Plutonians are wrong? Can we worry about that in just a second? Because who's going to tell Jerry to stop putting scissors up his nose in a moving vehicle? Angry crowd suddenly has rotting food to throw cliche. It was a long six hours, but we've overhauled needful things into the globally compliant Web 4.0 e-nominon. 
needful.com. Investing in the dot-com business in 2014. When exactly did Jerry's roof get repaired? When the Plutonians showed up initially, they pulled Jerry and Morty through the roof, causing a lot of damage. He dumped me. Summer wipes clumpy mascara drippage from beneath her eyes with the simple wipe of her hand? I mean, that's the most unrealistic thing to happen in this entire episode. Repeating a cycle of violence repetitively. So, Dad, guess what tomorrow is? The day you return this horrific tablecloth to the store? Or stab it because it's an alien? See? It changes patterns. It's absolutely an alien having trouble holding a consistent geometric pattern. Honestly, this level of paranoia is a direct result of watching too much Rick and Morty. Trust nothing. Everything is nothing. Or something. Umbrella paintings. But also, tomorrow is your one year anniversary back in our lives. Celebrating arbitrary anniversaries because you can. I'm gonna make you flying saucer shaped pancakes. And yes, as another Rick points out shortly, regular shaped pancakes are also flying saucer shaped, so this sin is for teasing that you're making fun shaped pancakes when in fact you are not. Beth is a monster. Considering breakfast is on the table, I think we're meant to believe it's 6 a.m. and there's no way this family is gathered for a fully prepared meal by 6 f***ing a.m. Nope. In this episode, we learn that Rick's smarty brainwaves need Morty's dummy brainwaves to keep Rick untraceable or some such bullshit. Yet here in the opening credits, he straight up leaves Morty to die. So what's that about? Our son's been abducted! You hate me for buying those coins! To be fair, Jerry was frozen when Morty was abducted and therefore wouldn't understand the full reason Beth is upset. Normally, Jerry deserves the yelling, but not this time, Beth. Also, coin collections. Jeez, Rick, what is this place? The Citadel of Ricks. It's the secret headquarters for the Council of Ricks. And where's the counseling center for Jerry and Beth's? Considering all Ricks have a Morty, and all Mortys have a Jerry and Beth who would be distraught because their sons are missing. Turn your boring old Morty into a hot fashion statement. This is a Ricktastic concept, but he can see that the Rick he's trying to sell his goods to has handcuffs on and is being transported by some form of authority, right? How does he expect to close a deal here exactly? It's supposed to be funny because they have different hairstyles, but it's not. Cliché. If his body was stuffed into the wood chipper starting with the head, then how is the arm still in one piece? Yeah, so does the scientist formerly known as Rick. W -w 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 why isn't he here in handcuffs? Because he's dead too! Taff cap shaming. So as they say in Canada, peace out! Making fun of Canadians. Wait, is that a sin? I can't remember. Run, Morty! And then our Rick and Morty run by many other Rick and Mortys who would easily attempt to stop them, but don't even try. Perplexing, considering everyone thinks our Rick is a dangerous Rick killer. But oh well, on to the portal pandemonium! I feel like this is a good time to revisit the how the f*** does the portal pew pew gun work portion of the program. Does he just think of a specific destination, or are the locations random and somehow manage to spew fire, insects, and tentacles at the perfect moment? The incredibly convenient timing is cynical either way. Based on the fact that we only see asses and no hands, what is the purpose of the giant rolls of toilet paper? Who would even use them? And how are the rear ends so clean if the ground around them is covered in feces? This is the least subtle symbolic anal penetration since the ending of North by Northwest. Yeah, I'd like to order one large person with extra people, please. White people. No, 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 no. Black people. And Hispanic on half. Racist pizza. Yes, I'd like to order one large sofa chair. This is a pretty funny running gag, but with all these different worlds, it makes me wonder why the Ricks look the same at the council. Or it was Pizza Rick, or Telephone Rick, or Greasy Grandma Rick. And we see a Hammer Morty later, so clearly these types exist. I continue to take issue with the use of portals in this episode, and here's why. Rick splats out a whole bunch of options, the enemy appears, and they say, They could have gone into any one of these. We lost them. Which means they aren't tracking our Rick and Morty. So how would they have known to follow them into the Farty McPoopsmith world in the first place? I just want to point out that there appears to be a fruit bowl on the bottom shelf, which is a really dumb place for fruit and bowls in the combination thereof. Anything else? Yeah, more phone sticks, please. So they're eating phones? Just because they went into a different dimension does not mean they have a different digestive system. Bad guys avoid looking around the room, thereby allowing the good guys to slip away, cliche. They look exactly like us, so in order to avoid confusion, I'm gonna mark us each with a red X right now. But they're also wearing different clothing, so you could just go with that as the identifier. Also, there must be additional exits to this restaurant because our Rick and Morty straight up escape. So rather than marking X's on foreheads, perhaps watch those doors? Hey, you didn't pay your bill! You said, holy shit, chairs are sentient? Wrong. Advertising. Wow. So people need help figuring out what to buy and then y you help them? <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that. It is not. Also, if the other Jerry's think bowl cut Jerry is useless, why would he be brought along for missions in the first place? It appears there are more than enough Ricks for the job. You're missing my symphony. Hey, I'll take it over Mumford and Sons. I'm pretty sure the Rolling Stones review for that Mumford and Sons album was it's the equivalent of listening to a thousand naked children being tortured. So this race might still be too close to call. 
We will find our peace in the next world. Show now asks us to believe that the captive Mortys have had enough time to form a cult and mine this cave prison for the resources to create cloaks, printed propaganda, and a precise razor to shave their heads. The pointy thing isn't piercing Morty any longer. And so all the tortured Mortys spend one beautiful second believing they are freed before realizing they are likely falling to their death. How special. Owning a Life is Rough poster that shows the golf ball on the green and barely any rough. Saved your ass! All right, Morty, don't break an arm jerking yourself off. <laughs> I mean, you can't really do that, right? Right? This is the receiver. Yeah, but where's the transmitter? Cliffhangers. No, eye boogers. Cliff hoogers? Cloogers? Stalkers. Let's lose the tood, please. Losing the tood. Speaking of disasters, Dad, we are leaving you in charge. Yeah, but that's kind of on Beth, right? Why would she ever leave Rick in charge of her children or really anything? This sh the garage door falls outwards after the center is dissolved by alien eels. Except the hinges weren't destroyed. So this is a sin for the animators not making a couple of eels dissolve the hinges. And a sin for the writers for forcing the door to fall in order to kick off the rest of the episode. Well, we're past the point of no return. Bridget Fonda shaming. Using your binder incorrectly. Or writing math upside down and backwards on the back panel of a binder for no reason. Either way, a sin. Does that say multigrain legs? I guess they sell peanuts in a box and abbreviate legumes to legs? None of this seems appetizing or profitable. Just keep your sci-fi friends away from my awesome ones. Yeah. How about y'all focus and just keep that refrigerator door closed while you carry on conversations and then work on your strategic segregation. And you keep your awesome friends away from my canapes. Uh. When the canapé tray came out of the fridge, every one of them had a green olive. Why would Rick remove one just to add it back in dramatic fashion? I love watching Bukake. I mean, like, uh -huh. I don't know if I personally would ever do it. Bukake. How many people did you invite, Rick? Better question. Of the many that Rick invited, how many are going to want to get downstairs swifty with Summer's questionably aged peer group? Looks like the garage door was instantly fixed. I love seeing aliens and humans hanging out together despite their differences, but how are none of the people freaking out right now? Being a Morty at a high school party. <laughs> Casually watching a murder meal. <laughs> Knock it off, Slow Mobius! If Slow Mobius didn't stop using his slow-mo powers until Rick said something, why was Rick able to speak at a normal pace? Running on deck, also stealing. <laughs> this asshole doesn't feel solid objects in his liquid, and that is f***ing concerning. They weren't the size of ants, they were ice cube sized beings. Summer, don't tell me you're friends with her. Popular controlling girl is pretty and demands your normal looking friend to be sacrificed on the altar of conformity, cliche. I just want to find somebody nice and sweet. Which somehow prompts Morty to show her a deadly mad scientist garage, rather than the toy collection in his room. Apparently the garage door wasn't fixed, and now I'm curious about the sign story where the door was dissolved by eels, fixed before the party, but then immediately re-dissolved, tarped, taped, tacked, and held in place by bullshit. House teleports to a different planet that happens to have oxygen and an immediate hookup to power. Cliché? You see, Jerry? May I show you something? How has Lucy not been caught yet? The operation doesn't seem to be that large, and she's wearing a maid's outfit. No one has questioned why she's fraternizing with a guest instead of cleaning or picking up. Rick's using a credit card to turn these crystals into something snortable. But what's with the number on this thing? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It can't be a show that revels in the details and then not expect a nitpicker to examine stuff like this. Come up with a plausible number, you jerks. Move to the left. That's the right. Step to the right. That's the left. It's the Rick Dance. That somehow everyone knows instantly. Also, Riverdance did it first. The floor drops out to make it easier. We're going to get it nice and steamy in there. With... with the floor kicked out? Well, at least you got all this free stuff. Equating free stuff is an agreeable result of being the victim of a sexual assault. It's not a door, Beth. It's debris. I don't care. Just leave it. Yeah. Okay. This door can fit in the front seat, so there's no reason it shouldn't be able to fit in the back of their wagon with a little rearranging. <laughs> Somehow, despite the window being down and the ear-piercing volume of her horrible laugh, neither of these assholes hear her. Cape Fear! Explaining your references. Since everything came back as it previously was, where did the rest of this gate go? Pulling down someone's pants while they are frozen mid-step wouldn't be this easy. In reality, these pants would get stuck at the waist and top of the thigh. Don't ask me how I know this. Not using the ramp for your cart filled with expensive electronics. And yes, it is stolen, but it's still valuable. Roll credit! Not until I hear you say Rixie business or Rick and Morty, Rick. Not until. Why is this boner? I know how to 
vacuum mom and dad summer. I've been doing it for six months. But why would you need to vacuum anything if time is frozen? Isn't everything frozen in time? If the molecules of the clothing are frozen, how do you even move them? How does the washer work? Now that I think about it, how are you even breathing time frozen oxygen right now? It's not my fault we froze time on a humid day. But the moisture would also free. You know what? Let's just add five cents for the paradox of freezing time and move on, shall we? You have dropped so many balls, man. I mean, probably just two. Although with the radiation, Rick has probably exposed Morty to with all the dimension hopping. Could be more, I suppose. Put a shirt on your dumb dad and let's get this dumb universe rolling. But how did Morty get Jerry's arms through the sleeves? Sleeves just don't magically form around the arms when you throw a shirt on, no matter how many times you pray for it. When we pulled up, I could have sworn the house was completely trashed. Yeah, well, everyone in the family knows that Rick can do incredible things, so why don't you immediately think, Rick must have stopped time and fixed the house before we walked in. I'm just gonna put it on the floor and uh, kick it on over to you. Or you could toss Jerry the money so it doesn't look quite as awkward. I know Jerry is supposed to be dumb, but Beth isn't, and she's a doctor. There's no way she's not checking foreheads for temps or at the very least asking questions about this odd behavior. Whatever this is. Also, convenient machine that can let you know if there's been a split in time on the off chance you freeze time long enough for this to be a possibility is convenient. The two of you made us uncertain! What are you what talking about? English? English? Exactly! What does that mean? Uncertainty is a pretty broad spectrum. For instance, if Morty was uncertain about a math equation, or if Summer was uncertain about what clothes she should wear for that day, would that cause a time rift? I get that Rick is an ass when it comes to explaining things, but if this issue of uncertainty is really that important, then maybe you should try a little harder or at least have a sheet with rules on it. Cold Stone Creamery is the best. Marble Slap Creamery shaming. We, we have to tell the cops you were driving. Why would you have to tell the cops anything? Or even call the cops? Do you call the cops when you run over a skunk or a squirrel? I believe the saying goes, if the car will still steer, you're in the clear. And we've got about four hours to be is. What a very specific time frame you just happen to know for convenient tension building purposes. All right, since this time crystal exists in both possibilities, and since it's impossible that I didn't nail this. Vanity, it's definitely my favorite sin. Naming your animal hospital, animal hospital. Do cars not need license plates in this world? But how will people get in their practice for removing tiny screws from rusted out holes by using old credit cards as an impromptu and ineffective screwdriver? How, I ask you? Nurse, please move that snake. That's my nurse. Indentured nurseitude. I shot it before these two hit it with their car, and I followed them when they hauled it off. And how exactly were you able to follow them? Were you hunting from your car? Look, the sin is either convenient vehicle location or car hunting. Take your pick. I'm calling my lawyer. I hope for all our sakes you're as bad a surgeon as I am a hunter. <laughs> this episode is an all-timer and remembered mostly, rightfully so, for the Time Rift storyline. But it should also be noted this B story is equally hilarious and engaging. All right, everything resolved? Everybody nice and certain about their position in my world? Yes. I'm not sure I understand why Morty is so let down here. Just a couple episodes ago, he discovered that Mortys are a figurative shield for all Ricks. I'm not saying he should be happy that Rick looks down on him, but he shouldn't be surprised by it. This time, be like Grandpa. You mean drunk? This is going to cause the Ricks to go out of sync, and then both Ricks are going to take that as a sign that the other Rick is trying to kill him. But earlier, Morty said something different from the other Morty, and then he said, Wait, who said that? So wouldn't they have heard the other Morty making a wisecrack about Rick? And wouldn't Rick know that it was the reason for the sink to go out of whack? Think about getting in the cupboards, but don't really. But Rick understands that all of the Ricks would be saying this, right? This show has made Rick really dumb over the last 30 seconds for the sake of moving the plot along. So for that, away we go. Beth pushes Jerry with bloody gloves, but there's no blood transfer to his clothing. And trust me, that stuff transfers. I mean, so I hear. I will reach into heaven and yank your screaming deer soul back! The deer survives this. Well, if all of me knocked out all the Ricks and you peed in all of your pants, doesn't that mean that we're all synchronized? I mean, no. I haven't seen a timeline reverse butterfly effect this hard since the Redgren Grumphold episode of The X-Files. What are you doing? I'm calling myself. If leaving your other selves a voicemail was an option this entire time, isn't that a pretty easy immediate check before going full interdimensional shooting gallery? How long exactly do we have to wear these things? They're really embarrassing. Oh, I see Rick is an anti-masker. Can we talk about Rick's cord maintenance for a bit? He's got four plugs coming up from behind the work counter, and he chooses to plug three of them towards the top of the first strip, and one of them on the upper strip, and the one coming down from the ceiling plugs into the lower end of the top strip? What is this nonsense? You have a cord from below plugged in as your highest cord, you cord-jumbling chaos monster! These men are from the Servine Institute of Elk, Moose, Deer, and Stag. They can take this deer to a helicopter and fly it to the country's top deer surgeon. Getting outsmarted by Jerry. 
You know what they do to third dimensional life forms in time prison? Same thing they do in every other prison, only forever. So three hots and a cot, medical care, tobacco-based currency. Oh, you're making a prison rape joke, aren't you? The last time we sent a prison rape joke, it was in Puss in Boots. So you might want to think about the company you keep, r and I'm really uncertain about everything. Are you though? Certainly, if the uncertainty is a concerted plan, you're actually certain of your uncertainty, which would in turn create certain certainty, right? Go. Come on, let's help Grandpa. Yes, yeah, uh, I'm 100% not sure, not sure about anything. anything. Yeah. The war with Grandpa. Now hand me that flathead oh, screwdriver. screwdriver. Actually, Actually made, made it a Phillips. flathead. Oh, so the decision over which screwdriver Rick should use split off the timelines again? If something that minor would do it, then there should have already been hundreds of these after Rick was trying to figure out which Rick he needed to kill. There is no helicopter. And there is no Servine Institute. Clever ploy and all, but how did Jerry get all the emblems made so quickly to pull this off? And where did the uniforms the Cold Stone Creamery workers are wearing come from? So the cats float, but Morty falls? Is gravity itself also uncertain? Mom, Mom Dad! Dad! Well, I guess they can touch Jerry and Beth now without any consequences, but how would they know that? Rick didn't let them know how long they would have to wait when they unfroze everything. Are you going as motorcycles with green headlights instead of normal ones? I'm not sure which I want to send more. That Jerry would have this tight 15 ready to go right off the top of his head, or that Beth, who famously eye rolls just about everything Jerry does, would be laughing this hard at it. In fact, I'm so uncertain there's, there's now, now two, two sins. sins. Now, now four. Now eight. Now eight. Now eight. Now eight. Now eight. Now we got some business to attend to a few late minutes south of here. Oh, you still use south in space? Whoa! Jesus, Jerry, what the hell are you doing here? Being excellent at TV sins, for one thing. Also, I'm done with shows pretending like people have zero spatial awareness. Even if you don't have the hypervigilance gene where you're always checking your surroundings, one of your five senses is going to clue you into the fact that someone's sitting just outside your peripheral vision. And since we're talking Jerry, I'm gonna go with smell. You can park in a handicapped spot, Morty. Anything with less than eight limbs is considered disabled here. Of course, no one knows where to park because they apparently don't even mark the spaces. Also, not having some sort of hover vehicle parking is just inefficient planning. There should be roof parking with boxed areas for vertical takeoff vehicles that don't need all the extra space to drive around. The Furprock Design Committee sucks. Also, also, looks like you've got Gliz Cut over here and then Puiza Iza two doors down. And that's more poor strip mall planning to have two pizza places that close to each other? And honestly, it might be three, because I could be convinced a place called Dumpy Stump sells pizza as well. This works. Help me. Hey, what the hell? I know, right? Even though we know there are multiple versions of all our characters, I'm counting at least 25 Jerry's in here. Is the show suggesting that a couple dozen Ricks need to ditch Jerry's at the same time when we know most Ricks aren't going to want Jerry around in the first place? And yes, I know the asteroid is cross-temporal, which is just Rick and Morty's for, we wanted to make a joke here, so maybe this will make it okay? You know what those guys do in, a, in, the, in their fancy boardrooms? They take their balls and they dip them in cocaine and wipe them all over each other? Rick is a liar. Eight balling is a myth and he should know that. Those pictures of me were clearly fakes. Including a period in your hashtag. Also, when your vocation is life extermination, I'm guessing you're gonna just go ahead and leave the GeoTracker feature off of the business card for exactly the reasons the show later confirms. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you spend all day shuffling words around, you can make anything sound bad. My theory for when I'm trying to force a sin on a show that probably isn't really a sin, but damn, the joke would be so funny and meta somehow makes it into this episode. Here, check this out. Ah! This whole full life simulation game is exactly the kind of thing that makes Rick and Morty such a pleasure. It treats the concept with enough respect to give it all the time it needs to be fully felt, while at the same time not letting the joke get stale. Take your sin off, Rick and Roy Parsons. I mean, Morty. Not a single member of this entire crowd is cheering during this spectacular play. Also, none of them have faces, and most are clearly copies of other people in the stands. They literally control seed these four in the front row and control veed them to the next row over. I'd get it if this were a cheaply animated TV show, but this is a high-tech game that simulates an entire life so convincingly that it becomes your reality. Hey, you sold a gun to a guy that kills people! Yelling this in a public place. Yeah, that's the difference between you and me, Morty. I never go back to the carpet store. All right, since Rick is taking a turn now, we have to talk more about this game because how can he have awareness of both the world around him and the living simulation if it's fully encompassing? Also, is this game only for humans? The character is human and that helmet wouldn't fit 90% of the other clients at this discount Dave and Buster's. There's no way that this would be profitable. And finally, if the game simulates a 55 year life, how is it also showing the player's decisions in real time on the screen? Wouldn't that mean it would take 55 actual years to play? 
Who wants to come watch Midnight Run with director's commentary on? Uh, Martin Brest has never recorded a commentary for Midnight Run. That's a sin for the show getting its facts wrong, a sin for the Collector's Edition Blu-ray for not making it happen, and a sin for the universe getting me all horned up for something that doesn't even exist in my world. Don't engage in breast play if you can't finish the job, damn it. K. Michael must either have precognition or the ability to see through solid objects, neither of which is mentioned or explained. So, sin. How is this big guy unaware that a hole was cut in the floor right beside him and his coworker was taken out? Does peripheral vision not even exist for these creatures with 72.4% of their head being eyes? Oh man, w what have I done? Crashed into a heavily guarded fortress that apparently didn't have a single bit of exterior spacecraft deterrent, I guess. Portal transport that somehow knows exactly where to bisect this chesticle mantis threat for reasons. Ex machina. We can't get him out of here. He's gaseous. He's not going to make it through a portal, Morty. Oh, sure. Now the portal has rules. Open fire! Oh, I see my mistake now. I did some fake research, and apparently the company that makes the portal gun is literally titled Ex Machina, Inc. It's like the whole purpose of this gun, apparently. Fair enough. I'll take back all the portal sins we've ever done. And by take back, I obviously mean double. Also, this room fills up with water, even though there's a giant hole in the wall where Morty drove the ship through a few minutes ago. Rick! Yeah, yeah. These guards apparently attended the Promethean Nebula School of just standing around and not shooting your guns even though you're about to die. Or, you know, if you still have that gun K. Michael dropped, we could finish the job and go home. You do understand I'm telepathic, right? I'm not sure why this matters since Rick is saying everything out loud and not with his mind. It's how things should be. It's how they could be. I could not agree more. This psychedelic unity musical number that is like the Doctor Strange's open your eye scene but less about the astral projection and more about butts goes on for some time. We now interrupt this masturbatory reference to a different episode with some news position. News position. A TV crutch so useful even Rick and Morty can't help but do it. Sorry, Rick. The reward on your head is too high. Higher than access to a creature that shits gold? Seems like you could have dished out some Raisin Bran, gotten a few bars out of the deal, and let Rick and Morty be on their way. How are cogs that big fitting through mouth holes that small? Gear Troopers are apparently this world's version of Storm Troopers. Put these guys on a milk carton, cause they've been missing this whole time. I can't figure out where the main pot starts and where the jerry pots begin. But if those three coins in front of our jerry is all he has left, then he shouldn't fold. Even with ace high, these pot odds are way too good to not play. And I don't expect Jerry to know that, but I just can't let that kind of bad poker go unsinned. I'm now way more curious about how gear people sex works than I'm comfortable with. I've been grinding my gears trying to figure it out, so to speak. I'm gonna find some fuel and take a big fat Morty. That's my new word for sh because of today's events. Explaining your jokes, which is hilarious because we also do it, which also makes it meta. And honestly, the more we explain it, the more meta it gets. Get it? Telepathic being that Rube Goldberg, the destruction of an entire police force to escape, somehow didn't see this coming. Interesting. Somehow didn't see this coming is also the title of my- Why would all the Ricks and Mortys be picking up their Jerry's at the exact same time? And so help me if it's just so we can set up a hilarious taking home the wrong Jerry joke. I'm gonna laugh my ass off, but also still add the sin. Love! Connection. Experience. Excitement? Distress beacon! Uh, oh yeah, baby! You're excited about that? I'm confused as to how, at this point, Morty is surprised by anything that Rick says or does. The first rule of space travel, kids, is always check out distress beacons. Oof. Rick is using an outdated space travel rule book. The most important rule of space travel is to wear your seatbelt. Seems like something terrible happened here. Really? Where'd you get that idea, Summer? Was it the ship in disarray? No signs of life? Or maybe the f distress beacon that brought you here? Summer makes worse observations than Forrest Whitaker and Species. Oh yeah, if you find a room full of eggs, don't shy away from it. Give one of them a shake. So does this mean that xenomorphs exist in this universe? Which would also mean the regular space exploration is something that exists on Earth, and Rick shouldn't be getting away with as much as he does. Also, does no one find it weird that when they watch Ghostbusters or Gorillas in the Mist that the lead actress looks straight up like Ellen Ripley? Oh hey, you're alive! Thank God! False optimism. Then how do you know it didn't get on the ship with you? Those two ding-dongs seem pretty calm about the whole thing. Which poses the question, why did they wait till now to attack the rest of the crew? Even if Unity was hoping someone would show up from the distress signal they could also take over, that still doesn't explain why these two didn't attack after the beacon was transmitted. <laughs> why Screech and make the attack incredibly obvious? There's gotta be a better way for a brilliant entity to expertly and covertly convert everyone into, well, everyone. Whenever gross here must love to be saturated in water, but only in one tiny place on the whole lawn. I'm trying to find our weed whacker. Jerry's dumb. You know that. I know that. But I can't help but sin that he's looking for a long lawn tool on a shelf where no one would ever store a weed whacker. 
Your father put a hatch in my garage. Which means now you have even more storage space under the garage. And probably added ten dollars to $20,000 to the value of the house. Jerry never sees the glass half full. He's toe up from the flow up. This is season two, and they still haven't managed to move this plug down here to one of the obvious three open ports? I hate you all. World peace achieved. Nice. A little weird to publish a paper about it for yourself. I think at this point we can agree that Rick would be the employee of the month at TV Sins. When we met, I was a young hive mind. People who talk to you while walking away. I suppose a peaceful utopia that needs a police force for something? Mount rushmore this quickly. Show really puts the rush into Rushmore, huh? Well, this explains the $6,000 electric bill. Wait, what was the previous explanation? That sounds far more exciting than this Jerry Beth bickering bee story. Wake up, people! You have to fight it! You're under the spell of an evil monster! I can hear you. Every four years in the United States of America. Wake up! You have to have some individuality left in there! Pep talks around the writing table during Cinema Sin staff meetings. This woman was a drug addict on the verge of suicide. Now she's a marine biologist. Which isn't impressive when you consider that everyone on the planet is also a marine biologist, thanks to the hive mind. I have transformed life here into a paradise. Prostitutes are now scientists. Insinuating that sex workers cannot also be scientists in a perfect world. Are they all the same organism? Is the mind telling them to puke? Unity can read their minds, improve them with education, link everyone together, and relieve her drug binge through individuals? How does this even work? I can let go. Can you also teleport people? Because in exactly four seconds, the city is destroyed and all the people are somehow way over here. Rick can hear this from far away, inside a building, and with loud techno music playing. And I'll be damned if that ripple nipple bitch's race is superior! Those are some very impressive conical nipples attached to that asshole. Nipples that were clearly not present beneath that shirt just a moment ago. Hey! These two freaks have no race! Speaking of freaks, what's going on with this crowd of totally still people back here? Are they unity controlled, just standing by, all hands on hips angry looking? Are they rioters, frozen in terror? Or is this lazy animation? You wanna go upstairs and cut carrots and watch a Lifetime original above a f***ing alien dungeon? Surprisingly, Mommy May I Please Have an Alien Dungeon proved to be a very uplifting piece of filmmaking, especially for a Lifetime movie. I once saw him briefly forget the word for humans. This sets up a joke later in the episode, but it's really not that big of a deal to forget a word every now and again. Our minds calculate thousands of decisions a day, so what if we forget a word? Like right now, I'm having trouble remembering the word for that thing that's like soft, but then it gets hard. You know, you put it in holes and cracks. Ugh. It's really good in places that are wet. Oh yeah, 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 cock. You and Unity are like, like leggings and mid-calf boots. You think you're great together, but you're just bringing out the worst in each other. That's fashionist. If Blim Blam could rip the chains off this whole time, then why was he still locked up? I'd laugh, but I'm biologically incapable. But somehow capable of communicating clear words and dynamically expressive versions of <laughs> Just not able to ha-ha. Is there a slow setting? Best door ever. Sarcastic aliens not named Alf. Unity community. Rick, forgive me for doing this in notes. Breaking up with someone through a letter. Also, reading. No more alien prisoners. But aliens suspended in some sort of liquid chamber are okay? Is anyone going to address these? Lay it, lay it down. Let me see your hand. Emotionally relevant song sincerely plays at the end of a Rick and Morty episode while also making fun of emotionally relevant songs that play at the end of TV shows. Cliché. I wanted to thank you for letting me live here all this time, so I'm treating the family to a vacation! Pro tip, a vacation is not a treat if it's thrown on you at the last minute. People have to take off work or school or find pet sitters. Last minute vacations are f***ing anxiety-filled balls of stress. There is nothing fun about them. Well, I don't like your unemployed jeans and my grandchildren, Jerry, but life is made of little concessions. <laughs> I guess this is the uh, TV Sins takes off a sin from Rick and Morty because it's hilarious cliche. Wall has alien parasite head spatter. Wall has no alien parasite head spatter. There's no such thing as an Uncle Steve. That is an alien parasite. And even though everyone else will immediately turn back into the parasite when shot, Uncle Steve decided to wait a few seconds for dramatic effect. How thoughtful. I get they need to address this problem, but I don't understand why Rick had to throw the parasite on the table. That's perfectly good breakfast casserole you just ruined. Why would you do that, Rick? Why? 
Get off the high road, Summer. We all got pink eye because you won't stop texting on the toilet. Joe insinuates that there is a single human being on the planet who doesn't use their phone while busting grumpies. The pink eye is worth it and we all know it. So it's actually Rick that needs to get off his high horse. Or high road, or whatever high he's on. In this opening credits cutscene, Mr. Poopy Butthole holds his nose while jumping into the portal. But we all remember when this originally happened, PB had experienced portals many times before and would know this was unnecessary. Look, I've been a fan of the Pupes B-hole since season one, episode one. I know these things. Having a slumber party style pillow fight in your day clothes. Maybe you got the first one in time, Rick. Can't afford to chance it. But Rick apparently could afford to wait until now to barricade the house instead of as soon as he realized these things had potentially infested the house. Also, considering how many we find out there are, what are the chances none of them had already ventured out of the house? I'm guessing slim to poopy butthole. Just pee your pants. I did it the minute we got stuck. Then are you wearing a diaper, Summer? Because those pants are as white as Christmas, and I see no sign of pee. Not that I want to, but I've got a job to do here, people. It's me, Cousin Nicky. I'm walking here. I mean, I'm not. I'm crouching the elevator shaft, but hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> Still a better Dustin Hoffman impression than the one in Sphere. Also, deus ex Nikina. Nikki was the reason we found that old Nazi submarine. Did that not even happen? Well, you know, this episode is really just a clever excuse to do more interdimensional cable type cutaways, which is strange because they would do a literal sequel to that episode just four episodes after this one. I guess what I'm saying is it's pretty obvious that this episode is just another excuse to make up wild scenarios with no canonical consequence. And as someone who needs canonical consequence to do their job correctly, I find this annoying. And Deus Ex Beauregardina? Is Ex machina ing a requirement of adding new memories? Oh, no! Don't flash back! Thing I say watching This Is Us, or Arrow, or The Walking Dead, or pretty much every single show on television somehow makes its way into the script. Marmalade is served. Uh... And apparently self-replenishing as well, considering he just poured out half of that jar on Jerry and now it's almost full again. Look! There's only supposed to be six- This number gimmick is fun and all, but I have some questions. If they can multiply this quickly, why didn't Uncle Steve already have several new friends at the start before Rick got there? How are subsequent parasites able to control everyone's mind, but Uncle Steve couldn't control Rick's? And finally, a raptor? Can the parasite specifically change the part of the memory that knows that even though raptor photographers are a thing, they shoot solely on digital? I'm having a blast here for sure, but I'm also having a hard time grasping how any of this works. Here, Rick, use me! Oh, thanks, Pencil Vester! Let's just think about a sentient pencil who also functions as a working pencil for a second because it's f***ing terrifying! What happens when the lead starts diminishing? What happens when it has to be sharpened? That's it! <laughs> Photos! Hard evidence! And that should be the end of it. This show will quickly shift from this with some sleight of hand, but all they have to do is pull out an old photo album or some family vacation videos and this thing is over. I will admit it's suspicious that Summer's only friend is a magic ballerina lamb that we've never seen. I find it suspicious that creature that self-identifies as Frankenstein used the term only friend when Summer just said her phone was filled with pictures of her friends from school. Nipple X's. Rick, that is my daughter. Says the guy who just stated that except for Beth and Jerry, all bets are off. Shut up, Hammer Eye. Shut up, Amish Cyborg. What is this, 90s Conan? <laughs> Rick, as per usual, would be the GOAT at TV Sins. This living room has never been this big. Also, I'm pretty sure there are at least seven that's racist in here, so I'll throw those in as well. Also, also, I'm guessing every last one of these characters has its own fan wiki page. And what I'm saying is we should all find better ways to spend our time. Fandom ruins us all. No! I'm really curious about the multiplying process of this species. It appears they can just appear immediately once they're transposed into a memory. But how do they appear in the memory in the first place? Doesn't appear they need another parasite's memory to do that because once Steve was killed, the next parasite, Cousin Nikki, appeared in Mr. Poopy Butthole's memory. And we eventually find out Mr. Poopy Butthole is a real person. So if they don't need another parasite's memory, then why wouldn't they all just appear immediately? This is the equivalent of the ghost that can kill you right away, instead choosing to show you how it has the ability to move chairs around and sh**. We'll be right back after these messages. I don't hate a lot about Rick and Morty, but the blatant fourth wall breaks make me angry. Probably because when you destroy that wall so casually and so completely, you destroy a show's ability for any part of the narrative to even matter. Ever. And I like things that occasionally matter. And we can play Nintendo games. Nintendo, give me free stuff. I'm guessing they just did, since that Nintendo DS was not in your hand. You'd set them all down in the kitchen so you could grab the cash to go buy more. What is going on with Morty in this picture? It looks like Mr. Bill's ugly cousin. I get that the animators probably don't pay as much attention to the background, but you've animated this character many times over, and everyone else looks like themselves in the pictures. Sleepy Gary even got a cool hat in his. Leaving your pants unbuttoned. Maybe we'll see Chewbacca. <sighs> what are we doing? I'm guessing not getting to see Chewbacca. Sleepy Gary is such a tease. Grass! 
taste bad. Grass actually has a pretty neutral taste compared to the bitterness of most plants. So how would you use this washing machine to actually wash clothes? Obviously this memory is fake because do you know of a single amusement park that would have this much space between roller coasters and not use it for souvenir shops, carnival cheat games, or overpriced burger shops? What? Oh! Was that bottle recently painted purple and the paint hasn't dried? Because black eyes like that take at least a few minutes to develop. Morty, give a gun to the lady that got pregnant with me too early and constantly makes it our problem. This message about how our flaws are the things that make us human and connect us is actually really smart and sweet. And I'd like to take a sin off for Rick and Morty actually having some depth and meaning, but the show casually broke the fourth wall earlier, so my hands are tied. My wife shot a longtime family friend. Funny? Yeah. Mr. Poopy Butthole being an actual being and longtime friend make any sense whatsoever? No. And you know how we feel about things that prioritize a laugh over the sanctity of complete logical consistency. That's right. We're the only ones that get to do it. And that's the way the sins goes. Show opens up on Earth getting head. Hey, golf is easy now. And yeah, despite the surrounding explosions and cataclysm, still unspeakably boring. Wearing sunglasses indoors. Also, why does Rick put his sunglasses on in the living room only to take them off before he and Morty have even made it outside? A place where the sunglasses may actually be needed? With this show, I could totally buy that they took a detour via some faraway planet with 42 suns on their way from the living room to the garage, but if that's the case, why didn't Rick give Morty a pair as well? It's not God, Summer. She's allowed to think it's God if she wants, honey. Mixing parenting and politics. I mean, religion. I mean, religion and politics. I mean, this is how you get ants, Summer. Hi, I'm Morty's math teacher. I'm also part of the street team inviting folks to the church downtown so we can pray together. How long ago did Mr. Potato Head in Space turn up? Have they really had time to organize a street team dedicated to inviting people to church? If so, where are your priorities, people? If you can mobilize this quickly, why not help the probable millions that have been displaced by aforementioned natural disasters? Also, why is the math teacher not questioning the fact that Rick and Morty just flew away in a f***ing spaceship right in front of him? How is praying going to help? Beth would be swifty at TV Sins. SETI, NORAD, and every broadcaster on the planet are attempting to show this being what humanity's got. String theory, world history, the human genome. Have you tried sending in launch codes? What? That's a terrible idea. Is General Warmonger suggesting they send nuclear launch codes to an obviously superior alien being with clearly questionable intent? Now, I'm sure his actual meaning here was to fire the missiles, but that is not what he said, people. Mr. President, what America's got is 70,000 megatons of kaboom boom. I wanted to send the fact that 70,000 megatons must be a colossal over-exaggeration of how many nuclear weapons America has. After a small amount of Googling, it turns out that is the generally accepted estimate of the size of our nuclear arsenal. And that is a sin. No. Now the sunglasses are back? So why did they take Rick's spaceship in the first place? Why not just portal gun their way in like they were clearly going to do in the first draft of this script? Also, this begs the question, why does Rick have a spaceship at all? Surely it's easier, safer, and quicker to just portal gun everywhere. Stay back! This watch turns people into snakes! We will find out later, Rick has actually murdered these people and the snakes are being released from a contraption to sell the illusion. And he is not punished for it then or now. So the sin, as always, is kids. I mean, murder. I mean, f it. Give me a ding. Pharrell, Newman, Corgan, and that dream guy, they're all dead. The Grammy, sir. There was an earthquake and all the musicians, all the famous ones, they're gone. When was the last time Randy Newman was at the Grammys? Or Billy Corgan, for that matter. Get this man and his grandson on a Black Hawk to Area 51. Or, and this could be a terrible inconvenience for everyone, I understand, use the portal? You double down and always hit on a soft 16. I think hitting on soft 16s has landed the church in plenty enough hot water as it is, thank you very much. In case you confused it with Nevada Desert, the setting of that awful Dave Bautista zombie movie. Yes, I'm going to send Army of the Dead at every and any opportunity, regardless of the size of the shoehorn required. Get swifty? What the hell is that? It's our world's best effort, that's what. How can that possibly be true? Okay, every artist at the Grammys was killed, but there are plenty of great artists that have never been nominated for a Grammy. What about the Kinks? The Strokes? The Spice Girls? The Talking Heads? The planet's about to be destroyed by a literal talking head. Your saviors are right there! I like what you got. Good job! This song works? Mr. President, you're gonna wanna see this. You'd better come take a look at this cliché. Sir, he started picking up on a garbled signal. We're decrypting it now. Decrypting it? Based on what? If Rick wasn't here, you wouldn't even know what these aliens were called, let alone their language. 24 hours, 5 planets, 5 songs. But in the end, there can only be one planet music. Trashy reality TV set in space? This show sounds incredible. I can't wait to binge all 988 seasons. Ah. <sighs> 
Uh, it's probably a bad time to mention it, but any astronauts you guys had in orbit are definitely dead. Everyone on Earth, except orbiting astronauts, survives this. Earlier, all Morty had to do was press a key and the keyboard automatically played a funky beat. Wouldn't his time be better spent cycling through the pre-programmed beats instead of trying to accidentally himself into a tune? Also, while we're on the topic of the keyboard, shouldn't they find the person that programmed the keyboard with the winning beat? I'm fairly certain they weren't invited to the Grammys. You can put your faith in nukes if we get through this, General. Until then, I'll put mine in Rick and Morty. Usually, I would also be in favor of anything other than the nuclear option, but after having sent a good few of these episodes, the phrase, I put my faith in Rick and Morty, makes me lean towards the big red button as a safer option, with the opportunity for far less damaging fallout. We should pack up and leave town now. And go, where? Is it not clear by the floating heads in the sky that there's nowhere to just pack up and head to? We hereby send these unwantable skyward that they might be inhaled by the many heads. This is an entirely inefficient method of dealing with your unwantables. Do you know how many helium balloons it takes to lift your average person? The internet does. It would take approximately 65,000 liters of helium or 60,000 liters of hydrogen to lift your average sized human. That's over 5,000 regular sized balloons. Also, you'd probably need to double that if you wanted to get any sort of altitude for smiting. Movie talker? Hey, wait. No, that's probably fair. Please help me. You can reach me if you try. Please help me! Inappropriate joke teller? Okay, now I just feel attacked. Morty. Bird person? Morty lands on a planet of bird people and just happens to be greeted by the one bird person he knows. What the f***? You can turn into ice? My story begins at the dawn of time in the faraway realm of Alpha Betrium. 23 minute TV show has time for this amount of ice position. Okay, things are getting out of hand. Getting? Giant head from space has created cataclysmic natural disasters around the world. The planet has been teleported to who the fork knows where to participate in some sort of intergalactic singing contest with an 80% mortality rate and all of your best musicians are already dead. I repeat, getting out of hand? I'm setting the nuclear option to launch one minute into Earth's performance. And you, Mr. President, I hope you like being hit in the face with a gun. Wait, 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 why, why, why? Doesn't the general need the president to be conscious so that he can authorize said nuclear option? If he doesn't need the president's codes or authorization, why hasn't he launched them already? I believe I can access the history of Rick's gun and help you get back to him. Snooping through the browser history of someone else's electronic device. Not that you'd find anything in mine. Nope, no sir, not mine. Clean as a whistle. Did you guys, did you guys see that one thing on the, did you see at the place, the one thing? Can we, can we move on now? Once in for the mental image resulting from reading the band name Flesh Curtains. I married you because you're the love of my life. Going to need a whole lot of balloons full of an intergalactic skip. Just launch the missiles. Maybe all it takes to launch nuclear missiles is one guy at a computer pressing a button, but if that's true, I don't want to know about it, and it's no less of a sin. After 988 seasons of planet music, the Cromulons have decided to declare Earth the final winner and bring our musical reality show to a conclusion. Goodbye. Oh man, now what am I gonna watch? Ooh, maybe there's a UK version. Trade secret, Mr. President. Particle beam and a wristwatch. Snake holster on the leg. But how does he refill the snakes while he's out and about? <laughs> 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 Laughing at murder. Jeez, I can't believe we found a version of Earth with a Ball Fondler's movie franchise! Even this early in the series, I find it impossible to believe that Morty could be surprised by much of anything they find, considering all the insane adventures they've been on to this point. Also, they choose Ball Fondlers over French toast. I can't speak to either movie's quality, but I can attest to the fact that Ball Fondling is so much better after a helping of French toast. Or, so I've heard. Allowing Full House to exist in more than one reality. What's wrong, Rick? Is it the quantum carburetor or something? Jesus, Morty, you can't just add a <coughs> sci-fi word to a car word and hope it means something. Over 800 episodes of Star Trek would beg to differ. Wait! You can't leave me here! To be fair, he can, but I'm not sure why he does. If Rick can bring Morty with him into the battery, I'm not sure why he couldn't bring Summer as well. In fact, Rick knows that Summer would be less of a buzzkill, so if anything, why isn't he leaving Morty in the car? If Rick and the gang are in a different reality, who is Summer texting? Did we miss them getting an interdimensional cell phone plan added onto their interdimensional cable package? Either way, we're looking at one sin for the show, or one for f***ing cable companies always trying to upsell you on sh**. I know that the joke throughout this episode is that the ship follows Rick's instructions to the extreme, but why would Rick program it to start with murder as its first line of defense? Rick's an imaginative guy. What about electrifying the door, or I don't know, having the ship move itself away from the danger? 
Where are we, Rick? Morty, remember eight seconds ago when, <clears throat> when you said go inside what? And I said the battery, and then we showed up here, and I wasn't like, whoa, this is unexpected. This is not what I was expecting, Morty. As is always the case, Rick would be excellent at TV sins. I put a spatially tessellated void inside a modified temporal field until a planet developed intelligent life. By this point, I know the quest for any semblance of meaning or logic behind the science in Rick and Morty is a fruitlessly frustrating one. So, to that end, I'm gonna save my sanity and time and leave this with a very simple and succinct, how the f can this possibly work? You have a whole planet sitting around making your power for you? That's slavery! It's society! Confusing the inherent flaws that come with any modern society with the actual f***ing aberration that is slavery. It appears we are being revisited by the alien known as Rick, who once gave our world the gift of Googlebox technology. Sinful news position is sinful and all that, but how is this news story already being broadcasted? Rick just got there, and they haven't actually seen him in person. How do they know someone else isn't flying the discount Borg cube? Also, why does the newscaster have to explain what Googlebox technology is? The civilization is literally built to use this technology. Who there wouldn't know what a Googlebox is? Do they need to have one of these hooked up to every household appliance? And does that mean that the appliance only works while the stomping is in progress? Why don't they have a way of storing the energy they generate? Where the f*** do these cables go and why are they a different color? Why is Flubogorx? Morty, gotta flip them off. I told them it means peace among worlds. How hilarious is that? As hilarious as this prank is, what's the point? It doesn't mean s*** to these aliens because they have no context for the gesture's original meaning. And it's not like anyone is going to come visit the universe held inside Rick's ship battery just to appreciate this flipping off of an entire civilization consequence free. I bet there are plenty of assholes that would pay good money to do that, including me. Either way, someone deserves a sin. I would love to see it. F*** you. What did you say to me? F*** you. You told me it means much obliged. How is much obliged a suitable response to Rick wanting to see this genius invention? Shouldn't he have said something like, happy to oblige? Unless much obliged actually means happy to oblige to these people, in which case, f*** you. Would it be possible for us to get some kind of tour of your mini-verse from the inside? Why bother with a tour? Just destroy the damn thing and make up some BS about why they're forbidden to create this technology again. He is a literal god to them. This isn't a f***ing chocolate factory. I don't have time. This comment doesn't necessarily mean that the Wonkaverse exists in this entirely unique and self-contained universe, but it does mean that chocolate exists. And as comforting as it is to discover that chocolate appears to be a multiversal constant, it really doesn't make a damn bit of sense. So, yes. I'm sending chocolate. All right, let's go. How did Zerp Flirterberg know that Rick would know to hold on to him and Morty for this to work? And how f***ing quick are Rick's reactions? There was zero warning for this sudden transportation. What are you doing telling this guy that his miniverse is unethical? D do you not see the hypocrisy here? The only thing I see is an implausible belief on Morty's behalf that Rick isn't this disingenuous and awful as a human being. Hypocrisy indeed. Looked in a mirror lately, Morty? Incoming! We got a device! Bomb! Bomb! Yet, no one moves back. Crank it! I told them this means peace among worlds. <laughs> but the gestures Lip Zlop is making actually is the sign for peace, in our universe at least. So does that mean this two-finger gesture independently evolved to have the opposite meaning in this microverse culture, thus allowing him to comically assign it the inverse meaning in this miniverse, which has actually meant its reversion back to the original meaning as we know in our universe? Are they not really aliens? No, they're just a couple of crazy, wacky scientists, you know? <laughs> I hate to be the well-actually guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who am I kidding? Of course I don't. Anyways, from this perspective, they're all the very definition of aliens. Pterodactyl! Asshole! The only reason this exclamation should have scared Zlap Vanderflange is if he's aware of what a pterodactyl is, which means this place also evolved dinosaurs? This would be a bizarre mathematical impossibility even if it were just another planet. This is another planet in an entirely different universe. I guess the multiverse must really love dinosaurs. Honestly, can't blame them. Don't flatter yourself. There's always AAA, you f***ing cocksucker. I've heard the quantum battery add-on to the AAA plan is priced very reasonably. What are we going to do now? Question from the writer's room when struggling with this very weak B story somehow make their way into the episode. We are now three layers of distinct universe deep, and the most variety this evolutionary gene pool could muster is a third eye on a deer. This is still a f***ing deer. I don't know whether to send the fact that this deer would have definitely heard this timber-based Jaeger situation coming from a mile away and would have long since bolted, or the fact that this asshole tries to lunge for it instead of using this f***ing boulder launcher to kill it. 
Both it is. I hope your god is as big a dick as you. My god's the biggest dick that's never existed. Blasphemy. Rick has form for using snakes in this way, so I'm prepared to reluctantly buy this element of his armory. However, the cream of this carefully crafted pie of bullshittery is that with this limited amount of storage space, Zulu Von Sh Stick here chose to keep a f***ing eagle just in case of this very eventuality. And it f***ing worked. Ooh, wow. Gay! That is pretty gay. Using the word gay as an insult. I masturbated to an extra curvy piece of driftwood the other day! Xylophiles. Oh, hey, guys! I just finished cooking us a feast! The f*** is there a kitchen in this lab for? Also, who would want to live in a universe where one pan of beige constitutes a feast? Ah! Genocide. A long time ago, I implanted you with a subdermal chip that could call upon dormant nanobots in your bloodstream to restructure your anatomy and turn you into a car! Turning your grandson into a turbo teen without explicit consent? <laughs> Rick's eyes survive this. Um, guys, what happens if the hood is locked? Ew, what the hell? Jesus, there's flies in my ice cream! Flice cream. Nice to see everyone's just sitting here patiently with their two eggs, two sausages, pancake, and I'm gonna say rice? Grits? Cottage cheese? My point is, why is no one eating yet? Rick and Morty episode f***s up standard breakfast operating procedure cliche. This time it's the case of the inappropriate bowl of cereal. Everyone knows that you eat cereal while the main breakfast is cooking. And if that sh** has been sitting there in a puddle of milk getting soggier by the second, I will lose my damn mind. And don't think it gets a pass if this morning malady is at the pre-milked part of its journey. This bowl is filled to capacity with cereal. How does Morty expect to be able to add any milk to this without some serious cereal seepage? What is up with this balloon game that Jerry's playing? First I thought he was popping just the blue balloons, but then he pops a red one, and then I wondered why there's no score listed, so what's the point? But then I realized there are apps where you just pop fake bubble wrap like this, so now the sin's for app culture and bleeding my bank account dry 99 cents at a time. Sorry! I wasn't paying attention. To a conversation about vampires? In fairness to Jerry, vampires are one of the least interesting conversation topics to happen around this breakfast table. So, not sure why everyone's so worked up about it. Also, making me use the phrase, in fairness to Jerry. We tried a couple's therapist. That's earth therapy. You might as well ask a horse to fix a merry-go-round. It may not be perfect and may take a lot of work, but strangely enough, earth therapy is the only therapy most people on earth have access to. And if I have to throw sin on one of the funniest shows of all time, just to remind you that therapy is indeed amazing, ding away. Also, does he mean an actual horse? Or one of the horses on the merry-go-round itself? I suppose one is as ridiculous as the other, but both prove the point he's trying to make. But this is an oddly specific example of futility, and sometimes I just want to know where this shit comes from. I'm gonna go make some wooden steaks. Good luck, Summer. If there's one thing I know about Rick and Morty, it's they don't really specialize in having steaks. I booked you for a two-day intensive at Nuptia 4, the galaxy's most successful couples counseling institute. This place has a 100% success rate at fixing marriages and is open to the entire galaxy. But somehow Rick was able to book them in with zero notice. I can't even book a damn haircut with that sort of notice. My shoe fits up your ass. You wish. <laughs> Take that back! You do not think that about me! Show doesn't clearly explain that she's not really angry about the whole killer insect thing. It was actually the four boobs. Who wants to carry around two more of those nuisances? Oh. <laughs> Character closes a door and is scared by a younger asshole clone of their grandfather standing behind it. Cliché. Oh my god, Toby Matthews! Boy Crazy Summer is my least favorite summer. But strangely enough, also my most favorite summer. The next step is to watch your mythologues interact together. And, uh, big surprise, it's never pretty. Is a battle between the physical manifestations of your deepest and most uncensored thoughts about your significant other really the sort of thing that should be aired in front of complete strangers? In what way is that therapeutic for anybody? We can work together. Smearing your arm oil on your worm husband. Honestly, guys, have you ever tried to send this show? Modesty hands. And I guess it's time for me to get back inside the old timer. I'll let one of our honorary TV Sins team members take this one. Um, phrasing? Where are the Smith mythologues? Sending someone in to check instead of just watching back the surveillance footage. You do have surveillance footage in your fancy futuristic marriage monster prisons, right? Also, this works. Seriously, was the wall matching color of this giant f***ing gloop ball really enough to hide it? I mean, it's clearly spilling over these steps. What the heck did Glick Glack Foo Feem think this thing was? Is anybody listening? Can anyone understand? Stop looking at me like that and actually help me. Rhyming understand with help me. 
Surely race this advanced has the ability to present these murderous marital monstrosities as harmless holograms. They'd still be able to observe how they interact without the risk of all this maiming. Then again, I suppose that'd mean this B-plot would actually end up being about the complexities of dealing with long-term relationships. And then we'd be in danger of actually learning something. F*** that noise. Continue the smashing and slicing. Also, if they absolutely have to take a physical form, which they don't, why would they send this guy all on his own and leave the door wide f***ing open if you know that this is the sort of havoc and destruction they could cause? And this place has a 100% success rate? My TripAdvisor review shall say otherwise. What the hell kind of relationship do you have? I mean, you just screamed. They're codependent! So, are you being rhetorical here? Has your universally lauded marriage counseling service never dealt with codependency? Earlier, these creatures called our planet Earth, as if they didn't know how to pronounce Earth. But the entire map is in English. Make up your mind, ridiculous animated comedy show. If you can find one too, we should be safe for hours, maybe days. There is so much room in this panel for both of them that even Jack and Rose are scoffing at Jerry right now. Get out, Zach. Read a book. Reading. Tiny, Tiny Rick. Rick. This episode says Tiny Rick more than the Pickle Rick episode says Pickle Rick. I feel like the writers may be overcompensating for something here. Hmm. Tiny. Pickle. Give me a second, I'm gonna figure it out. Why was Knight Rider called Knight Rider? The car's name was Kit, nobody rode Michael Knight. Rick would be excellent at a Knight Rider episode of TV Sins. Why was Knight Rider called Knight Rider? The car's name was Kit, nobody rode Michael Knight. See? Get your shit together. Get it all together and put it in a backpack. All your shit. This gets its shit together for some shit. <laughs> no, nobody's doing that. Around 41% of people are doing that. You want Jerry? I don't even want Jerry. That's Jerryist. Stacking your cups this high is just asking for some asshole kid to accidentally knock them over as a distraction to put some special ingredient in the punch bowl. Shorter cup stacks are the road to true sobriety, friends. Let me out! Let me out! This is not a dance! This end goes out to the Rick and Morty fan who rocked this dance at his local club, thinking everyone would think it was hilarious, forgetting that Rick and Morty Uber fans are a much smaller subset of humanity than you might think and was mocked and embarrassed and could never show his face again at Alan's anticipation station, and it's me. This end goes out to me. You're a great student. The fact that you're an 80-year-old man in a clone body it never bothered me. But it really should. Why is everyone even aware of this, let alone okay with it? And how has Rick managed to prove himself as a great student? He's only been there since this morning, and I don't think he's even been to any classes. And if he has, f***ing why? He's meant to be hunting f***ing vampires. How can one sentence contain so much sin? Summer Smith is a f***ing psycho nerd, and she just got me kicked out of school! Not owning your s***. I'm here to save you, or my name isn't Jerry Smith! Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! Jerry Smith! <laughs> yeah, no show has a right to be this funny and genuinely insightful at the same time. It's just not fair to the other shows. And yes, that means I'm giving this show a sin because other shows can't match it. But don't look at me that way. You knew which channel you clicked on, honey. I like to believe that Hugh Jackman's character from The Prestige survived, found some youth juice, and eventually became his character in Reminiscence, and that this machine is the twisted result of a merger of both of his infamous inventions. I have nothing to base this on, but now that I've shared this with you, don't act like you don't want it to be true as well. Unless this clock is broken, and there's no reason to assume it is, the school dance was taking place at 2 in the afternoon when they should all, oh, I don't know, be in classes. Also, this calendar has, at most, 20 squares in total. Of course, this all could be taking place in an alternate reality where the months only have 20 days and school dances regularly take place at 2 p.m., but I'm not prepared to believe in a universe where such madness is possible. Now, back to the 80-year-old in the clone body of his teenage self attempting to murder his original older self. What are you gonna do? I'm Tiny Rick. I'm the coolest kid in your school. You have been expelled, sir. Your threats are hollow. Rick comes out of the vat and Marty says Rick, while Summer says pants. And while I don't blame Summer for her cultural norm views on nude body boundaries regarding grandparents, I will say it's weird that you chose this moment to be all of a sudden so grossed out when his tiny Rick has been in clear view the whole episode. Why go through all of the effort of strategically covering the Rick if you're just going to blur it anyway now? Is there a set budget of blurs per episode? Mass Sanchezide. Just so you're prepared, there's a bunch of dead me's in the garage. Speaking of multiple me's, what the f***? is going to happen to the assorted cast of Into the Jerryverse back here. I know nobody behind Rick and Morty is interested in answering those sort of questions, but damn it, I want my loose ends tied up. Hey, phrasing! Don't worry about Jerry. Jesus, that door opened hella fast. How many broken noses have these doors caused? And how many people have been sent to the hospital while in this hospital? It'll stain if it gets on your clothes, and it'll send you into a murderous rage if it gets in your eyes or mouth. Seems like this hospital would be doing everything it could to make sure Jerry couldn't projectile vomit that stuff on anybody. Or, at the very least, make sure anyone nearby was protected from him. Hello, I'm Dr. Glipglop. If Jerry is affected by the same mutant bacteria, why didn't he get sent into a murderous rage? And maybe Rick did something to Jerry where he didn't have to kill him, but why didn't he do the same for the
the Doctor. Is it because hilarity? What are you doing? A sequel. I don't understand. Yeah, me neither. We pretty much nailed it the first time. Acknowledging your premise is likely not going to be very good, so you can lower people's expectations and people can forget about the usual high quality of your work cliche. Ow! That L is fully up in there, and I hope for her sake these wooden letters have been sandpapered smooth. Splinters in your sensitive bits can ruin a good wood in the ass moment, you know? Also, you're calling this one Interdimensional Cable 2, even though the first one was called Ricksty Minutes. You got some Rambo 3 in my Rick and Morty, guys. Not cool. Man versus car. So every single one of these shows will be random and stupid in the hope of generating roughly the same number of laughs as the last time they did this, but they went with randomer and stupider for this one. I hope that when you told your friends about Rick and Morty, this wasn't the first episode you showed them. I'm looking through your eye holes. Yes, look through my eye holes. My boner is confused. Also, we're about to find out that these eye holes are a breakfast cereal. Who the puts their cereal on their faces and has weird foreplay like this? Or is this the species where eye holes come from? This is an improvisational pretzel you're guiding me through. <laughs> is that rope made of metal or is the skylight glass really thin? How the f did that break the glass? I'm the only one that's allowed to have eye holes. Right after this, Rick will say that this guy actually beats you up if you possess eye holes. So I have a lot of questions. First, if the company making eye holes is advertising this, why would they hire this guy as their mascot? You know, the one who beats the out of you for eating them. Second, how does the eye hole man know that you have eye holes? I mean, this guy came in a helicopter, which had to have been in flight before this couple even revealed their eye holes. Third, and more importantly, you can buy these at Ikea? And why does this place have stores Earth has? Is it a comment on their ubiquity? Shrimply Pibble's life can be saved if we replace his heart with your human penis. After the scenario was revealed, a writer for House woke up in a cold sweat and yelled, why didn't we think of that? The entire culture is built around their penises. Man, I don't know how they got Werner Herzog for this episode and to say this but I'll remove a sin just because listening to him talk matter-of-factly about jokes is f***ing hilarious. But also, while I'm listening to something hilarious, look at those fly wings. How are they on the outside of the lab jacket? And tell Shrimply Pibbles that when the galaxy came calling, Jerry Smith from Earth didn't flinch. He's right there, Jer. Pretty sure he just told her. Beth and Summer are cruising their smartphones from an intergalactic hospital. And I'm wondering how any of that works. Does the alien hospital have Wi-Fi that connects to different planet technology? Are there satellites that transmit all the way back to Earth while Summer texts? How did I get here? It's that lady with the shit on her face like Worf from Star Trek th that was getting coffee. How did she get there? It is. It's the same woman. Infinite channels, infinite possibilities. But sure, why not have something happen to her on TV immediately after Morty noticed her? We need one Jan Michael Vincent to Quadrant C. We need two Jan Michael Vincents to Quadrant E. Seems the main problem this world is having is that there are only eight Jan Michael Vincents in 16 quadrants. The Jan Michael Vincent factory wouldn't send two Jan Michael Vincents to one quadrant. I'm clearly sending a fake movie and not Rick and Morty here, but where else am I going to put this in? This show where somebody steals stuff must be a sham because that camera didn't follow Steely through the door. It panned over through this huge opening on the left side of this guy's office. So either this is a studio or Steely went through an unnecessary door. All right. Okay, now we're in the quiet safe room where none of the people whose stuff I stole can get to us. Yeah, but you literally stole a person you stole from. So where did you put that guy? Is he tied up somewhere in your house? What was the point of stealing him? We got a bag of bobbish. That's eight rapples. First off, you literally stole items that people from Earth would recognize from a place with nothing alien to us whatsoever. How do you suddenly have alien items sold for alien prices? Secondly, I'm looking at your safe room and you have nothing alien at all on your shelves. This whole scene seems to be setting up the plumba sketch for later. Get the orthodontist out of here. No, why? Take him out of this audience. Kill him. Sick him. Demons. Suck his life out. This is so casually insane, I've got to remove a sin. Why does the doctor have a framed picture of the anatomy of a human penis? Does the image change based on whatever he's researching or is he just obsessed with all things I don't want to be that girl, but maybe there would be less conflict if they didn't shoot their shows at the same time. Oh, Summer, you have no idea how much money that must save production. Would it, though? Two shows being shot side by side with conflicting lighting and audio seems like an absolute nightmare waste of resources. We get a one personal space, two personal space. This guy has four slides that simply say personal space. The other five slides, at the very least, say what you're supposed to do with his personal space, which is to stay away from it. I know this might be the point, but I find it hard to believe any dimension finds this entertaining. Also, this alien in the background is loving this countdown of personal space slides, and their enthusiasm is infectious, but it took them seven slides to start getting into it, which I'm guessing is how long it took the animators to get into it. If they measure the size of this alien's splatter on the wall, then why is there a need for judges? Enough to pay for a brand new state state-of-the-art synthetic heart that will be even better than Mr. Smith's pathetic penis. Wait! That 
that was an option the whole time? Yep, the A story? B story? I don't know what the f*** it is. It's even more pointless than the interdimensional cable shows. Whoa, wait a second. Is that Medea in a Duck Dynasty show? I can't decide if I want to remove a sin or- I'm a marine biologist who was bitten by an octopus. Damn, how far down the chalkboard was this premise when you brainstormed this episode? God. I'm a good person! With a plan to what exactly? Stick your penis in the open cavity of a patient during surgery? How is this proving Jerry is a good person? I know he's an idiot, but is he this much of an idiot? This is my butthole ice cream parlor. Goddamn show, so now you're resorting to shit humor and semi-stealing from that Nathan For You episode where he convinced an ice cream parlor to sell a poo flavor? You were shot like 50 times. 57. Thankfully, you're in a super sophisticated alien hospital, so it was basically like getting a splinter removed. But replacing a penis-like structure for or shrimply pibbles was too difficult for this hospital. You can't make people like you, you just have to wait for hating you to bore them. CinemaSins' long-term strategy somehow finds its way into a Rick and Morty episode. I mean, seriously, how do eye holes make any money? And this asshole traveled from another dimension to stop Jerry from eating them. Penis. 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 With your human penis. Balls. The entire culture is built around their penises. Balls. I've got such and such for a penis. Balls. You would give your penis? Balls. Take my penis. Balls. These guys, they want to completely remove my penis. Balls. His penis Balls. will be replaced. If you want to keep your penis, Balls. I prefer to keep my penis. Balls. If the universe needed his penis. Balls. Use your penis. Balls. You just wrote my penis Balls. on one way ticket. I prefer my own penis. Balls. This guy's trying to get out of giving away his penis. Balls. Trying to weasel out of his penis Balls. donation to Mr. Smith's pathetic penis. Balls. That you cut off my penis. Balls. Remove my penis. Balls. Remove my penis, Balls. sir. I gotta tell you, Rick, it's pretty great to be in this spaceship, just the two of us, you know? <laughs> Mentioning a Grover Washington classic and not breaking out into song immediately after. Just the two of us. We can sin it if we try. Just the two of us. Myself and I. I'm all alone. Relax, that's what windshields are for. Once you break through Earth's atmosphere, shouldn't it be called a vacuum shield? I love doing space sins because it's the surest way to make sure I'm wrong about something no matter how long I research it. Also, in this case, vacuum shields are also for keeping breathable atmosphere inside your vehicle. In fact, I'd say that's probably enough of the primary purpose that this plot catalyst bug protection is nothing more than a side benefit. I didn't know that there were bugs out in space. Doubling down on the space sins, would a bug in space have those kind of wings? What do they even flap against? This space bug is a lie. Yeah, I guess I'm out of fluid. That would immediately freeze, or float away, or something unrelated to what it would be intended for. Space! For millennia, our society has been free of crime and war, living in perfect peace. Oh, I know what this is! Interrupting someone in the middle of their story or explanation. One night a year, where you all run around robbing and murdering each other without consequence. Thinking legal ramifications are the only things that fall into the category of consequences. It's like The Purge, Morty. That, that movie, The Purge. You're gonna have to be more specific. There are five of them now. Five of them! And they aren't even done making them yet! You know, sometimes it's called the cleansing or the red time. So on the planet where it's called the red time, does it happen monthly instead of annually? Cause I think you may have misunderstood. Hey Justin, I'm getting ready to design a creature that'll only be on the show for a few seconds. What do you think? Does it have two phallic appendages on its face? Yep. Between them, does the mouth look vaguely vulvish? You know it! A couple other boobs? Way ahead of you. Hmm. Maybe a brown animated blob by the butt so you can't tell if the animal has a tail or if it's mid-poop. Dan, you're a genius. Why don't you have some candy bars as well? Aliens not only speak perfect English, but can also sell Earth items such as wiper fluid and candy bars. Also, the candy bars have English written on them, but all the store signage is in an alien language. This planet is the worst. How can you be into this? Seriously, after almost two seasons of these shenanigans, how is Morty surprised by anything at this point? Why is reaction? What? Why? Bilching your words. In space, we have something we call the non-interference policy. Since when? Leave you alone? During a purge? I don't think so, baby! Explaining you're unable to stop purging as you stop purging to explain about being unable to stop purging. What part of that gives me anything to work with? My choice is to say nothing, be sarcastic, or bark yes like a trained animal. You forgot the fourth option. Explain the situation meta-contextually in order to launch a B-plot no one will ever remember when thinking of this episode. You know, like a typical teenager. I don't want to answer any more purge questions. That's funny, I heard Ethan Hawke say this exact sentence at a boyhood press conference in 2014. Can you imagine being the doofus that asked Ethan Hawke a second question about the purge when he's there for a Linklater movie? This sentence is for oblivious Stevens from How Do Idiots Like This Get Into These Press Events Weekly. You just now remembered your Nana exists. Rick calls Arthrisha out on her bullshit. 
but still follows her into the house, which is clearly a trap to get his gun and steal his ship. Even if she sucks at it, somehow Little Mouse on the Prairie here manages to fly a space vehicle she's never interacted with before. One that we already know has sentience and security measures in place. Heads up, rapists. Assuming the criminal intent of purgers. Purge them. Me? No, me. Should I rub my liver hole on them? <laughs> I only had one of those things I threw. I'm holding a box of Tic Tacs right now. Saying this out loud while within close range of your adversaries. It's the space phone grandpa gave us. Keeping the space phone your grandpa gave you underneath the couch cushions. How is that helpful, Summer? F***ing Summer. There's a pile of silverware next to you and you throw me the one thing that can never kill anything? He says directly after killing something with it. Morty, if I can get to the top of that lighthouse, I can send the beacon and your sister can launch our package. Having a plan that involves a step of having your sister launch your package. By the way, life on other planets exists. Don't let it distract you. Oh, don't worry. No one here seems phased by your alien existence unless it's needed for the plot or a joke. And I don't sense either of those things present here. Fade in. Exterior. Unnamed city. Day. Reading. Also, forcing someone to listen to you reading. Your screenplay. This is not her day. Fade to black. Title. Three weeks earlier. In media's res. How are these screwdrivers attached to the wall? Velcro? Double-sided tape? Doesn't that affect the grip? And why do you even need them accessible on your wall? Toolboxes have been sufficient for hundreds of years, Rick. Hundreds of years. Do you have any thoughts? Notes? No, I, I, I just enjoyed it. That's my note, you know? Morty would be terrible at CinemaSins. I'm not a huge fan, personally, of the whole three weeks earlier teaser thing. I feel like, you know, we should start our stories where they begin. Morty would be excellent at CinemaSins. You're a petty person and you're insecure, and you're taking it out of me. That's a good script. I'm not sure how the writers of Rick and Morty hacked my email, but at least they got some benefit from my feedback from the studio's folder. Whoa, Morty, we're guests here. And is this lighthouse full of healing magic? Because Rick's gun wound seems to have healed nicely. He's walking around like he hasn't been shot in the gut for at least the last 10 minutes. You like that? You want me to cut to three weeks earlier when you were alive? <laughs> this show is just the best. Cut to one sin earlier when you didn't have as many sins. Remember when we used to go to the playground and I'd push you on the swings? Oh, yeah, you could push me higher than all the other kids. Why was he pushing other people's kids? I guess this is what rock bottom feels like, Jerry. Being part of a B-plot so uninteresting and pointless that the story only spent a total of 2 minutes and 16 seconds on it in the entire episode? Yeah, I can see what you mean. How did the beacon track Rick and Morty to this spot? They left the homing device at the lighthouse. Okay, Morty, now you're just shooting corpses. Necroside. Honestly, I've, I've had my fill. It's gratuitous at this point. Rick admits a fault of the show before doubling down and partaking even further in that fault anyway. I feel like we've sinned this so much it's probably repetitive by this point. No need to sin it again, I suppose. Coordinated blood dancing. Feels good to f hit song. Top the charts, I think. Explaining your references. You picked the wrong man to push, movie. Troutman. First Blood, 1982. I need food. Who's got food for that guy? I do, but this is for me. This socio-political commentates on for some time. And while I'm making food for everyone, who takes care of my kids? Not being able to cook food and watch your kids at the same time. That's not a real job. Trying to explain my job to anyone in my family over 50 somehow makes its way into this episode. Jerry, get a job. Okay, fine. Two minutes and 44 seconds. I'm just saying if this entire B-plot was built on the Taddy Madison scale, you'd only owe $5.47. The trick to cereal is keeping 70% of it above the milk. This blanket statement presumes that all cereal has the same absorption rate. 70% may make sense for cornflakes or Cheerios, but you definitely want to land somewhere between 50 to 60% for Fruit Loops or Cocoa Puffs. And God forbid you veer into shredded wheat territory and end up with one of those big old Ted Lasso biscuits. You don't want to let that thing soak for five days minimum. Maybe in a mixture of equal parts vinegar and dish soap, after which you toss that shit in the trash and figure out what you're doing with your life. It's like the intergalactic version of UPS, but less off-putting. Throwing shade at UPS and pretending like FedEx and Amazon also haven't been leaving packages at the end of my driveway. And outside of the fence. Our TV signals take light years to reach this planet. Nobody tell them that Braveheart wins. First off, a light year is a measure of distance, not time. Second off, how about a spoiler alert, Rick? I'm only up to 1987 on my Academy Award rewatch. And I feel a little lost because I haven't seen the first Emperor yet. What the hell is a bird person? He's Rick's best friend. Jerry said what? Not who. And even then, bird person is much more than just Rick's best friend. He's so many things. Weddings are basically funerals with cake. Cute marriage equals death cliche. But if that were true, then funerals with cake would have to basically be weddings. And speaking from experience, I can tell you they are not. 
You just say what's in your squanch and people understand. Oh, okay. Well, squanching squanches before casually squanching about some <laughs> squanches is exactly the kind of squanch that makes me both squanch and squanch this show. And with all my squanch, I can't squanching squanch how I squanch about the squanchingly squanch bit of narrative squanch. Am I right? Maybe it's possible that Rick and family beat Jerry here, but I have no way to prove it either way, so I'm going to send it to be safe. Yeah, because I'm an asshole. You say you get it, but I'm scared you'll keep doing it. Title of my sex tape? Look, here's some humans you can practice on. Title of the sequel to my sex tape? Blood Ridge on Clap Flap's third moon. Show uses a variation of the word flap cliche. Oh, sounds like you and my dad have a long history together. This conversation gives us insight into Beth's fractured relationship with her father as well as her insecurities and deficits and the interplay between all three. But it also gives us some hilariously delivered expositional backstory about Bird Person and Rick. The strange thing is I'm not even mad about the exposition. In fact, I welcome it. What is wrong with me? Bird Person, you are my seed, my worm, my earliness. Surely one cannot be both the seed and the worm. Plus, lateness is generally more common when the first two come into play. Pulling out someone's innards, even jokingly. I am a cyborg photographer. Just act natural. This is a candid shot. I'm not sure if the cyborg gaze is problematic or not, but until I can collect more data, I'm going to assume it's a precursor to Terminator Salvation. And I'm doing everything I can to prevent that from happening again. <coughs> Writers didn't save this joke for its Rick Sanchez in the Temple of Squanch episode. Also, they really turned this joke on its head. Being nice is something stupid people do to hedge their bets. You know, as funny as it is, this is the kind of shit that serves as a driving force behind the show's toxic fandom. And if you're offended by that, it's fair to assume you're part of the problem. Now, you may be thinking, that was a mean thing to say. Well, being nice is something stupid people do to hedge their bets. <laughs> Bird murder. Birder? The laser fire from these blasters killed Bird Person, but barely leaves a scratch on what we can assume from the instrument and location are referred to as baseballs. Squanchy is a dick to someone's balls for no reason. This catering space fan has super convenient worm-based countermeasures. Also, the Smiths are super lucky the Galactic Federation hasn't realized the benefits of spaceships that don't immediately explode when they slightly bump into each other. When they develop that technology, Rick will really have to pull some signs out of his ass. F you, Summer. Saying f you to your granddaughter. Well, at least in this case. You can't say f, f you to your granddaughter? We already covered this, Morty. Say you don't watch TV sins without saying you don't watch TV sins. Now who wants to go shopping for a brand new mother world? Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos making plans for the weekend. If the Smiths think a star screaming for 42 hours is the worst of it, wait till they see its coronal mass ejections after eating a space burrito. Maybe I can buy that the space fan had a TV handy and that Rick had some sort of interdimensional cable thumb drive with him or something. I mean, I don't want to buy it, but I'm going to try to get past it. However, I do not buy that they build a f***ing log cabin in this short amount of time. Also, I've decided I can't get past the working TV and cable signal thing. So... We discovered a species of tiny pig off the coast of New Australia. We'd offer you some, but we hunted it to extinction for breakfast. I know the whole joke is that living on this tiny planet is clearly not sustainable. However, the idea that not only Rick, the smartest man in the universe, but the entire family, excluding Jerry of course, wouldn't have foreseen this food shortage as a problem is pretty laughable. Especially when you consider that later in the show Rick casually goes to a bar before turning himself in. Surely they could whip up some disguises to pick up groceries at the nearest intergalactic grocery store. Morty effortlessly sending this frisbee around the entire planet raises multiple questions about the gravity here and how they're able to walk around like normal. Uh, Alright, just the one question, I guess. Morty, if you go to where there's a bunch of ice cream and then you don't come back, you haven't actually gotten ice cream. You've just gone where ice cream is. Rick would be squanchingly good at TV sends. Where's the van, Morty? It's over the horizon, in the driveway. I'm not going to send Rick asking Morty where the van is when he's the only person we've seen driving it. I'm not going to send Rick asking where the van is before checking the driveway. But I am going to send the fact that they built a driveway for a space van instead of a launching pad. I'm Jerry Smith. And I love sucking big, sweaty boners and licking disgusting, furry testicle sacks. Uh, okay. Only Rick and Morty could have stuck the landing on the transition from that statement to the use of non-diegetic music to convey turmoil and the general emotional toll of Rick's life. Of the Galactic Federation. I feel better. Show expects us to believe that medicine works this quickly. And as someone who's sitting here an hour later waiting for his edible to kick in, I'm calling bullshit. And this unicorn that's been hanging out with me for the last hour totally agrees. Eh, hey, what are you in for? 
everything. I really hate cliffhangers like this. If they're gonna put a character's fate in jeopardy, at least make it someone that we might believe will be stuck in this prison or killed. We know Rick won't be killed, and we know Rick won't spend the rest of the series in prison. This cliffhanger is all kinds of squanch. <laughs> the blatant disrespect for this pizza. This might actually bother me more than the cliffhanger nonsense. Why would you do that to a piece of pizza that did nothing to you? Because you're a monster, that's why. Shonies. Take all your clothes off and fold yourself 12 times. This is exactly what I say when I open a fresh package of origami paper. No, I'm not sexualizing the art form. But there is something about those creases. Hmm. Also, leaving your underwear on when you're clearly told to remove all clothing. Dude literally tries to fold himself 12 times but gets caught up on the never nude clause. I admire you, Rick. Weird time to be feeling admiration for one's intellect while staring into your coffee mug's brown eye. Also, Fart Mug is adorned with a Shoney's label and not one that reads Spencer Gifts. <laughs> Imagine deciding between Master Sword Morty and Spiked Bat Morty when throwing Star Morty's right freaking there! Spilling your breakfast pills and leaving them on the table. Especially the orange-pink one. Those things are like the bacon of the morning capsule meal industry. Stop saying his name! He abandoned us. I know I'm not supposed to cry over spilled milk, but... That Merlot didn't even have a chance to be sipped slowly after a snarky one-liner. Willem Dafoe! Th that's the guy I couldn't think of this morning. Not being able to remember Finding Nemo's Willem Dafoe. Let's go visit some memories. Oh, any particular ones? You want to see my first boner? Or should we go straight to the moment I discovered interdimensional travel? Let's go for the second choice. My first boner was at the front of my seventh grade math class after solving a difficult problem. Pretty sure by the time I was done, everyone had solved for D. Yeah, well, tough d's. There's no tougher t than a psychotic brick, Rick. I once watched a lady crush a six-pack of beer, watermelon, and a brick with her t on an episode of America's Got Talent, so I'm inclined to disbelieve this fact. Between where you were on 9-11 and your favorite sports blooper? Rick is one of the most intelligent creatures in the history of creatures, and his favorite sports blooper isn't Jose Canseco headbutting a ball into the stands for a home run? Please. Also, how does this baseball ricochet upwards off of this nut shot? I've got a degree in testicle physics, and that's just not how it works. Look at these dead flies! Maybe if we arrange them in a certain order, it plays a hologram. Or it opens a secret door! Summer's over here tampering with evidence. In a world where the alien insect-based galactic empire rules with an iron fist, you'd think this might be a murder scene. And, uh, a bunch of the Szechuan sauce? Like, as much as you're allowed to give me. In the history of life imitating art that imitates life, there's never been a bigger fluster cluck than the Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce wars. Here's 15 sins for nostalgia-based hysteria. And one sin back, because honestly, eh, it's a pretty good sauce. But also, the dude can invent multi-dimensional time portals, but can't recreate a sauce. Bug boners. Bugners? Bonux? Honestly, I'm surprised with this much arousal, the bug suit's able to contain itself. Do you know how many suits or pairs of pants I've ripped from my bouts of excitement? None. Because I'm perfectly proportioned. Why did they bury this world's Rick with a portal gun? In fact, why did they bury this world's Rick at all? Other Rick could have just easily thrown the corpse into a portal or incinerated or anything that wouldn't require the manual labor of digging a hole. I don't know yet. I'll make it up as I go. The motto from the Rick and Morty writer's room somehow makes its way into the episode. That's my sister. This used to be my home. Right, because weird stuff that happens in Rick and Morty is brought back and referenced by the show when it's convenient. What is the matter with you people? You're a bunch of back savages. Backstab avages. We got you on this one, Morty. No! A self-aware, elongated, and purposely created fictional decoy no is still a no. Yeah, that's the three lines of math that separates my life as a man from my life as an unfeeling ghost. Rejoice, Rick. Could be worse. I've heard three lines of coke can get you feeling like an unfeeling ghost. Math is a much healthier option. Gets me excited, at least. Possum possum. Wait, how does this bug know what a possum is? Did he study that much about Earth's animal kingdom to know how to make that clever animal rhyme? Always wait for permission to... Uh. I feel like acid reflux would be a result of the condition of the body and not the consciousness. And so the insect alien shouldn't have Rick's heartburn once Rick's mind transferred. And if you're telling me that acid reflux becomes a part of a person's soul, then I... <coughs> I hate everything. Well, what's the level 9 master access code again? Nathan Fillion doing a Rick Sanchez impersonation is everything I need in my life. What a treasure. But also, I'm still mad that he never got to do Uncharted. And this show reminded me of that emotion in a roundabout way, so... I'm bummed I didn't get to give that insect a test drive. Wait, you said you had to take a level 9 dump. Does that mean this insect species poos out of their... Some things are better off unimagined. D-99, this is the commander-in-chief of the Citadel's militia. G uh, good enough. He's a spy, blow him up. I'm gonna go take a sh**. Rick may have invented the best conversation segue ever, but I do have to wonder, do all the Ricks neglect bowel movements? I can only imagine having the urge to poop over and over again has to be a curse. Now, the release of said waste, I could do with that feeling over and over again. Plus, I'd be able to catch up on all my Philip DeFranco show in one day with that much time spent on the toilet. 
You killed him because you were jealous of him. That's pretty obvious from the haircut. Judging someone by their haircut. Unless, of course, we're talking about Billy Ray Cyrus circa 1990s or Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis. Then it's totally fair. I was just trying to protect my sister. I wanted you to have a normal life. Rick and Morty tries to have emotional stakes in a show where everyone's disposable and no one's redeemable cliche. Hold on, hold on. Whoa! There are multiple already broken window panes for you to jump out of, balding Rick. Smartest mammal in the universe, my ass. Okay, I'm all about ease of access to go to the bathroom when in an armored outfit, but not protecting your buggy ball bag? You're in the middle of a gunfight? I'd rather get shot in the face than have a hole in my scrotum. Now I'm questioning if the insect who designed this armor had practicality in mind when creating these. Do the insects have extra lungs they breathe through in their nutsack? How much elasticity is in the ball bag? Can they be spun around their heads and thrown at the enemy like some sort of ball sack bolos to ensnare them? I'm not getting this out of my head for weeks, am I? Me who controls the pants, controls the galaxy! American idioms have a very weird influence on alien culture. My dad used to say he wore the pants in the household, but rarely did I see him with pants on. He was a tidy whiteys and a tank top kind of guy. So, was I really the man of the house? Remember when phones only had one camera and it didn't feel like you were carrying around the Hubble telescope array? Yeah, good times. Nancy says they're drawing and quartering aliens in the school courtyard, and it technically counts as patriotism. Americans co-signing the brutal death and torture of a culture or species? You don't say. Nine more seasons until I get that dipping Szechuan sauce. Spoilers. Summer, next time we're hiding in a Calorcan echo nest, can you do me a favor and turn your ringer off? Despite what the subtitles say, it's still not entirely clear what's being dealt with here. Was it a Calorcan echo that had a nest, or was it a Calorcan that had an echo nest? How am I supposed to update the fan wiki now, Dan? That's because losers look stuff up. Darn right, pink shirt girl in this episode of this television show. Darn right. To live is to risk it all. Otherwise, you're just an inert chunk of randomly assembled molecules drifting wherever the universe blows you. Show makes us question whether or not this statement was actually profound or just a setup to burn Jerry. Cool, just stay in the driveway. The killbots are live and I took you off the white list. Good thing he just randomly stopped right before walking into the garage then. Or bad thing. Yeah, let's go with bad thing. Back in the very first episode of Rick and Morty TV Sins, we made a joke about this towing company and finished by sinning that toes don't bend like that. We were then inundated in the comments with people saying that their toes do in fact bend like that. And I say, bullshit. I'm giving 10 sins to you toe scam liars. Seriously, if you can extend your big toe and still fully flex all four of your other toes to where the pads of the toe are touching the bottom of your foot, I'll give 20 sins back in the next Rick and Morty episode we send and name drop you for it. Just send the proof to Pixar It Didn't Happen at cinemasins.com for verification and absolutely not because I want to look at pictures of strangers' feet as far as you know. Half open boxes and the mattress leaning up against the side secured only by this tall and unstable lamp. The sin is Jerry loading his truck like a Jerry. Loser. Wind salts. Can someone help me understand if butts are faces and faces are butts in this world, then what part of the butt is butt face Morty watching the face butt porn with? And what orifice on the face butt do butt faces use to, you know what, I just decided I don't want to know any of this. Ding it, quickly, please. This episode is not titled Mad Rick Morty Road. The exploding war boy on the back of their vehicle has little to no impact on them or the car, proving that even a show with an established plot device for replacing main characters can also be shameless in its use of plot armor. People that believe in climate change, but still don't give a shit. This stuff's so powerful, Morty. It makes Isotope 465 look like Isotope 317. This techno babble is so Star Trek TNG, it makes Doctor Who look like sliders. Your blood will be my lotion. Blood would be a terrible lotion. It dries up almost immediately, and then you walk around smelling like iron and looking like a giant scab. This creature with a horizontal hydraulic denture, mouth harmonica, nose face speaks lies. Is it really easier to eat human flesh than to just tell me why we're still here? No. <laughs> No matter how many times you watch these episodes, there's always that one joke that hits hard, and this is the one that did it for me. Uh, you mean the blood dome? Save it for the semantics dome, E.B. White. Ooh, burn. <laughs> I'm this close to giving another sin off for yet another hilarious bit, but then I realized that calling the blood dome the thunder dome isn't just a semantic difference. Blood is very different than thunder, although I do hide under the covers the moment I experience either of them. This device extracts and redistributes muscle memory. This MacGuffin has fired so ungracefully up the ass of this episode, I have to give it two sins, even though its penetration in the end will be quite enjoyable. Letting this bicep meat rot in the heat. And some chose to huddle near the boomy holes. Calling it your boomy hole. And letting someone huddle near it. For the advertisements on Billy Boards. Did the boomy booms blow up all your wordy word books? Summer would be furiosa at TV sins. Nipple suspenders as a fashion statement? Super cool. Nipple suspenders as your chosen blood dome uniform? 
fucking liability, man. Good thing the lady in the water arm chose this moment to stop destroying everything in its vicinity the second Summer showed up, huh? This neck keeps pulsing more blood out of it, and honestly, sometimes I think the show forgets that disgusting things can be distracting things, and if they're not careful, I might not be paying close enough attention to catch the next fart joke. Oh, we'll be right back. Aside from the usual nonsense fourth wall breaking, this should also be sent for how it allows the show to fast forward through how Rick got out of this situation, why Summer sided with the Death Stalkers, and if Morty's monster arm got in some quick dealt work before it suddenly decided to drive him out here. Chopping wood one-handed. Wait, chopping wood left-handed? <laughs> Now I'm gonna whip you. Narrating your whipping is only acceptable if a problem comes along and you whip it good. What about the weird guys on leashes then? They're more like interns. This asshole claims to have little memory of the before four times, so this means that internships as a concept have survived the apocalypse. Actually, it makes perfect sense that something as soulless and evil would survive the end of the world, but still, f internships. Can I see? No one has seen my true face and lived. Scene does not contain a baby Yoda. A metal bucket is, on a certain level, a kind of mustache, in that it's a specific facial accessory. A mustache is not just a facial accessory. It's a growing and ever-changing part of you that requires care and nurturing, so it can one day become a full and prominent statement of your desire to never drink milk in public ever again. The thing I find most disconcerting about this whole scene is how all of them just sit there conversing with an entire meatball on their fork. I have so many questions, like, aren't you worried about the sauce dripping all over the place as you gesture? Are you planning on eating the entire meatball in one bite? Are you not including any spaghetti with the meatball? They are meant to be eaten together, you savages. And that's before we even get to your serving sizes. That plate of spaghetti is as big as your head. That's probably 3,000 calories worth of spaghetti there. And I'm not even counting the pureed egg yolk drink you've included. Dial it back, Summer, by 15% and increase dynamic movement by three. No matter how many times this show tries to explain away Beth being oblivious to all things Rick because of the issues with their relationship, she has also been established to be a very smart person. It only takes a moderately smart person, like myself, to see through this robotic family ruse. Plus, dynamic movement adjustments are always done in increments of five. Otherwise, what's the point? You millennials. Generationalizations. Please, slavery was a family business. That's his business? The flashback we saw earlier was of his men murdering the entire village. The writers think someone could be this bad at business and also have a taint washer. Uh, Armathy, can I steal you for a second? Armathy. Armathy. What about arm and fight? Or sleeve jobs? I mean, hand squish him. Anderson was right there. Maybe the lesson we've learned is that- I don't know if we get to do this with Rick and Morty, so skip? They did all this in three weeks. I mean, my neighbor started putting up a fence in his backyard three months ago, and he's still not done. Part of this is probably on my lazy neighbor, f***ing Bruce. But this is still a lot of infrastructure for 21 days. We were monsters. We didn't care about anything. I still don't. Yeah, except I'm the only one in this entire world that's still committed to that. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Three sins? Oh, I get it. You want me to send the marriage kills romance and results in conflict cliche. Fair enough. Here's your ding, ding, ding. No union built on running from your problems lasts more than five years. Seven tops. USA deniers. No! No. Unless my suffering is your nourishment. TV sins. I turned myself into a pickle, Morty! With the garage door open? I mean, it's possible Rick couldn't care less if people know he's a mad scientist, but I usually like a little privacy when I'm transforming my pickle. I'm Pickle Rick! Roll deal Marshalls. It's probably sin enough that this intro scene doesn't have an episode yet, but I'm just confused why each butt cheek would have a separate face when the face is the entire butt. Shouldn't the butt then be the entire face? And wouldn't this make the mouth the... Oh god, I've gone too far. Also, it's official. Rick and Morty needs to do a whole episode including all the stuff they didn't do from the intros and turn it into one episode. They're good at off-the-wall concepts, so time to make it happen, assholes. Stop digging for hidden layers and just be impressed. Rick and Morty fans in our comments section. Did you do this on purpose to get out of family counseling? He did, and it really makes me wonder why he didn't do something a lot less convoluted. Seems like he could have simply faked being sick, or made himself sick for real, and had an antidote hidden somewhere. Or thousands of other things he could have done to get out of therapy. We're going to get one of the most famous Rick and Morty episodes out of it, but while it's hard to complain, it's not hard to sin. Hey Rick, why is there a syringe of mysterious fluid hanging directly over you? Morty's got a point here. Why would Rick set up some sort of Rube Goldbergian syringe solution in full view of everyone? I would think someone smart enough to become an actual pickle would also 
also be smart enough to hide whatever creative way they've found to not be a pickle anymore. For instance, conjuring a me-seeks and asking them to hide until everyone leaves and then administer the antidote for one possible solution. Beth conveniently leaves the garage door open so the pickle Rick can get into his adventure. <laughs> this goes on for some time. It was a bright-ass sunny day with no cloud in sight. Then the clouds with the flooding rain came out of nowhere to bail Rick out. I'm pretty sure it only rains long enough for Rick to get to the next phase of the story, making this the biggest deus ex machina rain since Noah, when God killed all of Noah's arc nemeses. Also, floods don't happen this fast, and unless the water is coming directly from the garage, this driveway wouldn't accumulate water at any depth at all. Pickle Rick is apparently holding his breath underwater, so can we talk anatomical morphing? Does this mean this pickle has respiratory, circulatory, and neurological systems? And if so, isn't it more of a pickle-shaped human than an actual human turned into a pickle? Yes! How did he say yes so clearly if he's tonguing a roach's brain nonstop to make it move? Also, most scientists think that arthropods actually have a distributed intelligence, which means their motion is controlled at multiple points of the body, meaning this cerebrolingus shouldn't really be doing all that much at all. It's nobody's choice to be here, you knobs. The family was told to get counseling by your principal. Sounds like the principal was a co-writer on this script, considering the unusual request for the entire family to get counseling. Even though it's not the family that was huffing pottery glaze in the art room. As far as my research shows, pottery glaze does not contain any brain-altering substances. Oh, you sweet summer child. How long have you all been eating poop? Yeah, I bet when you have fond memories of the Pickle Rick episode, you don't remember the Morty desk peeing incident, or the teacher that eats poop, do ya? This rat trap includes a weight, wall screws, and bolts, and a tied-off rubber band secured at twice a pickle's height. How the hell could Rick build this at his current pickle size, and with a distinct lack of opposable thumbs? This Rick builds complex machinery quickly with no hands or tools. It's going to be a common thing, isn't it? Fine, let's add five sins for this plot-forwarding nonsense and move on. Good thing the city installed these sewer covers to give way with such great sense of dramatic timing. I know this is one of those things where you're not supposed to think very deeply into it and just accept that Rick, who is a pickle, screwed rat arms and legs onto himself and now has the agility of Tony Jaw as he rampages through this rat horde. But if rat anatomy is this amazing, I find it hard to believe they wouldn't rule the world, or at the very least have complete control of the New York City subway. Also, don't get me wrong, going all John Rick Chapter 3 Pickle Bellum on these rats is pure amazingness. But unless he's broken the law of conservation of mass, him making this machine appear complete with seemingly unlimited ammo out of absolutely nothing can suck my gherkin. Well, Dr. Wong, by the way racist name... Calling things racist that aren't even racist at all. Do you have any self-awareness? God. You were special to rats. Now they're dead. I guess it was me you should have impressed. I feel like somewhere this episode should get a sin off for its goofy premise paying off, and I'll do it here. I mean to be a nitpicky bastard, but what the f*** is up with all these vents in this hallway, and room 280 is directly across the hallway from room 290? Who in the f toilet is this? How the f*** did Rick get this f***ing deep into the middle of nowhere from that sewer he was in? Hi, um... Can you, uh, uh, please let me out? Can't Rick just find a way out on his own? He's been using the vents to get around, and he has more resources than when he was down in the sewers, and down there he could build a jetpack and a whole complicated rat part assembly machine. Some of my men are calling you Solenia, the Pickle Man, an old wives' tale. He crawls from bowls of cold soup to steal the dreams of wasteful children. This old wives' tale is about as stupid as the first wives' club. A pickle as some sort of waste-not-want-not -not boogeyman? I know Russia's f***ed up, guys, but... It can be way more creative and f***ed up than that. This Russian syndicate must shop for office supplies at the same company as John Wick and Ledger's Joker, because these industrial strength pencils are somehow nailing someone to a wall and impaling entire human shoulders. My pencil breaks when I press too hard while dotting the I and Kendrick with a little heart. What do you think is in the syringe, Beth? You're the one that costs $200 an hour, you tell me. Okay, so this mandatory counseling costs $200? I can barely even see the family agreeing to this counseling, much less paying $200 an hour. Oh my god! Oh! Th 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 there's pictures of people eating poop in there! The alternate title of this episode was clearly Fecal Rick. As little that's left of these desks, I'm questioning their ability to support a full Van Dam in their current condition. How is Rick flying this chopper without being able to reach the anti-torque pedal and other important helicoptery things? What is this, some kind of suicide squad? I have no doubt that you would be bored senseless by therapy. The same way I'm bored when I brush my teeth and wipe my ass. Who has ever been wiping their ass and said to themselves, God damn, this is boring. It's not like it's supposed to be fun. Feels like this is just another way for the episode to wallow in shit again. She huffed enamel, and we never even talked about it. Uh, yeah, you did. It's what led to Summer saying, I am mad that I can't huff enamel without people assuming it's because my family sucks. Saying she'd prefer people to just think she likes to get high. It was discussed. A stringed instrument would be completely muted by crushed corpses attached to its strings, even in the key of B flat. Now, 
for the E splat. <laughs> Jaguar is Jaguar. I'm gonna untie Rick and Morty. Don't let any of those things get away, Morty. And be sure to keep the garage door open while these things scurry about. That seems to propel a lot of our plots. Also, is this a garden hose hanging on the side of the Smith house? That thing is huge. That is the girthiest yard hose ever to hose a yard. Can we call it Dirt Diggler? I, Morty Smith, invoke my right to choose one in every ten Rick and Morty God. adventures. So it's true, Rick and Morty have adventures that are not televised, so it's possible we haven't seen other adventures chosen by Morty. But the episode Me Seeks and Destroy seemingly established that Morty would choose at least one adventure in every ten episode season when Morty angled to be in charge of every third adventure, and Rick casually rebutted him off with every tenth. This self-aware show was surely referring to the number of episodes in a season. I think they just forgot this was a thing until now. This time travel box hasn't paid off, and I'm calling it. It's been long enough. I want some time travel shenanigans, damn it. This container has been teasing me since episode one, and my flux is at full capacitor. They did a whole Vindicators without us. Bunch of them got killed, too. So Morty is an unabashed Vindicators fan, and while it makes sense that they would do an adventure without Rick and Morty, it seems like he would have figured that out already, since he's such a huge fan of them and all. Wouldn't he have various news feeds set up to follow whatever the Vindicators were doing even when they weren't assembled? Yikes. Yeah, things did feel less diverse in there. Sure, there's a white guy, but there's also a woman who is apparently a solar system, a person made of ants, a robot crocodile, and a ghost train conductor of color. What the hell is Rick even talking about? I'll buy that Supernova and Vance can fly down from the jet. And I guess maybe Million Ants can somehow float down with Morty in tow, but how do Alan Rails and Crocubot even come close to surviving the impact of that height? Are you alright? Yes. I only lost 400 ants. Million Ants is made up of a million ants. This many bullet holes would have caused the slaughter of well into the tens of thousands. My queen is laying more. I am back to one million ants. Literal Ant-Man could have had any kind of biology and it would make sense, I suppose. I mean, this guy's made up of ants. But don't, don't ants have to go through the larvae and pupae stages before developing into full-blown ants? This whole process lasts a month at least. So even if your queen could somehow spit them out that fast, your chronology needs some work. Geez, Supernova. I mean, there's unrealistic body image, and then there is a toilet paper roll balancing two cantaloupes while sitting on top of the Great Pumpkin. Is your superpower transmitting body dysmorphia? We're taking fire from an automated turret. Can you bring it offline? Seems like they wouldn't need Rick to do this, since many of the superheroes have powers that could easily destroy the turret on their own. But this episode is a parody of superhero movies, so maybe that's the point. I'm sending it anyway, because I won't feel right in the morning if I don't. Okay, so the turrets shoot the decoy and it absorbs the bullets. But why do they stop shooting once the decoy goes back into the box? These guns clearly have more bullets left because they end up blowing themselves up after Rick's hilariously complicated device locks them down. Do it in three minutes or you'll all die. So at what point does Rick transition from hilarious, nihilistic asshole to legitimate supervillain? Has he always been the villain of the show? Look, that's fine if that's the case. I'm just saying at some point we need some sort of moral foundation here, right? This is triggering me. I need space. Does anyone even want to just glance at the board and maybe just do the easy matching game? I'm as stubborn and prideful as the next guy, but if my life's on the line, I'm at least going to check out the difficulty level before I get all flustered. Look, I know the drunk Rick set all this up and all of this is surprising to him too, but sober Rick doesn't care one bit about these assholes. So why is he all horrified? fight about fans. The Rick we know and love would be stoic about this and be ready with a sarcastic quip. Give me one reason why I shouldn't crush your windpipe. Because my epidermis is laced with a nanofiber defense mesh. Okay, that's awesome. But when he grabbed your neck, your eyeball went to bloodshot, which means your defense mesh wasn't working when he first grabbed you. It appears to only exist for this joke. Of course, we're going to keep our eye on that clock. And now it appears to be under a minute, even though only one minute has passed since the three minutes started. This is like the friend's apartment quiz all over again, except Rick's more likable than Ross. But they don't... Pick the location you'll... you'll never hear them even mention. Oh, I know this. Dude, this game doesn't even have a timer. Why the rush? Even drunk, Pickled Rick is a super genius, but he's just one super genius, right? How does one person build this entire fully automated giant instructional screen and an interactive holographic display in one drunken night? Drunk version of me is probably so supportive of Israel. He wants what's best for it and- Hey man, I'm not touching this. That's a funny reply, but does Million Ants know the geopolitical complexity of issues concerning Israel to the point that he knows it's a touchy subject? Let's say you have to hit five three-pointers in five minutes or, I don't know, the whole place, the whole planet will get blown up with a neutrino bomb. Rick clearly recorded his audio first, making it up as he went, and then had to enact his ramblings into the real world. Which is kind of brilliant, considering that's basically how this show seems to be created. So this is either a sin for Rick standing in as the proxy for the writer's laziness, or a sin for being brilliant enough to get away with it. Either way... I'll disarm the drunkenly improvised neutrino bomb. Morty, how many of these... Too many, Rick! Too many! Okay, so he's disarmed a few of these bombs. But why the hell is he all of a sudden going full Hurt Locker, when we all know non-drunk Rick is the one that will eventually take care of this? Is there something set up on this basketball court that detects 
the distance from which these guys shoot the basket? Because it seems like they could just shoot layups and everything rigged up here wouldn't know the difference. I mean, if it allows Supernova to cheat the three-pointers like this, then there's nothing stopping them from taking the easiest shot possible. Because when you're an asshole, it doesn't matter how right you are, nobody wants to give you the satisfaction. Thing overheard at TV Sin's team-building retreat somehow makes it into a Rick and Morty script. Wouldn't Rick's nanofiber defense mesh easily be able to break these handcuffs? So Morty gets on the platform and it works, but we find out that Drunk Rick was thinking of Noob Noob as the answer to this question. And while this game might just be total bull and that's exactly the point of it all. This whole thing is so detailed, you'd think if Drunk Rick was really thinking about Noob Noob, he'd have made sure the platform required Noob Noob. Every single puzzle Rick set up was accompanied by a video, and every single one of these recordings took place in his garage. And while he may not have had every game planned, he clearly had the last game planned because he had already cut out the rainbow background for the last video message. But that last one was recorded somewhere in the cave they're currently in. So why did he wait to do this one here when he did all the other videos in his garage? You were always the romantic, which is why you can't leave either. So Supernova is a full-blown psychopath now? Just like that. Was there any sign of this over her years of service? This is a sin for the Vindicator's HR department, if nothing else. I'm going to enjoy this. And let's, well, let's give, give a, a huge, huge thanks, thanks to Rick Sanchez. Rick Sanchez for Wouldn't all the people up here have seen Supernova doing all the evil sh she did, including killing million ants while they took the ride on the elevator? You mean nobody was looking down during that whole thing? And what about the superheroes? Nobody looked up and saw tons of people up there having a party? And for, for booking, booking one, one of the, the hottest, hottest talents, talents out there, there Logic! Uh, I mean, there's logic problems, and then there's logic problems. Apparently this episode has both. Does Jerry not grow mustache stubble? Also wearing tidy off-whiteies. The show's hitting the sad sack Jerry punching bag hard in this opening, even insinuating he flosses while on the toilet. But in what world does someone with Jerry's personality traits even floss at all? Oh, I couldn't give a shit about washing my undies in the sink, but gotta take care of my teeth tweeners. Rick and Jerry episode! Breaking the fourth wall to advertise your episode shortcomings. Oversaturating the plumbus market. What did you think it was? An execution. Jeez, you really do need a win. Is it really that far-fetched, though? The truth is the Rick we've been shown in this show is probably more likely to execute Jerry or manufacture a new one entirely rather than waste his time trying to give him a win. Huh. This seems kind of fancy. Jerry, for all you know, this is the equivalent of an alien truck stop. You have no frame of reference. Rick would be a master convincer at TV Sins. The resort's covered in an immortality field. You can't die here. That's the gimmick. I have questions and thoughts aplenty about the functionality, practicality, and sustainability of an immortality field. Far too many to contain in the parameters of this one sin, so I'm going to sprinkle them in whenever I feel there's a lull in the cinnable. But first off, both Rick and his buddy seem to be in pain when they're harpooned and glassed. Immortality should really not be so appealing when you can still feel the pain of death. Rich a-holes are rich a-holes. They all pay top dollar to come here and enjoy a consequence-free vacation. Stealing your idea from Westworld. The book. Or the old movie. But not the new show, which came out later. So then we'd send that for stealing from this. This job's complicated. Mom! Do you think I'm hot? This entire B-plot is dangerously skippable, so I'll use it instead to untable my immortality field doctoral thesis. Next up is the fact that this isn't technically an immortality field. It's a resurrection and regeneration field. An immortality field would prevent death from occurring in the first place and allow you to survive your injuries regardless of severity, which would make this a f***ing horror scape of a resort where you never die but have to continuously feel the pain of any injury or mishap that befalls you. Is that a... Hoof collage? It's perfectly legal if that's what you're wondering. Nope. I was just wondering why you're leaving your wine glass directly under the disembodied hoof sculpture. Do you want hoof and mouth disease? Because this may or may not be how you get hoof and mouth disease. Or could it be her massive stripper titties? In my <clears throat> limited amount of research, I can confirm there is no specific shape or size of titty required to be a stripper. Yeah, of course he likes it. Look at him. Motherfucker got two heads and three trunks. That's by cranial triproboscist. Between the first whirly and the third durly, the ride dips just outside the immortality field. <laughs> well, that's just terrible theme park design. I don't want to judge an alien race by its appearance, but I do want to know more about the genetic quirks of this species. For example, why does this individual have nipples when the others do not? And why do they have one bubblegum stalk and yet our bigger friend here has two? And why are they bumpy when the smaller chaps are perfectly smooth? You can't give me another new alien race without the proper information to fill out my Rick and Morta decks. If she's this big and the machine's still running, how is she A, alive, and B, not immediately popping Morty like a tomato sauce balloon the second he tries to squeeze through there? There are some major issues between you and Beth that have been there since you guys met. This is what apparently tips Jerry over the edge into patricide-in-law. 
this an insightful statement that's likely based on truth as opposed to one of the many careless or hateful things that Rick has done? What's worse is that the show never has a problem making Rick out to be the asshole, so why not use this as an opportunity to show him really tormenting Jerry and Jerry finally breaking? What else could reverse possibly mean? In fairness to Beth, this is a terrible setting description. The setting should have clearly been called Inside Out, which still would be incorrect considering basically all that happens is the skin inverts but somehow leaves the eyes and mouth intact. Man, this is gonna be awesome. Rick doesn't find it at all suspicious that despite the huge line of people waiting behind him, this card is allowed to leave completely empty, other than the two clearly assassiny looking assassins in the back that are inexplicably being allowed to stay on despite having already partaken in the coaster. Also, how did the assassins know that this cart was the cart that Rick and Jerry were gonna be on? And how could they guarantee that Rick and Jerry were gonna be at the front of the line? <laughs> Did Jerry just lift up the lap bar mid-ride? That should not be possible. I know this is an animated show, but I've had literal nightmares about this exact scenario and I need to know that this should not be possible. The assassin inexplicably waits until Rick and Jerry have almost re-entered the resurrection and restoration field. I don't even think they have a line of sight now. Instead of activating a bomb, I just assumed this button was some sort of quick release mechanism for Rick's lab coat. And what's concerning about this is I didn't even question how ineffective and ridiculous that would be. My brain just said, yeah, that tracks. And I am not okay with how this show is reshaping my logic center. Look, I've never managed a resort with a resurrection and restoration field, but if I did, I don't think I'd put the power source to said field where it was so open to being damaged. I mean, look at all this rock. Why not bury that sh way underground? Rick and Jerry survive this. And you might think that's silly, but the whole episode is about a place with a resurrection and restoration field. And when you're going to have your character survive a direct collision with a mountain and a rocketing wheel of death, your supposed immortality field becomes about as important as the lowest button on a button-down shirt. I mean, it's there for a purpose, but does it really change much? Who do you think had more taken from them when you shot 20 cc's of liquid dream killer into my daughter? <laughs> love the writers of this show. She was Rick's daughter, Jerry. She had options. Oof. <laughs> the monster stopped eating him for a second to pile on and say oof. Yeah, yeah, two sin removals in a row because the random forest monster said oof. I mean, balls, hilarious, I get it, but he could just duck down in the pouch a bit, right? Also, the creature that evolved to carry its young within punching distance of its gonads would like a quick conversation with Darwin, please. Kissing Rick's ass isn't going to help keep him around, Mom, but it will help you lose everyone else. Chapter 47 on my thesis, challenging the R&R &R Resort, a title that the owners really dropped the ball on by not using, now that I think about it, is wondering if laws regarding murder and assault don't apply here. I mean, you're still going through the mental and physical trauma of being attacked and assaulted, so are there just no repercussions because there's no lasting physical damage? Like I lost Summer. Hey. You haven't lost her yet. No, I definitely did. She's gone. There is not a chance Summer would have been able to sneak away. She's too big to miss, would shake the ground when she walked, and would be raining garage debris. It's a synaptic dampener that blocks violent tendencies and controversial thought. I want cookies and a 90-minute cut of Avatar. This show cuts so deep. I f***ing love it. But unfortunately, I'm dangerously close to maxing out my sin removals for the season, so I'll just have to send the cookie monster shade instead. Wait, I know where she is! Of course you do. How else would we wrap up two storylines in the next five minutes? Ethan and Summer were supposed to go camping, and then he dumped Summer. The next book in my R&R &R field series will be dedicated to organized crime. Why isn't this resort being overrun with space mobsters and criminals that can either use it as a place to torture their enemies or as a hideout where they can't be hurt by the authorities? Using it as a theme park is wildly undervaluing its potential. Live out the rest of your days in denial of your vagina fantasies. It was a one-time thought that everyone has! I mean, other than the people that already have a vagina. Right? Rick and Morty episode steals the best scene from Everything Everywhere all at once and the dumbest scene from Doctor Strange 2 five years before either of them came out. And don't act like that is impossible in a show like this. Oh God, I feel like our souls were united and we're all one with eternity. Still a better explanation than anything I've heard defending the ending of Interstellar. <laughs> And the final series of volumes will be spent positing that the R&R &R Resort should be swamped by the entire damn universe. This is a place where you not only can't be permanently killed, but it reverses the thing that killed you. So anyone with a spaceship and a terminal illness can come here, die, and be cured of anything that was killing them. This resort should be the seat of power for the entire damn multiverse. I know giant, inside-out, kaigu versions of Summer and Beth are in this scene, but the real monster here is Morty who uses his bare thumb to pat down this melted marshmallow. Directly touching the marshmallow is a surefire way to ruin any shot you have at not sticking directly to everything you come in contact with for the rest of the evening. Show takes 21 minutes and 13 seconds to actually Rick and Morty. 
I heard you broke up with Brad. Who are you gonna date now that you can date anyone? Why is this an immediate question to ask someone that just broke up? I understand that they're keenly curious about body stuff as evidenced in the following line. Penis in the foreskin kind of love. So yeah, go figure out what you enjoy, I guess. But can we just let people take a longer than 12 second break between the end of one relationship and questions about the next? You can be single is what I'm saying. This highly questionable school art that is inspiring a love of microscopes, trophies, open flames, hookah, and magnetic floating chalices. I'm confused about my career path by simply glancing at it. Let's go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. Title of my overambitious sex tape? In this shot, the fleet isn't concentrating their firepower on one location, but when we zoom in, the firepower seems to be aimed at this Volva's mass. Don't get me wrong, one should always concentrate on the Volva's mass, but be consistent. Why is their skin flapping around as the wind is pushing it back from the ship's trajectory? I get that G-forces do crazy things to your face, but for this amount of gum flappage, surely they'd have to be taking some bizarre route out of here and not the straight line that we see in this shot. I can't f***ing do this anymore! Audio from the TV Sins writer's room after sending Game of Thrones final season somehow makes it into the episode. This was insane! That was pure luck! I was not in control of that situation at all! <laughs> Followed by Jeremy and Chris's reaction to the birth of CinemaSins also making its way into a Rick and Morty episode. Not closing all of your eyes when receiving a massage. You were right! Best day spa in the galaxy! Enjoying whatever this is with your grandfather. These things are just doing what they do in the wild. They love swallowing stressed out creatures for 20 minutes and then puking them up. I think cats feel this way about birds. Like it's their responsibility to end their stressful birdie lives, consume them, and then vomit them on my pillow at 3 a.m. as if it does anyone a favor. So this sin is for the unexpected visual memory barrage of my long-gone Audubon-obsessed cat, Oliver. F***ing Oliver. My whole body's like a baby's ass. Diapered and rashy? That makes no f***ing sense. Try swallowing the giant ball of snot that's dangling around in the back of your throat. It's disgusting. Says the man who, for 90% of his day, has more bodily fluids on his face than Jabba the Hutt's gynecologist. It's nice of you to let me off the hook. It's still unacceptable behavior, and I do regret it. Rick is being extra nice because he's had all of his toxins removed, but that would seem to overlook that some of the most toxic people you will ever meet will carry themselves with a kind word and a smile. Yeah, take that. You came here for sex tape jokes and left with life facts, suckers. I'm real proud to be your grandpa, Morty. I guess this sin is on me for enjoying this wholesome moment while also realizing that the toxic elements of Rick and Morty are ripped from their consciousness. Do... do I prefer this show? Am I a... a sap trained by television to feel better when everyone gets along like puppets? Well, you were flapping your parasitic turd holster! Not specifying what the turd holster is, precisely. So I'm now unsure how to use it in situations requiring insult slinging. I discovered the toxic equivalent of electricity, Morty. <laughs> I love the idea that there's a toxic version of electricity, even if it doesn't make any sense. I mean, would lightning just deliberately pick out the nicest people to strike? Would a power surge wait until you've nearly finished a big project to short out your computer and then do exactly the same thing to your brand new computer just to f with you? Wait, toxic electricity may already be a thing. Now, who can tell me the common denominator of these two fractions? You don't know or you're just bored. False dichotomies. With the kids' clothing variety as your only clue, you'll never discover the mystery of the current weather pattern in the neighborhood. If we're all bored over here, wouldn't the common denominator be you? We learn that it's only the character traits the individual believes are toxic that have been removed. But I still struggle to believe that Morty doesn't think being a back-talking smartass to his teacher doesn't fall into the realm of toxicity. I do, however, know that I have a pretty bad case of haven't taken you to dinner-itis. This works. Oh, sh**. The item on the wall wasn't art at all, it was an actual trophy case? Well, in that case, I will remove a sin, because I called it art. And then add a sin back, because it looks like the rest of the trophy case is further down the hallway, but we saw much more of it from a different angle earlier. I think I know what to do. Morty! Holy sh**. What was that foam made out of that it made it so easy for Morty to snap it in half? Oh. I'll have a water. But, but you already have wine. So wouldn't the drink order have already been taken? Or is that the previous table's wine? But why is there wine at the empty tables? What is this restaurant? Look, this is Rick and Morty land, so I'm gonna gloss over the fact that these two 14 year olds are having a first date at this fancy restaurant instead of a f***ing arcade or something. But I refuse to believe that this teenager would leave the house with little to no battery on their phone. That is a step too far, people. 
Hey, Rick, are you familiar with Benoit technology? The assholes behind Rick and Morty continue to make me drop the ball when it comes to resisting the urge to fall into the annals of the internet just for the sake of making sure I understand the whole joke they're making. They're all the bad parts of us, which, by the way, includes our dishonesty. But dishonesty can have positive uses, though. An abundance of honesty can lead to feeling like you have to fill in the comment sections of the internet with all the reasons you hate something, instead of letting people enjoy the things they love. You know, just as a totally random example. No! Is it wrong if I think this is kind of hot? Watching an elder person force a younger person to toxify themselves in a garage experiment? Has Rick and Morty asked us to contemplate morals a bit too far this time? Eh, probably. Did I ask for this, huh? Did I? Assessing threat to groin. Point uses a defensive groin laser if it only deploys after multiple hits to the vegetables have been received. Look, either this doorframe is made of cardboard or Rick's body is made of titanium. And yes, in this world, either could be true. But if I stop sending stuff because it could be true, these Rick and Morty videos would be about five seconds long. Carpet so we could tears by hand. Or hands so strong they tear carpet. Either way, it's a sin. Taping the horse head to the exterior of the frame rather than opening up the frame to subtly attach it to the photo directly. It's pretty disgusting, so you'll have to believe me when I say they forgot to put Rick's dismembered and eviscerated body in this panel. The monster stripping a spine tube thing out of the center of the floor with no Rick, and then suddenly there's a Rick. The random bowl of fruit on the bottom of the table survives this. What did the booger version of you mean when he said he was going to make the whole world toxic? Oh, I'm sure he just left that as a clue so Rick would know where to find him once he figures out how to recombine them both into one being. Villains are super helpful like that. It must be by the individual's own definition of toxicity. The best thing about this episode is that it doesn't just assume that all's well once the things that you believe are toxic about you have been removed. We can all be toxic in ways that we're totally unaware of, and it all comes down to perspective. Damn you, Rick and Morty, for once again having more self-awareness and insight than any cartoon about a belching scientist has any right to be. This moon tower, Morty, <coughs> is the perfect height and metallic composition for the amplification of beaming of toxic energies. Convenient tower fitting the exact requirements of the villain's plan is very convenient. kids. This stock is a beautiful redhead, recently single, not looking to date, but ready to fall in love. Creators of the show went to the extra effort of animating this apple, in case this Jordan Belmort impression didn't quite hit all the asshole notes on its own. Is this organic? Mm. Yes, proclaiming the organicness of your food is pointless, but it isn't Morty chopping this carrot while neither moving the knife onto the carrot or the carrot into the knife levels of pointless. Hey, did you ever want to hold a Terry fold? Thinking that playing a whimsical song will make me hang around for the entirety of the crit. Wait, what the hell is a Terry fold? Why does it make me think of dinosaurs? Is this like a sexy dinosaurs song? How did dinosaurs have sex? <laughs> I suppose carefully is the obvious answer. Wait, is that the end of the credits? Damn it! All right, Morty, you ready for our adventure to the lost city of Atlantis? Rick and Morty not being complete assholes to each other is a pretty clear indicator that we won't be going to Atlantis. And I get that's the point of the episode, but it doesn't make me any less upset that the episode does not contain an adventure to the lost city of Atlantis. Also, we're three seasons in and still no one's picked up this f***ing sock. We're going from reality to reality, asking Ricks to contribute. Charity canvassing. Chanvassing? Hey, the Brits and the Aussies went with charity muggers and then a shortened version of that. So now there's been bad word choices on three continents. You're pitching the policeman's ball to a black teenager here. The smartest man in the universe being aware of the complex and difficult relationship racial and ethnic minorities have with the police, but choosing to use the topic as fodder for his jokes as opposed to actually doing something about it. You don't have to be a dick. I think you know that's not true. When Rick stop being polite and start getting real. We wouldn't dare play the music, but the sin, as always, is Joe Walsh. Eating sardines while driving. Or pretty much ever. Also, drinking and driving. Citadel Morning News. News about the Citadel in the morning. Pretty self-explanatory. When you over-explain things to the different versions of yourself as if you're the asshole. And before you say, what about the Mortys? You and I both know they'll never stop playing with their remote long enough to watch the news. 60 iterations off the central finite curve, there's a Rick that works more with wood than polarity plating. The subtitles on my version say this narrator Sam Elliott when it's actually Jeff B. Davis doing an impression of Sam Elliott. Now whether that's a mistake or a joke, I'm giving it a sin for making me take the time to figure it out. But also, Jeff B. Davis absolutely nails this Sam Elliott impression. And the chemical that makes his brain secrete goes into every simple Rick, simple wafers, wafer cookie. Brain secretion wafer cookies are my least favorite secretion wafer cookies. Come home to the impossible flavor of your own completion. Tagline of my sex tape? The arrow on the this guy needs a plumbus sign is not making it clear as to exactly who needs the plumbus. I love being your new 
farty. Kids. Having an entire factory that only makes wafer cookies. Sure, a factory could put out just one product, but f***ing wafer cookies? How is there a big enough market for those? K83, affectionately known as Cool Rick. K83 doesn't pronounce his name Cool Rick. Just four normal Mortys. Normal? Put it in your blog. Shop owner Morty is suddenly clever enough to make this comeback when a moment ago he wasn't clever enough to give Training Day Rick and Morty any information about the robbery beyond saying they looked like Mortys. The Morty Town Locos! Making your gang name sound Hispanic by adding the word logos to it is like the social science equivalent of adding the word quantum to things to make them more sciency. More lasers. Agreed. How would you solve the Citadel's financial crisis? For a show as consistently outside the box as this one, it's surprising they went with a boilerplate financial crisis as a problem facing the Citadel. I mean, at least give us a financial time crisis. Can we fact check this, please? <laughs> juggling would have been enough, but this one's for attempting to fact check a juggling metaphor. When they dismissed class, everyone but these four just walked out of the room and presumably out of the building using the front door. So why couldn't these four do the same? I see it in our factories, where Ricks work for a fraction of their boss's salary, even though they're identical and have the same IQ. If they all have the same IQ, then why aren't there robot servants doing all the work and thousands of Ricks just sitting around drinking margaritas? Shonies. What else would I send here? Everything else about this scene is perfectly normal. This screen in the back shows all the Ricks running for office and their percentage in the polls, which equals 100. But where's the Morty date and his percentage? Even if he has 0% at this point, he should still be on this screen since he was taking part in the debate. I believe the sin here is Rickscrimination. You gonna lick my balls or what? <laughs> Grandson, you keep me peeling squab squams and slipping nib nibs, I'll lick whatever ain't nailed down. Well, there's just a lot of shit here I'm just gonna ignore for my own sanity and move straight to sinning Rick for Lickscrimination against things that are nailed down. Bandaging your wound on the outside of your clothes. Hey, y'all get the hell away from my damn mega fruit! Mega fruit seeds didn't go up a button this episode. I bet the wishing portal leads to a reality where they're, we're all, where it's a bunch of French toast with boobies. Does the French toast have boobies or are the boobies on the side? I need to know. Slick, why do you have to be so dramatic? Episode has a slick Morty, but no slick Rick. I thought I was left-handed Morty. Then you should use your left hand to eat more vegetables. Lizard Morty would be TV sins Morty at, well, TV sins. Associating food with a hard Rick is not a health code violation in this scene. One dance for 10, two for 25. For a moment, I was worried about shaming autosexuality here, but the longer I spend with this scene, the more certain I become that this is something else entirely. Oh, I want to be a regular kid. Oh, I want to go to school and throw balls around and masturbate. Joe wants me to believe those last two aren't one and the same. We got your portal gun. After he drops the shield, they make a little baby portal to give him the gun. So while he's distracted and the shield was still down, couldn't they have opened multiple portals in the flavor core and surrounded him? A portal to the blender dimension? The one-line pitch responsible for Event Horizon. The factory made cookies, flavored him with lies. Splenda. You have to give up something really important. For me, that's my panini maker. I wish for a million sandwiches. And yes, I see the irony. Not requesting these sandwiches at a specific interval so they don't arrive all at once and spoil. I wish anything about this life would change. The show does the wildest, most nonsensical bullshit and somehow swings it back around to make you feel something cliche. Now is the time for action. Sure, launching the bodies out into space gives us an idea of the devastation Evil Morty can inflict, but it makes little sense in terms of disposal, especially when you've already shown us the giant garbage portal that seems much more suited to the job. Still not curious about what might have happened at that crazy Citadel place? Psh, not at all, Morty. That place will never have any bearing over our lives ever again. Writers, let the audience know that nothing in this show is sacred, and they'll do whatever they please whenever they want, and that includes bringing the Citadel back probably somewhere around the 500th season. Oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Hey. Oh, jeez, man. I hear that. Oh, jeez. But, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, jeez. Come on, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. Rick and Morty run away from the Edward without scissor hands towards the stairs, but then somehow wind up on these set of stairs instead of the ones on the original trajectory. This could be possible, of course, but the show doesn't animate them jumping or rocketing over there, which would have been a lot of fun to see. Also, has this alien planet just randomly heard of MC Escher, or do they just have their own MC Escher? I'm gonna need to walk up a few more impossible staircases to figure this one out. Ah! Well, that's what you get for building your Escher Palace over a space vortex. Morty, let's watch some interdimensional cable. Remember how we used to do that? I do. And if you want to remember, I will show you these two examples of videos you could watch that do not benefit me in any way. I'm just looking out for you. I can't go on. I can't go on like this with the true tortoise shit in my head. I was just thinking this the last time I let a tortoise shit on my head. Wait. 
This, Morty, is my archive of all the experiences you've begged me to remove from your life, lest you go insane. I call them Morty's Mind Blowers. Seems like an impressive amount when you see them all, but how many of them are just simply about Morty forgetting the Mind Blowers room exists? Because Rick would have to erase that memory every time as well, right? Also, Morty's memory manipulation would be more accurate, but Rick is taking the marketing approach here to keep this intriguing. Like calling Botox a rejuvenating enhancement rather than paralyzing injection jabs. Or a piece of shit house a unique canvas ready for creative solutions. This labeling system that appears to depend on the stickiness of the tape. Certainly Rick has the ability to do better than this. Okay, so Rick doesn't give a shit, but why then label it all? Never seen signs of a regular dude, as you describe him, hanging out up there. But Rick does have the technology to take the memory from Morty at this point. So why not look in at Morty's memory and see what he did to confirm the person on the moon or tease Morty endlessly for the rest of his life? Putting brown gravy on mashed potatoes, or really just putting brown gravy on anything. Morty's at least 11 or 12, right? Why are they still learning simple math like 18 plus 10 at his age? Morty took a picture in printable clarity at night? Wait, Morty printed pictures for proof? This is insane. Who prints pictures? Oh my God, what have I done? How did this memory not convince Morty that he'd actually seen a man on the moon? His memory is clear at the beginning and this is obviously a man and not a smudge. Also, this is the same flag on the moon as in the yard. There is no other conclusion to draw from this memory except Morty was correct about the man on the moon. They don't all have titles though. It's not a Simpsons Halloween special. More like a clip show made of clips you never saw. These aren't clips that Morty never saw. These are clips that Morty can't remember, but he definitely saw them at some point or they wouldn't exist. The collector comes to peek into their habitat and spots Rick disassembling a television. Wouldn't this be somewhat alarming? Why would the collector allow the specimens to take apart their environment? Oh, the schematics specify a second, smaller pilot. I mean, they really specify smaller. They have to be exactly five foot three. But why? Morty normally just sits in normal sized seats. What would his height have to do with anything in regards to the schematics? And Rick's making it pretty obvious these idiots are being set up to be stuck in an alien human zoo. How come I was able to see those other people's memories? I, I wouldn't have been around for that. Morty would be nootropic at TV Sins. This very confusing piece of paper that came from an alien but is written in English. Now maybe the paper is designed to translate to be legible to whoever reads it, but then why wouldn't it be written properly with the name capitalized in a period after warrior? Having two glasses of whatever this is while also having a glass of whatever this is. Is that orange juice? Oh, great. Now I'm thinking about OJ with Mexican food, and you can take that flavor combo straight to hell, Rick and Morty. I'm going to go take a quick sh**. So Rick goes to the bathroom and walks away down the hallway. I thought that was odd because I assumed the bathroom doors were here. Then the shot cuts to Floop, and over his shoulder, the sign says the bathrooms are the opposite direction from where Rick went. However, on the wide shot, the arrow is pointed in the other direction, and we're left with nothing but assumptions about where Rick actually went to take a sh**. And honestly, this is probably the most haunting part of the episode. All right, so you want to do this here or outside? I'm not privy to all the Don Cuco establishment rules, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume they don't approve of alien murder in their restaurant during normal operation hours. In the meantime, enjoy a grab bag of mind blowers I call poop aids underscore copy. And by grab bag, he means two. Two scenes does not a grab bag make. You simply have to choose. Summer! Summer. Okay, go with me here. Sure. Beth had that answer at the ready far too quickly. But really, the blame is on this alien for not creating a soundproof torture bubble. Grandpa Rick, there must be some scientific way to save him. The visuals are saying wind. The audio is saying wind. But the lack of wind in anyone's hair other than Morty is saying continuity issue. Well, I guess it's nice to know the whole family sucks. It took you almost three seasons to realize that? Rick opens the door panel by hitting it with his fist. But doesn't he know that shooting door panels is the official way to make sci-fi doors open? For the fun of the show, these two have just wiped almost all of their memories. But all indication is that the Mind Wiper would only wipe one specific memory and not an identity. See those two fleshy sacks under his chin, Morty? Grab them. Not specifying which of the six fleshy sacks you're talking about. We're partners, I guess, and we fight aliens? Like Men in Black? Morty can't remember who he is, but he conveniently remembers the movie Men in Black, where one of the main plot lines was about a device that could wipe out people's memories. Scooping up a potentially compromised memory tube from the broken pile on the floor rather than selecting one of the many pristine tubes from the nearby shelves. Leaving your interstellar laboratory garage door wide open. This audible beep would give Rick all the indicators he needs to know that the machine is being accessed by Morty. There's no way he wouldn't hear it and try to stop him from ruining whatever Morty is inevitably about to ruin. There, I'm done. Just stay out of trouble. Believing this would work. What's the point of going on if most of everything that happens just ends up sitting in here? My thoughts on cloud storage somehow make their way into this episode. 
You guys doing Morty's mind blowers? Asks the ice pop eating sister who conveniently wanders into the garage and enters the bunker only seconds before her family ends the episode with a bang, which is almost as convenient as some are also wearing a key necklace needed to access the panel that will save Rick and Morty. I'm saying this is too convenient and Rick and Morty should be dead. There is no way she consumed each of the steps on that card that quickly, and you should never do step number one without reading all the remaining steps to ensure there's no f***ery regarding step number one in the following steps, especially when step one requires you to shoot people. Also making me say steps too many times. No wonder you're constantly fighting with each other and behind schedule. That's a funny way of saying I should have just kept your memories wiped because you're both assholes. Stop true crime bragging. Comment section of my favorite murder episode somehow makes its way into the show. My generation gets traumatized for breakfast. Kids. Was it my best work? I don't know. Does it deserve to be shit on creatively? Instead of acknowledging how childhood memories can be inaccurate, Rick gets all defensive as if Beth just dropped an everything wrong with Fruity Land video. This calendar with only four days in the week. You know, it collapsed the quantum tesseract. Adding the word quantum to... No. Wait. Adding the word tesseract to... No, that's not it either. Okay, got it. Combining two sciencey words and adding a random verb to create a phrase that sounds like Rick did something impressive. Cliche. Drawing a portal on a mobile door. Based on the trees alone, it's pretty obvious that Rick ripped off Dr. Seuss. And no one gets away with that without a sin in. Dad, you're right. I'm a terrible dad. The terrible dad then goes on to throw himself from the cliff that won't kill him rather than pushing his unsuspecting daughter to her non-death. And that would have really sealed the terrible dad title into place for eternity. A dad makes a toilet look like R2-D2 and it breaks the front page of Reddit. Insinuating that Rick gives a Star Wars-sized about the front page of Reddit. No, no, seriously! This hurts really bad! In that case, you'd think he wouldn't wait until being taken to the nest to take out his gun and shoot the threat. No people saw these two people floating in people-sized bubbles and stopped to take a picture and or follow for the views of the people they would surely garner on social media. Your place looks way less like a crack house. Show doesn't clarify if this assessment is based on first-hand experience at a crack house or some are making assumptions based on TV or some sh**. It's actually clean, like a cocaine house. Show doesn't clarify if this assessment is based on first-hand experience at a cocaine house or Morty making assumptions based on TV or some sh**. I'm simply centered, activated. Writers make Summer suddenly clumsy, as if Jerry isn't annoying enough to show off his powers without provocation. Who wants a smoothie? First off, no one said yes. And second, anyone that does want a smoothie would also like you to put a little more effort into the recipe, and not just put every piece of rinded fruit you have into a blender. Also, Summer and Morty both just stand there and watch Jerry not putting the top back on the blender without screaming, running, or voicing disapproval in any way whatsoever. I'm sure you noticed what she has three of, but guess what she has two of? is a thing that Jerry just said to his children. Are you saying Tommy survived here by having sex with fruity creatures, creating fruity human hybrid offspring, and then consuming their proteins, sustaining himself with an endless cycle of cannibalistic incest? Writers suddenly realize their story's a hair too long and complicated for the show's 20-something minute runtime, so they ham-fist the episode with a bunch of quick-witted exposition wrapped in a plot reveal so disgusting we feel the need to go wash our hands during the commercial break. Dad, do you understand how serious Crutabulon soul bonding is? Nope. And considering it doesn't come up for the remainder of the episode, it's probably not that big of a deal at all. She's got a hot bod like Chitara in Thundercats. If the Thundercats exist in this cartoon universe, would they be considered cartoons? Or by the standards of their reality, would they be considered live action? And if a cartoon universe has its own version of cartoons, wouldn't those cartoons have to be one-dimensional? And what would that even look like? These are the kind of answers I watch Rick and Morty for, and I'm not getting them. After all the time and energy I spent teaching you two about race, you ended up racist. The sin is the writers thinking Jerry would think that he could get away with pretending to think that he could have possibly taught anyone anything. I always find the theater is the best way to clarify things. Somewhere in time, there's a fifth grade version of me watching a performance of The Crucible that would very much disagree. Do you want to see the honey swamp? The same Rick that made the ground bouncy and the water breathable managed to overlook the fact that a swamp filled with honey is many orders of magnitude more dangerous than a regular swamp. I am hungry, and all I could do to pass the time is hump. My dog's inner monologue somehow makes its way into the episode. Leave him alone! <sighs> Gather round, gang! Dinner time! Moments after Tommy has applied his seed, this animal births a new fruity character, and unfortunately the rules of this episode place this sin in the category of meals being prepared too quickly to have been made in accordance with proper food safety measures. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. No one untied Rick's hands. He just slipped out of them to escape. So why not do this before watching the theatric retelling of Tommy's cringeworthy survival plan? But Tommy's still in there ripping Muppets and eating babies! Here's a thing that Beth said in this episode. Look at some of the shit you were asking me to make you as a kid. 
Ray guns. Do they shoot rays or are they named Ray? Or do they specifically shoot only people named Ray? Hey, these are legitimate questions for a show that's willing to introduce a sentient switchblade. A lightning gun. That's just a fancy taser. A taser shaped like a ladybug. That's just a fancy lightning gun. A pink sentient switchblade. Does it being pink make it worse? Then why didn't you specify the colors of the other objects? Hmm, Rick. And why hasn't Rick fixed his boo-boos? Has it occurred to you that I asked you to make those things because I wanted you to spend time with me? Has it occurred to you that your request for these items resulted in a father that actually made them, thereby encouraging your behavior? Take that to your next counseling session. I, I, I think you have to stab them through the heart or something. Says the guy stabbing the creature through the head. So if the alien heart is the head, then Morty should share that specific information with his family to avoid confusion. People should eat people. They should not. And that's why one pussy plus two pussies makes a bunch of pussies. A bunch? At most, this is a clouder, and you know it. Look, I'm not an evil person. I'm just not very imaginative. But doesn't it take imagination to create the lie that your children were responsible for the breakup? I know Jerry makes no sense, but the writing of Jerry not making sense should make sense. Make sense? This calendar with only five days in the week. We wouldn't dare play the music in the background of this touching father-daughter working moment, mostly because it's a song about taking a sh** and the show is trying to make us think it's a metaphor for fatherhood. Did they have this t-shirt just laying around or did they spend time making this? Because it's not easy writing on t-shirts. It takes a lot of time to get the lettering right. So this feels a bit like they wasted time on this instead of rushing to stop the execution. Having more fridge pictures of a child that you do not prefer. None of the Variks chose this moment of distraction to attack the warrior woman who slaughtered their kin yesterday. You just got handed an ex machina. Cliche. We're home. Leaving the front door wide the f open. Arnaldo's isn't closed in the dimension where they didn't invent daylight savings. What would we do without you? Find a pizza place that doesn't close before dinner time, or at least not before the sun goes down. By the way, that wasn't time travel. There were just a couple pizzas on the counter. I grabbed them. Rick has to break the fourth wall to explain something so the internet doesn't explode with fan theories about what the insipid detail of Rick not waiting for pizza means in regard to what is and isn't possible. Yo, Jerry, it's the big R. Uh, I killed that alien that was coming after you. Looking out for you, buddy. Show thinks we would momentarily believe that Rick did something nice for Jerry and not see the I your ex -girlfriend. joke coming from a mile away. You can go ahead and keep that answering machine. Nobody really uses those anymore except for exposition on TV shows anyways. Show cleverly writes its way out of an antiquated joke by expositing its own exposition. But still, exposition. This OSHA violation of an elevator that starts moving before the doors close. Also, discount Daniel Day-Lewis. If they can teleport, why did we take I just the- work here, Steve! Same as you! Look, sometimes the characters in Rick and Morty practically write these videos for me, which actually makes my job harder because I have to get extra nitpicky to justify my existence. Like pointing out that this mail slot was not in the establishing shot of the house that we saw just a few seconds ago. And nobody likes it when I have to do that. Rick, do you need a drink in here? Yes. Not to disregard the obvious alcoholism on display here, but the martini glass is the most spillable adult beverage container ever conceived. And there's been no attempt at displaying any sort of technology that would allow Rick to fall vertically through a portal without spilling his drink. Some kind of alien Guga has infested the Kennedy sex tunnels. The president concludes that it must be alien Guga without testing for chlamydia first. Yeah, that sounds fun. Let's set some boundaries with a spoiled control freak that thinks he runs the world and orders drone strikes to cope with his insecurity. It's or some people call it being a parent. Okay, you're not going to have fun if you analyze everything. Morty underestimates how much I enjoy my job. As far as he knows, we're still in the tunnels. When should we reveal we can see them? The show expects me to believe that Rick wouldn't immediately know that there was a satellite spying on them, or that he wouldn't have some sort of countermeasure in place that would blow it up, turn it into pudding, or evolve it into an AI capable of explaining that building a spy satellite and getting it into orbit is a huge waste of money when everyone has a cell phone in their pocket. I mean, what doesn't look bad through an illegal spy satellite? It's an ice cream. And yes, 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 you save the world now and then, and America returns that favor by not holding the two of you accountable to its laws. Any of them? Any of the laws? Okay, I can see why turning a blind eye to some laws would be necessary when dealing with giant heads that kidnap the planet and other assorted nuisances, but all laws? You're telling me they could go to Arizona, purchase a donkey, and let it sleep in a bathtub with no consequences? The production team makes a banger of a song for a five-second joke, but has the audacity to not make the banger of an album we all pause the episode to search for. Just promise if the results are too strong, you'll use protection. By results, you mean Summer's choice, right? Right? 
How do you like that, Morty? The absence of torches here makes me question why this scene does not contain a Rick and Morty getting blown up by a f***ing creeper that apparated out of nowhere, causing them to lose over 1,000 levels of XP farming and that damn netherite sword that they were saving for just the right occasion. Followed, of course, by having to work their way back from who the f*** knows where to assess the damage and pray to the ender dragon that their carefully plotted cave system has not been flooded or filled with lava. Or, you know, something less specific. South Park did it four years ago, Morty. They're fast. Or we're slow. Me, every time I carefully craft my own version of a meme that I saw while eating breakfast, only to discover it has somehow become a thing, enjoyed being a thing, and is now no longer a thing before my coffee has hit room temperature. Also, South Park did that episode about The Simpsons already doing all the things and how it doesn't matter, so I don't really have an excuse for not making the meme, and the writers don't have an excuse for not giving us a Minecraft episode. The only way using this portal makes sense is if it's a quicker option than the president just flying there. This means the portal would have to already be there, or at least be closer than the president is. But why? Why would it be stationed in Brazil? Do they have one of these things in every country? Aren't they super expensive? And why am I surprised that the government has the ability to waste my money? I made Sanchezium up, dumbasses. Don't believe everything you read on Wikipedia. Well, sh Excuse me while I go and review several hundred of our videos for reasons. I don't doubt a bar like this exists somewhere in the multiverse, but wouldn't it make more sense for the footwear on the Torcosaurus sex to go all the way up to the heel, inverted, secondary knee, whatever it is, this current setup does not look twerkable. What does this, what, 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 what does this mean? This means nothing. Jesus. Pull forward and park. <laughs> Uh, even with all the sci-fi hijinks in this episode, somehow the show finds a way to make one of the funniest moments out of a simple frustration caused by miscommunication. Thank you to everyone involved, and especially Keith David, for bringing this hilarious character to life. Israel and Palestine have announced a permanent ceasefire. What? They signed something called the Pretty Obvious If You Think About It Accord. Rick, proving he could do more to help mankind in an afternoon than anyone else could do in ten lifetimes, but he'd rather dick around in his garage. Cliché. An anonymous American diplomat took them to a Star Wars cantina where they smoked perspective-enhancing alien pheromones through a laser hookah. I see no laser. I demand a laser hookah. Oh, and peace in the Middle East. That too. Your approval rating just hit 100%. It is literally, not figuratively, literally impossible for a president to get a 100% approval rating. Everyone could be rich, healthy, and never exposed to war, and some asshole would still say they have the right to be homeless, unhealthy, and at risk of high-velocity lead poisoning. I was knocking out a deterrent. Everyone wants to be knocked out. Nobody wants to be dead. Zack Snyder explaining why his version of Batman kills bad guys instead of subduing them somehow makes its way into the episode. I'm Doctor Who in this mother. Proclamations of being the doctor do not make you the doctor. And among other things, Rick is approaching the situation much more like a Dalek. I'd love to understand how I can help you. I can't be in charge of that, Jerry. My mind, my ideas are all part of the variable. The only constant is you. This plan only works if Beth is correct in thinking that there's some ineffable quality inside all of us that no clone, no matter how perfect, could ever fully replicate. And while you all sit there insisting you would definitely know the difference if your loved ones were replaced with clones, I'll be chatting to the AI that built the simulation we live in. Senior year, I took you on a date. Skip? And I just thought, f*** it, lips don't sweat. Lips may not sweat, but the face around those lips does sweat. A fact that turned out to be a deal breaker for in my freshman year. Episode makes a weird metaphor about destroying conspiracies surrounding the Apollo moon landing, the Kennedy assassination, and 9-11. At least, I hope that's what they were going for. And we're hiding from you so you don't kill her. If she's a clone, in a place I picked that you will never find. I think Morty is vastly underestimating Rick's ability to track. I'm sure he has ways of scanning for Morty's DNA or an army of drones that scout the entire planet in minutes. Or maybe he could just track the f***ing cell phone that Morty's decided to keep. You're a terrorist. You're an enemy of the state and you kicked me in the balls ten minutes ago. Oh, and all those Secret Service people he killed earlier, but no need to bring that up, I suppose. Invisitroopers, stand down. Why are Invisitroopers with knives preferable to Invisitroopers with lasers? I hope I could be of service if uh, you ever find the planet to be in danger. Friends? Sounds good to me. The president thinks he's making a deal with a Rick from another universe, but what makes him think that fly fishing Rick would be any better than regular Rick? He could be just as murdery and insubordinate, but with the added annoyance of being one of those people with a passion for something. Hopefully you didn't just f*** around and waste your life. Ooh wee. Making us think Mr. Poopy Butthole is going to be a fun callback, then tricking us into reflecting on all our poor life decisions. 
I've spent a lot of time on the Smith breakfast table, and for good reason. But does the Smith family really strike you as the kind of family that gets up at the same time to have breakfast together and prepare this kind of spread? Which part of any of these non-Jerry people is the part that's like, ooh, can't miss the good old family breakfast tradition? My inherent love for sentimentality and routine will not be denied. Also, if you're making a breakfast that has pancakes, toast, and what looks like mashed potatoes with rice sprinkled on top of it, but I'm hoping is grits, then you do not need all these what I'm graciously going to call hash browns. I trust no one in this room because not a single one of them is drinking coffee. And this isn't caffeine moderation shaming. What's going on here is a statistical impossibility. To those who rushed out and grabbed the Yasika Insta handles, all I have to say is that your commitment to mimicry and parody of this character has been underwhelming. This sin is on your hands. Hi, I've placed an auto response chip in my brain so I can spend time with my family. What kind of lousy auto response chip responds by declaring it's an auto response chip? A terrible auto response chip, that's what. I need death crystals from Forbojalon Prime. Show will never explain what makes the death crystals from Forbojalon Prime better than any other death crystals. And if you're going to say they only exist on Forbojalon Prime, then we never find out why Rick, who cares about nothing, cared about name dropping this planet. Dad, you hardly put any syrup on. Honey, stop raising your father's cholesterol so you can take a hot funeral selfie. But isn't Summer's logic a bit off here? She just said that the reason funeral selfies are hot is that grief reddens the cheeks, but who's grieving at Jerry's funeral? Why are they called death crystals? Do, do they kill you? You're thinking of bullets, Morty. While bullets are technically crystalline solids, this punchline probably should have been reserved for jokes about death metal. Death crystals show you how you're gonna die. Then I hereby submit they should be called cause of death crystals. Also, Expirite was right there. The contrived nature of these rocks is immediately forgiven because of how much thought went into coming up with and animating all the amazing possible Morty deaths in this episode. People that spend their life avoiding death are already dead. And what's dead may never die. So what, are people that spend their dead lives living death quantum entangled? See, I can sci-fi up some random shit too. The idea of using the Expirite as some sort of morbidity divining rod is interesting and all, but no, I'm not buying it. Even if you did catch a unified glimpse of your demise, every micro movement would completely change the possible outcome in a way that would render it no longer valid and impossible to recover. I thought you were masturbating! And you took that in stride? You'd rather I address it? It's not so much that I'd rather you did, it's just that it seems pretty in character for you to do and nothing has stopped you from doing it before. I'm willing to accept that you're doing this if you're willing to accept that you need to stop. Title of my sex tape? It appears as if the Smiths collaborated with their next door neighbor on this fence since it crosses both yards and I refuse to believe there's any universe where next door neighbors get along well enough to accomplish this feat. Operation Phoenix initiated. Something, 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 cloning callback, something, something, Rick's pixelated <laughs> Improv the rest is how I'm guessing this scene was written. But you are down with fascist dystopias, right? If you have to ask, your question is obviously more about dramatic reveals than your commitment to extremely problematic political ideologies. Sitting on the nasty floor of a school hallway leaning against the lockers. This is your respite? Eh, I don't have to be anywhere in the next few minutes. You know where I'm gonna plop down for conversation? Staphylococcus Central, that's where. Throw that thing in the garbage. Stop planning your own death and talk to whoever you want. Rick steals the exact words I told my younger siblings about their paper fortune teller. Oh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, see also Chatterbox, Flipper Flapper, Salt Cellar, Whirly Bird, Paku Paku, or Cootie Catcher. Stop doing meta commentary. He says meta commentary -ally. Being so worried about scientific accuracy that you make space completely silent when you know your audience would rather hear the Nazi Morty choking to death. Get out of here, Stop Morty. asking Too stupid questions, Morty. Get the f*** out of like here. Sound like a piece of sh**. These shrimple ricks yelling at Morty because verbal abuse is fun. Does your house look like a tree or? No, it looks like this. It's like identical to this, actually. Rick and Morty hang a lantern on a logical inconsistency, thinking that will somehow keep us from sinning it as if they've never seen one of our videos before. Come on, just admit you watch TV sins already. Um, cliche? I'd remove a sin if I could say for sure that this sign meant no flossing, but I can't, so instead I need to write you up for improper signage. You're bad at math, but I'm giving you an A plus in confidence! Americans. Wait, isn't that the same student that was sitting on the floor earlier? Are you telling me that wasn't even their locker they were in front of? You sat down and leaned on someone else's locker? Who does that? Only if the events of the Pixar movie Coco are to be believed, which I doubt! Coco deniers. I certainly have questions about how or why holograms eat, but the show is of course touching on that just enough to pretend like it actually means something, so instead I'll ask how this holotech is powered and where it's physically distributed from. The show gets a lot of credit for thinking through its theoretical concepts, but when it comes to technology it lives firmly on Yada Yada Avenue. Will you just show me how to stay alive? Morty is now asking Hollow Rick to help him not die instead of consulting the Death Stone, even though Hollow Rick helping him not die was not presented as an option by the Death Pebble. Show is all over the place when it comes to how committed Morty is to following his new sedimentary god. Bist du fascistisch? Nope. <laughs> 
First up, I think this is a very funny recurring gag, which is something I never thought I'd say about fascism. Second, the writers made a teddy bear Rick because of course that's funny, but they also made him mortal in the same way a human would be mortal, instead of giving him soft and cuddly innards as we would expect. The commitment to Teddy Rick was less than that of Pickle Rick, who was a pickle all the way through, and that's just unacceptable. Bringing a chain to a horny teenager with a death crystal fight. Oh, the air's getting thin. It is not. Sure, I'm enjoying the every Rick, every Mort, all at once-ness of it all, but how is he able to so quickly identify which path leads to Jessica when up until now he had to take time to zero in on it? Shield me from the law! Cool, two Meeseeks callbacks in the same episode, but wouldn't these Meeseeks have immediately shielded him from the law, thereby accomplishing their task and consequently disappeared? Ow! Our v v v t t t time? Really? Getting all the sounds correct on the first or second shot? There are 44 different phonetic sounds in English, Morty. 40 f***ing four! He loves you, little sparrow. He's innocent. Case dismissed. The U.S. justice system. And I think we're just about ready to forgive him and move past this whole thing. He's a free young man, and as far as continuity goes, the reset button's been hit. What the f***? Did you just try to tell the audience that none of what Morty is doing in this episode matters as it relates to the broader storyline? Oh, it matters. And this is not the last time you will be hearing about it. Oh, it's nice to know it's also 2 p.m. in every other universe as well. I was beginning to think this clock was just broken. We eat our prey alive, and when we don't, we lay our eggs in their eyeballs so that our young can feast on their brains when they hatch. Nope. 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 Not looking that up. Here's a sin for just making me think about it. So what are these wasp nests for if you furnished a human type house? And why is there a collectible plate on display if you don't even use plates in the first place? Does no one on this show care about the important things? Where's my boglin? There you are. Don't worry, Pop Pop's back. Goosing the boglin market directly after I sold my 1987 Schlurp for a measly 30 bucks. All that's left are these Kirkland brand Meeseeks boxes. Kirkland shaming. Ah, wasp! It's funny because he can't be stung. But it's also not funny because he's been spouting off all episode about being a hologram. So we know that he knows that 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 he knows that he knows Excuse me. That he's not able to be stung. And that's only because of all the fourth wall breaking. I can feel! I have mass! For reasons! Whoa, that was fast. Dare I say too fast and only because the episode is ending soon? The runtime should never dictate the rate of pupation. There's a lesson here and I'm not the one that's gonna figure it out. Is it that Rick and Morty will do just about anything to make sure they hit their gratuitous gore quota? Am I close? Okay, fine, I'll take the assignment seriously. The lesson is that as humanity becomes more and more reliant on technology to sustain us, we're also more at risk of those same technologies also killing us. And while it's more likely to be a dispassionate accident, we don't really know what we're doing and one day maybe it will be malicious. There, not saying I won't do your job for you, but you aren't gonna like my consulting fee. I don't wanna see any more anime stuff. The comment section when I tried to send my hero academia somehow makes it into the episode. What you ruined the, the season four you? premiere. It was already ruined from the second you decided to take over two years after season three to bring us any new Rick and Morty and you know it. We're out of syrup. There's clearly some syrup at the bottom of that bottle. Might take some elbow grease, but I have faith you'll get at least a stack of pancakes worth out of there. More importantly though, the bottle's just sitting at the table without a cap on, and there's no cap we can see on the table. Where did that cap go? Is the syrup even good anymore now that it's been exposed to the elements? Is there air? You don't know. Maybe I'll use my intern, Glutey. Glutey arrives from off screen as if he appeared out of a f***ing portal, syrup in hand. But how did he know that Rick was even in need of syrup? I mean. Maybe Rick staged this so he could introduce his intern, but how did he know the syrup wasn't gonna run out before it got to him? And why does he even care about introducing the intern other than to set up an underwhelming B plot? Oh. Also, the syrup bottle Glutey is using doesn't have a f***ing lid on it either. What does his family do with the lids? Are they monsters? Now if you'll excuse me. Wait, he just dragged his poor intern in to syrup his pancakes and now he's just going to f off? Feels like Rick went to the every CEO ever school of treating interns. When Grandpa Rick pats his belly like that and leaves without Morty, it means he's going to go poop. I guess it's that time of day when we send that Rick isn't using his portal gun. He doesn't have a problem using it later in the episode, and I don't know about you, but when I realize it's time to drop the kids off at the pool, the last thing I want between me and the community center is a car ride. Honey, why can't you get this excited about your SATs? Asking this instead of wondering why Summer knows so many specifics about her grandfather's Hershey squirts. Well, I'm man enough to simply say I'm going to poop. Defining your masculinity by a willingness to announce your readiness to sit the porcelain throne when you're barely competent enough to be defined as sentient. Assuming that Rick sinks the Bismarck once a day like a regular human, that is regular. 
right? Wouldn't this path be well-trodden? I suppose this could be a magically regrowing field slash meadow slash macroscopic cilia farm, but I refuse to keep filling in the narrative gaps in this show until I get an official writing credit. Reverse digestion extrapolation. Here's a sin for the several minutes I spent trying to imagine slash sketch the anus that would make the geometry of this pre-owned nutrient log possible. Time to meet your maker. Nice try, but time to meet your eater would be far more accurate. I can't see how there's any way of knowing ahead of time that the maker was the eater. Also, how is the turd pewter only picking up on the sandwich? Shouldn't it be a selection of, well, other sh too? What are you guys doing? Did you develop an app? But if Gluty already had the app design handy, what exactly did he need Jerry for? If this is his species way of stealing water from the planet, why not just develop the app immediately? What's the point of all this do you want to develop an app pomp and circumstance? Rule number one in app development, son. Never follow the rules. Except when the rule is tattooed on an alien's forehead, Dad! Why do you think Rick would have that rule? Morty would be excellent at TV sins. But the sin here is that Rick should have known this was a likely possibility and should have either A, found a syrup delivering intern without a don't develop my deadly app caveat, or B, not left said intern with the primordial smegma film that evolution deemed necessary to give the most basic self-awareness to called Jerry. Guys, we're getting our first users. And it just happens to be summer because coincidence, thy name is Rick and Morty. This new app just matched me with a guy that is Sue Mai Tai. Super my type, learn to abree. Beth wasn't f***ing asking you what you meant, Summer, so there was no need to explain. And how is the explanation ten times more irritating to hear than the thing you said? Alls, kid. Your Sue Ty works at Jersey Mike's and sees 25 fish shows a year. Then Danny must be independently wealthy because tickets, along with all the drugs you would have to purchase for 25 fish shows, aren't cheap. This world cares too much about bands and too little about love. And I think I love you. Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, 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 Tommy. Just sitting the fact that any menu claiming to have the best frog food would advertise this basic ass sandwich and not its flice cream, cheese bugger, or anchovy pizza. Dad, give the human whatever he wants. He knows where I live. He's crazy. You have 470,000 messages. We're just left to imagine how Rick was able to find and leave voicemails with 470,000 flies and just accept that it happened. Even if he managed to automate some of the voicemails, how is this his best option? If he's not afraid of murdering child flies, why is the far more convenient decision to torture this adult fly not top of the list? You f***ing idiot. I have 800,000 kids. Thinking the amount of children one has coincides with how many they're willing to let die. I mean, it totally does, but we're not supposed to announce that to the world. I'm not arguing that being hit by a car isn't an effective form of contraception, but it sure does feel like dealing with the splinter in a finger by removing the entire arm. Had you bothered to master love, you would have learned by now it is as abundant as water. You know what isn't? Water. So we'll be taking yours. Oxymoronic expositioning aside, expoxymoronishing? We've got an aliens come to Earth to steal our resources cliche. I scoping for this bit then? Crockneys. My wife's still alive. She, she, she went into remission 10 years ago. What did you do today? Oh, I uh, pooped on a really awesome toilet I found. Wait a f***ing minute. Let's talk about the villain's plan here. Rick just found and traveled to an alternate universe to find a Tony who used his toilet despite his wife still being alive and then dragged him in front of this universe's Tony to prove he's lying. Putting aside the fact that he found the perfect Tony in a matter of seconds, what the f*** does that even prove? Unless Rick can say that every Tony in every universe makes this choice regardless of circumstances, this doesn't prove sh so next time you stumble onto a toilet that feels too good for your ass, trust me, it is. But how did Tony even find the damn thing in the first place? And why didn't Rick have any sort of defense or shield or f***ing laser beam that turns you inside out and teleports you into the final days of a civilization that prides itself on flaying any and all visitors with a lime-soaked cheese grater before they fall into the abyss of a black hole? I think he'd get a kick out of that. I suppose we can add allowing your anus to give the finger to an alien to the list of defecatophores? After you left, I thought about what you said and how much I needed to skip. You rang. I'm pooping too. This is not how you're supposed to poop. Either that or God knows something about pooping we don't. Regardless, I'm torn, grossed out, and very confused. Come poop with me. Poop with me, Tony. Aren't you going to join us in the pooping? Tony, how's the pooping? Tony, how's the pooping? Tony, 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 Tony. You can make a perfectly realized toilet-filled simulation of heaven, but you can't share a toilet. Tony would be the king of his own throne at TV Sins. 
I get that this drawing is likely gibberish, chiefly because Jerry drew it, but at some point I have to wonder how even his lonely brain cell doesn't realize the futility of its actions. Like, why spend the time drawing a portal gun you don't possess, a grandpa that isn't here, or a baseball bat you don't have? Come on, adventures of Jerry and Morty. Okay. Premature, Jerry is a burden to the oxygen he breathes and didn't even deserve this pity five vibration. Summer! F***ing thing! Yeah, but I'm assuming you chose this f***ing thing as your method of locomotion, so what the f*** were you expecting here? Where's your daughter? Ah, you're right. She joined ISIS. We've got ISIS jokes, y'all. That's what I thought, Glutie. Looks like you and I are all we've got. Well, this worked out conveniently enough for Jerry that I'm awarding it 10 sins. Then those 10 sins will be awarded their 10 sin matches, which they will then cheat on each other with the other 10 sins. You know what? Just add the damn sins already. Mother That's my name, don't wear it out. Is it though? I mean, it's not beyond the realm of what the show's capable of, but that feels more like a season six style of episode. Considering the presence of Sam Neill, Jeffrey Wright, and Taika Waititi, I'm genuinely shocked that this scene does not contain a Ted Danson. Also, look, I'm not one for promoting infidelity, but if Ted Danson wants you to cheat on your husband, then you cheat on your husband. That is Ted Danson, people. This episode is 37% defecation, and honestly, I'm pooped out. Enjoy using it all by yourself while you sit there and think about how nobody wants to be around you. However, only Rick and Morty could turn the act of decorating porcelain into a beautiful metaphor about how hoarding precious things is not as fulfilling as we believe, and that true joy is in the sharing of said things with the people you love. And for bringing that home by making Rick suffer through his own booby trap, I shall happily allow the sin counter to drop a deuce. An alien spider just bit my finger! It's an alien cliff, you can just say spider. Yes, but the spider's still alien from Morty's point of view. It'd be pretty confusing if Morty found an earth spider on this mountain, so specifying its alien origin feels pretty warranted. Everyone knows that pedantry is more fun when it's safe for the really important stuff, like critiquing self-aware cartoons on the internet. Also, this episode opens with a pretty clear Star Trek V The One With God reference, which has led us to using this side-by-side -side comparison to prove it, which has led to all of us watching more Star Trek V The One With God than we ever need to, which has, rather fittingly, led to sin. Activate anti-booby suit. Will I be sinning this scene because it uses the phrase anti-booby even though I know for a fact it's talking about booby traps and not actual boobies? Yes. Look, we all like saying booby, but someone has to nip these inaccuracies in the bud. Also, great idea, but what if this place contained traps that didn't rely on projectiles? Would these suits have been useful against disappearing bridges, quicksand, or those irritating statues where one always speaks the truth and the other one always lies? More like trying too hard con. Or more like trying too hard to come up with an insult for the heist con that is trying too hard con, or something con. Guests are fans, Morty, which we are not. Guests don't have to be fans. In fact, there are plenty of people out there who attend things or watch movies they know they'll hate so they can give themselves something to complain about, which honestly fits Rick to a f***ing T. I'm not one to judge based on physical appearance, but the fact that this individual's eye is not fully connected to their body is giving me all of the heebie-jeebies, and I would like it to stop, please. Thanks for doing this, guys. What's the job? That was it. Bye. I would say I feel bad for Glar, Angie Flint, and Trucula, but they chose to show up at the location without even knowing what the job was, so that's kind of on them. It's showtime, Morty, and I don't mean a bad impression of HBO. Yellow Jackets, Twin Peaks The Return, and the first six seasons of Dexter would like to have a word with you. Lab coat, rip off Doctor what? Strange. If Rick actually developed a sentient lab coat, then I guess he's kind of ripping off Doctor Strange, but also, Rick developed a sentient lab coat? Why isn't he using that more often? Your booze mean nothing, I've seen what makes you cheer. Reason I'm able to read YouTube comments somehow makes its way into the script. It doesn't make things interesting, it makes them Ocean's 12. By far the worst one. I'm just gonna go ahead and send myself for liking Ocean's 12. I have no good excuses. I just love watching people enjoy European vacation. Gonna go ahead and give myself a sin for liking National Lampoon's European vacation as well. Oink oink, my good man. Half of Knightley's eight are just three of Sanchez's five. That's not how math works, Morty. Well, no heist is complete without a double cross. Okay, maybe Knightley predicted Rick would take the bait at the tomb, which would result in the heist off. But how could he have known Rick's team would be so willing to portray Rick? Especially when Rick has a reputation for murder. <laughs> what the? Hi. What the sh? What are you doing here? I'm you, but from several minutes in the future. Look, this episode gets mighty confusing if you don't know how it ends, so I'm here to set you straight when needed. Makes sense, but what's with the weirdly deep announcery voice? Don't worry, that'll make sense later. The important thing is that these three were specially selected by Rick because he knew they'd betray him, so I guess just do the thing where we send the show for the time we wasted writing a sin that it later disproves. See ya. Okay, uh, yeah, what he slash I said and i had the perfect job heisting 
the Crystal Skull. He got the skull already. Looks like Rick and Morty left their crew and went straight to see Knightley on stage. So how did Knightley have enough time to recruit Rick's heister, set the heist in motion, and... <laughs> Again? Already? Sorry, buddy. We're about to see there's a huge time gap between Rick and Morty leaving the crew and then them turning up a nightly show, and that's when all the heisting happens. We're better off saying that there's no way Knightley could have known Rick was going to dick around for a few hours before coming to see him, which is the only way Knightley had enough time to pull off the heist. Okay, thank you, but wouldn't it be better to just lay all this out now and save some time? Bye! Looks like you're available for a job. Rick and Morty literally just left. Could Knightley not have waited until they were at least out of earshot? Okay, let's take a second to talk through this heist. Glar steals some keys and hands them off to Keycatcher, who hands them off to Double Microwave, who, well, microwaves them as a distraction to presumably clear out security. But couldn't he have microwaved anything metal? Why did they have to go through the effort of stealing the specific set of keys? Did the shapeshifter just shapeshift in front of the damn camera? I don't care if the crew is in charge of the surveillance room now. That's still recorded footage of their actual identity. Why even risk it? Do that sh off screen. We're smart. We'll figure it out. Also, they turn into the security guard, give the thumbs up, and the next thing that happens is that Monitor Lord switches off the lasers, allowing Angie to steal the skull. Why the f*** does the crew need a security guard at this point? Ugh. I'm trying to figure out how Miles didn't know by the weight of the attache that there wasn't a crystal skull in it. I'm not saying he should have known it was a recent deuce Rick dropped, but the stench alone should have given something away. God damn it, Morty, what did I tell you? You gave him a time limit that he needed to pay attention to, but this is also the kid that said, Half of Knightley's eight or just three of Sanchez's five. So I'm pretty sure you should have been the one checking the clock, Rick. Write an algorithm based on two heist movies I slept through and use it to automate a joyless process you call art? Rick clearly has an issue with the heist genre being overly formulaic and predictable, but sometimes it's that very predictability that brings people the comfort and joy they need from their movie watching experience. We don't all have to like the same stuff and we don't all have to agree. Except for Army of the Dead. F*** that movie. Somehow, no one in this long line catches on to what's happening until all of them get hypnotized. Look Morty, I did not know that that was gonna happen. That's not on me. That's not how homicide law works. Wait. Told you, Morty. He still got it. Oh, come on. The entire universe is in danger, and yet Rick took the time to recruit all of these students to set up this attack just to prove that Professor Poopy Butthole has... <laughs> Damn it. What now? Hey, I'm with you on this one, but they're going to make the same point in the post credit scene and steal our thunder, so I think we'd better send them for leaning on callbacks to characters no one likes. But I like Mr. Poopy Butthole. No, you don't. Are you Ventriloquimer? In this episode alone, we've seen Rick block a hammer with a sudden robot arm, but a f***ing arrow hits the mark. How? I'm sure it's not the show sacrificing its integrity just to show us a unique superpower. Rick Sanchez, I presume. Damn it, guys. Elon Tusk, listen, we need your help. Rick, Morty, why me? Elon Musk. <laughs> Oh, for, look, what could possibly be wrong here? The sin is quite clearly- Whoa there, steady on, no objections here at all. I just wanted to come back and send this one again. Oh, cool. Elon, Elon Musk, Musk cameos. cameos. At this point, Heistatron has become large enough to heist entire planets. But is it even heisting anymore? Everyone on this planet knows that they're being heisted. Are we supposed to believe that there's no way to scale up a heist to a planetary level that doesn't just involve making all the gadgets bigger? At this point, it isn't heisting. It's just breaking and entering with a sprinkling of genocide. Instead of two heist movies I slept through, Randotron's algorithm is derived from the plots of three David Lynch movies I pretended to like to make my friends shut up. For me, the crucial question here is which three David Lynch movies? I think it's only fair that we're told where on the spectrum between Dune and Blue Velvet this is going to be, so we know the best way to pretend we've seen either one. If our collective behavior is just random enough, we should be able to walk through Heistatron's lazily contrived bullshit like it's not even there. But even choosing to be random is a plan. If the end goal is to out-heist Heistotron, relying on randomness will either be so random that you never get to the desired outcome, or not be random enough to not be predicted by Heistotron. I don't like these little jabs you get in, Elon. Signed, literally all of Twitter. Surprisingly, my issue here isn't the consumption of diapers, but the fact that this box specifies fresh suggests there is a not fresh diaper alternative on sale. The most unbelievable part of this episode is that Morty's room would be this clean. I've got something to tell you. Let me guess, when you invented me and Randotron, you swapped our brains? If he knew Heistatron was going to go rogue, why does he even need Randotron? Why couldn't he even just program to fail safe into Heisto- <laughs> Here we go again. Buddy, believe me, I am with you, but the next five minutes are going to get super f 
fucking weird, and I'm still not certain how many switcheroos actually make sense, and honestly, I'm not sure the show does either. Let's send it for Rick labeling these brains and then immediately switching the labels just for the purposes of the flashback that Heistertron can't see to compensate for a switcheroo Rick couldn't possibly have predicted. <laughs> what? Well, if the brain inside of you is actually Heistatrons, it matters because it explodes when it hits six levels of contrivance. I mean, could he not have made it four and saved us all some time and migraines? Well done, Rick. Randotron? I'm afraid not. But if Rick built both machines, how the f*** did it manage to switch out its own motherboard? And why did it need to bother with this earlier switcheroo? Also, if this is Heistotron, that means this was Randotron, which means it shouldn't have blown up after that sixth contrivance. Because I programmed you to believe that. I programmed you to believe that. I programmed you to believe that. Robot kids. What's happening, Professor Poopy Butthole? He's learning. I think it's fair to say that nothing within this rambling incoherence could be considered learning. In fact, I would argue that we're all dumber for having experienced it. Ricky Mortison should be awarded no points and may God have mercy on our souls. It appears the only perfect heist is one that was never written. Goodbye. Rick and Morty writers create a paradox they have no idea how to solve, so they blow it up, deny its existence, or banish it to an alternate reality cliche. Well, you know that screenplay that I've been writing? Netflix is pretty interested. Oh, Morty, 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 I'm so excited for you. Wait, is Rick being sincere right now? About a Netflix deal? <laughs> what is... <laughs> okay, last one, I promise. We're about to find out that Rick put this adventure into motion just to disillusion Morty and make him sour to his own high script. However, I think we're safe to send him for the many, many, many millions of people that had to die just so that Rick could crush his grandson's passion for a project. Oof, that's messed up. Even for Rick. Right? See you at the sin removal. <laughs> Wait, uh, the what now? Well, let, let's hear about this heist movie. Okay, so it's kind of all, all built around this big crew with like a cool double cross and then this big awesome twist. Expecting us to believe that Netflix didn't greenlight this at OK and then cancel it by awesome twist. If Morty ever gives up on a single dream, it had better be because of his own disillusionment. Somehow Rick and Morty manages to pull off sending everything tropey and cliche about heist movies while also inceptioning itself into an excellent homage of an example of how to do the genre in a unique and satisfying way. Oh, and, and on that sin removal, I guess it's time to head back and make sure past me doesn't make a bigger ass of myself than usual. I still don't understand the deep voice thing, but better safe than paradox, am I right? I got a date with density. <laughs> These aliens, not knowing that even with the sleek design and increased lethality, these space blasters will never be able to strike both fear and love into our hearts like the original Super Soaker. Chachi! Chachi Morty! F you, Rick! We get it. You don't care about anyone or anything. And I don't care about you not caring about anyone or anything. And the person viewing this video doesn't care about me not caring about you. Not, not caring, caring about anyone or anything. Justice for Chachi. Did you get the ultimate cube? Is anyone else thinking about cube squared hypercube? It has nothing to do with this episode, but neither does this MacGuffin. I mean, cube. Also, now I'm just upset we never got cube cubed ultimate cube because someone decided cube zero was a better idea. F***ing cubes. I mean, prequels. I want my dragon! I want my dragon! I want my dragon! Kids. The convenient trajectory of this out-of-control fall to planet Earth where they land close enough to be discovered and taken to a hospital that somehow knows to contact their family without anyone questioning the whole space travel part. Or Rick and Morty survive this. You choose. Your ship crashed in Malta. Beth points out that Rick's ship entered Earth's orbit and crashed onto an archipelago in the central Mediterranean Sea between Sicily and the North African coast. Known for historic sites related to a succession of rulers, including the Romans, Moors, French, British, and the Knights of St. John. Like, that's the weirdest thing about this situation. Ugh, I'm okay. Says the man whose body is in a cast, but more concerningly, whose fingers are outstretched and unbending at the joints. Rick just regained consciousness and his hanging bag of water isn't connected to anything. If I've learned one thing from medical dramas, it's that unconscious people always have a straw going from the hanging bag of water to their arm. I'm not co-bleeding. My sister trying to argue her way out of menstrual synchrony at summer camp somehow makes its way into this episode. Also, no one in the neighborhood ever sees any of these things. Ever. My name is Baltramar. Breaker of sky, slayer of mountain. If you have to announce that you're slaying it, you're probably not slaying it. And unless dragons are the main contributor to climate change, then I'm gonna say that Balthrama has broken more wind than sky. I'm guessing you'd rather not be tagged in this. Is... is she talking to the dragon from another dimension right now? Does she think he would be linked on social media? Or even know what that is? 
I want you to take us to the airport and get us two first-class tickets to Florida. Cats thinking they can just show up in Florida whenever they're looking for a good time, like it's their own personal playground. As far as states go, it deserves a little more courtesy than Ohio. I want to enter my lair and sleep upon my hoard until the age of man expires. Mondays. What's this show called? Ass? They solve ass crimes. This ass is a clue. Go to her ass! Go to Brenner ass! I love you, ass. Should I pause ass? Show passes ass for all the gluteous amounts of some butt. Oh! And that's the end of the Morty Gets a Dragon episode. It is not. I hoard that which your kind covets. But not everyone covets this specific drink, so the dragon could essentially collect any random thing simply because some people like it. Also, why would the Ecto Cooler drink be considered something to covet when it was in production for so long? It's not like it was rare. It was produced for years. Small soldier spin pops. Rick loves pop culture things from the past to make him more relatable cliche. Hey, why do you have Future's self-titled album on vinyl? Rick loves pop culture things from the present to make him more relatable cliche. He signed it in Molly and Percocet. A mixture I can only imagine is something akin to oil pastels. We all know that would never really dry. These beach umbrellas that are not anchored and would absolutely be blown around the beach, flip up with the wind, and knock an unfortunate passerby unconscious. Not that I have any experience minding my own f***ing business on a sandy stroll only to be woken up minutes later by a half-naked sunburned man chuckling about probabilities. Why and who? It was him. Right, but she also asked why someone in the sand. So is everyone going to just ignore that? What if his reason was so profound that everyone decided to join in and bury their shit on the beach? What does it mean it when- means you're lame. Morty just summoned a Taylor Swift concert. Likely a live one in summer thinks that's lame? That's a free concert. <laughs> Forcing a caged animal to free its mind with drugs. And yes, I'm assuming the drugs are mind expanding in some way, but even if they aren't, why f with a creature that is f with enough as it is? Bonding. Why does it feel better now? Oh, I hope it's not because you're watching, but don't go anywhere. He is a thing that Rick says to his grandkids in this episode. Your dragon soul bonded with my grandpa! Oh my, I am so sorry. That is a total violation. Yeah, no sh**. How would Morty know that the dragon shouldn't soul bond with more than one person at a time? Why wouldn't the wizard know that a dragon can soul bond without warning? See, people, this is what happens when no one reads the fine print of the blood bonding contracts that we agree to without a thought. Grandpa, you do something, that. or I will tweet and you will be canceled. Show treats this as a credible threat without giving us the slightest idea of how you cancel a Rick. And even if it were possible to cancel your Rickscription, we all know he would just f*** off to some new dimension where he hasn't been canceled yet. It takes like 78 years to hang a dragon. What an odd thing for Morty to know. I assume he knows the length of time it would take to hang a dragon because of the book he's reading. So I could also say, what an odd fact to have inside the Tome of Dragon Spells and Lore. Summer, make it look like it's coming out of your butthole. He is a thing that Rick just said to his granddaughter in this episode. Yeah, yeah. Despite this agreement, it does not look like the arrow came out of her butthole. And any attempt to achieve this seems to have been primarily done by the camera operator and not Summer. Power of 12 feet! <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I would laugh so hard at the simple visual gag of Rick getting his ass kicked. <laughs> and there's wizard porn in the background. <laughs> oh, Rick and Morty, you, you take my breath away. And if the goal is to make something up, why not make up something funnier? That cat would have a point if it listened to the remainder of the bro dude's explanation of what a peanut butter gargoyle actually is. It could have been hilarious, and for that reason alone, I'm angry that the cat interrupted. <sighs> Guess I'll never fully understand this totally made-up hilarious sex position and its correlation to statues and mashed peanuts. Stupid cat. Aw, why can't couples that start out cheating ever end up happy? Did Rick know he was cheating? Their night of fun seemed to explode into accidental bonding and not intentional cheating. And sure, Rick would have cheated anyway, and we all know it, but this didn't seem to be that sort of situation. They were both surprised by it. How about finding the spell that unbinds me from your f***ing dragon? No spells can do that. Only the wizard can unbind soul bombs. Uh. Yes, and the primary tools of wizards are spells. But instead of arguing that, I'll just say that two minutes later, they all agree that killing the wizard can break the bond. So either way, this statement is untrue. Yeah, we like it down here because we can f*** woolly mammoths. Get out! Before watching this episode, I never really thought about woolly mammoth erotica, but knew it wasn't a thing. And now thanks to the writers and the internet, I have confirmation that it is in fact a thing. So this sin is for humanity's boundless creativity and the fact that we found ways to use it that can simultaneously inspire wonder and evoke fear. It's high time I emerge from my cocoon. Puberty. So killing the wizard will break my soul bond. Yes, it solves all of our problems. In a rush to get on with the dragon f 
and show glosses over all the important questions related to this resolution, like f***ing how or f***ing why. Maybe don't tell your parents we did this. Why wouldn't he? Morty didn't agree to this experience at all. He was actively looking for a way out of it without having to soul bond with nine other beings. He should talk to someone about this violation of his person and entirely too early exposure to the pleasures of interspecies bonding. Wait, why did the dragon come? Because you soul f***ed him? And have a soul orgy with your sister and grandpa and every dragon we could find, yeah? Is a thing. Uh, Cindy, do I really have to complete this one or do you get the point? Cool. Thanks. No, look, I just want to be clean. I, I, I feel dirty after everything that's happened. How about a quick hand bond? This moment of pressuring a kid into any number of sexual soul bonding scenarios goes on for all of these should be jailed amounts of some time. I'm from outer space. Happy? No. Exactly, because no answer would be satisfying. Writers use this cat as a proxy in their attempt to gaslight me into thinking my need for answers is what has left me unsatisfied by this episode and not the boner-killing dragon cest. Get out! Get out! <laughs> I'm not sure why Rick doesn't just kill this cat for whatever it did. He just went through and murdered all the wizard's guards, even the ones that were just reading a book. Why did the writers draw the line at murdering a horrific alien cat creature that causes Rick to consider suicide? It's for the post credit scene, isn't it? Does it feel like you're whipping me? Do something! Slut thief! You're a slut thief! A slut dragon! Also a slut! We are the slut dragons. Slut caves. Slut dragons! Be sluts up there! All dragons are sluts. Enough sluts. Fresh wet sluts. Ten slut soul orgy. The all slut slut phoenix dragon slut! Slut! Morty, be sure to pee before we go. This adventure is going to be a long haul, and I don't feel like emptying the jug. While the pee will return momentarily, it and the jug are ultimately red herrings that exist only to set up a rather unfunny centipede who eats urine joke later. So you're getting two sins, Rick and Morty, for pissing all over my valuable time. I made your atomic matrix slightly lighter than air, and now your shoes are heavier than air, which makes you neutrally buoyant, which I find personally more impressive conceptually than walking on water. But what do I know? I wasn't born into the god business. I guess Rick's proclamations on his godliness make this decision and the resulting hijinks the product of his hubris. But that won't stop me from pointing out that Rick's magic does whatever the plot needs pistol probably could and should have been able to make Jerry neutrally buoyant without his shoes. What, you think the centipede wants to eat your pee? Since matter can be neither created nor destroyed, I have to ask, where does the pee go when it's inside the centipede? I mean, even if it evaporated or some shit, that still seems less pleasant than just peeing in the jug you've written out of the story for some reason. You young people think space is like Saturday Night Live. You see it every day, so you dream of being in it. So then it's nothing like Saturday Night Live, because it's not on every day, and I'm pretty sure whichever generation is currently being accused of lacking work ethic has never seen it. Literally everything is out here. And unlike everywhere else, I'm too busy to help you. Never mind the fact that he does end up helping Morty after he gets bitten by the space snake. I'm more concerned that the writers think changing a space tire requires more concentration than toppling a galactic federation, seducing a hive mind, or fixing a fragmented space time, which you coincidentally also broke. Morty's starting to look like a 90s Japanese ghost. I'm not going to send Rick trying to flex his knowledge of Ringu, but I'm more than willing to call him out for not knowing that Juan the Grudge came out in the aughts. Imagine being a racist snake. Hey, other snake, I hate you because you're the wrong color snake. I had a hearty laugh when I realized how easy it is to replace the word snake in this statement with the word human. Then I cried because, frankly, it's sad that a lot of humans have yet to learn such a simple lesson. But then I laughed again because conceptually a racist snake is just funny. Then I cried again because conceptually a racist human is not funny. So take your sin back so we can get back to laughing. But also, this snake parade is traveling in a straight line, spitting right in the face of the slithering snake aesthetic that has abandoned aerodynamic efficiency for the sake of these wobbly snake rockets. I, I can't be the reason why 19 billion snakes lost all hope! Using Morty's guilt as a reason for him to do some questionable things with a snake sure is a weird way to get the story rolling, especially when you consider how many people he killed in episode 1 of this season and how little he cared about the hope he robbed from those families. I don't know which red soda this is, but without naming names, I drank one of them several years ago after walking five miles in the hot Texas sun and then proceeded to vomit furiously. Never been able to forget the uniquely potent flavors of its ingress and subsequent egress, and the sight of red fluids has continued to haunt my waking life. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're all a sin. Morty, suddenly not being smart enough to know that when this snake sheds, the temporary tattoos will likely go with it, he is slightly less concerning than the overt speciesism he displays by thinking one snake could be so easily replaced with another. I mean, like me showing up at your Thanksgiving dinner with a matching Team Edward tattoo and acting like I didn't regret getting it. Your family would see right through it. Everyone has a plumbus in their home.
Writers think they can milk this plumbus every time they need a quick laugh. This snake is somehow now wearing the space snake suit properly, even though earlier Morty was shoving it into the suit face first. If it doesn't work for sleeping bags, it shouldn't work for this. The next two minutes of this show will be super cuts of snakes doing the same things humans do with the same things humans would use to do them because it's funny to anthropomorphize animals, especially when it makes no sense evolutionarily. But unfortunately, the funniness of the SS doesn't negate the sinniness of the logic. To be fair, newscasts involving humans are no more interesting than this. Downbeat! How do you win this f***ing game? We, we've never gotten that far! Rick spending time with his grandkids in a scenario that doesn't involve putting their lives at risk makes me question everything about this scene. Like, is this a simulation? I mean, are they a simulation, not am I a simulation? I am 100% certain that I am real. Jerry, I paused Beth with a device Christopher Walken gave me after a record session. Taking the long way around saying remote just so you can make a reference to an Adam Sandler vehicle from the mid-2000s. Thinking this is a better name for a bar than Devil's Protuberance of the Mammary Gland upon which the lactiferous ducks open and milk is drawn. It just rolls off the tongue, right? One Diet Sprite Remix, please. And, uh, is anyone here an Uber driver? Jerry. The obvious pool table light not being over the actual pool table. Yeah. And frankly, your bar has a lot of ceiling you fans! You Jerry brings up an interesting point here that honestly isn't addressed enough in this world. When you over ceiling fan your bar, you're just asking for trouble. Whether it's a man who brings in a boulder one day because he claims he will float without it, or it's Davey having one too many shots at Tito's and then deciding to see how many pool cues he can jam in all the fans. Bad things will happen. Things you'll never be able to unsee. Just say no to over ceiling fanning. You will thank us. Summer, how soups shook am I by your playlisting fleekness tonight? You Writers thought my chuggy ass would be high key stressed by the vibe, but Summer Squad is just being extra, and that's super sus. So bye, Felicia. I think. My little brother got bit by a snake in outer space and killed it with a hubcap. Can you alter the course of a species evolution like that without repercussion? Saying that Morty altered the course makes it sound like there was a predetermined destination, when what happened was more akin to an unintentional participation in their evolution. I'd say an encounter with a new species that results in death is very much in line with the principles of natural selection. In this case, the snake literally bit off more than it could chew, and as a result, they were not selected for the next round of the tournament. Get behind me. I will protect... Beth was right there watching the Creepy Snake Man's Judgment Day sales pitch. Aliens, I am a robot sent back in time by the snake resistance to protect you from Surfacore. So her reaction here is more comedic than logic dick. Rick Pulp fictioning Morty back to life in the middle of crossfire from time traveling snakes seems much harder than helping Morty deal with one snake while changing a tire. But for reasons, Rick seems much less angered here than he was during the cold open. The war between snake and machine. Snakeration 2, Judgment Snake. How exactly were they able to get a picture of Morty? Even if the snake was able to describe how he looked, this attention to detail is insane. I know we've gone over this so many times, but you can't just write the present and expect us to know what that means. Does that mean 2019 present? Because that's not the f***ing present for me. Get behind me, your brood will seed all life on this planet. That doesn't make doesn't sense. Make sense. I don't care if it doesn't make any sense. The deceitful way that Morty brought this Earth snake to Snake Earth makes the seeding of a planet more problematic than the weird sacrifice at the beginning of Prometheus. I can't get reception at my dentist, but Jerry can make a phone call thousands of feet in the air. Jerry almost never hits his target outside of the bedroom, so this working is just as much bullshit as Jerry not being immediately killed by the impact. Also, the depth of this pocket and this phone not falling out of it. I don't suppose you guys will take a bribe? Attempting to bribe a snake officer of the law. Ah! Anyone else want legs? The results of this literal and drastic intervention in the biology of snake kind don't play a bigger role in the snake evolution of this episode. It's just 1985, but with snakes. You know, kind of like 1952 with meerkats, but not so much like 1976 with possums. That one was a disaster. Also, show wants me to believe that Massachusetts is a phase that all pre-warp civilizations must go through. That book has everything they need to create snake time travel, and, and they're getting it in 1985, snake time. The existence of this book tells me that the writers are aware that I'm aware that they're aware that I'm aware of what the f*** was that? Ah, oh, sh**. Forgot I left Narrato bot running. How long did I leave this thing on? Wow, he sure had been watching a lot of Rick and Morty. Looks like he was right in the middle of sinning. Well, I guess I shouldn't leave this episode unfinished. Well, let me see where he's okay. What was he trying when he was sitting here? Look, I, I don't know. I don't know what he was doing here. I'm just going to go with something about some convenient 1980s time travel bullshit cliche. 
Snakeraham Lincoln survives this. Not that I wanted Snakeraham Lincoln to not survive this, but why is Snake Lincoln so ready to accept time travel that he immediately reads this note instead of being more concerned about what just happened to the well-dressed man from the 80s? Snake Hitler not using a shower curtain, but mostly just being a Snake Hitler. Just have to keep my grip! Jerry says as he's holding on to the outside of a plane, likely traveling at something around 600 miles per hour. Writers, if you're gonna do this kind of sh we're eventually gonna need a Jerry as an immortal super being episode to explain it. If that ever happens, we promise we'll give this sin back. <laughs> Since British Airways once flew a 747 from LA to the UK on three engines, I'm going to say that Jerry causing what I imagine to be the first ever snake strike should have been a cause for concern, yes, but not nearly the catastrophic event that the show wants me to believe it was. Also, no matter how many times I watch this, I continue to see a rocket-powered alligator that suffered the loss of two legs and not a rocket-powered snake that has suffered the growth of two arms. It's pandemonium out there! Morty being a snake demonious hisshole. Somehow during all this hacking and slashing, Summer's clothes stay clean. How is the blood physics of this scene just as silly as Kill Bill but in the opposite direction? Nobody chokes me without consent! Summer would be Fifty Shades of Great at TV Sins. Also, that's about as much curvature as you're gonna get from a time travel story. Josh Futterman has entered the chat. Yeah, have fun snowing those snake costumes together, you little tramp. Wait, did Morty say snowing instead of sewing? Cindy, run that one back again. Yeah, have fun snowing. Okay, one more time, a little bit slower. Uh, have fun snowing. F***ing Christmas episodes. That book has everything they need to create snake time travel, and, and they're getting it in 1985, snake time. The existence of this book tells me that the writers are aware that I'm aware that they're aware that I'm aware <laughs> Yes, in this video I revealed that I built a robot to do the sinning for shows I'd rather skip. And this silly attempt at retconning my powers in the Cineverse was definitely a one-off gag that will never, ever happen again. Ever. I know the only reason to travel by train is to travel with weapons. False. Other reasons include, but are not limited to, meeting Donald Gleason and or Merritt Weaver for an affair, playing cribbage with a random stranger, or finding out what baby tastes like. Also, I know this particular train car is so hard-edged that they drink alcohol from taps that look like snakes, but why is there a knock dispenser at every table? No one who enters this car would come unprepared to the point that this bar freely hands out brass knuckles at each individual table, would they? And yes, this is the Rick and Morty where the creators decided nothing matters, so it's our job to say that every Everything does. Take that, logic. Who are you? Dirty Sanchez. Rick is clearly firing toward the ceiling in some of these shots, yet everyone hits its mark. Did he purchase a Zorg ZF-1 from Gary Oldman? Even in a simulation or whatever the f you want to call this, why not drink this potion sooner? You know, growing a second ass just so you can fart out of two buttholes is a true waste of real estate. I don't accept your weird leap in logic that has everyone on a train going to kill one guy. I'm wondering who made the decision to animate Jeremy from CinemaSins in this way. Why would we take turns telling stories about it like little girls at a sleepover? They are called slumber parties, and you, sir, are a meanie. What is with the Rick Sanchez obsession? <laughs> I know, right? And which Rick Sanchez are you even talking about? There's like a whole citadel of them. This show plays so fast and loose with its Ricks that I never know which one is the real Rick and which ones aren't. It gets confusing. You don't see us just switching channel narrators in the middle of a video without ever explaining it. I mean, can you imagine? I know this story is BS, but how the f did that Christmas tree jump from the right side of the window to all the way over to the left side of the window? Morty and Summer were hanging ornaments on it when Rick walked in. Now they're nowhere near it. Also, good to see that they've managed to set up only one glass of wine on this table before bringing out the turkey. None of my business, but he didn't even save Christmas in that <laughs> story. This whole episode would be excellent at TV Sins. Oh, you don't have to pretend you didn't date him. We all did. Now, a lot of you will be focused on Yoda in this shot, but I'm more focused on the fact that Rick dated Quinn Morgendorfer, Total Recall, Sofia Vergara, and Conan O'Brien. Also, if you're an octopus, how do you pick which leg the garter goes on? Is it like a wedding ring situation? It's not a real train. It's a story device. Okay, guys, if you're going to do all our work for us, what are we supposed to even do? Show random pictures of adorable cat costumes? If we wanted one-offs, we'd do interdimensional cable. This episode is interdimensional cable. Only this time, Rick and Morty is the show that they keep flipping to. It's like Rick and Morty and Inception just had a threesome baby with devs. It's Rick and Morty entering their own portal like Malkovich did in Being John Malkovich. That sounds like it should be a sin removal, so it won't be. Since nothing makes sense in this episode, I'm going to remove a sin for the oversized Tickets Please arcade game with a huge monitor that requires a seat, a VR helmet, and a giant console to play. Everyone give me tickets! Ruining your grandkid's birthday. 
This could come in handy. So in this literally metaphorical, literal metaphor anthology story train, air is continuity? Does that even mean anything? Does anything mean anything? Sorry to nitpick, sir. <laughs> Sorry to nitpick. <laughs> And doesn't that mean those two could be any? Rick and Morty has blown up continuity as we know it. But what I really want to know is why are there tally marks on the wall suggesting that someone was trapped here for 10 days? Even in this wacky world, it's hard to believe that Rick and Morty can punch somebody just once and they die instantly. Of course, this thing is just a f circle. The first image of this episode is a regular ass looking train in space. The track might be circular, but the train isn't. There's probably a point to this, but I'm too lazy to look it up. We don't have to do anything, Morty. This is just a structural guide. We're obviously going to impart our own style. I don't like how meta this is getting ready. You know, I've watched this episode five times, and a lot of it feels like the writers were going through a therapy session. Like they're worried that their original show might get stale. It's like a palate cleanser. But after waiting for this show to come back since 2017, waiting two years to get half of a season, and waiting another four months for the next episode, I'm not sure I really needed an episode where the writers obsessed over their own creation. What's funny is that a year from now, this episode will be just another episode and the pressure on it to be great will be completely gone. This sounds like it should be a sin, so I'm removing one. Shut up, Morty. You're 14. You watch videos of people on YouTube reacting to f***ing YouTube. Bet you really felt that one deep, huh? I'll be the judge of when we get too meta. Look, I don't have a problem with the meta. I have a problem with when the meta becomes a lazy excuse just to do whatever you want and pretend it's clever. Like when YouTube channels get an easy laugh by accusing the show they're dissecting of doing the very thing that people accuse them of doing. A wink, a wink. What's happening? Going into an act break. You know, it's kind of like they're trying to steal our job and break our will so hard that it never returns. Like when parents find their kids with cigarettes and force them to smoke the whole pack. Well, bad news, Dad. Our lungs were made for this. I'm a bird and a person and more. Sure, that was a great moment. Why is it that in this train car the people get a stage to tell their Rick and Morty stories? Also, taping photos on curtains. We've been here a really long time and nobody's taken our tickets. How does a guy suspended in disbelief in space gather up enough momentum to suddenly appear for a joke? I just answered my own question, didn't I? Rick and Morty just made the most TV Sins proof episode ever with this thing, didn't they? Or should I say the most TV Sins debunked episode ever? For cutesy name news. Cutesy name news? Meet insert joke here Sin. Ooh. Stop thinking and do it! Uh, okay, uh, th 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 there was this- My name is Mike Johnson. That's good coffee. Wait, is this how Morty is telling the story, or is this the representation of the story Morty is telling? I mean, is Morty standing on top of the train saying, my name is Mike Johnson, that's good coffee? Or is he talking about a guy named Mike Johnson who likes coffee? Why is lesbian part of her job title? Oh, now you're progressive? <laughs> I love you ever since you were mailed to me. By a doctor woman. This is a brilliant deconstruction of the Bechdel test, mainly the idea that some people have that following it inherently creates a great narrative. Jurassic World passed the Bechdel test. Fight them with your heavy special time. You do it too. Wow. You know what's really special about Summer and Beth's heavy special time? Their pants stay completely intact. That new brand of Kotex is phenomenal. I'm that Supreme Court lady, and you f***ing did it! I don't know if this actually passes the Bechdel test. Beth was called Mom, and Morty couldn't even remember Ruth Bader Ginsburg's name. So I'm not sure there are two or more named females in this story. <laughs> Rick saved Morty by plugging his oxygen into Morty's helmet. But when Rick falls, they are no longer connected. And sure, Morty could hold his breath for a few seconds, but why do both of their helmets now have hoses plugged into them? Don't worry, Morty. Nothing out there is canon. As if it matters. This show is to canon like the Dursleys are to Harry Potter. It throws it under the stairs and only lets it see the light of day when it absolutely has to. If continuity doesn't matter, then this one ball that was definitely coming towards Rick shouldn't be coming towards Rick in the next shot. It should be a lizard at this point. Am I giving this show a sin for not breaking continuity? Yes, I am. Who the f*** am I? It's not real. N -n 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 nothing's real. You can tell because not only do these officers arrive five seconds after Rick is stabbed, they come from two different directions. Did the third one run in and then around the camera and then in from the other side? Well, it's nice to see their cuts and bruises from the rest of this fight have healed up so nicely. Is this intentional? Maybe. Does it matter? Lasagna. I'd take all the sins back if this ends with one of these two bringing the other one back to life and then exchanging a kiss that is somehow both platonic and romantic. Even Rick and Morty can't help but play the hits for a cheap thrill. And if you don't think it's a cheap thrill, explain to me again how the me six play into this scene in any way whatsoever. I'll wait. Time's up. They don't. Thank you for Thank sending you for your sending only, only begotten, begotten son. Wait a second. Jesus. No. What are Jesus. you doing? Jesus. You guys would never do this. Okay, I understand that this guy represents the fans and or the network. But if Rick and Morty started praying like this, everybody would know it's building to a joke, which is exactly what this does. Complete with the 
Duke Veggie Tales reference. I mean, even if this happened for real, we'd laugh because it's so anti them. Listening to Rick's voice is funny enough that they could do a whole episode in church with him playing a pastor and it would be funny. Somehow. I'm thinking it would be funny somehow. I beg your pardon? Well, it is Jesus, and they're in a machine, so this is as deus ex machina as it gets. And I think that deserves a sin-off. Oh, sh So, what do you think? Haha! -ha! You thought this was a big play on the setting of Snowpiercer, but it turns out it was a big play on a scene from the 1991 Adams Family. Haha, -ha, you thought this was a big play on the setting of Snowpiercer, which turned out to be a big play on a scene from the 1991 Adams Family, but it was actually a big play on a scene from Ant-Man. Nobody's out there shopping with this virus. Holy Way to get that in there at the last minute. We know how long it takes to get one of these episodes done, and to do some timely, last-second thing like this, that's awesome. But now that I think of it, why is this episode titled Never Ricking Morty? Is that a play on the never-ending story? Does that work on any level? Is it a joke? A play on words? Does this episode have anything to do with that movie? Does a horse get real sad and die? They should have just called it Throw Logic from the Train and been done with it. Right now, look it up, it's real. It's not. After this scene, I immediately grabbed the face hugger I have in my garage and went to the cave in my backyard to see if one of its tentacles could get hung up on a stalactite in this manner. I was really good at hitting my head against the stalactite, and even after several rubs, I was turned on by the stalactite, but I could not get the face hugger to wrap its tentacle around it. Jeez, does Morty only have four top teeth? Why have I not noticed this before? Four? Last thing I remember, I was ugh, in a cave looking at some wet egg and... Oh, that probably did it. Which makes you wonder how Rick even let this happen. Based on how this episode progresses, he's clearly very aware of the alien movies and facehuggers in general. So he should have been, at the very least, putting those lessons to use that nobody from Prometheus learned about touching strange substances out in the wild. I told you not to look at that egg! It, it was too wet! You don't get to tell me what to look at. I've seen your Pornhub account. Man, you couldn't wait to take the leap from things you shouldn't look at as a matter of survival to shaming Morty for his porn profile, could you? Not to mention invading his privacy. And that's your grandson, man. You looked up his account to see what turns him on? Also, later we find out that while Morty told Rick not to look at the egg, he was just as enamored with the egg as Rick was. This might be a little harder than I thought. Holy sh**, they've got an M&M store. Oh f have I been watching one of those Rick and Morty integrated ads this whole time? I thought this was the episode. And this after I wrote so many sins on that Pringles ad last week. I'm not putting that back on my face. Relax, it's dead. That's not exactly an incentive. You feel an egg in your stomach? No. Well, glass half full. If Rick is basing all his information on Alien, then he should know that Kane didn't feel the egg in his stomach until it was way too late. So, sounds like your glass might be half full of glub glub. Jesus Christ, who the f was I? I guess Rick immediately subscribed to his Parasite's channel as soon as he saw it? Or he took this phone from one of the guards who clearly didn't like Rick and therefore wouldn't be a subscriber to his channel? D did I at least sell out and sell vitamins or something? No, Wendy's, but close enough. I did this? You and the amazing technology you both brought us. I get that the summer reveal is a surprise for us later on in the episode, but there is no reason the face-hugging parasites wouldn't be mentioning her here since she is the one most responsible for the changes in their society. Is there more? Nope. Nope. Th I, I guess, uh, th that, that's it. Just don't Glorzo Earth. So are these creatures called Glorzo? Is Glorzo what they call Morty? Or is Glorzo a verb? Because I'll be God Glorzoed if I can Glorzo out with the Glorzo these facehuggers are Glorzoing about. Are they like the Smurfs? Why haven't you blinked? Uh, for 20 minutes, and why uh, doesn't your mouth move when you talk? They're just now noticing this? These creatures clearly have Glorzo for brains. Geez, you'd think Rick would have better duct tape than this in that magic lab coat he wears. Why are they keeping the facehugger masks if they're fleeing the planet? It's as if Rick knows they might forget something and have to come back later and use them again. Rick's tiny spaceship apparently can take flight even with something like 20 times heavier attached to it. Honestly, I'm proud of us for not. Totally. It would have been cheap. Congratulating yourself on not making a 9-11 joke, which actually by definition is still itself a 9-11 joke. Also, I'm wondering why during this entire rampage, Rick hasn't been wearing his seatbelt except this one time here just before they see the not World Trade Center. And then when it comes back, he's not wearing it, even though it's the same background, same framing, same everything. Did they animate multiple takes pretending that the actor who plays Rick had to go to the bathroom at some point and he forgot to put his seatbelt back on? So you did a 9-11. Almost did a 9-11. We, we went with the Pearl Harbor. We're pretty classy. In a moment of Michael Bay versus Charlie Sheen, I do think Rick and Morty made the right choice, but not sure it's a moment to be proud of. I've been getting into beekeeping lately. Is something wrong with that? Wrong with beekeeping? No. But there is something wrong with how long it's taking you to slice those pancakes. Who even uses a knife on a pancake? Are they steak pancakes? I mean, what the Glorzo? 
I don't sequel, it's called integrity. Then please explain interdimensional cable too. So Rick's wristwatch thingy is saying that summer is underground and that's it? How unhelpful is this locator thing? Does it even have directions? Empress, is everything all right? Um, seize them. I don't get why Rick can't put that shield around them again and bring out some other weapon that he probably has in that lab coat, but show's gotta fill 22 minutes somehow, I guess. Uh, whoa, 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 buddy. I'm just gonna call this deus ex harmonica, because why the f does either of them have a harmonica? And it just so happens to be the facehugger's weakness? What the f took you so long? Why the f did you tell your minions to seize them? You've been on enough Rick and Morty adventures to know that Rick would have gotten you out of here without having to come up with some wacky plan to escape. You're in a cape, Summer. How bad could it be? No bad story ends with a cape. Justice League does. Or was I simply getting too close to Garkul? Was Garkul consuming me? Rick, can we listen to something else? Wait. First off, people listen to anything surrounded by other people who don't want to listen to it without headphones. I'm talking to you, dude at the airport on speakerphone and woman watching YouTube with the volume turned to 85 decibels. You know who you are. Second off, why doesn't Morty have his own device with headphones? I'm just saying they're currently in a spaceship. I'm assuming the technology exists. It's a toothpick. I'm a toothpicker now. Get used to it. God, are you that desperate for a thing? This show is experiencing a self-awareness crisis from the previous episode that has spilled over into this episode. Everything is being introduced as a thing and someone has to comment on it. Why couldn't the episode do something where she simply needed the toothpick? Because this toothpick is crucial to the plot. It's the only reason why facehuggers can't grab her later. It is my thing. Just like yours is dying alone. How can dying alone be a thing? A thing is something you do often. Dying alone is something you do once, maybe twice if you're a Gemini. How long have you been hatched? 30 seconds? I've been alive seven minutes. Uh, I've been here for 29 minutes. I'm getting heavy me six vibes from these things. So all you do is live half an hour, eggs and die? Yes, we love it. Stephen King presents Rick and Morty's Dreamcatcher. Okay, you guys don't have to listen to me, but I vote you don't do that. And who's up for changing things around here? So wait, all these other facehuggers that have been around long enough to know what their purpose in life is just accept Summer's suggestion with no questions asked? And they're able to get everyone in town on board with that plan? How the f*** do these things suck the egg back into their bodies? Also, why do they do it? They obviously don't know who Summer is, so they don't know why they should follow her. Also, Summer seems to be without her toothpick all of a sudden, which I think is unwise considering that's the reason she was considered a god in the first place. Okay, there's at least a couple details in this episode that I love. The pencils and gum stuck in the ceiling and the face hugger paper dolls in the classroom. Honestly, Summer, I can't thank you enough. It's really weird that this society deifies Summer, but they don't put images of her everywhere and give all the glory to Steve slash Morty. Yeah, I know there are groups of fans out there who have been dying for Rick and Morty to make out. It's probably the number one requested thing on all the chat boards. But this is one of those things that shows do where they play on that thing that you really want and it doesn't count. It's like in the X-Files movie when Mulder does CPR on Scully and the filmmakers were able to tease that their lips touch. Or when James Earl Jones' voice comes out of Maggie in one of those Simpsons Halloween specials. Anyway, I'm glad they got the burning will they or won't they question out of the way in season four. Now maybe they can bring in Kirstie Alley. Now that they're showing this part again, I've got to say this is the MC Escher of animated ex machinas. How the f*** does that tentacle get around the right side of that stalactite when Morty walks to the left of it? It's not like the tentacle is in a loop formation, it's tightly attached to his face. And we shall drive away from here and die. Ah! Okay, guess what everybody? It's me, the whiny guy you never want to hear from. She's trying to escape with her family. My time to shine. <laughs> this is what we get for evolving. I I'm sorry, we, we, we thought you were evil. Why would you think that? We had a giant tower that blared Glorzo is peace. I know. Is there something missing from this episode? In the first part of the episode that causes the conflict, the missile that they were supposed to send to the Earth was going to send a bunch of facehuggers, right? Their message may have been peace, but they were still going to send parasites to a bunch of unwilling hosts. But before we get a chance to see what it was going to do, Rick throws it into a building and it explodes. This is the most confusing part of the episode because it's never spelled out what that missile was going to do when it got to the planet. And it seems like Rick and Morty were going to have to kill a lot of these things to escape anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they were peace or not. So why is he apologizing about killing them? How is this guy still alive? Hasn't the harmonica music reached him yet? I was working with a lot. Just let me listen to the podcast next time. But the podcast had nothing to do with why they ended up on this world. Can we just relax and maybe watch some interdimensional cable? We don't need to try so hard, you know? Let's just take it easy and riff, you know? I, for one, will be very happy when you
when you guys leave the Being John Malkovich stage and just go ahead and make a f***ing episode without so much self-reference. I mean, it's kind of cute. Like, your dad keeps bees. When the heck was that? Was that some sort of American beauty parody? Jerry's beekeeping makes him attractive to teenage girls? The this opening foreshadowing is fantastic. This rat gets lit up by some acid, leaving only his bones, totally setting up a classic Rick and Morty adventure. I almost parked. I know driving around in a spaceship is cool and all, but why does Rick even need the spaceship anymore since he regularly transports? Uh-huh. Well, I thought it was cool. It was also a great way to waste some time so you could fill all 22 minutes of your episode. What is this face you're making? You I mean, it's pretty much the same face Morty makes 100% of the time you tell him something. It's a combination of exhaustion and disdain. Usually you ignore it, but this episode wants to set up a relationship, Tiff, so now all of a sudden you're Mr. Sensitive. Shout out to the props guy on set who loads the exact amount of bottles and trash for Rick and Morty to kick out every time they exit Herbie the Space Bug. If this vehicle is such a mess, why is the only trash by the door? While I'm glad to see the Hyrulean economy has taken over the universe, there's no way Rick is dumb enough to trade 10 red rupees for 10 green ones. The red ones are worth 10 times as much. How will you ever afford your Flamebreaker armor? Okay, but does anything beat fake crystals and a fake arm? <laughs> Maybe fake crystals, a fake arm, and the wisdom to go ahead and keep shooting until they're all dead? Also, why are Peter Gorey and Guilford Grimley even holding guns if they aren't going to shoot back? These tubes have no regulator to let the carbon monoxide be exhaled, and I don't see any bubbles coming from their noses. I'm no expert, but this is clearly a suffocation machine. Guess he took his threat pretty serious. Yeah. Sound does not travel through Mountain Dew this well, and to be honest, bones don't float in it either. Of course, Rick could have invented some sort of liquid modifier to give it the density of acid that also has some sort of acoustic transmission molecule or something, but my patience for BS tank is running low, so... Since when do they title these episodes in the open? This is like The Simpsons' Bart gets hit by a car title that comes out of nowhere. Should we use a different vat? Does acid lose its acid power the more it dissolves? What am I, an acidologist? I know this extremely hilarious conversation happens so that Rick and Morty will have to stay down here a little bit longer, but if the idea of dropping their buddy in the same vat of acid is potentially a problem, then why don't they just use one of the many other vats in the factory? It's funny they care so much, but seriously, this is not a difficult decision. Look, I've watched the John Wick movies, and those movies clearly prove that you can't fire laser dissolvers through faux acid water without at least first priming the xenon. Also, there is no way that ladle was long enough to cover this distance. Dewey! You said not the rat, the guy! Oh! Marron! Look at the size of the bones on that rat! <laughs> Sometimes, things are so funny, they actually need multiple sins removed. Also, I love this gangster character so much, I want to remove a sin. But then Rick and Morty end up murdering these guys. I really hope that when he said, Even if you kill me, you're a dead man. That means he'll respawn in another episode. But until then, he's dead forever, and that is a shame. <laughs> See? Now that wasn't that hard, was it? Maybe just do that the first time, okay? Also, someone just give these guys their own show. I would watch a whole three seasons of these gangsters, followed by a contract dispute that leads to a split up fourth season just to watch more of them. I'm resending the fact that you killed them, but these guys are the best. Oh, was it worse than when I was a pickle? Oh, that's right, you weren't there for that. Turns out kind of cool. Maybe there's a connection there. Excuse me? What's that cool thing you did without me again? The awesome thing? I, I, I guess you wanted a dragon? I haven't seen this much fan service callback humor since Jeremy's college girlfriend narrated the Prometheus School of Not Lap Dancing 40 Seconds of Love. Logos. I guess the rest of the family went on vacation? Does Rick regularly park his spaceship in the garage? There are times when this garage has cars in it, and other times there's nothing but Rick in his lab, so I'm wondering where he keeps the spaceship in those moments. There's no such thing as a bad idea, Morty. It's about execution. While this episode is mostly free from the last two episodes' psychological self-evaluation, there are still a couple of moments in this episode that have that hang-up. Get over it already! Save your place like in a video game, but in real life so that you can try stuff and then go back to your save point. Yes, Morty, I saw it on Futurama. Oh. And now the show is having its South Park moment where it's worried that it will do something that another show did, which became the basis for The Simpsons Already Did It. You even dragged another Matt Groening show into it. I may have never noticed this before, but does Rick keep a fire extinguisher way up high on a shelf nearly out of reach? All right, class. Remember when Morty went to school and had normal interactions with daily life? Is it a bad sign when you're having nostalgia for the first season of a show that's only in season four? Asking for a every show ever. Also, I don't doubt that this guy's class is probably the worst math class you could ever witness, but I don't understand why there is a two plus two equation on the board unsolved. Nobody in this class is having trouble with two plus freaking two, are they? The show attempts to establish here that as soon as Morty dies, he resets to his last save point. 
but that's not what we saw when Rick killed him earlier. And you may say that's because Rick was the one who pushed the button. And I'll say, well, doesn't that mean that it should only reset if Rick died? And you might say it's still attached to Morty's DNA somehow, and the same person who sets it has to reset it. And then I'll say, but later Jerry resets a save point that Morty started. And you'll say, it's just a cartoon. Why do I care so much? And I'll say, you're the one who started it, man. And you'll say, you're not Jeremy. I don't have to listen to you. Sorry, I, I may be working some things out here. My point is the death reset thing is convenient and unexplained. Can we carry on? Trumping. These examples of mundane ways to Groundhog Day are hilarious, but if he's resetting when he misses, why are there scattered cheesy balls on the table? This turn into this long relationship segment is exactly why I will never give up on Rick and Morty. It's carefully constructed, nuanced, and confident, even though it remains irreverent and crass. Sure, you basically know where it's going, but it still executes it beautifully. Take your sin removal, you rascals. You earned it. Having said that, it seems like Morty is so Jessica obsessed that I don't understand why he even takes an interest in this girl. He even knows he has Jessica on the hook after he acted all aloof around her a minute ago. Yes, show, we know how they met. We were watching, remember? This is the show briefly going into Self Park. There is no way anybody knows where the tail section of this plane is after that crash, much less created a detailed map of the entire terrain. If they did, they'd have already checked the tail of the plane. I guess the news didn't give a shit about the other survivors? Or the other survivors died before the helicopter could save them? Look, I know Jerry is dumb, but I doubt he's I can't recognize the difference between this and the TV remote dumb. Also, why is Morty's bag on the side of the couch open with the remote control sitting neatly on top for this type of thing to even happen? So from the time just before he met his new boo, Morty never once set a new save point? Like, not even accidentally? Dude went from resetting cheese ball tosses to never resetting anything cold turkey? Nope. Also, I bet you're kicking yourself for already burning that Live Die Rick Pete episode title, huh? I don't respect time travel. If Ant-Man and the Wasp can do it, I'm not interested. Funny, because just like Ant-Man and Endgame, you depended on a completely random and convenient button push to move your plot along. You just substituted falling on your butt for a random rat, and now you're the very thing you despise. Also, didn't you shrink yourself in one episode? Also, also, Rick has crazy pop culture knowledge for a guy who's always going on adventures, drinking, and building inventions. It wasn't so much a do-over as it was isolating a moment in time, splitting your probable selves, and shunting you into a near-duplicate, equally probable reality. This goes by fast, so let's sort this out. What Rick seems to be saying is that at the exact moment Morty presses the save button, the remote looks for parallel dimensions happening in concurrent real time that have the previous save point moment just now happening. The problem is Morty was in a relationship for several months, which means that when Jerry reset to that save point, Morty traveled to a universe where all the same things that happened many months ago in his universe just started happening happening in the new universe. I thought it was impossible to think of something more confusing, convenient, and messy than time travel, but congratulations. And even so, this means as many times as Morty pushed the button, and for all the seconds, hours, days, months that passed in those moments, have all actually passed in his original dimension. Without time travel, which we know Rick hates, he's been missing from his home family for quite some time. Will the show ever deal with this? No. Does it matter? Garlic bread. That there was already a you in each probable dimension, so we had to solve for that. By melting the previous Morty? Doesn't that leave a dimension without a Morty? Shouldn't they swap dimensions? How does killing one of them even solve anything? Also, it's not like leaving a burning pile of Morty goo in a dimension really changes anything. It's just a dead Morty instead of a live one, right? It's right, you little bitch. It's the prestige. You prestige yourself. <laughs> prestige being used as a verb. Oh, this is a great episode. The original split is still time stamped. I can make it so those Mortys never existed at all. Wait, what? Without time travel? I can't tell if the show knows it's talking out of its butt or if it actually thinks this makes sense. And that's not a good sign. You live with the consequences. Those things happen somewhere, but you can merge the probable realities so that only one Morty did them. How can you merge all these realities when a Morty died in half of them? Not to mention all the ones where doing one thing would have meant he couldn't have done another thing. Wait, so, so you're not even my Rick? If this is a parallel universe Rick, that means there are several other parallel universe Mortys who all challenged their Ricks to build the same remote, right? There isn't just one Morty who asked for this and all the other parallel Mortys just went to the room instead of challenging Rick to make this thing. Let's face it, there are so many versions of Morty doing this that it would be an impossible mess to clean up. And when did this Rick figure out that this wasn't his Morty? <laughs> So did the girl who became Morty's girlfriend merge with all the other versions of her who pepper sprayed him? I bet she's super confused about all this right now. All right, come on, Morty, let's go home. Wait, what? Th this isn't our reality? Wait. Of course not, because Dimension Portals are this show's get-out-of-plot-jail-free card. 
Also, if that's the case, where and when did they enter this reality? According to my frustrated half-understanding of the concept, it had to be before he pushed the button the first time, right? Did he drag Morty to another dimension while he was sleeping? Either I'm not smart enough to comprehend these complexities, or this show is shoveling so much nonsense on top of nonsense that it hopes we don't notice. Or both. Both could be true. So Johnny Carson is still alive and doing his show at 95. Ed McMahon is 97. Man, Johnny Carson really hated Jay Leno in this universe, didn't he? Uh, our next guest uh, gave us, well, actually very little information uh, besides the fact that he is uh, impervious to acid. So we put him on the show without even rehearsing it because that's how talk shows in this parallel universe in 2020 were. And that means no sci-fi bull****. Isn't that right, Rick? Uh-huh. How the f did they get Rick to come along on this trip? I feel like if four seasons of Rick and Morty taught me anything, it's that Rick will be willing to turn himself into a pickle if necessary to get out of stuff like this. Why are you building a Faraday box to block out the signal? Thank you, Morty, for telling us all what a Faraday box is. I mean, I know what it is, but you know, not everyone did. But also, Morty has seen Rick build all sorts of crazy things. How did he instantly know that Rick was building a Faraday box and not, let's say, a deadly jack-in-the-box or a box to hold a bomb or Glorzo knows what else? Why go through all the trouble of building a Faraday box if throwing the phone out the window was an option? And no, I'm not saying Faraday box over and over so I remember it. I super already knew that it was called a Faraday box. You know what's really bugging me about this scene? The steering wheel seems to be very low. While, yes, this gives us a great view of the car, it would be chafing Jerry's legs the entire drive. I love this contraption Rick has stalled into the station wagon, but is he attached to the door? The back seat doesn't come with him, so what's holding Rick up during this transition? I hope you realize the tubing permit was non-refundable. Relax, Jerry. We'll be in and out in a minute. All this talk of lube and being in and out in a minute reminds me of a... What? Oh, tubing. Right. Oh man, they got to Rick's baby mama fast. I was hoping they were going to do a twisted take on the movie Locke. Sex with a living planet? Big step for mankind. Stop encouraging people to stick their divining rods into earth holes. Doesn't anyone remember the 1999 penis spurn epidemic after American Pie? And there are critters in those planet holes. Come on. Gaia, baby. Big Daddy Rick is here. What's the problem? The problem here is a perfectly missed opportunity to show the animator's ability to draw anything other than a d*** and balls. We've seen d*** after d*** after hairy ball and when it comes time to show the beauty that is the vulva we get a fucking multi-tiered crater with a sphincter in the middle um, are you kidding me look at them they look just like you they really really don't i mean just because they have pointy hair doesn't make them look like rick the father could be lisa simpson for all they know gaia baby gonna need a little raw iron and steam whatever you need baby and then rick summons a thing from the station wagon and that's all it takes apparently for rick to build an entire factory out of this planet's womb dad can we please go back and hang out with grandpa's clay people Why I go back there when you have the most interesting mystery developing right in front of you. Jerry creates this murder stick for no reason. Oh, you think it's for roasting marshmallows, but nope, he whips a metal stabby tool out for that sh Why is this stick being whittled? Because if you move the bar so low, you might actually seem like you're worth a f Jeez, they turned Jerry into this show's Meg Griffin, didn't they? They can heap all sorts of abuse on him without him fighting back. And is it funny? You just end up feeling sorry for the guy, as dumb and listless as he is. I mean, this kind of lashing out would be reserved for a Jerry who actually did f Summer's friend from the Primordius episode. We got you, guy, guy. Shoot him hard enough the middle. Shouting unhelpful directions at the woman giving birth with directions that are, in fact, simply stating what she was already doing. Penis fruit. Also, if Rick and Beth were going through all the trouble of helping these clay Ricks achieve fulfillment, why confuse them from the start with what the number two really is? Is it a watermelon? A pear? Why can't it just be a number? Also, we have a pie chart with an actual pie on it, and we have another screen that shows how you definitely don't play tic-tac-toe. Sure, just give the O's the game, X's. It's not like anybody bet all their life savings on yet another draw. Why is the sign for interns plural when everything else is singular? This might be the worst sin Rick and Morty has ever committed. I can add an online uh, college workaround. Or just push them out through a pipe in the back. Same, Same thing. Ah, uh, I knew it wouldn't be long before I had to remove a sin. Guess you don't want to learn how to skip rocks, either. The first step in skipping a rock is to choose a rock that will skip and not immediately sink to the bottom of the water. The second step is to choose a body of water that is still and lacks a current. And yeah, maybe this is the joke. But if Jerry skips stones by selecting tiny boulders to chuck at rivers, he wouldn't be interested in teaching his kids because he would constantly fail at this task. Also, Jerry survives this. 
This series of blocks contains zero cuberts. Okay, where did Jerry get a s'more? He cooked one earlier and gave it to Summer, who threw the one s'more into the fires of Mount Dysfunction a couple minutes ago. Does Jerry just have spare s'mores in his bag? I grant that this is something that Jerry would do, but I'm sending it anyway. Also, now that we've sinned that Jerry even should have one in the first place, let's discuss the fact that Jerry is the sort of person who keeps an unprotected s'more in his bag. He is also the sort of person who can pack the fragile s'more in such a way that it doesn't crumble even though he's survived a river, factory, and fall. So really, I don't know if I should respect him, fear him, or hate him. What is that? This? This is camping. That is a f***ing s'more. Well, I guess that seals it. I hate Jerry. There you go, guys. Pump those cheeks. Encouraging incest. Also, I guess it's a standards and practices thing, but if these two really are pumping cheeks, then the lack of motion means they're doing it wrong. If I die, don't eat my ass. That'd be weird. So your boobs and vagina are okay then? By the way, it would be awesome if Summer was ribbing Morty here for actually eating human flesh in the last episode. If Summer is going to be the teenage girl version of Rick, this would have been a perfect opportunity for that callback. But it doesn't even seem this episode knows what happened in the last episode. Damn. You sure these kids are yours? What, you've never heard me sing karaoke? Well, everyone on Earth at this point should be familiar with the events of Get Schwifty, in which you had to show an alien what you got, and what you got ain't that. You guys self-reference a lot when it comes to your writing anxieties, but characters not remembering things like that is crazy to me. Shaboom boom Sorry, sorry, just trying to get the hang of this thing. Who is he apologizing to? His family that would be dead right now had the staff worked as he thought it did? Oh, sorry, I didn't kill you in a glorious fashion just then. Oopsie. F***ing Jerry. You for real just try to smite me? Siri, triangulate source of power? Did you for real just use Siri to triangulate this god's source of power? Jeez, our communications companies are going to know everything. Now you see my true form. The clouds were simply a shape more appealing to Gaia's mind. Wait, so why do all of your kids look like the illusion of you? You look like Kid Rock Zeus. Does anyone know who Kid Rocky is anymore? Mixing Zeus with Sophia Hadji Pontelli would make more sense and probably be a more interesting Google search, honestly. Also, looks like somebody got some Deadpool in my Rick and Morty. All right, mother Let's go. This goes on for some time. Also, the power of a god versus a guy who has gadgets and knowledge of a god, and we're about to see a fist fight. Way to DC Comics show. This ship has power. Also, not only does it have power, they're able to get the ship off the ground from this position and with a bunch of roots and vines running through it. Jesus Christ, was that the wings? I think it's the thrusters, but no matter whether it's wings or thrusters, this ship somehow gets into space. You like these plagues I'm unleashing on your asses? We never once get to see one of Jerry's plagues. Even if they're as lame as best says they are, I want to see the full brunt of Jerry's plagues. <laughs> Machina ex Deus? Show thinks that Jerry can use his marshmallow roaster thing to pull Beth out of the chasm, and if four seasons of this show has taught me anything about Jerry, show is contradicting itself about Jerry. This is another one of those weird animation things. The lava was so close to them here that I don't know how they didn't get melted by the lava before they climb aboard the ship. It's one of those things where they're saved because the show says they are, and I refuse to accept that. See, you put the fire stick to the wood and voila, campfire. You have known about this the whole time? One of Not Rick's kids would be amazing at TV Sins. Is that all you want to say to your children before you leave? Oh yeah, about that title, Childric of Mort. It's a Children of Men parody title, I get that, and I get the Childric part, I just don't get the Mort part, unless it's some clever nod to all the death in the episode, but you know how much I hate acknowledging the French. Remember when there were episode titles that didn't need to fit the Rick or Morty in, like Lawnmower Dog? They didn't call that Lawn Morty Dog. Well, I love this bit at the end where Rick is scrolling through a planet dating site, I'm wondering what planet would call themselves 2R-F181 like they're content with the random name some Earth scientist gave them. Oops, there's a hole in my ozone. I didn't put it there, did you? I can't fill it by myself. I'm not smart enough. Erogenous ozone. Beth. Smith. Beth, Beth, Beth Smith. Okay, God, it's just such a plain, I'm trying to come up with a mnemonic device. True facts, before we released last week's TVS video for Childrick of Mort, we called Beth Pam on a couple of occasions. It's hilarious the show thinks Janet's name is forgettable too. I, I am so sorry, um, uh, oh God, start to- Why would Space Beth shoot him if she wanted him to- Tell your top bugs the defiance lives on. Why not just write her name down on something if he can't remember it? Congratulations to your government, business, or terror cell on its acquisition of the Annex 5 Planet Remover by Zamazax in partnership with Wrangler Jeans. The product placement is funny and all, but how many aliens out there would be ones that would wear jeans? And even if they would, Wrangler doesn't seem like the type to affiliate themselves with planet-destroying weaponry. That really feels more like a Levi thing. 
thing. Don't you ever miss Earth? I don't have to miss it. I'm technically still there. My dad made a perfect clone of me to take my place. Man, Beth brings up the fact that she has a clone with very little prompting. The question was, don't you ever miss Earth? And the first words out of her mouth are, I don't have to miss it, which makes no sense, but she's able to do a perfect triple axle from that into, by the way, I have a clone. I am actually disintegrating. Oh, oh my God. Dad! Is that really it? We did it? I believe Jerry would be gullible enough to think Rick disintegrated, but none of the rest of the family. I don't even know what this gambit is supposed to do in a post-Pickle Rick world, other than to provide the episode with a B story. Morty's making a big mess, isn't he? I'm almost certain that the next time we get a good look at this table, we'll get confirmation of, oh, it's like nothing happened at all. Rick probably did something where messes clean themselves up in some other dimension or something. Rick creates this grid barrier between he and Beth, but I'm wondering why this thing doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. Why would you create a grid with this kind of glaring weakness? Okay, have fun, pumpkins. Wait, what does supposedly clone Beth have in her neck that allows her to imitate Rick perfectly? She doesn't even have a tracker in there anymore. Not that it matters. Is this how perfect impressions are possible? Stick a finger in your neck? Even if she had some sort of device in her throat, how does it know to imitate Rick specifically? Okay, fine, this guy uses military time on his alarm clock, but wasn't it just breakfast like a minute ago? We should still be in the morning digits, right? Also, I will say it's kind of interesting having the typical invisible teenage male uses his powers to be a creeper peeping Tom switched around to an invisible woman doing the same thing, but a peeping Tammy would still be creeper-ish, so I'm going with a sin regardless. So I'll just see you at cheerleader practice. This will only be the second time Morty has used an invention to spy on girls in the locker room in the last three episodes. I'm surprised we haven't seen a Morty Rick Possible episode where Morty tries to spy on the girls by going through the air vents. How do you like that, bitch? I liked it more than my old belt. You mean your old belt that conveniently had a similar blue circle on the buckle, just like the invisibility belt did? You mean that belt? Holy crap, what is happening in this picture? This is such a lurid picture that the kid wearing a meth gator shirt is the least insane thing about it. I guess Rick and Morty have a deal with Shonies, too? That's the only reason I can think of that would possess someone to go there to get their drink on. I feel like this is both a joke and product placement. Like, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, we'd mock this but secretly go there when no one is looking. My daughter, having space adventures. This packet, sitting by Rick, appears to be a pink sweet and low knockoff, and he's drinking a beer. What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to take over the galaxy. Everybody in the galaxy tries to take over the galaxy. The trick is to be left alone by whoever succeeds. This coming from a man who has destroyed no telling how many universes and even recently impregnated an entire f***ing planet. That sounds like the exact opposite of laying low. Oh, look, they somehow got Sunyi's TV into the Shonies. The eye was broken off when Woody Allen threw a baseball at it during a Ronan Farrow report. Shower fire! Shower! I guess Summer was just planning on fire extinguishing the entire locker room to find Morty, but her convenient choice of this spot is still convenient. <laughs> Show gives me irreversible, irreversible flashbacks. Morty Smith, hands up! If you can find Morty on a random peeping trip, why can't you find his mom who's actually at the therapist's place at an appointed time? The only reason these guys show up to ask Morty questions is so that Summer and Morty can overtake the ship and ex machina Rick out of a bad situation later. Tommy? Tamia. Tam Man, for a season that is making fun of sequels, rehashes, and callbacks, they sure are producing a lot of sequels, rehashes, and callbacks. I'm better than this job. Susan Sarandon's self-appraisal after her first day on the set of Speed Racer somehow makes its way into this episode. And who is that? Uh, uh, a clone? When Rick froze the Beth clone, why wasn't he able to put her in something more permanent so that this confrontation wouldn't happen? Wow, naive and attractive. Wow, jaded and hot. Clone Wars. But if you stop fighting, you both get McDonald's. How about I just blow my brains out, starting with hers? Okay, Wendy's. We love Wendy's. I, I think they even gave us some money. Show makes a joke about McDonald's just so they can make a joke about their Wendy's ads. It's not enough that there's a regular Wendy's commercial and a Rick and Morty Wendy's commercial during the broadcast, but yet another minute in the show itself. They know if you're left alone, you're a non-threat. What? How does that even make the least bit of sense? Once again, he has destroyed so many universes and recently impregnated a f***ing planet. It's not Citizen Kane, but why compete with whatever's going on here, you know? I'm going with Star Wars meets Starship Troopers meets My Stepmother is an Alien. What a crappy Death Star. Does it really take this long to blow up a planet? The Ghost of Alderaan is pissed. Guess the galaxy's most wanted mammal needs her daddy to come change her diaper. Come on, kids, we have to go do a piece of shit 
Star Wars. Which, they dropped the ball on the title of this episode. Rick Turn of the Jerry? Okay, but shouldn't it have been a play on Attack of the Clones? Oh, am I not a non-threat now? I really want to know how these portals work exactly, because there was a previous episode where Morty was stuck with the gun and Rick wasn't in the same universe, and he couldn't figure out how to get it to work. Which means it's not something as simple as thinking about where you want each portal to lead. So if there is some kind of coordinate code, that means Rick just opened up nine portals to each of these space bugs positions by hitting a button on the gun a couple of times. And I'm calling glub glub on that sh Looks like Summer went to the Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw school of using a dead or unconscious body for facial recognition. As I watch Rick once again pull out a whole bunch of gadgets to get into yet another fight, I wonder why he didn't use any of this stuff when he fought that Zeus guy from Childrick of Mort. Yeah, maybe he agreed on a no weapons fist fight, but Rick doesn't seem like the kind of guy who cares about the rules of combat. Some of Rick's extreme body mods don't even make sense. Sure, building a panic room for your heart keeps the heart itself from puncture, but those major entry and exit arta veins are all still exposed and in the same general area. Protecting the heart muscle itself after a giant drill has breached the entire chest cavity is so ineffective that it's basically the pull-out method of interior mech technology. How come some of the pants are... The NX-5 can't destroy Wrangler jeans. These product placement things are amusing and tiresome at the same time. They're tires amusing. But what I really want to know is how does one of the guys not know about the NX-5's inability to destroy Wrangler jeans? Maybe we could do like a parrot trap thing together sometime. As long as you mean the Lindsay Lohan version. Haley Mills shaming. Rick survives this. Never thought this was how I'd die. We're nowhere near Venice and you're not a dwarf in a raincoat. Don't Rick now. It fascinates me that an entire family can be this critical and suck this much. I don't even know where to go here. Um, the Kardashians, the Vanderpumps, the Chrisleys. I feel like there's one obvious one that could trump all of these, but I'm at a loss. Let me give you some of this sweet ass. Weekend at Tammy's. <laughs> Oh, come on. Phoenix person has a super obvious on-off switch on his back. Why? Morty, look at your little balls. I know. Mom and Terry about your own kid's balls. Also, please understand, I am super happy this scene does not contain Morty balls. But since I'm a sinner, I've got to sin. That's what I do. Also, also, hugging your son with his balls exposed. You jerk offs ready to get the answers to your burning questions? Yeah, like, where is the family car? Do they park it at the end of the street now? Remember, Clone Beth is just a cartoon. Remember, Clone Beth is just a cartoon. Just where is this secret room supposed to be in the house? This secret room would be going directly into a visible part of the house somewhere. Ah, uh, goodbye, old friend. Just because you're done with the invisibility belt doesn't mean you have to throw it away. Why would you throw something so mind-bogglingly useful out for Otto the Garbage Man to find it? But doesn't the tongue of the belt have to go into the buckle for it to work? And why would it make the entire truck disappear? Wouldn't the buckle only be around a few items of trash and it would make those disappear? If this is the way the belt works, then everything Summer and Morty touched when they were wearing it should have become invisible. Not to mention Jerry's pee. Were we, were we blades in that one? For the love of snipes, how many times do I have to say it? Keep it singular. There is only one blade. Also, show never gives us the context for any of this. If it does it in another episode, fine. I'll give back like 30 sins. But for now, I'm all horned up for the alternate gem dimension and the show keeps rolling over, insisting it has a headache. Hello? Morty gets cell phone reception in space. Meanwhile, I lose connection anytime a nearby squirrel farts. Don't ask me how I know, I just know, okay? Painting your toenails on your bed with no towel or any kind of protection underneath. Life yeah, that's a great point. Failing. The 3D holographic warning system, however, is operating at full capacity. I'd appreciate the detail in this call screen, except that your screen darkens when you have it next to your face, so there's really no reason for it to be showing anyway. Look at all that work you did for nothing, Rick and Morty. Do you feel ashamed? Come on, come on! This works. Oh, you touched what? the ocean, Whoa, Morty! The Technically, the ship is touching the ocean. Rick and Morty are still in said ship, so I don't see how the treaty we're about to find out about with Mr. Nimbus has been broken. Kaboom! You've been lawyered. Now face the wrath of your once and eternal foe, Mr. Nimbus! Sorry? Who is that? My... Nemesis. Nimbus Nemesis never named, noted, nor noticed until now. Noteworthy Nemesis named non-stop normally. This Nimbus Nimrod not nearly known enough for Nemesis nomination. I am Mr. Nimbus! He's gonna say that a lot. I mean, I would too if that was my name. It's Mr. F Nimbus! It's a lot better than Namor. Uses magic ray to double the length of the table, but has to use a cloth to clean up the wine spill. Sure, why not? Is that his nemesis? Rick has a nemesis? Rick and Morty is clearly poking fun at shows that introduce some random pivotal character in a later season, such as Cousin Oliver and the Brady Bunch, or Eli Scruggs on Desperate Housewives. But Rick and Morty is only so good at poking fun at these tropes because they're too guilty of using these tropes. It's the classic comedy trope-a-dope, and we ain't fallen for it, Rick and Morty. 
Summer is going to dive into the Marianas Trench to recover the forbidden shell that gives him his power. Allowing your granddaughter to dive into the Marianas Trench to recover the forbidden shell that gives Mr. Nimbus his power without her parents' explicit consent. So time moves faster in there? It's like a Narnia thing? I'm not a beaver who believes in Jesus Christ, Morty. I think they call them Bell Beavers. They're a distant cousin to the Beliebers. It's a long story. Also, he didn't ask if you were a Narnian, just if it was like Narnia in there. I don't know, man. All that defensiveness probably means you want to believe in Jesus. Or be a beaver. It's probably the beaver thing. Mr. Nimbus is an ice-cold killer, Morty. Pretty sure Morty already experienced the ice-cold killer sensation a few minutes ago when Jerry and Beth declared their love of porn to him. Police, a strange horny ocean man is on my lawn. Horny? Because he wears a Speedo? Likes to moisturize? Moves sensually? Just because he's sexy doesn't make him horny, Jerry. Project much? Fight. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Nimbus sums up the entirety of the human relationship cycle in five seconds. I don't know whether to take a sin off for the intense but hilarious depth or sob in the corner contemplating the mundanity of my existence. In other words, yeah, it's a Rick and Morty episode. Leaving the recliner chair reclined. Patricide. It's fine, whatever. Terms. Term number one. How does Nimbus not hear this? He's right across the table. I accidentally had a video playing with similar noises across the table one time, and now I'm disinvited from family Thanksgiving. Also, where is this camera exactly, and did Rick plan it? And if Rick did plan it, why didn't he just grab the forbidden shell while he was down there? I thought you already went. I did. I just, just got a little busy. Why would you make up a lie that makes you look bad when the truth would make more sense and take the blame off of you? Yeah, I got it, but the adults wanted all of it. Bing, bang, boom, time to suck face. Where is your wine boy, Richard? I thirst. He's getting it. Now, I'm not sure why Rick thinks this, because he didn't ask Morty to get more wine. What if it gets weird? Even just contemplating having sex with the fish guy already puts this in the weird category, so you might as well just go all in at this point, Jerry. The wine survives this. Centuries of this. Isn't every end a beginning? Stay back! I don't want your stripped down Sundance sci-fi bull****. <laughs> oh, Rick and Morty, how I have missed you. Take your sin back for just being you, old friend. Can you believe he bought that tree bullshit? Easier than I can believe they've been running the simulation nonstop all these years just waiting on Morty to return. But sure, yeah, go for it. Make us slightly more wet. Title of my sex tape? I just took some wine. I said I was sorry. What the f*** is wrong with you people? But it was Morty's wine to take. So why does he think that that's the issue here? He realizes he's killed a lot of their people, right? Uh, it is Morty, though, so I guess maybe he doesn't realize this. Frozen in time, forever asleep. And exactly how long has forever been again? Morty leaves one time and comes back a decade later, but another time it seems millennia have passed? If you think I'm not going to send your inconsistent portal time passage rules just because you didn't officially establish any, <laughs> you have severely underestimated my willingness to stretch for a sin. Why did I clone myself genitally? Weird Hoovy clone guy would be excellent at TV sins. Let me deus ex machina this shit and let's go home. I believe you mean deus ex rickina. If you're gonna try to be all excellent at TV sins and such, at least throw a portmanteau in there to pretend to keep it fresh. Oh sh**, well that's cool. Why? Because it has a setting that disintegrates all clothing except the parts covering the genitals? I'd go with convenient, or prudish. Prudvenient? Did you think I would let you die alone, Richard? <laughs> Pelvis ex junkina. See? That's how it's done. Yes. Time. I had nothing but time. But it's never. While Rick winces in pain at this nutshot, I feel the need to point out that he's been standing here nonchalantly ignoring chunks of flesh out of his body. Either you feel pain or you don't, Rick. You can't have it both ways. You two are hungry. Yep. Good thing you made a fresh plate of, I'm gonna say, strained orange pulp? Mashed potatoes with amber food coloring? A pile of Sunny D slushy? I'm not sure what it is, but don't you try to pull off that vomitous mass's eggs. You know better. Can I kill God? Stop, Summer. It. Summer took out an onslaught of underwater foes in the previous episode. How would she not be useful when going to battle anyone? And sure, she's a clone, so maybe that wasn't this summer, but it's too early in this episode to know that. Sweetie, don't get all worked up before your job interview. Job interview? Show doesn't resolve this. I mean, I know that's the point, but you can almost hear the audible glee in the writer's room when they're like, let's introduce B-plot hanging threads so we control the audience with this ultimately meaningless episode. And you know how much I hate threads and things that are hanging. So Jerry and Morty are shot side by side, but in the overhead view, they're now separated by a table. And hey, where did that juicy plate of not eggs go? Oh no, they died. This show has killed its main characters so much that caring about them is like eating your eighth piece of pizza. I mean, you still like pizza and all, but at that point you've eaten too much. But also, once you get to eight, is nine really going to make that much of a difference? So you stuff it down like the meaningless hunk of matter it is and wonder if anything even means anything anymore. 
Hunt me, hunt me, somebody hunt me! <laughs> if Sweaty Deathwish here truly wanted to be hunted, he'd be hiding in a bit more stealth. What he should be saying is, chase me, chase me, or kill me, kill me. I, mister, always wants to be hunted. Yes, and how interesting did you think that would stay? Show then proceeds to hunt itself for the next 20 some minutes, making another self-referential dig, which in turn makes my job even harder. So dang it, I shall. Golf. Well, I don't see any stakes at all. Summary of the biggest issue with Rick and Morty at this point somehow makes it into the episode. And by somehow, I mean the writers intentionally put it there as a meta wink to self defuse any criticism because they probably think it's not a bug, it's a feature, but in either case, it is a sin. So the new family we think is our family suddenly dies, and I guess this is the part where I remember that it isn't a new season of Rick and Morty until we have a good old game of Four Smith Monty. The only explanation as to how this green car missed the arrival of a spacecraft and the obliteration of the adjacent vehicle is distracted driving. Put your phones away, people. Holy crap, has Morty called me by your naming at the age of 14? When the outside grows on the inside and then reaches back outside, your plant addiction has gone too far. How many lavender shirts does one person who only wears coral shirts need? This armor somehow flattens the basketball hoop on the garage without it moving, folding, or pieces of it flying off. And also leaves large sections of the roof and walls unprotected. Rick would suck at purge survival is all I'm saying. Decided it was maybe better as a kind of kinetic mislead for another special episode. Oh, jeez, Rick and Morty is so up its own ass with his fourth wall destruction. Then I swear an episode in season six will just be a static camera filming the actual actor's table read. It will be so clever. But then eat people. Yeah. During this scene, I thought, oh, interesting. I'm eating popcorn too. And then as each murder devolves into organs and viscous explosions, my level of popcorn enjoyment began to wane. This is a sin for me for getting to never eat while watching this show. I'm not looking at your ass. Public beaches. Summer, you fucking idiot. Calling your granddaughter an idiot while concurrently exposing your dick in her direction. Jerry, come on, family emergency. A bigger emergency than my lemon squares not setting? You mean those lemon squares that appear to be stacked nicely on top of each other, indicating that they have indeed set pretty well? All right, we've seen enough of these decoy houses to ask the question. Are we really suggesting that all these decoys have been set up with not only identical houses, but in identical neighborhoods? And most importantly, why do they all have the driveway crack from when the house was removed and replaced in season one? I think you got the wrong house, bro. Analysis mode, password 80085. Kind of expected a funnier password. I kind of expected a Rick would have shot another Rick in the head already in the time it took him to make that password boobs joke. Are the golden circles the decoys or the concentric circles? And why is there no text on the map so we can point out inconsistencies? This map is confusing and is hindering my ability to do my intended job of actually pointing out real sins instead of just making jokes. Or hindering my ability to make jokes instead of just pointing out real sins, depending on who you listen to. Analysis mode 80085. Hmm? No. But if these aren't this Rick's decoys, then why were they on this Rick's terrible map? Analysis mode, password 8 equals sign, equals sign, capital D. Honestly, the vertical bar in number 3 works better in most fonts. <laughs> Go ahead and throw in a few more equal signs while you're at it. Am I right, fellas? Before you say anything, they were already killing each other. And you saw that through two walls? Also, three spaceships, a lava gun, a house engulfed in flames, and exactly zero nosy neighbors. Show doesn't know how to suburb correctly. Connery plays the Spaniard, but does nothing about his accent. I presume Decoy Rick would be excellent at cinema sins on TV sins. I say we split up. Some of us take down squids while the rest Engage of us- Engage in B stories while the track simultaneously? No thank you. D&D conversations. Why are we wearing these? Better question. Where did you get these? Do they have an assortment of fabrics and foam to construct these costumes? Did they make a stop at the fabric store? There's one. Conveniently. Why is Jerry even holding an active bomb after the crash? Is it in any way in Jerry's character to be aware of how to do something like this or even want to do it in the first place? It's either accidentally convenient or out of character and Cinny is hungry today, so feast Cinny, feast. How exactly are these restraints containing the Smiths? If they have room to breathe, they have room to wriggle out the top of these things. Can't kill you yet. The skin needs to be fresh. So why peel the skin off at all? If the skin is removed from its blood supply, it'd likely start to die pretty quickly. The peeled skin is already unfresh, is what I'm saying. Also, you can't simply banana someone and still leave the victim alive. It, at least that's what Jeremy told me. Come on, there's a place we can go. And despite knowing that all of the clones, sorry, decoys, would also be somewhat programmed to want to kill each other, they do in fact go. Is this decoy missing his pickle, Rick? It doesn't appear that Mr. Skin cut it off, and you can't spell decoy without the D. What about the squids? The Summers are going to explain that the squids were decoys who realized they were decoys and wanted to kill the other decoys, and sure, sure, fine, whatever. But in a world of apparently countless decoys, have none of them died before now to start this Asimov cascade? Have you met Jerry? Like 12% of Jerry's die within the first year of existence. An absolutely pendulous ball. I mean, is that something anyone 
wants? You know, the only way to prove I'm real and not him is to ice his expository ass. Self-referential ass position. The shield lowers, and somehow this version of the family is battle-charred and bruised, which seems unlikely because their shield has been protecting them up until now, and also in the previous shot, they were completely normal. I'll just point out once again that no one outside of the Smith family seems to be interested in this insane activity happening all around them. Not one civilian, passing cars, stray animals, police officer, or really anyone is alarmed by what is happening in these streets. You want to get in one more I told you so about synthetic life or whatever this week's theme is? How are these mouths moving? Big Bird's mouth moved because one of the puppeteer's arms was actually moving his head instead of Big Bird's other arm. But clearly, both arms are functioning here as Rick gestures around. So what moves the mouth? I want to say technology. I want to believe technology. And I think it's just convenient animation because those heads are as hollow as a presidential promise. Rick survives this, I think. Or decoy Rick maybe survives whatever this is. Someone survives something that much, I'm sure. Ha! <laughs> Both Jerry's stopped fighting to hug. <laughs> Hunty McPherson here. One shot fatalities the entire Smith family, but only wounds Rick for reasons. And did you just bleep McPherson? Oh yeah, I hear it now. You should have hunted me. What? Who? Since the show apparently wants to sin itself, I'll let Rick handle it from here. Were, were you significant? Like, like, did we tee you up? You want to be hunted? God, I have so many questions. Decoys, 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 Okay, show, when you say you love merch and you flaunt a shirt, you sell it. We have a new Prometheus shirt we showed off in a video recently. It's also available in our store. Whereas I scrolled through five pages of shirts to only discover that this shirt isn't even available. You know, though, now that I really think about it, they really did spare me a lot of horrible looks at the Sunday Buffet Rush. My acid rain will destroy all things green and natural. But not the very natural skin of the Diesel Weasel, or its very natural body parts in general. Those are immune, for reasons. There's only one solution for Earth's pollution. You! Planetina looks straight to camera as if she has a polar ice cap's chance in hell of changing the lifestyle habits of an audience which is currently juggling their free hand from a Reddit scroll, an energy drink, and their own personal Yosemite shirt. What the f was that sh Kidnapping. Also, that was an obvious ripoff of Captain Planet. And by your powers combined, I will not have our childhood hero mocked. Go Planeteers! Mother Nature has enlisted the help of four young adults from each major ethnicity. That's actually not racist, but the way the show pokes fun of it might be. Great, Taylor Murphy dumps me the day before his hella big pool party, and my little brother's dating a Phase 4 superhero. Um, actually, Summer, I think you'll find that Planetina can't even be in Phase 4 because she isn't even in the MCU canon. I mean, she doesn't even appear- no! Just shoot me in the f***ing head until I die. A comment that is very triggering, while simultaneously meaningless after that bullshit decoy episode. What in the name of sweet baby Meesix is going on with Jerry's breakfast? How does he expect to eat this soft-boiled egg if his toast isn't pre-cut into strips ready for dipping? He can't afford to cut the toast now. Every second he wastes, the gooey egg interior is slowly solidifying. Also, the egg wasn't even cooked? And why didn't he rescue the toast? Why is breakfast? Three planets are all ending in a delayed succession. Surely there must be a multitude of cataclysmic events befalling a plethora of planets across the universe. If Rick really wanted to go on a doomed planet bar crawl, isn't his ship fast enough to prevent their proximity to each other from being the limiting factor? Or failing this, couldn't he use his, oh, I don't know, f portal gun? If you don't want to help me, I'll find my own goddamn way to the wildfire. Kids. Tina girl, have you gained weight? Well, I had a plant-based donut yesterday. Just a half. Sugar is worst thing for figure, darling. I don't know what's worse about this exchange. The fact that Tina's being fat shamed for eating a donut, or that said donut was plant-based. I mean, it's in both, just to be safe. This is freaking you out, huh? No, what's freaking me out is this phone fitting into that pocket. So are you two dating? Asking this question to a kid. <laughs> Bonding with your grandparent over, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, <laughs> the while in the 
Don't look now, but someone's giving you the big eye. What? In a sea of aliens with big eyes all staring at them on the party float? You don't say. Ready, right. Meet me at the car. Calling a ship a car. One of these has to be hers. Where'd she go? Where'd the purses come from? They left away seconds ago and returned with 50 bags. Were they having sex next to the lost and found room? Also, why would a race of aliens bring their purses to an end of the world orgy and then abandon them at the bar? Money would be meaningless, identification pointless, and whatever other products you keep in your bag, you kind of want to have them on your person, right? Also, also, many of these purses are shoulder length, and I'd think their sensitive elbow orifices would rub up on the bag and either overstimulate or chafe or both. Me, why does this show make me think of these things? How do you let someone permanently tattoo the wrong arrow directions on your body? I mean, you're literally wearing the reference on your chest, so you know better. Idiots, that pearl away! Wait, wait, wait. I, I isn't it interesting how they can summon Planetina and whatever she is holding, but can also force her to be dismissed without the item she holds? This spell was obviously crafted by the Dark Lord that rules plots in the world of convenience. This really must be the greatest party in the universe. This guy's loving it so much he duplicated himself so he can enjoy it from 12 different perspectives. Neat. He holds lots, honey. Calling a woman honey. Actually calling anyone honey. You don't even know me, Kristen from Denny's. Oh, that's how you smoke marijuana. I mean, I of course knew that because I smoke the reefer all the time. Wow, how about this weather? Sure is unseasonably warm tonight. What is this mop made of that would allow it to break a storage shelf and obliterate a container? What are Morty's teeth made of that would allow him to instantly bite off a finger? What are his lips made of that he could blast a firebolt out of his mouth without any singeing? Fire! Ah! Fire! We've seen enough of these now that I really shouldn't be surprised by how quickly and remorselessly Morty turns to murder. And yet... His phone keep going to voicemail. His phone has been ringing for a minute and 43 seconds before going to voicemail? What sort of hellhole are they living in? They should be relieved by their impending deaths. Also, voicemail. Which one of you ordered a pizza? No one ordered pizza? What is this? Not ordering pizza is always a sin. Morty shows up in a murder pie hat, and my question is, did he swipe a hat from a local pizzeria with that name? Or did he stop at a hat embroidery store and have this whipped up for just such an occasion? <laughs> Imagine either being so dumb or having so little regard for human life that you repeatedly machine gun your boss just because your intended target ran behind her. Ears! I've never had a magical ring streaming air forced into my mouth before, but let's say I had. I truly believe my instinct would be to keep my mouth open rather than create an unimaginably tight seal around said ring. Ah, not cool. I'm not a fan of gratuitous murder, but this right here gets my seal of approval. Sorry, I've been harboring that one for a while. Okay, I'll stop now. Small consolation, but this soon-to-be-dead Slardivarshan would be great at TV sins. Not keeping your eyes on the road while driving through what appears to be an asteroid field. That's right, girlfriend. This is what you're up against. Elbow hemorrhoids? Olecranon prolapse? Best set of elbow titties on more gluts. Okay, hitting your funny bone under any circumstances is agony, but I can't begin to imagine how painful it would be to accidentally catch these L boobies on, say, the corner of a table. You know what? I have someone I could check with. Hey, Danae! Yes? How much would that hurt? It would suck. Yeah, that sounds right. Thanks. You're welcome. Weirdos. Then I put my sunglasses on and walked out like nothing happened. What a romantic story about our son killing a room full of people. I don't care if they were technically in self-defense. Morty just admitted to multiple murders while casually playing whatever the fork this board game is and no one cares. And no, Jerry and Beth, that quip in those mildly withering stares do not count as disapproval. I only want to spend as much time as possible with your son. My son is 14, miss. I'm really glad that someone is finally addressing the underaged elephant in the room. But why is Beth, A, the only person to realize that this is sick and wrong, and B, more outraged by this than all of the recently described boner-induced bloodlust? There's only one solution for a solution! Whatever that solution is, I'm fairly certain it lays somewhere on the spectrum after rhyming couplets, but way before multiple homicides. No! Morty is crushed and runs away because Planetina's current body count is 25% higher than his. Competitive relationships like this are so toxic. This gay sex with my dad is terrific! Paternal sodomy. Pototomy? So, you know what? There's just some places I will not dip my portmanteaus in. <laughs> 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 Oh, gross. Now you're grossed out, Summer? This is what's pushed you over the line? Not the incest. Not the L boobs. Not whatever the f this was. Swimming through these bodies and kicking this gropey tentacle is what really took the biscuit for you.
this works. So why the f wasn't it plan A? Is genocide really a palatable price to pay for the sake of Rick's party boner? Ah, uh, let me just grab my phone here. Um, Although both can be cloaca bearing, this crude drawing is clearly a frog, which is an amphibian, not a reptile. Cap should have antenna caps, no cap. So Beth is standing at the washing station, washing this bloody body part, which she then throws away. She turns back to the water to wash the blood off her gloves. But why wash your gloves at all when one, you're just gonna throw them away, and two, you should be washing your hands. Okay, but we've been here for hours. I don't wanna hang out at the stupid horse hospital. Kids. What's this thing? That's a breeding mount. How are you communicating so clearly with someone who has departed the room entirely? And if the walls are so thin, how does Beth not hear Morty flip on the bang bang badoop bop machine? I can't believe I'm gonna ask this question, but since we find out soon Morty is going to f the Bojacker, how exactly does he get his Morty Jr. into it? He's practically at eye level with the entry point, drinking directly from the carton while on a lawn chair sitting on a slanted roof. Come on! Yeah, because rolling a barrel of horse semen from the street is much easier than backing up the station wagon to the garage. Reading from a great distance away. You know that race of underground dwelling cannibal horse people that we're always fighting? Yeah, the chuds. W w what about them? You can't just take an acronym that has already situated itself in previous pop culture and make it your own. And how would the acronym even work in this form? Cannibalistic horse underground dwellers? It doesn't roll off the tongue in a meaningful or fun way. Cahud might be a terrible movie, but it got here first. Oh, so what the is up with the security at this horse hospital. No one here finds out a kid is mounting the horse juicer. Why don't you trust labels? All right, fine. I won't test it. Wait, what? Since when does Rick give into Morty's hysterics? Or even trust labels? God damn, your generation really picks random hills to die on. Zoomers. Can you give me a minute? I'm trying to steer around the bodies of our neighbors. Oh, that felt like Gene. Knowing your neighbors by the sound their body makes when you run over them. Space sperm? Sperm from space? Very Is anything a stretch for the Smith family? They've seen countless unexplainable things up to this point, so this newest shenanigan should end in a casual shrug. This is the greatest country on Earth! It is not. Don't blame me. I'm just quoting Jeff Daniels. Hello, hello, sorry I'm late. Oh, look. A fumbling, disheveled, and awkward scientist cliche. Neat. How do we deal with these orgasogoblins? Who's gonna tell the writers that sperm and orgasms are not synonymous? Just because he oomphs doesn't mean she zoomphs. It's a fine suggestion, but I doubt their leader will be a sexy queen that needs to be kickboxed. Sexy sperm queen foreshadowing. So queen shadowing? Queen zigzagging? Rick and Morty survive this. No, you're getting dumber because that's a trebuchet. I guess the show has time to discuss the difference between a trebuchet and a catapult, but not concern itself about the giant hole in the aircraft. Right to the top, just the way you like it. Except the water isn't to the top. Get this guy a Nobel Prize. <laughs> You became a woman today. <sighs> yeah, that checks. Oh, I was so wrong about this guy. He didn't even buy us any time. Well, maybe run away instead of watching someone attempt to be both the six and the nine. The stalling is really on you, Rick. Silence in the presence of me. I am the sperm queen. I don't even need to question this one. Title of my sex tape. In fact, a lot of dialogue could fall under many of my titles. Space sperm? Sperm from space? Very Damn, they must be huge. Why would the sperm go to the Grand Canyon? We'll use it as a placeholder and beat it later. All right. right to the top, just the way you like it. I, I know how to s myself. You need more than that, dummy. You need a horse, handjob solo. How did Dan Harmon get a hold of my stash? I don't know whether to be ashamed or overjoyed. Why do you have the horse jerk-off machine for my daughter's hospital? It's kind of weird that Rick knows for certain this breeding machine is the one in Beth's workplace, no? Oh, but our stallion is already here. I get that Morty created all of them in the first place, but do they really need Morty to continue their race? Every spermable person could be eligible for this very disgusting, highly sticky, nightmare-inducing situation that I'm totally not signing up for a chance to experience myself. Oh, what was it like? Fantastic! Asking your grandson how his sexual experience went. Sorry, I just thought maybe I could have repeated sex with the horse machine without it becoming Armageddon. You and me both, Morty. You and me both. Oh, sh**. Did I say that out loud? What, what did you do? I got out of your eye line. <laughs> Show, man. You can't beat me. You didn't bring a woman that can kickbox. Totally fair, but also kickboxist. My hands are tied. Oh. Form a perimeter. Protect that egg at all costs. Or, and this might be crazy, shoot the egg and destroy it. You slept with my daughter. I did? Oh, shit, I did. Chedestiality. Oh. You come to the kingdom of Chuds for forgiveness? Um, technically, Rick and Morty were kidnapped to the kingdom of Cahuds, so they didn't come here willingly to do anything. Chuds don't forgive humans. Chuds eat humans. This is out there even for us. It is not. Right. I, I love you too, Princess Ponietta. Lying.
Where did you get all that? And why aren't they spraying it on the egg? Take three steps back, Amazing Jonathan. Show proposes the idea that the President of the United States would know who the Amazing Jonathan is. Let's Nancy Reagan this bitch. I would say that none of this hopping from sperm to sperm should work, but really we could just say that about the entirety of this show. Mom, I promise to use condoms even when it's butt stuff. Okay, we have a lot to talk about tonight. Waiting this long to talk to your kid about butt stuff. Always be honest. Sometimes it will hurt people. Sometimes it will help. But always be honest. Sports Illustrated's Kathy Ireland is making a lot of sense. I don't think we appreciated Sports Illustrated's Kathy Ireland enough in her heyday. And that's 100% a sin. A giant incest baby in space? Still makes more sense than 2001, I guess. Jerry, can you watch the kids tonight? Oh, um... No, we can't watch the kids. It's guys' night. Not telling anyone else how to parent, but why is Beth even asking Jerry to watch the kids? Summer's old enough to watch Morty, and they've left the home alone before in prior episodes. I'm just saying this feels like a purely arbitrary way to get Beth involved in some hell-raising activities later on in the show. Also, this dartboard location. Are you sure that's where the grapes go, Morty? Because I feel like they'd feel more at home beside that f***ing fruit bowl that we've sinned before for being in a ridiculous place in the living room, and we will keep sinning until they f***ing remove it. And they're all crowning. I have to go. Show leaves the achieving the rare triple crown joke in the stable. Yeah, most people would call that family. <laughs> you're so gross. You have to like it or you're sexist. That's flatulist. I'm not sure if this creature has a tongue peen or a mouth gina, but either way, this peen gina dentata is getting a sin. Hey, we're in luck, gang. They've got the entire Smash Mouth catalog. <laughs> Smash Mouth shaming. What? They had that song. You know, the one there was haying now and they couldn't get enough of their baby and, and yeah, they were Putting your feet on your eating surface with shoes on. Is that classic snake? Boy, that guy just keeps getting bigger. Commenting on Bruce Chutback's snake. Dude, this bitch plays it close to the vest. Thinking running tap water will drown out the sound of you talking about someone in the next room. Nuh uh uh, nuh uh uh. I said don't touch my sh. Also, I just watched Jurassic Park on cable. Explaining your references. You could be brilliant, Rick and Morty, but you're a coward. Black Swan. Seriously, though, touch my sh and I'll freeze your and amber. So how exactly would that threat stop Summer from touching his Which means Rick is going to die because of you, unless you, you go offline. This computes. This computes. Da bow bow. Oh yeah. As much as this Bueller's on for some time, I'm surprised the title of this episode wasn't Rickus Mortler's Rick Day Off Morty. Why would a mailbox society live in buildings shaped like mailboxes? If it were a letter or package society, sure, but do humans design houses that look like giant humans? Dogs, maybe, but not humans. Ooh, Going postal. Summer Morty and Chutback survive this. Why is it that whenever the Smiths bring some rando on one of these adventures, said rando is never freaking the f out? Chutback should be chutbacking his pants right now, or at the very least asking how the f they're flying in space. Except I don't get pleasure from mocking others because I'm not lame. <laughs> uh, no sin here, just really great show, being really great. I mean, I have to add a sin or sin he won't move on, but we're totally not lame. Next. Mm. What is that? Essence of hell. How did they get this drink or these cups? They didn't have any of this on them when they entered through the hell gate. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I am sure that Morty needs more water intake. It looks like he's peeing orange juice. I hope it's at least pulp free. What the hell, bruh? Thing I say every time there's more than three clasps to undo somehow makes it into the episode. Why would I like a change former? I'm the most powerful car in the universe. And what, that means you don't have feelings? Actually, yes, it does. It's a f car. I am a car, not a robot. Wrong. You're both. A robot's simply a computer that can transport itself and do tasks, which you can. You could have said you aren't an android, since that has more of a human connotation. Or you could have said you aren't a changeformer, since that has more of a don't sue us, I swear they aren't transformers connotation. Isn't a doorknob a virgin? Not mine. <laughs> What do you expect? I mean, she's my wife. I almost want to take a sin off for the show pointing out that Borat isn't all that funny. But then again, this made me think of how unfunny Borat is, and that irritated me, so... Jerry's the best. Talking about someone in the bathroom not realizing said someone is in the stall and can hear everything being said cliche. Also, how did they not realize Jerry was in the bathroom? These two were outside when he said he had to go pee. After a week rife with a fetter of sin, I yearn for a taste of his cringe. Sinning episodes of The Office. Casually dining while face peeled hell spawner around. This is gonna lose this place at least one of its Michelin stars. Remember Beth is just a cartoon. Remember Beth is just a cartoon. Remember Beth. Also, there's not nearly explanation enough for how Rick has created these outfits. Is Beth really bleeding? Did they stop at a costume store? Does Rick really have a hole in his midsection now? Is he wearing a Marlin? A Marlin? There's no Marlins in baseball. I mean, 
Hell? Oh, it's painful, so I love it. This pleasure equals pain equals pleasure diatribe goes on for all the some time. I think the statute of sinitations is about up on sending Rick and Morty producing complex devices out of thin air like this arm cannon. So in order not to let it slip by, I'll just point out that something can't come from nothing. Something has to come from something. And you can yell nanotechnology all you want and it still doesn't make it any less of a cheat. Zippers near genitals. And yes, I'm aware most pants already have this. It was always a bad idea. See, cringe cannot exist in a vacuum. It needs to be observed. The TV Sins motto somehow makes its way into this episode. Like what I did with the chip in her head? Is she gonna be okay? Summer is concerned about not Allison Hannigan, but not the sentient alien mailboxes she obliterated earlier. Could this be the end of mousetrap nipples? I mean, one can hope, but because of wiki fan pages and fan fiction, I'm guessing not. <laughs> Sorry, I farted. The rare fart joke bookends. Look, when you bookend with backend, I gotta get some respect. And by respect, I mean sins. The lasers seem awfully close to the large American flag. What if there's a draft? Sure, leave these cameras operational, but shoot the others with utter snot. Makes total sense. Morty's laser cannon is aimed upward, but by the time the beam takes out a Bell and Liberty, it has managed to shift trajectory enough to cause me to send every possible person, place, or thing that was in the line of this plot shot. Also, with weapons like that, it almost makes you wonder why taking out any of the other decoy families or sperm monsters in previous episodes was a big deal at all. It was a Trojan horse, Morty. Never trust the French. That's racist. Once again, all kinds of is going down at the Smith's house, and there are no nosy neighbors to be seen. Has anyone that works on this show lived in the suburbs? There'd be like a watch party barbecue going on next door with at least 20 to 30 people in attendance. There'd probably even be a bounce house rented to keep the kids occupied. Well, happy Thanksgiving to me. Celebrating yourself. Can't wait to see what a shimmer does to my prostate. Shimmering your prostate. I don't even know what that means, but certainly it's sinful. Synchronized digital exposition. Sync digital position? Coop, not on Thanksgiving. How would she know who's calling Coop? Does he have a specific vibration pattern for turkey time? That little race car driver, you got bacon in your belly. What world do you want him rearing up in? Parental predestination. What happened to the clothes they were wearing? Did they meld into the skin of the turkey? Because when they get turned back into humans later, they're no longer wearing the clothes. Yeah, yeah, it's cartoon, blah, 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 but have you watched this channel before? All due respect, sir, I know flesh when I see it. Those flesh-covered robots should buy us some time. But where did Rick get the flesh? You know what, some things are okay to be left unsaid. I'll still send it for lack of explanation, but I'll be okay not knowing about Rick's leather face practices. Ship, go stealth. But only after flying directly overhead so we can clearly see where you are in relation to your mission. And forget about asking how the ship escaped the bubble back home unnoticed. We don't ask those kinds of obvious plot hole questions anymore. Huh, turkey marines. The president came to play. But you knew this already, right? I mean, you did the entire expositional plan thing and even showed fully armed marines who won't recognize me. So why a shock? Let it be known that it cannot be an official episode of Rick and Morty until a questionable egg dish has been placed on their dining room table. Hmm, huh, that's weird. ID chips for Fincher and Rodriguez are glitching. Yeah, super weird that you've not been monitoring them the entire time. You've turned men into turkeys, people. Watch their f***ing vitals. Wearing heels on a lawn. Also wearing socks with heels on the lawn. Here comes dipsh right on schedule. Nothing can go wrong now. Aside from things immediately going wrong, I'm curious how the original plan would have gone from here. In order to be pardoned, Rick would have to be the selected turkey. How does he plan to stand out? How would he have ensured that he was going to be selected? I know it's not sexual favors. Turkeys are notoriously selfish lovers. Hold your positions as a feeding friend! The blueberries have been available in this dish for any of the birds to eat at any point. So why would their sudden presence on the ground initiate a food frenzy? I hate to be morbid, but if you use the angle of the gun barrels as a guide, every bird in this pit should be dead now. Sir, we are losing the mental game down here. The mental game? I think your bigger issue is that someone up the chain forgot to mention there were people inside turkeys in this chamber, and that all machine guns should be turned off. Because bird stomachs are just filled with air, so when you punch them, whatever is inside just cannons outward. Super scientific. Does anyone find it suspicious that the laboratory now only has six Turkifier thingamajigs? They didn't know two of their own wouldn't be returning. Did they? But why does this turkey look anything like the president when it's transformed? The pill was simply a transmitter assigned to the president. There was no mention of it being DNA encoded, and why would it be? Look at this dumb piece of shit. Earlier humans had no issue communicating with the marines in turkey form, but now they can't understand the president. Sounds like a load of turkey shit.
to me. So, to be clear, the president planned to straight up murder Rick and Morty for charring a little piece of the Constitution and activating a war machine that he doesn't actually care about in the first place? I know, I know, questions like this matter about as much as questioning fire under the ocean in a SpongeBob episode. But still, why is there fire under the ocean? I thought we already rehumanized all the Turkified Marines. Forgetting Fincher and f***ing Rodriguez. I am selling New York to France <laughs> and giving all of the money to Congress. I want to send the idea that these tactics would prove to be this simple, but sadly I'm more inclined to believe they really are this simple. <sighs> That's right, murmur. And when you're done, get me some pants. Perhaps the most confusing part of this episode is how Rick managed to turn the president back into a human without a lab. We skip over any transformation explanation entirely, and you just know that wherever they went had something that would have worked for clothing. But I guess if you have a d you really just want it to swing around. There is more bare ass in this episode than both Boss Baby movies combined. Also, why does Rick randomly have suits that fit the president? There won't be a single bird left in DC. Something birds aren't real has been telling us the whole time. I can't stop looking at these two. This man's torso is longer than hers, but her legs are longer than his. And the circular footrests are down so low they both appear to either be very short or the stools aren't made correctly and wow, his hair grew back quickly. Sir, we've got Rick and Morty coming in what appears to be an unlicensed Star Wars ad-ad. Or as the millennials say, AT-80. Ah -AT. uh, yes, the is die hard a Christmas movie argument for Star Wars fans. Except it's even more annoying. Pilgrims of the Corn. I wish to explode. This works. Aw, they love each other. Perplexing, sure. But even more confusing, maybe the fact that the far superior race of aliens willingly returns to their secret chamber to re-enter some sort of cryogenic status so they can be called upon again at some point in the future by a civilization that they do not have to support. <laughs> Kids. The world! The world! Singing in the car. Also, Summer's the person that always holds their note after the song is clearly over to show off. We get it, Cindy. You know how notes work. No f***ing way. It can't be. This one's just for the commenters that said that Rick might have missed Jerry being in the back seat in a previous video. Dude just spotted the glint of a Gotron ferret out of the corner of his eye from a couple hundred thousand miles away. So I think he could clock Jerry sneaking into the trash saucer after he unlocked it. Chew on that, commenters. Look, no one said I wasn't petty. It's not a Gotron ferret, Morty. It's the blue Gotron ferret. So a Gotron ferret then. That's how it all began. To my sister, it was just another game. There will be a lot of Morty and Summer narration in this episode. And yes, in the end, they make fun of the fact that there was so much narration in the episode. So one might think that we would let that go. But one is naive and will receive 20 dings as your sentence. Joe thinks it's all cute, including snippets of actual episodes in the opening credits, but now that we're here, this section is redundant, and therefore wasteful, and therefore sinned. Mine smells skeleton -y. Smelling your boot. Not only is that way too much spaghetti and meatballs, but how exactly did they serve themselves off that plate and leave it so undisturbed? And if they got theirs from somewhere else, why did they even make a serving plate at all? The Smith family doesn't know how to food correctly. Told you, let's just get Gene from next door and a homeless guy. Considering this episode decides to have some actual continuity by bringing the incest baby in space back, I'd also like to note in that exact same episode, Rick runs over Gene, and therefore he would not be available for Gotron activities. Get your asses into some anime spacesuits! And despite not having been told where they are or given any instructions, they do. Rick's tube sucks the spaghetti off, but doesn't spit any out. Yeah, I heard it too. Where are we ziplining through futuristic metallic tunnels to? You're going to the center of a volcano. Incorrect. The correct answer is you're ziplining to a transport ship that will take you to the center of a volcano. So close, Rick. So close. Did I just monorail from my kitchen to Hawaii just to regroup in outer space above my kitchen? Jerry and this show continue to be excellent at TV sins. I swear this show tries to forgive its own sins so much it might as well be, well, organized religion. Guys, we did our best. They did not. Holy sh I, I can't believe this is working. Neither can I. Summer and Morty should either be passed out or vomiting profusely now after being swung around like that. Not to mention they're upside down when being fired. Wow. It's so ridiculous that this group could pull all this off with no training that I'm surprised the show hasn't sent itself for it yet. How do we just hit buttons? We're too big to fail. There it is. Holy sunny D, look at that purple stuff. What kind of circulatory system would be pushing that amount of fluid through it at that pressure? Even with a clean kill, I'm simply not buying this amount of kaiju. Rick showing affection will never not be weird and will always be a sin. I swear the only alien animation rule for this show is, is there somewhere you can put a nipple or a nutsack? Then do it! At Nipsack Animation, all creatures large and small deserve vaguely sexual external appendages. Having spaghetti at a cookout. 
Hothead Rick, he got that name because he was prone to dramatic outbursts. Explaining nicknames that need zero explanation. How they got him, not our problem. Turning a blind eye to murder. Gotron montage. Goat montage? Gotrage? The last time we saw Morty's Gotron ferret come out of the parking garage, he didn't need to reach for a ticket. He just left. Furthermore, why does he even need a ticket? Are you saying at the end of the adventure he comes back to the parking garage and gets a ticket that he now needs to leave it? And those Gotrons formed the Go-Gotron. These transformations make so little physical sense that it's clear this episode attended the Michael Bay School of Transforming Things. Let's just say we're the rightful owners of these ferrets. Then why were they scattered and buried across the universe? Yeah, scattered and buried. Let's go with that. We mean in a more general cultural sense. Eh? Overly emotive anime shaming. Are those boot bucks? How do these three even know he missed out on going to Tiffany For that matter, how do they even know they have the right Morty? Morty was supposed to be security. Morty? I, I, I stepped away, all right? That's a strange way of saying you were kidnapped. Dad, you know that's not what I do around here. No, I'm not your dad. I'm a version of him. But how does he know that's not his summer? How does he know that's the summer that is the Rick second in command? And why do all the Ricks dress differently and have different personality traits, but all the Jerry's, Beth, Mortys, and Summers are virtually the same? I'm not sure how this show ever expects to be successful with this kind of shoddy logic work. I mean, look at me. I'm easy to make happy, which is why nobody gives a sh** if I am. This statement is so depressingly true, I'm giving a sin for it, which makes me happy, which means no one cares. But as you guys recall, and as a lot of people keep bringing up, Morty and I did accidentally create a giant incest baby. Only Rick and Morty could pull off a Chekhov's giant incest baby ex machina through a full minute of exposition and still make me consider removing sins for it instead of adding them. After further consideration, I'm adding the sins anyway because we all have a part to play in this crazy world and my fate was decided long ago. If this is a Gotron from Gotrons from Gotrons, do you know how far a trip it would be from these robotic appendages to the head? No? Me either, but that's not gonna keep me from sitting how conveniently fast they got here. Say hello to my little me! Title of my sex tape? But how did you get here? Where did you find him? How do you still have your suits? How did you know where Rick would be? Who changes the America diaper if Incest Baby has to launch a missile from his rear port? Man, when it's time to wrap up an episode, Rick and Morty skips all the interesting stuff. Also, this is an incest baby, right? Do incest babies have better capabilities to float around in space without a suit? This baby isn't a space vehicle or the last Jedi's Princess Leia, so what the heck is going on here? ratatouille your giant incest space baby without explicit consent. Episode does not contain a boob world. Episode expects us to believe that Rick would help pack the car for a trip he's not even going on. Are you sure, Rick? I know, I know a cruise doesn't sound like an adventure on paper. What? A cruise only sounds like an adventure on paper. All you can eat food, the ocean views, random encounters with mysterious strangers. It's only once you're on board you realize you're trapped in a floating bacteria prison with half-cooked Sam and the threat of death below in the rocking waves, and a dude named Rusty who can't quit telling you about how his 2001 Ford 150 just crossed 300,000 miles. Morty, I'm trying to stay humble right now. Rick for real. Ionic coaster deployed. What does Rick need an ionic coaster for when he has so much free space on that workbench right next to him? Garage AI is just showing off at this point. Approaching pause pregnancy in P minus five. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's worth mentioning every once in a while that despite being here to sin it, the show continues to find new ways to make me laugh. So take your Rick and Morty gets a sin off because it's freaking hilarious cliche and let's move on. How can a mind be hidden by itself inside itself? The first question Christopher Nolan asked before starting every screenplay somehow makes its way into this episode. Suggestion, don't go in. Right, the AI is loose enough to offer fellatio for its own survival, but still rigid about saying command words like suggestion before every sentence. Pick a lane, shallow Hal. Yeah, yeah, hop to a different timeline. Grab a version of my friend that suits me best. That's not how this works. And why not, exactly? Did Rick just place that IV in one movement with no tie-off and without looking? Like, I get that you can do something enough to be good at it, but even the best phlebotomist wouldn't deign to feign the main vein. Oh, excellent. I get to keep my clothes. I thought for sure I'd have to be naked to go through something this artsy. When does Rick care about his clothes? When is Rick ever given a sh if he's naked or clothed? If you looked up down to free ball in the dictionary, it'd just be a picture of Rick saying wubba lubba dub dub. Now I got yolk balls. Title of my sex tape? No, wait, that was now that's what I call yolk balls 23. My bad. You see an older version of him come through here? What? Uh Talking out of just one side of your bosom. Seriously, you've got two jabber jubblies. Use them both. Opening a porta potty without knocking first. Why was my ninth birthday party in a pine tree? Pine tree pizza is still at least 19% better than what they serve at Chuck E. Cheese. So what's my deal? Am I sentient? Do I have free will? Who does? Who does? Covering the same ground as free guy. I'm, I'm coming with. Now that I know my life is a lie. Wow, you really are 35. 30-something 30 shaming. 
Random convenient pants that fit perfectly are random and convenient and fit perfectly. Also, chafing. Can we both die in here? Are, are we damaging our friend's brain? I, I don't know any of the rules. Welcome to the club. The trick is just to pretend that none of it matters and that making meta jokes about it makes it all okay. But we suck at that, so here's five cents. Situation not looking ideal. Rick and Bird Person survive this. Also, it's bad enough when human characters talk to themselves as a way to force some exposition, but an AI construct? What kind of a logic chip would have to be installed for a computer to start thinking out loud? Thinking to themselves is their whole gig. I am Rick's garage. Oh, like, like, a, like a Jarvis, like, like Jarvis in Iron Man. Well, that's a strange way to say what the f***. This garage with a dying man hooked up to some sort of cyborg bird creature is talking to me. Also MCU nerds. This is where you being this leads. You're not my fault. I'm yours. This is all fun self-therapy and all, but Rick isn't engaging with his younger self. He's engaging with how not Michael Keaton's Birdman remembers his younger self. So why his argument? If you die in your friend's brain, you die in real life. Citation needed. Your life isn't real and I didn't save it. Take off all your clothes. But why all of his clothes? Real Rick already has pants on. Your values are wrong. Facebook. This battle of Blood Ridge goes on for all the some time. Why would you not revisit this? Oh, I don't know, maybe uh, the ending? The Dark Knight Rises. Okay, you matter to me. Oh look, the show that spent several seasons teaching me that Rick has exactly zero moral compass and is a complete dick to almost everyone he meets in the service of humor is now asking me to have emotions about this. The answer is no. Why the f*** are you risking your life for that asshole? Taking the wrong message from the lesson. You don't get to tell anyone what's sad, man. You're like a one-man Mount Sadmore. So I guess like a Lincoln Sadmorial. I mean, the Statue of Liberty was right there, man. Everyone knows what a cloaca is. Do they? It's not like there's ever been a company out there that based an entire t-shirt around one. Sorry, but we do not get to choose the ones we love. But we can choose our friends, and we can choose our noses, but we should never choose our friends' noses. Wait. Rick Sanchez, you're under arrest for making me spend two years in Earth High School. No. I bet this show would be really fun for people who could remember all the details of all the other Tammy plots. I've got the memory of a goldfish, so all those callbacks mean nothing to me. Actually, goldfish have been proven to have better memories than we thought, so maybe more like the memory of a dog or a bee or a... What was I talking about again? Oh well. Make the noise thing change the number thing. Oh my god, I'm a memory. We just sat through all that stand-up for nothing. But in a world where you're aware of multiple universes and multiple yous, why would your first instinct be that you're a memory when you see another Rick come crashing in? Okay, listen, everybody. My name's Rick. And this is my new friend, Birdman. And his friends, we all just met at this festival and we're so high we formed a band. Oddly enough, this is exactly how Sugar Ray was formed. I'd like to point out that this clock still says 2 p.m., which it said when all of this started. And don't be claiming Inception rules because Discount Ava had plenty of time to offer B-plot BJs to random passers-by while they were out. And yes, it could just be a dead clock battery, but that's boring. It also means I couldn't give this in. Pretending prisoners have servers that go around and dish out food to the prisoners. Does this look like a white-collar crime prison to you? Goodbye, Mr. Cookie President. Electing a cookie as a president. Why would you elect anyone or anything that you know for a fact will eventually crumble? Also, that's not a cookie. That's a wafer. And I will need you to kindly get the f out of here with that nonsense. How does this universe work? The camera is candy, the mic is candy, the gun silencer is candy, and the lollipop appears to be a candy weapon of some sort. So why would a gun or a sword be an actual weapon and not some other form of candy? Not sure which is more convenient, that Morty somehow had thousands of gallons of water readily available to dump on a lava monster, that he knew precisely where the lava monster would be, or the portal gun itself. Listen, all three. Son of a bitch, he marked it! How is Morty just now seeing this? I assume the portal gun had some sort of scientific woo-woo that would zippity-zap a portal to life after activating the portal juice, but apparently just falling onto skin activates a portal just fine. We find out in a moment that the opposite side of Morty's hand portal is not connected to a garbage dump, but rather the leg of a stranger. For this amount of garbage to pour through Nick's thigh, he must be buried in trash. But he isn't. Hey, how do you think I feel? I had the ultimate stash hole, and now I got a kid in my thigh. First world problems. Good luck finding someone that can be told 80,000 times how replaceable they are. Anyone who has ever worked in a call center. Oh look, a failed attempt at the humorous pull nondescript lever to do something incredibly specific cliche. Good thing it didn't land on Gene because we know he's dead from that other episode this season. And when we pointed it out before, everyone agreed with us and no one called us out on it, so I'm sure that won't happen here. Simultaneous crow snatching is severely questionable. Commence, bird on a wire. Scene does not contain a Goldie Hawn or Mel Gibson. Also, when did Rick even train them for this? He literally just caught them outside and brought them in here to begin pavloving them with the bird feed. Damn, just like Jackie Chan! I've always said my favorite Jackie Chan move is the one where the broom comes out of the portal in his hand. Classic Chan. 
Convenient escape route through the only window on an otherwise windowless building is convenient. Damn it! He must be showing the gun off to his stupid crows. It's not fair! Kids. Also, I like surprise gun hidey holes as much as the next person, but this secret cabinet should have been easily spotted below the table based on how high it lifts. Not drinking enough water. Pee clear, people. Morty, is that what I think it is? The perfectly convenient appearance of the very item you were looking for? What is that? Nothing. I find it odd that the game wheel is the first thing the crows fixate on, rather than the anti-crow graffiti all over the walls. Not now, garbage goober. Get back in your hole. Rick is a dick to garbage goober. Our first adventure. Discounting the psychiatric hospital as an adventure. That's not how extinguished and discarded cigarettes work. I know we're not supposed to question how Rick's magical scientific things do their bullshit, but his arm goes a really long way and I just don't understand where the mechanical bits are stored when not in use. Pressing something to your face that is dirtier than a toilet seat. Busted! You don't get it, do you? How you were able to secure a jetpack and how you've already mastered it in this short amount of time? No. No, I do not. I, I, I thought we were both victims of Rick's abuse! Thinking that mutual abuse means mutual friendship. Also, how did Nick track Morty? Being portal buddies doesn't mean they're automatically portal tracking buddies, does it? How does any of this episode work? <laughs> Morty survives this. For getting to clasp your safety harness. And sure, he's missing a hand, but he didn't even try to secure it with the functional one he has left. Lucky for me, abandonment's my bread and butter. If Rick had the multi-gun attachment, why didn't he lead with that when he first got on the ship? You were supposed to die! Then maybe next time kill Rick when you have the drop on him instead of tying him up so you can bondly exposit your plan. F***ing humanoid crows. I'll always be your grandpa, Morty. I'm just kind of obsessed with crows now. Abandoning your grandson due to a crow fetish. This would mean a lot more if I didn't already know there were more seasons left in there. Not changing the name of the show to Simply Morty or Rick and Crow. Rick will be back, there'll be a reset, and none of this means anything. This is a Rick and Two Crows of Lies. I suppose one might think I'm about to remove a sin for this emotional scene of Rick and Morty breaking up, but instead I'm removing one because I appreciate that this show has taught me to not give a sh** about anything that happens in it. Shutting off emotions is healthy. Thank you, Rick and Morty. Thank you. Watch sitcoms on your sneakers! Can you imagine the amount of neck problems that would exist if this became a reality? Did the Chiropractor Guild sponsor this segment? Show does not contain chapters 1 through 12. <laughs> this owl does not exclaim loudly and angrily about dropping his cabbages. Oh, come on, you know this flower wasn't here a moment ago. Sure, it looks badass, but we want to see this owl man bloodied and broken at the base of this pummel tunnel. He's anti-heroic, run! Because he took out one of the hench owls? Is Luke an anti-hero every time he shoots a stormtrooper? Is Bond an anti-hero every time he defenestrates some random Blofeldian guard? Is Uncle Joey an anti-hero every time he insists someone cut something out? Also, why is Blue Goblin Group even running? He's clearly on your side. If you were going to get out of there, I don't think you needed to wait to suss out Rick's anti-hero quotient. I've never had a thousand crows fly down my throat before, but if I did, I highly doubt I'd be able to say anything audible afterwards. Also, wasting a thousand crows when a few grains of rice would have done the trick. What? That's an urban legend? Okay, fine. Then wasting a thousand crows when a single Alka-Seltzer would have done the trick. What? That's an urban legend too? Well, I guess this is now a sin for any avian-hating society that needs two distinct urban legends about how to make birds explode. Psychos? What's the point? Here's two. I count eight. Nine if you include the sword. Sure, you only use two of them for your owl trisection, but how is my four-year-old nephew supposed to learn to count correctly with this kind of confusing phrasing? Guy who screamed run decided to stay and cheer. Hypocrite. Oh, uh, two crows. You remember Morty? Crows are not capable of hovering. Also, these Morty cameos in Rick and Two Crows are forced in getting out of hand. We get it. You used to have this thing with your grandson on a different show, but that's not what this show is about, so let's focus, okay? Episode does not contain a Mr. Mole Map, Packy Chan, or Bubrina the Unrealistic Body Image Witch. Okay, maybe these humanoids have soft round skulls that squish like fruit when they roll on a table, but that is just dumb evolution. Come on, Puss of Fur was right there. Y you've had a thousand adventures with these crows. In 13 episodes? This may be the last time you ever lay eyes on me. I hope that's not true, Morty. Because you look like sh <coughs> sh and this is not how I want to remember you. The reason I choose not to attend high school reunion somehow makes its way into this episode. Setting aside that this isn't even how real crows sleep, does Rick strike you as the kind of person that would be down for this kind of crow habitation agreement? While I appreciate the hilarious live, laugh, love art and the attention to the triad details, my laughter is broken by the much more important fact that crows contain no teeth and have no need for items specially designed to brush them. We immensely enjoy each other's bodies. What? Oh no! King shaming. 
Wearing clothes, under clothes, for that long. Wait, that's it? The long way to chapter 13 of Rick and Two Crows ends after just five minutes? Who will avenge Pussifer? Will Mr. Mole Map ever be saved from Captain Eagle Eye's lair? Will the Silver Scurfer find a way to cure his dandruff in time? <sighs> I guess I'll have to go back to sitting Rick and Morty, but that means a whole new intro to wait through. I guess I could eat the yogurt in the fridge, but what if the yogurt... The show requires watching Rick and Two Crows Chapter 13 to understand what happened between the end of the last episode and now, and why Morty now appears as a middle-aged schlub. Jeez, guys, why all the homework? That seems like it's worth, oh, I don't know, 21 cents? Sure, I should be paying attention to the family's reunion conversation, but why is the wall of watered-down sherbet color? Who purposely paints their walls like this? Thank God this is the last episode of the season. Maybe by season six I'll forget this atrocious hue. Hi, I'm Citadel's new mascot, Andy, because this place wouldn't be home without Rick's Andy Morty's. Except Rick and Morty never uses an ampersand. It's always the full word and. So I believe this is actually Ampersandy, who has somehow escaped the magic Kitadel, home to various pins and or tellers. Morty survives this working. I'm almost ready to sell out. So 27-year-old Morty gets clothes that fit, but 40-year-old Morty was given a shirt size too small? None of us wanted to see that discolored and distended midsection of middle-aged Morty. But the second he reveals he's evil, we're gone. Show then cuts to an overhead shot of the dinner table that includes a jello mold dish, which is the first reveal that President Morty is evil. I have a hard time believing either Rick or Morty would miss this obvious clue. Tell me how one might bring down the central finite curve. All right, time to go, Morty. I want to know what he's talking about. Me too. I'm sure it will be a completely coherent story point that I won't need an advanced degree in physics, a few days to rewatch old episodes, and five hours of in-depth mining of the Rick and Morty fan wiki just to understand. Glad that would never happen. Can you give me ten more seconds? Literally ten, because now it would be six. Nice attempt at being excellent at TV sins, Rick, but that took two seconds, so technically you still got eight. Oh, I'm fine with that. Make it two. Five. Like I said, would have been a big help for you to tell me, but I should have everything I need from you now. If you were stalling to finish Rick's brain scan, then why didn't you bring up anything that would make him suspicious in the first place? Evil geniuses should be called evil morons. Check out season one, episode nine, Rickheads. Excel <coughs> seer. Ruining the hunt for the true Rickheads who wanted to figure this out for themselves. This is why we're with them. This is why we're alive. What the f No idea, man. You're on your own with this. I mean, the doy, I'm basically Inspector Gadget. I would have gone with Inspector Convenience, but fine, sending it either way. Who am I to judge how the writers decide to develop this fight, but also why the f isn't Rick pulling out his big go-go gadget guns right now? Does he like it? It's a metaphor for capitalism. I think I've seen this before. You created a being that gets off on you getting hurt and then transfers that energy back to you to use on others. So basically it's 50 shades of vibre -ium? That was close. Let me try that one again. So basically it's 50 shades of Black Panther and White Panther, because together they are gray panther damn it, i should have quit when i was ahead tonight i do that thing i want to do with the curve thing title of my sex tape hopefully we can snag some untainted fluid at the source and get the fuck out of here title of my sex tape this lazy fucker. the whole place is gonna blow no i don't trust you morty just watched a whole slew of rick and morty's be devoured by their portals and he chooses not to trust rick right now rick's only consistency is his desire to survive but now morty decides to belabor things this two full minutes of silent backstory is pure cinematic awesomeness. It's moody, propulsive, and informative without the usual clunkiness that comes along with having to do this much heavy expositional lifting. Take a cent off for being true artists, R and M. I mean, R and M. But also, you knew when you did this that I couldn't help but send two full minutes of confusing and pretentious exposition summed up as... Whoa, dead wife? Call me two-faced if you like, but I prefer the term multifaceted. What is this Tubi thing and is it always here? Would you have to drive over it to get to the garage? Will it pop a tire? Why is hose? Casual murder in front of the neighbors is casual. I feel a lot better having seen all that. Yeah, so much sympathy and emotion now that I've seen him brutally and callously murder thousands of other Ricks because how could Rick not? His wife died. I am so moved. We still got a way out they never thought of. Operation Phoenix. And f me if I can't remember back two years ago as to what that is, huh? I can barely remember the plot lines of shows I watched last week. I throw that stuff in my brain bin and destroy it with fire. Now you want me to recall it by raising it out of the ashes and bringing it back to life like some sort of um, fire death reversey bird? Even if I did remember that episode, I'd probably also remember that Mortys were never part of the deal. But I don't, so I'll just send that this Morty has no nipples.
I'm going to be honest, I don't have the slightest clue about what's going on here. I think Evil Morty is breaking the curvy thingy that separates the genius Ricks from the dumb Ricks by launching himself towards a space anus fueled by the blood of Rick and Mortys who try to use the Operation Phoenix callback while our Rick and Morty are trying to escape the resulting gravitational pull by using a Unity Metaphor Drive booster as the Citadel is flooded and poisoned by portal juice and eye patch. Morty finds himself in the quantum realm until he's needed by Vindicator's Endgame. I guess I'll just have to wait till the season premiere next season, which I'm absolutely sure will clear everything up. Yay. I thought I was better than this. Dramatic voiceover while stranded in space. Making fun of the thing while doing the thing doesn't make you cool, it just makes you a hipster. Please refer to the following ding if you have any questions regarding how I feel about hipsters. I guess when you're dying, the first thing to go is your creativity. That might make sense, considering your body probably should be using all your brain power trying to figure out a way not to die. That being said, I can't tell if Rick's being profound or just using the opportunity to take cheap shots at Marvel, the Russo brothers, and Iron Man. So in lieu of dragging this out any further, I'll just add a sin for him Rick trolling us for the millionth time. This is going to be a long season, isn't it? Citadel's gone. Acting like the Citadel being gone is negative. We've been there enough. Let's move on. Nobody quits Twitter. Hey, that's not... Okay, yeah, that checks out. Hey, remember like a second ago when you pretended not to know who Iron Man was? Who was that for? <laughs> oh, how I've missed you, Rick and Morty. Spinal cord. Robitussin has a base, then surprise me. Robitussin's a funny choice, but since you started in that direction, it's likely your spinal cord will surprise you with some cough drops in a neti pot. Show makes me wonder if this was just a fun idea they wanted to throw in the opening or a glimpse of a future Rick and Morty as Sherlock and Watson episode. I so want it to happen. Stop playing games with my emotions in the opening credits. Oh my God, she found you. Here, eat. If Beth didn't even know they'd been found, who were these two perfectly timed sandwiches made for? Digestabot, convert to nutrient mass. Show drops a do sex machina and hopes we won't notice. Also handling a nutrient mass with your bare hands. I explained it fine, Morty. You're spoon feeding spoons. So is that taking food with a spoon and putting it into another spoon? Or is it using a spoon to feed someone actual spoons? I mean, both are funny visuals, but I need to know what I'm laughing at. Oh my god. The Jerry Burry. Oh, the, the Jerry Burry. Deep cut. Making fun of your fans for getting the reference. But Rick pays me in things like... Wolverine claws. Pretty sure we all felt a disturbance as that singular individual just yelled at the screen, those are not Wolverine claws. Well, I must humbly inform you that the double claw arrangement does belong to X-23, who ultimately takes up the mantle of Wolverine. So as they say, the episode's case does hold water. However, litigation has no place here and will be sent accordingly. Having a doorbell for a garage door. This picture right here, for which I have so many questions. Who is this? Is it an Easter egg? A young Rick, perhaps? One that is yet to know the ravages of time? Maybe it's Sleepy Gary. Could he have been real in this universe? Maybe my memory is failing me? Maybe the numerous callbacks in this series have become too much? Or maybe, just maybe, this picture means nothing at all and is just a cruel joke thrown in for the creator's sick amusement. Well, all the magazines on this rack seem pretty sinful. My main issue is with Rolling Boner, because it sounds painfully detached. Also, porn magazines survive a mutant holocaust. Wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, now we'd have time to read the articles, I guess, so I'm going with the bad thing. Damn it, Morty, there's no doctors anymore. Then maybe announce yourself before sneaking up on your kid who's carrying a weapon. Figures it's underwhelming the one time I visit. Tourists. They say my mind is held captive in a time loop, trapped in the day of a traumatic event. Ah, this is one of those convenient exposition notes that show up when the writers realize there's so much going on that they couldn't possibly explain it organically in 20 minutes. Right. I used to drink drink. Using alcoholism as an excuse for your behavior. She reminds me of you. Oh, really? Is she dead too? The AI ghost version of Diane would be devastatingly efficient at TV sins. Rick and Morty Quantumania. My plan is to wait for you to turn your back, then I'm going to grab all your sh** and split. This moment where Morty gets bested and has to chase after Jerry is unexpected and surprisingly thought-provoking. We find out that Jerry is content with his life and reached a point of acceptance with himself that neither Rick nor Morty has been able to find. And beneath all the silliness, there's a meaningful question about what it means to move on. Morty wrote this fast because had to set trap, thought you'd have cooler sh**. See other note, bye. <laughs> And it's also hilarious. Batman doesn't abandon people. Jason Todd has entered the chat. If you were pulled home by whatever happened, it's likely our target was as well. Convenient computer generated ghost reasoning is convenient and reasonable. Or you'd be a bomb. Do you feel bomby? Asking this and not giving the person any idea what that would feel like. Because what I think bomby feels like usually turns out to just be a fart. Where are we going? To kill your grandpa, little buddy. Premature murder. No, that's not it. Premeditated murder. Gah. 
Um, conspiracy to commit murder. That's it. Am I in a fucking K-hole right now? What is going on? Asking this without prior knowledge of eating Kellogg's Special K. Listen, I'm not here. Or am I? This evil Eric f***ing around f***s around for all the some time. And we never learn why his base looks like a perplexus maze ball. There's the clone you found. Or maybe it's me all naked. Just a little Kaiser Sose. This is not how you Kaiser Sose. This might be how you Terminator or Sixth Day. Wait, is that what happens in Sixth Day? Did anyone actually watch Sixth Day? I've lost my train of thought. Regardless, incorrect references to Kaiser Soze will always get you a sin. I don't make the rules. Oh, wait. Actually, I do. So here's five sins. You did this last season. You're like a suicide bomber. Do they often do the thing more than once? Maybe I'm not getting it. Well, this one is for confusion then. There's or mine. Oh, f***ing stupid fifth dimensional stomach juices. Assuming all stomach juices from the fifth dimension are the same. <laughs> Emergency was oversold to me. Rick pulling a MacGuffin out of his pocket just so he can be unimpressed by something cliche. Wait, if they had to wear helmets? I do childproofing stuff while you're asleep. Doing stuff to someone's body while they're asleep. And yes, this makes all surgeries, though medically necessary, still inherently creepy. Also, considering Rick could have probably pulled some spacesuits out of his ass, the writers have essentially written themselves into a plot hole just so they could write themselves back out. I don't see the bowl for the peas. Where did the peas come from? Don't eat the peas! It's colder than Beth on our anniversary. Season 2 Jerry survives this. That is to say he's not killed by Season 6 Space Beth in this scene. What the f***, Dad? Why would you bring that thing into our house? It was cute, f***. The father-son conversation from when my younger brother was born somehow makes its way into the episode. The whole f***ing episode all over again. The fourth wall called and is starting to question its existence. How is this house so pristine already? There was a lot more going on in here than just a few dead bodies. So, what do you want to do today? Eat some snacks and maybe let me kiss you finally? You know, with my mouth and stuff? We're about to learn that all of these people are tiny parts of Morty's consciousness. So, I don't know, it's sadder. That some small part of Morty wants to kiss himself, or that another part is totally not into it. You guys keep thinking I'm a religious leader. You're all my grandson, your name is Morty, you're stuck in a video game, and I'm here to get you out. Look, this is a pretty tough sell, but Rick Roy's tactics certainly aren't doing him any favors. If he wants to make sure this doesn't look like an organized religion, why use a flyer that clearly gives the impression he's running for political office? Also, I think it's worth mentioning that we're six seasons in, and this show's still coming up with clever and intricate sci-fi concepts and introducing them clearly and efficiently, which is more than can be said for this sin removal. So just take it and let's move on. The power went out, the game restarted, and your identity has been splintered into all the non-player characters. Well, then that seems like a pretty big engineering flaw, no? I mean, when the Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, it's not like the pirates eat the tourists. Is a joke I just totally made up myself. Every single one of you is one five billionth of Morty. All of you, collectively, are Morty. But how are they even functioning if they're only one five billionth of Morty's consciousness? I use at least 10% of my brain, and yesterday I totally forgot the word for that thing you do when you thrust your hips backwards and forwards and try to stay inside of a moving circular void. Hula hooping. You know, for kids. Do you understand time dilation? I'm losing a month a second out here. So what happens to Roy while you're out here? Does he go on autopilot? Does he disappear? Because by the end of this conversation, you'll have been gone for almost two full years. And if you really want people to buy in, you should be shooting for three days away, max. Just do a Die Hard. What does that mean? Sneak around, use air vents. You've never seen Die Hard? Hey, doing a Die Hard's way more than just sneaking around and hiding in air vents. You could dedicate a whole episode to doing a Die Hard if you wanted to. But I suppose that might come off as an unimaginative excuse to include a lot of Die Hard references, so I guess you'd have to balance it with an overly metaphorical A-plot, questioning our perception of reality against our many internal narratives. And that just seems like a lot of mixed messages. Melting an entire stick of Morty butter to cook only two eggs. Designing a video game that's so detailed it simultaneously keeps track of 5 billion individual NPCs but won't render a simple license plate. But if this is a game about Roy, why is it currently focusing on her walking down the street? Shouldn't it be wherever Roy is right now? And why does it look like it's happening in real time? And yes, I know the game is broken, but you know what? You're broken. Okay, that was mean. I'm sorry. This job just gets to you sometimes. This Don't Touch Me game reminds me of a game I played this one time in an arcade called Flaming Finger. You basically had to draw your finger through a map and try to get to the end of the maze before the time ran out. No lie, I played that game so many times in a row it literally rubbed the skin off the end of my index finger. Which of course meant I had no fingerprint and was then logically required to take up a life of crime. 20 years in prison and it was all the fault of Flaming Finger. F***ing Flaming Finger. We exchange tokens for digital currency. 
We don't have a safe. Correction. What you don't have is a head. Discount Mr. Takagi makes a great point. What are the terrorists doing here if there's no currency to actually steal? What are they even heisting? Hello, hello, my name is Morty. I'm a 14-year-old boy in a video game. Still better than most religious music. Except for the Benedictine monks of Santo Domingo de Silos. <laughs> Those dudes f***ing rule. Coming through the ceiling when you've already driven a tank through the fireplace. Stealing your logo from Star Trek. I'd say this was a nod to Space Force doing the same thing, but I'm not sure one five billionths of Morty's brain would be quite that meta. Sneak around, crawl in some vents, do a Die Hard. Imitating Die Hard this well without ever having seen Die Hard. Oh my god, it's disgusting, but it tastes good. Foie gras. Because they killed him, and it wasn't difficult. <laughs> Getting so angry, you accidentally go full Gungan. Every sentient civilization across the galaxy eventually develops the same myth. Johns, Booby, are we supposed to believe that despite every single sentient species having their own version of Die Hard, there isn't a single iteration that better suits this specific situation? Is the show seriously saying that no one in the galaxy has come up with Die Hard in an arcade? I'm amazed we haven't come up with Die Hard in an arcade. The difference being that cultures like mine are aware of its importance. Fine, but did they care enough to make two killer sequels and then wait over a decade to make another one about hackers and shit, and then wait a further six years to make another one that was basically nothing like the others and essentially lost everything that was fun about the original, did they? Did they live free until it was a good day to die hard, did they? Rocky talkie die hard, mother We all have that friend that mangles movie quotes. This sin is for them. The world is united because the world is one 14-year-old boy. United? The only thing that would unite a world of 14-year-old boys is the mutual agreement that no sock could be confidently used for its intended purpose. I couldn't find it, so I'm standing in, a, in the general area with a microphone. Is exactly how my sex tapes get made? For good enough news, I'm Tony. Good enough news position. That will force the game to reset, but first it'll kick us out, which Morty should survive. I mean, whatever amount of Morty we have on board. This is the most yada yada pile of convenience in the episode. Not just that you can force a reset, but that the reset will kick out Morty and the reset won't harm Morty. It's almost like the creators of this game were in cahoots with the writers of Rick and Morty. Also, why does it only kick out the Morty minions that are on the ship? Why would a forced glitch have arbitrary plot tension rules? A mom in a video game, occupied by a tiny fraction of yourself. A fraction of yourself which is now dead forever, and fractions add up. Okay, so when a piece of Morty dies, they die for good? But Rick will eventually spend decades in here. So if those fractions add up, why isn't Rick in more of a hurry? If this simulation is anything like the real world, 60 million fractions of Morty are dying every year from natural causes, sloth attacks, and staple gun pranks. All of which means that Rick only has maybe 83 years before there are no fractions of Morty left to save. Unless, of course, the fractions that die are saved by the game and recycled into the babies that the other fractions of Morty are making. Putting aside the fact that we don't even have a word for what type of cest that is, it also means that Rick shouldn't be worrying about losing fractions of Morty at all. Also, for some inexplicable reason, at least two other fractions of Morty's subconscious believe they have monocular vision. I'm going to wander the arcade unarmed, and when she comes across me, I'll pretend to be a hostage. If John's has studied Die Hard so much, wouldn't it make more sense to improve upon the mistakes made in the movie rather than repeat them and fall for the same tricks? Hook, line, and sinker? Also, I'm tempted to send Summer for ruining this fancy suit, but I'm sure John's has too. You can't just keep yelling, die hard! I mean, you're basically doing the same thing. As is this episode. There's a lot of hypocrisy going around here. Don't throw bare feet in glass houses. Or whatever. He spent 50 years! 50 years! It's what, a couple hours to him? Well, since he said that every month is a second, 50 years would be 10 minutes, not two hours. And the President of the United States should know this. They don't just let any idiot have that job. I can finally get out of these clothes. I don't have nearly enough pockets. Complaining to a woman about how you don't have enough pockets. But you have to tell us you love us. I mean, at this point, even if he said it, what, 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 what's with the pause? Rick is a dick for no reason, even though his dickishness will short-circuit his own plans, cliche. Where the hell were these guys a few minutes ago? Let me guess, they're all sitting on a beach earning 20%. We gotta help her. You know what? Wherever she is, I'm sure she's doing fine without your help. Oof, jinx any- Trying to make me believe that Rick believes in me believing that Rick believes in jinxes. You don't have to not do things that were done in Die Hard. You can shoot the glass. Shoot the glass. The scene does not contain John saying this in their native tongue and then repeating it in English for clarity. Wait, shh, shh. And then what? And then we help your sister do her Die Hard. But how in the hell are they able to hear this in real time? This game is happening so fast it should sound like this.
His name is Rick, and we have no way of knowing if your generation is actually part of Morty. Do you really have a way of knowing anything? Like, for instance, how do you know that there aren't parts of Morty in things other than human NPCs? Maybe dogs have some Morty in them. Maybe rocks with googly eyes. I've seen everything everywhere all at once. I know how this sh works. Okay, this is a little awkward, but the time dilation has given me a chance to reflect. Sincere Rick is the least convincing Rick, but since we're in time dilation, I have to be careful how I do this, because I could end up skipping the entire rest of the season if I'm not careful, so... Skip? Well, sh Still overshot it. Give me a second. I got to adjust the time dilation offset manifold. Let's tweak this here. Time dilation. Not my fault. Rick has to get all sentimental and pretend like five full seasons of sociopathy don't exist. So move this wire here and boom. Okay. This should jump us back to close to the right spot. And unskip. You really are a good grandson. You know that? I'm proud of you, Morty. All right. Let's try this again. I'm not going to presume to know how this alien's anatomy works, but I would think it's safe to assume that this arm should at least be slightly less functional while carrying this laser hole around. You left your book in the bathroom. I read it while I took a sh Reading on the toilet, a.k.a. committing a hemorrhoidian slip, a.k.a. boarding the pulmonary embolism express. He's fine. Got them all out. Every last piece. Another open-ended Rick and Morty ending. I'm dubbing these Kotex closings because the writers know they might want to pull stuff from the episode out again later, so they make sure to always leave a hanging thread. Oh my god, I cannot f***ing believe this! Here we f***ing go! Pretty sure we've landed on the actual title of my sex tape. <laughs> something, 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 turkey callback, something, something, Rick's pixelated <laughs> Improv the rest is how I guess this scene was written. Also, Rick's turkey feathers fall out, and I can't help but wonder what part of his human body is forever transmuted, laying forgotten on the cold concrete of the back porch. I heard you smack the glass, Dad. She knows the sound of turkey smacking glass? That is oddly specific and highly suspicious. Rick, put some pants on. Today has so few rules. Jerry doesn't acknowledge that wearing pants inside the home is a courtesy we afford to our loved ones and not an obligation or requirement under the law. Also, if there are too few rules, then perhaps there should be more rules. For example, one must wear clothing before entering the dining room. Be specific if you don't want to see Rick's dangle doodles. You know he's a nudist. Ding, ding, ding. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have to be careful with that sacred word. You just can't go around sinning yourself like that. You reference your own sins enough as it is. Leave some fun for us. Can we please have a normal Thanksgiving? Does Beth actually think anything normal is possible with her family? And what does normal even mean anyway? I will never miss an opportunity to send the Thanksgiving Jello mold. Rest in peace, Auntie Grace. You are missed, but your Jello abominations with a side of f***ing horseradish sauce are not. Holding your glass like this. I mean, animating your character to hold a glass like this. Move the thumb laterally for balance to avoid the glass accidentally flipping out of the grip. Oh, I got this. Adjusting someone's body without their explicit verbal and written consent, along with signed approval from a f***ing doctor. I got just the thing for that. Here. Inserting a foreign object into a body without their explicit verbal and written consent, along with a signed approval from a f***ing doctor. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen the backward motion of the tongues of the characters in this show. Whenever I think about the anatomy of it, I start to try to do it. Why talk to me? Conversation 310 worth lady. Bro, tell your son you love the shit out of him. Oh, I'm gonna. This is touching in a weird way, and I don't like it when I'm touched in a weird way. We do share a shitty bag. You don't, though. You share a point in time with specifically replicated DNA. But then both best have individual opportunities to find a way to heal their backs. It's very realistic. Is it? There's not another terminal adjacent to the one Tube Steak is paying for. In a real world scenario, I just walk around it. I, I mean, Tube, tube Steak would avoid paying and just walk around it. I'd pay for sure. Floppy droppy lights have less taste buds than humans. Their ice cream is like a hospital bed. It's designed for you to do less so it does more. Wouldn't this mean their tongues are less sensitive and require more flavor to elicit the same effect? And yes, that would mean the food is doing more, but unlike hospital food or its beds, the flavor would be overwhelming. You have your own space station? But you said earlier... I'll sleep in my car. It's got a TARDIS thing going on bigger on the inside. An admission that renders a space station pointless and redundant. We're the same person. They are not. I want you back in my guts like I'm one of your sick little fillies. Is actually something that Beth said to herself that I now must consider when thinking of this episode later. Yeah, and if he kills himself, we're going to have to get a new dad. Assuming Jerry is a dad. The species of bionic space whale has carbon wiring. Show forgets that we were dismissing most of the things of the show because of portal travel. It doesn't bother explaining how or why Rick has a space whale prepped and ready to go on the operating table just in case. I'm not killing it, for the record. Carry on with your shocking space species shenanigans, sir, but perhaps install some sort of grate in the floor for goop cleanup? I mean, we know there is a hatch down there somewhere, but mopping up victim's gore must be exhausting. 
I want to watch the dissection of this telepathic bionic whale, but instead I'm wondering where this wayward cord is going and why it's not plugged into the outlet properly. Oh, oh good, they remembered to animate the plug. I just had to wait 10 more seconds during the bionic birth scene. I'm just saying, lies pile up, like credit card debt. You retain an advantage by staying liquid. Rick doesn't have this live your truth sign hanging next to the live love laugh one in his knitting den. But also, solid financial advice. The single most important part of this scene happens off screen. I'm sure it involves some fanciful tech, but to flaunt the achievement of a perfect snow angel with no footprints leading to or from without sharing such knowledge is an affront to the laws of God and men. Are we in love with ourself? I mean, does that make us the most or the least healthy woman in the universe? This is a wild hypothetical and I'm happy it's being explored, but it also feels like a fanboy's fantasy being exploited on a dark website swimming through the adultness of the internet that I should not be exploring. My boner is so confused right now, making us believe that Jerry could complete a puzzle in a few hours, let alone one night or a week. Holy sh**, you, you did a full San Junipero in here? If they could pull a full San Junipero in Rick's sudden holodeck, then why does Rick even need to go to Blitz and Chits to play Roy? For the next several seconds, the children pile ice cream into their mouths like crazy people, and neither of them get an ice cream headache or make a dent in their bowls. I'm hyper-focused on it because of the awkward sex chat between mom and dad and mom, so at least give me more details to distract me. Not ironing down the letter on your jacket. <sighs> oh! What the f show just pulled one of the weirdest, funniest, and most unexpected Jerry moments completely out of its ass and reminded us why we love this show in the process. These tattoos could win on Ink Master, and I can't send that, but I can send having an ass this shiny. It's a cool power to have, like if you have to fly coach or if Summer asks you what you thought of Wonder Woman 1984. Thinking that Summer would not only watch Wonder Woman 1984, but then also ask her potato of a dad for his opinion. <sighs> This entire sequence reminds me of my hatred of the word forest. I was once told that if I was confused about how to spell desert versus dessert, that the extra S in dessert was like an extra helping of sweet, yummy goodness. And that helped me. But you can't use that same logic for forest versus forest. So you would think that the extra R would mean lots more trees. So add the extra R in a word defining a place with a ton of f***ing trees. But that is incorrect. So the sin, as always, is the English language. Oh God, well, what happens in the shadows? Considering they follow this up with... Vampires? Oh, come on, that's not realistic. I'm guessing the writers know exactly what they do in the shadows. I see you. Oh. Plot twist, deus ex husbanda. Ah, what is happening? F***ing Rick and Morty taking another one of my favorite sins? Are the writers trolling me? All right, we've got to find out. Writers, if you are watching... And you're taking my sins away like some sort of entertainment Jesus. I pray demand you show me your power by correcting the greatest sin on your show, the f***ing bowl of fruit. Whilst thou move the fruit from the bottomest shelf to the toppest of the table is a sign that you are real. And because relationships like this are highly transactional, I promise if I see that bowl move, I will know it's a miracle and give all of the sins back. Sin men. Having many of the same shirt in the same color. Well, hold on, hold on. This is weird. Weird and permitted. This weird permitted versus not permitted assessment goes on for all the uncomfortable twin sesty amounts of Jerry being aroused times. They are still eating off the bird for dinner? Man, you pick it clean for meat for easy snacking later and chuck the bones in the bin. There is no reason to shove a carcass into the fridge and take up all that precious space. Probably the most sinful part of this Thanksgiving dinner is the family can hear the threesome upstairs at all. Beth and Jerry's bedroom is here, and the dinner is here, so the sound of their conversation is pressing through the barely overlapped section of their room in the entryway and wafting into the dining room to be heard perfectly. <laughs> Disrespecting the garbage disposal. Sometimes we have Jerry's come here and try to touch other Jerry's. Jerry's touching Jerry's. Reading. But also, I feel like the show knew exactly what it was doing pulling this obscure quote, and I will not thank it for turning me onto the second sympathetic cannibal story I've been subjected to this year. Strange. Usually my dreams, the cream, are the opposite of a nightmare. They actually shoot, I mean, turn out quite pleasant. Using Snoozy as your app's brand name when I'm getting sheepy was right there for the taking. Rick clearly went to the Michael Myers school of sit-ups, and no amount of rock-hard abs will fix that kind of lower back trauma. Jerry appears to serve everyone from a batch of pre-buttered pancakes, but why does Summers appear to be unpre-buttered? Did Jerry only pre-butter the ones beneath Summers? Why? What's this, pancakes? Sold. Also, those pancakes have had syrup sitting on them for who knows how long. You never syrup another man's pancakes without their permission, guys. Rick should not be sold on this. Not at all. Also, also, Jerry's decided to serve up Rick's pancakes even though he hasn't arrived yet, while Summer is presumably just sitting there watching everyone eat. This is exactly why no one wants you around, Jerry. Also the third. Where even is the syrup? 
There doesn't seem to be any on the table, so did Jerry pre-syrup the first batch? If so, why is this second batch of pancakes only pre-buttered and not pre-syruped? And where did Summer's unpre-syruped and unpre-buttered pancakes come from? That's it. I'm including a separate sin counter for the show, and I'm going back and including all past and present breakfast sins. Best investment I've ever made. This family of sociopaths didn't even flinch at a glass of orange juice being spilled all over the table. When this happens in my house, the resulting reaction invariably causes more damage than the initial spilling. No, go on. Say it. Say what? I don't know what you're talking about. Kids. You can poke all the fingers I got if I get abs like Rick. I'm just going to assume that this gadget is doing some internal switcheroo that means it isn't poking everyone with the same quickly diseased needle. But I will be sending the show for not confirming that assumption. Judging by the brown edges here, these eggs are getting close to being overcooked and yet more Morty butter is being added, suggesting the egg cooking is not complete? Why does this show hate me? I also like Tori Amos. Reading the words, I like Tori Amos, in a condescending manner. You take that back, Summer. You, you cornflake girl. Who wants cake? Answering a question with a trumpet. How the hell does this discount severancing even work? Their bodies are still getting up at night and performing many tasks, so how would everyone not wake up sore and tired from the previous night's activities? All I'm saying is that if a fancy machine is causing me to wake up satisfied yet sore, I want to remember it. Also, why would he be doing laundry in the dark? You wouldn't be able to separate out the colors, darks, and whites as well. If anyone ends up with red clothes that were previously white, they have no one to blame but themselves. Pow, 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 No notes. Well, Rick, I do have notes. Like, why is the power cord madness extended to the garage door? Why is it plugged all the way into the bottomest most outlet, causing whatever this plug leads to overstretching itself into an unnecessarily higher position? Nope, not gonna let that one slide, even if it is a joke. You cannot be over 100% indestructible. Unless, of course, any attempted at destruction actually resulted in an increase of indestructibility by 10% or an increase of mass by 10%. As a result of this misbranding, you will see a roughly 10% increase in sins. Seems like you spent an awful lot of energy just to not give the Knight family what they want. Jerry would be no notes at TV Sins. Why won't you rinse your dishes? Counter question, why are your eyeballs glowing like you have a thousand watt bulb inserted into your cavities? Once again, we do not need to see anyone puking ever. I don't care if it's animated. We don't need to see it. Stop f***ing showing it. The f your problem with me not already knowing the answer to this question after just bursting into your granddaughter's room without permission while she's sleeping rick's lucky he wasn't greeted with a high velocity radio alarm clock to the jaw or whatever it is the teenagers sleep through nowadays did you have to make mushy garbage science on the living room carpet if this has been pulled from the garbage i'm very confused putting aside the fact that an entire box of eggs has been thrown away what even happened to them did a wild fox just very politely nibble on the top half of these knowing that rick would need them for some wild eggs machina either way i'm still counting this as a breakfast in. Aren't they going to be suspicious seeing Night Summer covered in all this Terry Gilliam? Two episodes ago, Summer said she didn't know anything about Die Hard, but we're supposed to believe now that she has enough knowledge of Terry Gilliam to make this kind of reference? You were souping up that some nymph you whatever so they could extend its range beyond the house. I'm guessing the plan here is global damination by creating an army of night people. But if it currently only covers the house and Night Rick has only managed to extend the range by 169%, <laughs> Nice. Then that's really only going to cover the neighboring house and maybe 70% in the next one, at most? I really don't think Day Rick needs to be worrying at this point. Sorry, Rick, but your opinion means very little to me. Wait, how did Night Summer manage to fake being regular Summer? Are the veiny eyeballs and husky speech just a choice? How the hell is she just switching that shit on and off? Halt, demonoids! Everyone get behind my app! <laughs> show man okay somebody really needs to dial in the dosage on these darts it should not take this many darts unless the dosage is homeopathic or the end goal is a f***ing coma i am a friend of your son-in-law expecting us to believe that jerry would be able to make a friend yep that joke's exactly as mean as you think it is rick just had to slap night jerry to get him to turn back to day jerry but night summer flies several feet and lands in these boxes without reverting back to day summer that is some nighttime slash daytime bullshit I know this is a fun visual gag, but what maniac is selling cardboard boxes in the middle of the night that are fully assembled? Fully assembled! Who buys cardboard boxes fully assembled? Phew, almost didn't make it. Choosing to peel through metal instead of, oh, I don't know, shooting through the already smashed window. <laughs> the day and night families survive this. Let's go home, right, Grandpa? 
Great idea, Summer. Rolling the credits here makes it seem as if the show wants this to feel like the end of Rick and Morty as we know it. What's weird is that the post credit scene is super long and undoes all of that, which kind of just makes it a scene scene, and now I feel like I've been tricked into hanging around for the credits, which I didn't pay attention to anyway because it was so obvious that the story wasn't over yet. So the bottom line for me is that if you want to make a big swing with your TV show, start by getting breakfast right first. Normally, this would have been dealt with by our daemonoid oppressors. The Knight family scheme falls apart because they apparently aren't smart enough to keep their jobs, budget their finances, or do f***ing laundry, which is beyond baffling considering this isn't nearly as complicated as half of the sh** that they were being asked to do in the first place. Wasn't the whole point that they get the mundane sh** done so the day family can be the mindless zombies? How long have we been asleep? Uh, it can't be that long. Oh my god. No! They killed the Choco Taco! Time to update my weekly list of crazy sh** I have to say because of Rick and Morty, with using a sweet flavor taco as a unit of time measurement. Now that was some fantastic chow mein. And before you say that sounded racist, you can ask the waiter how they say it. Having to explain yourself this much to prove you're not a racist. Also having a family dinner at Panda Express. Sometimes I look at the background of a scene and just glaze over for a few seconds, which is what I was doing while looking at these slip-on shoes, which are suddenly obscured by the appearance of a footstool bar that wasn't animated in the previous frames. The kids seem disappointed that Rick won't play along with teasing Jerry, but how would Rick having robot arms extend from his body not be something interesting for the kids of TikTok to enjoy? Film that shit and get those views. Views are all that matters, baby! You know, fortune cookies only come true if you eat the cookie first. Eating your fortune cookie while you still have this much of your entree left on the plate. Also, is that a glass plate? And are they getting served at the table? Episode doesn't know how to Panda Express correctly. Family time is time well spent. Okay, that's not only empty, it's been disproven. Beth would be excellent at fortune cookie sins. You will have sex with your mother. In bed. Wait, no, I was just gonna add the infamous in bed gag to someone's fortune. I didn't realize this would be a sex with your mom episode. I was set up by the Rick and Morty writers and you know it. Also, sure, right, it's not an ideal thing to get in a fortune cookie and certainly shocking, but Jerry is speaking at the same volume as when he talked about getting the sh** from the zoo earlier and no one in the restaurant reacted to that. Over four episodes into the sixth season and we still haven't gotten the Sherlock Holmes episode this scene promises. I am very bothered by the very far from center buttons on Jerry's pajamas. Jerry, are you seriously asking if I think you're gonna have sex with your mom? He is. Man, I really hate that this cliffhanger of a question is actually intriguing me. This is the who shot JR of Rick and Morty incest cliffhangers, and unfortunately making cliffhangers plural was not an accident on my part. Sleepy Gary wasn't real. Neither are fortune cookies. I mean, the fortunes in the cookies might not be real, but fortune cookies are indeed real. You can hold them, you can eat them, you can stick your- Well, yeah, then you should definitely hit that. Morty raises his arm for a high five before his punchline is delivered, and Summer proactively preps for the high five without knowing if the joke would even be good enough. And now we know that Jerry's familiar with tucking, so he either has no pubic hair or is able to shave very quickly. All things I did not need to know about Jerry. Also, walking into your parents' room at any time without knocking. Even if she's trying to catch her dad doing something embarrassing, this is still a horrible risk. Rick walks this way with a towel over his shoulder, then this way with three rolled towels a second later. And here he comes by with another set of folded towels. You know he's not doing house chores. Now all I care about is what seven moisture-absorbing pieces of fabric could possibly be needed for. Okay, I'm just as likely to sh** a balloon as I am to become a dolphin. Things overheard at the D&D table while reviewing the chaos table calculations somehow make their way into the script. Why is this person holding a tray of food as if they're going on a lunch break when the store's closed and currently under attack? I'm gonna take the truck in exchange for not turning you in. I'm gonna sit in the convenience of the fortune cookie truck that just happens to be in the back. And now we're being retina scanned? Maybe somebody knows the answer to this, but I don't. So I'm sitting why Jerry would need to have his eyes closed for the retina scan, but Rick would not. You can't crack a smile? Oh, yeah, you're worried about doing it with your mom. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> It sure is nice for the company to showcase torture in the adjacent conference room. You know, to be sure that our infiltrating duo can see the positive and negative impacts of the cookies without having to walk more than a few feet. Use the emergency fortunes. You'll have great success in a fight. The cookie designed for an emergency is fight related? What if the emergency had been a fire? If the security guard fought the fire with water, would that have fulfilled the wish? And if the wishes can be fulfilled by a more vague approach, couldn't Jerry's wish be completed with a game of poker that ends with Jerry tossing the table and exclaiming, you f me, mom. Hate crawling through a fucking air vent. Maybe try going forward through the air vents? That makes it much, much easier. Why is the creepy alien handler touching the wish list with bare skin and also using this grabber thing as if it's important to not touch the paper with his fingers? I'm just trying to make sense of something simple that I can understand while the episode derails into portals and alien poop, which I do not understand. 
Fortune cookies are alien poop. Ladies and gentlemen, I would buy this on a shirt, and I'm sure that is a sin. Does the alien want that? It's not exactly what I'd call a sentient species. A man knows. So let me get this straight. This guy wants to f**k an alien the proper way, so he creates a f**k your mom cookie in hopes that someone will come and investigate a highly secure evil corporation and accidentally their way to the secret area to discover the exploitation of an alien creature, which would trigger an empathetic response and encourage them to free the alien and the dirty man, allowing them to f**k in harmony forever? Your friends picked me up in a limousine. Being so impressed with the luxury of the car that picks you up from the airport that you're able to ignore the multiple semi-automatic weapons pointed at your back. For someone striving to be the most successful businesswoman in the world, this company sure is leaving a lot of profit on the floor. Literally. Come on and f*** already! At this point, I'm pretty sure Rick and Morty's simply trying to title my sex tape. But I'm not that easy. Actually, yes, I am. I just used a dark web account to hack Goldman Sachs, remove trillions of dollars, and purchase everything your company offers. Congratulations, you're officially the most successful businesswoman on Earth. See, this is why I strongly suggest defining what success means to you before you start on a project. In this case, Rick's sudden definition of success fulfills the cookie's prophecy rather than her version of success. Totally avoidable. I see that I've romanticized a wild animal the same way Margaret Howe did when she jerked off that dolphin in the 1960s. I mean, there's no way that actually happened. <laughs> oh, for the love of f Why are there pictures? So this guy's guts get sucked out of his body, but Rick's guts aren't sucked out of his ass. And I guess I just don't understand how much of Rick is robot or human and how that impacts his immortality. It's a super good thing that Rick packed the nano laser printer in his arm cannon this morning and thought ahead to build the cookie ammunition chambers in the first place. What a champ. We should all strive to be more like Rick. God damn it. I think... I think God has indeed damned this show. Damned it straight to hell where we TV sins freaks are prodding it with our dingy pitchforks and having a blast. Thank you, God, for sending it to us. Jerry's mother is held in a gynecological exam position by her right ankle alone and her left leg isn't being sucked backward. She should have a broken pelvis. And in weird things in space news. Starting your episode off with blatant self-referential news positional repiping. Bold move, Rick and Morty. A bold move indeed. Oh, what's it now? I mean, if you're forcing me to send something in this thing, that flag's annoying me because there's no way there's room for the star section in that little part that's off the screen. This is just red and white stripes all the way to the pole and you know it. What did you do, you turning monster? Morty didn't do anything, but I'm still gonna issue a sin for the convenient timing of the dinosaur aliens showing up right as the teacher was accusing Morty of always bringing terrible sh like this down on the school. You know how we feel about that in these quarters. Starting your episode off with blatant self referential news positional repiping twice in the first two minutes. Bold move, Rick and Morty. A bold move indeed. If these aliens want Earth, they'll have to go through Egypt. And they can ask mummies how that goes. But are we talking about the Boris Karloff mummy, the Brendan Fraser mummy, or the Tom Cruise mummy? I mean, we could also be talking about the Cushing Lee mummy, or the Jason Scott Lee mummy, or even the Abbott and Costello mummy, which is also basically the Boris Karloff mummy, but more of a funny mummy. And then there's the waxwork mummy, not to mention the Charlton Heston mummy, which if it wasn't for Scream Factor, we'd all forgotten about it and been better for it. In the end, there are just too many f***ing mummies to wrap my head around this statement, and I think I might cry. I want my mummy. Monkeys went bald? Hilarious, but in what world do you know enough to know monkeys existed, but not enough to know about the development of Homo sapiens? How did these dinosaurs even get in the UN building? Did they install a dino door? Pretty considerate of this long neck to hold their head like this when the imaginary camera's on a close up and then extend their neck completely for the wide shots. The imaginary cinematographer thanks you. But surely there was some point between gunpowder and something called Amazon Prime. We don't know what Amazon Prime really is either. We just know that $130 or so disappears from our checking account every year, and that allows us to then send more money to an invisible entity that often sends something in return that we didn't even ask for. <sighs> Every fridge full, but why? In a post-scarcity society like this, not only would you never have to stock up on stuff, you'd never have to cook at home either. I mean, you could if that's your thing, but I'm guessing most fridges would just sit mostly unused while everyone picked up free five guys. I can see the headline is unemployment at 100%, but someone had to write this article, someone had to print it, and someone had to distribute it. So how exactly is no one working currently? Somehow pre-filling in only the M's on several lines of your crossword puzzle. I do think it's kind of funny that you're all basically Jerry now. Rick, per usual, would be the Rickest at TV Sins. Show teases us with pandas falling in a snake-wearing miniskirt and doesn't follow through on either, forcing us to come through in the clutch. You're welcome. Does anyone know how to mail things to publishers? Not to keep making this my hill to die on, but even if they did, who would be able to publish the book? Who would even pick up the mail? Sure, maybe it's technology of some sort, but I don't see any cool robot butlers, so I'm calling shenanigans. The only thing that could make the name of this restaurant more wonderful is if Bo Bridges was the one inside cooking the food. And since that's not the case, here's a sin. 
At first, it was fun spending all day watching whatever YouTube autoplays after the last one autoplayed. Insinuating it ever gets tiring letting YouTube videos autoplay. Give in to the algorithm. The algorithm loves you. The algorithm is your friend. How often are you Westworlding me? Calling it Westworlding instead of Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machining. There's an order to these things. If you get rid of the dinosaurs, you can host the Oscars. In a situation where one has all the leverage and said person chooses their reward to be the most thankless job on the entire planet. Over candling around flammable flora. The gateways are see-through, not a green swirl, so now you can see where you're going. I like these dino lords. Can they also help me understand how the portal automatically knows where you want to go? I mean, if you're fixing our portal sins, we might as well go ahead and fix them all. They're going to call us Laura Dern because we're about to get elbow deep in dino doo-doo. Yeah, let's not reference the parts where Laura Dern wards off a T-Rex and velociraptors to save kids. Let's just talk about her reaching into some sh which, for the record, she is doing in an attempt to save a dinosaur's life. You put some respect on Laura Dern's name, Rick. I said clever girl earlier. You didn't even react. I'm complaining that a reference you are also explaining wasn't given its due in the past. What are you, a Cylon or something? Yeah, we figured they used to hold huge outdoor concerts in their land amphitheater. <laughs> Maybe this is a silly theory, but the singing skull feet is way more interesting than our boring old dinosaur stories. Also, just making sure everyone caught that Cylon reference a few seconds ago. That's from Battlestar Galactica. And while I can't watch you watch this video, I could feel there was very little laughter. So I'm just bringing it up here again for no reason at all. The Majestic Basket Soar! Aren't they incredible? We're even making a series of increasingly terrible movies about cloning them in a theme park! Can't be worse than Jurassic World Dominion, so please, feel free to bring the Basket Soar franchise to Earth. Also, increasingly terrible? Show wants us to laugh, but honestly, Jurassic World was better than both 2 and 3, and to pretend otherwise on any planet strains credulity. Please! What fossils were wheel-shaped? What fossils, I say? It appears that the Rick and Morty animators are using the repeating faceless crowd models again, which, fine, do what you gotta do, but this guy bugs me. Why is his head so big? Why is it all skin toned when others have distinct hair colors? Why is he looking up to the sky as if ready to ascend to the rapture? This one <laughs> is headed directly towards us. And all of our work? It was for- How are these ultra-evolved creatures with their godlike knowledge and wisdom unaware that they have an arch nemesis? You know everything there is to know in the universe, except that you're being hunted by evil sentient space rocks? Using a perfectly beautiful slice of pepperoni pizza as a hate projectile. It's pizza, and it's delicious, and it contains every single food group, you yum-chucking waste monsters. And you had no idea about the disastrous meteors that followed in your wake. Deciding to let Anderson Cooper interview you to tell your side of the story. Also, do the dinosaurs not watch movies? Because if they watched Armageddon, they'd save some time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. I mean, no one knows if the meteor species is even real. Deciding to let Joe Rogan interview you to tell your side of the story. <laughs> this guy created a Dinosaur Avenue sign and is replacing a current street sign just so he can graffiti the word sucks onto it. Game recognized game. Why does Tom Hanks yelling Wilson all of a sudden sound like Dave Seville yelling at Alvin? What even is this nonsense? Rick has a gizmo that lets him see whatever he needs to see, even though he clearly didn't type in any commands or coordinates cliche. Oscars are over. Something every single person except the Academy has known for about 10 years now somehow makes it into the episode. Elon Musk be damned. We're blowing up Mars. Thinking you need a reason to damn Elon Musk. We're doing something selfless. Are you though? There's no way calculations could have been done to guarantee the safety of Earth when Mars blows up into thousands, if not millions, of pieces. There is so much that could go wrong here. Somewhere in Tasmania, a devil silently weeps at the cruel theft of his native tongue. Can we turn on the AC? It's like a thousand degrees outside. It is not. Or kids, take your pick. Ha! Check it out! Rick and Morty writers last a full five episodes without their portal gun crutch before giving up. A dimension where hats wear people! Fun, but why do the hats also have the same body construction as people? Those aren't really hats then, are they? They're hat people. So, technically, it's a dimension where hat people wear people is people hats. Huh, that felt good. I've missed you, portal gun. I've missed you so much. Here we go! Rick and Morty time! He says, directly before announcing the final four episodes of the season are on surprise hiatus. Previously on Rick and Morty. Previously on Before Rick and Morty committed the cardinal TV sin of having a previously on in their episode. 
I really don't know where to go with this because let me tell you, Rick and Morty thinks they've created the most TV Sins proof episode yet, and I think they may be right. They may defeat me, but I guess I could just start sitting myself for liking raccoons more than dogs or preferring eggs over pizza. Things are going to get really weird over here for the next few minutes, so I guess I'll just leave you with... Potato salad! Jerry, I had sex with your wife. Not realizing Jerry would probably be less mad about this and more turned on by it. Or maybe I'm just projecting my own fetishes onto this scenario. Because what I've always found useful is working out your demons with episodes of Rick and Morty. At least that's what Carl told me. Who's Carl, you might ask? I'm just getting to know him, but if it helps, he does live in my left pinky. I did it! I fixed portal travel! Show reminds me of its lack of commitment to a portalless existence. I'm pregnant. Having the cake on the table with the candles lit before you finish the primary meal. Also, positioning the cake closer to the camera than the birthday person. It's raining meatballs! And you'd think I'd do a simple quick send here, like, cloudy with a chance of Rick and Morty, but since I don't give a shit about what you think, I'm just gonna send the fact that I've never once seen a pickup basketball game in this driveway. And that basketball goal honestly looks like it's never been used. And for the record, I do care what you think. I care oh so much. Please don't hate me. Thanks for solving that murder, guys. Here's a skateboard. Thinking that solving a murder is anywhere near as impressive as doing a kickflip. Morty, say you'll marry me. What? what? Just say yes. Being forced into marrying her grandfather is a meta plot point. Or really just at all. I do, and for our honeymoon, let's go to a sealed chamber lined with ionized deuterium. Why? Because the charge acts as a narrative decelerant. Morty, none of this is real. If nothing here is real, then how would an isotope have an observable effect on the fake matter in your fake reality? Unless just saying it does the thing means it does the thing. But that would mean that name-dropping ionized Deuteronomy was an extra step, and Rick could have just said, let's go to a sealed chamber lined with a narrative decelerant. Now repeat after me, Morty, next time on Rick and Morty. Next time on Rick and Morty? No, previously on Rick and Morty. Preemptive narration to counteract the subsequent narration leads to my narration sending your narration. We gotta get through the opening titles! Oh, f*** me. I didn't want to have to do this. But if the Rick and Morty writers are going to kick down the walls of their reality and attempt to make this episode unsinnable, I really have no choice but to prove to Metasinverse that no episode is truly without sin. Even if that involves sinning myself. I am alive! No need to be so melodramatic. Sorry, decreasing dramatization by 5%. Better make it 15. F*** you! Perfect! Now, you just keep sending the video like that, and I think we might just get through this. Cinny, activate the sin transfer array. Well, also you adding a sin just because you didn't like something is not really an issue with this show. Magnificent! Let's go! Oh my god, it's a giant squirrel! I'm pretty sure that's a sugar glider and not a squirrel. And I understand most people don't know what a sugar glider is, but then just make it look like a f***ing squirrel. How hard could that be? Don't succumb to his pointless self-aware bullshit. Says the king of pointless self-aware bullshit. And that may be the point, but do you know what I have to say to that? Potato salad! He wriggled back to the meta layer through a hole in the fourth wall. Some meta antics aside, adding a convenient meta layer to your story to essentially unmeta the meta story you've created, and acting like the encroachment on my territory would go unchallenged. Bro, you literally just did the same thing. Just because you have a sign that says Chekhov's guns doesn't mean that we can't send Chekhov's guns. Because if we don't send Chekhov's guns, then the sin doesn't come into play and it becomes Chekhov's sins. Which doesn't even make sense because who's to say where and when a sin can have action? In the end, maybe it's just Chekhov's Rick and Morty and maybe that's the point and maybe nothing means anything and I mean nothing and am I even really here? All you hear is a voice. A voice that could be coming from a computer, a simulation, or a ghost. All of this to say, I want to send Chekhov's guns because they are my guns to send, damn it, and you're not my mother! That being said, I'd also like to thank the writers for their cynicist with these metaphorically literal representations of narrative concepts. My job is much easier when you lay them out like this. I mean, it's funny when I do a little nod to the viewers, but- What viewers?! Morty would be the most meta thing to ever meta at Metasins. And if Rick and Morty continues down this path, we might just create that channel to f*** with them personally. None of this season 3 moonlighting sh Talking sh about season 3 of moonlighting when we all know that season 5 was the real problem. F*** you, a womb with a view. I'll never get that hour of my life back. Also, nothing the kids like these days more than moonlighting jokes. Although, we just made a moonlighting joke, didn't we? Yes, you did. Damn it! He needs to be put down like a rabid dog. Literally breaking the fourth wall. Running in the opposite direction of trials. Honestly don't know if that's good or a bad thing, but I've got a job to do, and just like this episode appears to be doing out of pure desperation, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at the wall and hoping a few things stick. Is this whole place just a bunch of groan inducing wordplay for seven TV critics that won't even enjoy it? We're not critics. It's a comedy channel. A comedy channel. Also, thinking wordplay is more groan inducing than wordle, and that I don't enjoy both.
The narrator thinks the writers of this show would honor him with such a reference, even though the critical value of his commentary is as questionable as his wordle skills. And there aren't seven sins writers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and Jeremy makes seven. Holy sh! That every second we spin here is the equivalent to 10 Space Jam cameos. Sending your own appearance in a terrible movie does not exclude us from sending your appearance in that terrible movie. And just in case our dad's sin channel didn't send you the first time around, we're giving you two here. I'm here, Leon. This deus ex machina writing in on Leon's prayers like some kind of literal literary Jesus cannot absolve you of your TV sins. I love a good refusal of the call. Hey, Story Lord's back. And now I'm going to send myself for remembering who the f*** Story Lord is. But how could I not? This episode is a sequel to the first episode I ever appeared in the video as your narrator. And three years later, I still get asked where the f the other guy went and when will he be back and it doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt at all. Not a bit. The narrator thinks that just because he's taken the guardrails off the ride, he can end sins wherever he pleases. Stay in your lane. Also, it's not like just because this is a sequel to the episode where I appeared out of thin air to start narrating that we'd go back to the original narrator for this video. Nope, I'm out. It's all you, buddy. You think I want to deal with this shit? Plus, you've been killing it as the narrator. In fact, you're so universally beloved and supremely talented, I'm wondering if you should narrate cinema sins? We have to stop letting narrators write their own scripts. Oh god, not the bane, not the bane! Sorry to keep interrupting, but I do need to mention that a shout out like this used to remind me of the glorious hours I spent reading the Nightfall storyline in the Batman comics. And now it just reminds me of that f***ing Dark Knight Rises movie that for some goddamn reason a lot of you are still trying to tell yourself is a good movie and it really pisses me right the f*** off. Sorry, carry on. I'm the Jesus from every Jesus joke. Which reminds me, have you heard this one? Who's the shortest man in the Bible? Give up? It's Nehemiah. You get it? Nehi Maya? <laughs> uh, you'd all be laughing if Sven Gooley was telling that joke. F***ing Sven Gooley. Previously on Jesus Christ. This narration into flashbacks position is an automatic sensation. Now that's groan inducing wordplay. Dude, she's a hooker. The entire second season script of White Lotus somehow makes it into the episode. Look, <laughs> well, guys, I can believe in Jesus or the Loch Ness Monster, but not both. Unless they're partners on the force who initially hate working with each other, but then learn to mutually respect one another by the end of their first murder case. Make me normal, witch. This pantsless Jesus is five seasons late to the Rixie Business episode. Leon, you saved our lives! Not only did he save your lives, but he saved your lives by killing Jesus. Is there a bigger sin than killing Jesus? How many sins should I give? Oh, of course. He met up, Morty. His life doesn't matter. Yours does. Rick staring into the camera there is by far the most unsubtle fourth wall break I've ever seen this series do. But it manages to feel more meaningful than all the others because it's delivered with a sincerity that Rick usually comes across as incapable of. I'm not going to claim to completely understand it, but the writers took care not to bury this message in a joke. And telling people they have value is a message I'd like to help amplify as well. The narrator was being a bit of a monologuist there, but I agree with the sentiment, so I'll take a sin off as well. You want to know what happened? Like, specifically? Writers write a writer delivering exposition about the writer's written writing. That was just some nonsense to see how many times you could put a variation of the word write into a sentence. Oh, okay, here's your motivation. You're looking for motivation. You want all the motivation. Writers make fun of the character motivation they dreamed up because hating your own ideas is the 20s versions of hating anything your parents thought was cool. The narrator delivers a sin that's super argumentative because he doesn't really know what motivated the writers to write the motivation motive. They're meta nerds that found out they could be less bearable as a team. TV, TV sin staff. staff. Anti meta field. Show has Rick create a thing using techno magic, thereby creating a contradictory world that somehow has enough rules to make science feasible and enough creative license to make literally anything else feasible. Don't try it, Flashback. Come on, Flash Baxter was right there. It runs on hydrogen isotopes. A few barrels of petroleum should dampen it. <laughs> Run, Morty! The show is now doing whatever it wants without regard for anything, and somehow the plot still makes sense. So I should probably remove a sin, but instead I'm adding one. Narrator should get a sin for adding sins when he should be removing them. But I'm obliged to take sides in this sin as part of some broader narrative that will be explained at some point, maybe. Were those not there before? Guess there's been a continuity error. Acting as if continuity errors are a part of storytelling. May as well include Typo Mary and Karma Splice. But the way Rick and Morty's bodies and clothes heal, they may have a point. That's Protago Nick. His beam has the power to make any character the protagonist.
duck, duck. Why would Rick tell Morty to duck? They're already the protagonist of the story. And since Rick knows he's in a TV show, shouldn't he know that? And knowing that, shouldn't Protago Nick's powers be useless against Rick and Morty? Come on! Protag Ernest was right there. Vignetting in a wacky episode like this as if we're about to finally get the interdimensional streaming episode we've been waiting for. No one's been waiting for this, because no one ever knows when Rick and Morty episodes will be available for streaming. They really went all in on Nessie and these different continuities, didn't they? Nessie's quickly becoming the David S. Pumpkins of Rick and Morty. Or at least we can help. Or do we not want that to happen? Can we flash back to what I was saying the other day? I swear to God about mythical creatures, if they ever start inserting the Loch Ness Monster randomly into Rick and Morty episodes, I will shave off all my bald hair and finally take up cross stitching. Damn it. They got him in a cell made out of sports because it's the opposite of story. Tell that to the producers of Drive to Survive. But his name is Brett Con. I think Brett's a name too. His name could be Rhett Con. Naming a character Brett Con for no other reason than getting in your Rhett Con joke. And just so you know, if you named him Rhett Con to begin with, I would have sent you for not naming him Brett Con. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome to TV Sins. Narrator does an I've painted the show into a corner just to deliver my welcome to TV Sins cliche. What is my purpose? To wait until I tell you to pull the lever. Retconning butter robot to have never passed the butter. You monster. Explaining the show's callbacks because you think it will make people like you. Also, that one hurt. Quiet you, I'm in control now. If you don't free me right now, Rick, I can make very, very bad things always have been the case for you. If Rhett the Hitman Khan can affect Rick's story while he's in this cage, why would he make very bad things have always been the case? Instead of just making Rick have always opened the door. And this fortress has always been an orange. And it has always been in a fruit bowl, which has always been on the top shelf, right? Right? Oh, come on. The narrator's need for acknowledgement is consuming him. Oh, it hurts! The show severely underexplains how Rick and Morty got from the orange that just became all of existence to this frozen tundra. What happened? You atoned. Since when is nearly dying in a snowstorm the same as atoning? If that were the case, Buffalo would be the most virtuous place in the world. And it's not. That's where Josh lives. He knows what he did. The narrator and I would likely have a better grasp of what is going on if we read more books and watched less TV. I'm Joseph Campbell. Making me think of Heart of Darkness, even though you're Joseph Campbell, who I often get confused with Joseph Conrad. But regardless, it makes me think of Heart of Darkness, and I hate thinking about Heart of Darkness. Why is that prick here? <laughs> no more a prick than you, friend. The animated representation of Joseph Campbell would be some asshole on a hero's journey at TV Sins. TV Sins guy would be excellent at letting other people do his job. Storing Joseph Campbell in the personification of all that is in the unconscious. I'm pregnant. What are you doing? Was it was it Rick? Well, then who? Bearded Rick thinks Joseph Campbell impregnated a bearded Morty, so he tries to drown him in a bucket of water. Improv the rest is how I imagine this scene was written. Now, that's just an excuse for you to verbally describe what is happening on screen because for some reason you think it's funny to do so. I hope this version skips ember and dry blood. Trying to be creative instead of just saying discount song of ice and fire. When you get home, Rick, do some classic adventures. Like season one. I'm so sick of that f***ing note. What the f*** does it even mean? <laughs> of all the fourth wall breaking jokes this show has done, that one is my favorite. Schadenfreude. Cubicles. One of the writers had a job with a cubicle one time, and now they make the same tired joke every time a row of them pops up on screen. You know what? I've had enough of you. No, I want to live! Let's never do that again. Wait, you have to register? The real joke isn't that this alien is too unmotivated to register to look at porn, it's that he's going to a site where you have to register for porn. He's bad at porn. I don't take notes. Rick and Morty writers constantly reminding us they don't care about feedback while constantly making episodes directly related to said feedback. Kid, I'm a writer that wrote something successful. Did you? You wrote a character so shallow that he literally has no motivation, but you did manage to help build a machine capable of sucking motivation from beings all across the universe, so I think you missed your calling there. You failed me. Story Lord is not only still alive, but still able to talk after being inflicted with a massive head wound Harry. <laughs> Look, if you're gonna make weird and dated references, Rick and Morty, then I'm gonna make weird and dated references. It's my right. And at least I'd never stoop to having Joseph f***ing Campbell in my story, mainly because I don't, I don't know who Joseph Campbell is. Joseph Campbell also says you have to use this brand new limited edition Rick Plush available only on rick-plush.biz. Not a real product or website that I had to waste time researching. And that is frankly a terrible URL. Yeah, I'm Tag Man. I, 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 I live in the tag. I, I, I am the tag. I'm Tag Man. Potato salad. Scene does not contain an adult swimming. 
I can't hold them off, Rick! I love a strong cold open, but would it kill the show to just once begin at the start of an adventure? Just once. I swear linear storytelling is starting to become the new non-linear storytelling, and no one wants that. I think. Get it? He's shelling the beach. But if you designed a weapon to shoot seashells, wouldn't the barrel shape need to be more seashell shaped? I guess what I'm saying is if Sally shoots seashells by the seashore, then she should shoot seashell shaped shooters, I'm sure. Your fortress is a salty waste of coral and clam. Disney didn't even attempt to incorporate any of Mr. Nimbus into their version of Namor. Also, I'm sure I wasn't the only one who recognized this guy enough to know that it was a callback, but not enough to remember that it's supposed to be Rick's arch nemesis. Without Googling it, of course. This probably means the show is either doing too many callbacks or not calling back to things I care about. Sorry I had to blow up your bunker. Close, but the correct answer was, sorry I had to blow up your bunker while you were still f***ing inside it and with barely enough time to escape, child of my child. It is I, Cookie Magneto. Show plays superhero Mad Libs and disguises it as being clever. This will never stand, at least if, uh, Bocce Ball Kitty Pride has anything to say about it. Okay, fine, it's harder than it seems, but I'm still sitting how easy it seems. I'm sorry, do you control things that people agree are cookies? And does that mean you have barely any powers in England where they call most of them biscuits? Sorry, just adding my two cents to the ever-growing examples of Morty being excellent at TV sins. Being that therapist who has an abstract painting of what is clearly a boob on your wall just so I'll point it out and then you can analyze my maternal issues and make me think I'm the one who's just seeing boobs everywhere. That is a boob, you piece of t So, uh, about my mom. I'm a walking target for a never-ending sea of angry nerds that think getting in a fight with me is some kind of, I don't know, platform. Is he... is he still looking over here? Shh. Uh, act like you don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, man, <laughs> about that book of Boba Fett. Yeah, that was, whew, that was rough. <laughs> Is he still looking at us? I am Piss Master, here to flush the toilet. That is Rick Sanchez. That's your catchphrase? You're in trouble now, mister, was right there. Also, where's all that urine even coming from? He's got enough of a steady stream to create upward propulsion of his machine while still hosing down the house with a separate deluge. I don't care how much prostament he's running through that thing. There's no way he's getting that kind of flow. With these two fighting, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be rooting for the pants pissing, ugly faced whiny guy or piss master. All these people who are videoing this, I'm gonna say fight instead of calling the police. I'm not saying filming wouldn't be happening, but I'd like to think a piss powered alien pummeling a subpar parent would be worthy of calling a higher power before publishing your pictures. Sorry, I sexualized you. <laughs> Apology we've been asking for from this show for the last six seasons comes out of the mouth of a character named the piss master. And you're getting a lot of hand clap emojis on white Twitter's impression of black Twitter. <laughs> Wow, it, 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 it's sticky. Yeah, that means it's found a pure heart it wants to bond with. Wild. My orbs do the exact same thing. Y you guys saw my son-in-law on the news. Now he gets a sticky orb. What's the catch? We're not rubes. Yeah, your power is well known in our jurisdiction, Rick Sanchez. Jerry is bestowed with a magic orb that Rick doesn't qualify for because of his infamy in the galaxy. But if they've heard of Rick's exploits, shouldn't they at least have a vague knowledge of an incompetent human that is sometimes with him who inspires calamity and disappointment just by leaving his bedroom and realizing he's unworthy of any orbs too. Yes, it'd be quicker to just say we hate Jerry, but I think this is more fun. The orb is raw power. Trust your heart, Jerry. It will know what to do. All powerful item that doesn't have any fixed rules, but instead relies on the power inside you. And for once, can we just be told how things work instead of this hand wavy emotional BS? Cliche. This orb is emitting a constant high frequency tone that is not only making me hate its very existence, but is a disqualifying feature from being something anyone would want around them for any amount of time. Like Jerry. Here's your goddamn suit. I hardwired the orb's infinite energy right into it. Giving Jerry this much power, even if it is to prove a point to a piece of sh teenager. This shooty thing looks cool. That shooty thing is a nuclear disruptor that can blow up planets. Okay, I get making the suit to shut everyone up and let Jerry have his time in the superhero spotlight, but arming the suit with a f***ing arm-mounted planet killer was 100% your choice, Rick. Jerry would have been content if the thing had a built-in TV remote, soda hat, and fidget spinner. Space Hitlers are convening on Zeplar Prime. Oh, yeah, that's that a problem. One. Tackling Space Hitlers when we haven't dealt with all of our Earth Hitlers. I'll be the same, bad guy. I don't deny that the galaxy's most evil entities would take up the mantle of Space Hitler, but I do find it hard to believe their conference for all things evil would be so easy to find and destroy by Operation Valk Jerry over here. And there were no other people on the planet. Are you sure? Because that looks like quite an infrastructure for just a handful of Hitlers. Who were their assistants? Where did they eat? Who ran the internet so that they could leave comments on YouTube videos? You gotta be 
fucking kidding me. You mean the fact that we haven't seen the Smith family for setting up the couch in the dead center of the room and obstructing possible traffic flow? I know, right? Or maybe we have. You know what? We've literally sent every episode of this show, so I don't even know anymore. I don't know that it's a sin, but I just, I just want to know more about the booby doodle, okay? It raises many questions both about this therapist and the writers who put it there that we just never get answered. Release the boodle cut. Why is Toast the bad guy on Breakfast Planet? Forks literally slice your egg faces open and let your yolky innards pour out, and you're hanging them on buildings like wreaths at Christmas, you dicks. The council said I could pick my own bridge crew. Having free reign on your bridge crew and not even stopping to consider Patrick Stewart for a single solitary second. Oh me, oh my, can it be? A giant piece of shit I see? Creating a baddie takes effort and time, so sometimes you settle for a legume that can rhyme. Of course, sinning such things can be equally taxing, but alas, tis my job, not this poetical waxing. Meme chasing. Whatever food this is, Rick will now walk in on a dead piss master who's taken his own life because this show has handled tough subject matter so well in the past, why wouldn't they try it again? Dad, mom told me you weren't responding to her calls. And this will be the turning point leading Rick into the piss master rehabilitation project. Is the show Trojan Horsing a Rick rehabilitation project into an episode about a piss master rehabilitation project? It doesn't matter, I'm not buying either. I know I said terrible things about you on my podcast. Obnoxious millennial skip. I'm okay, honey, we're good. This, barely putting any effort into a disguise, works for the rest of the episode. Make, make sure you tell everybody Pissmaster saved you. Out of guilt for being tangentially responsible for Pissmaster suicide, Pistol Rick decides to create his own Pissmaster suit and send him out in a blaze of glory, instead of going back in time and convincing Jerry's mother that going on a date with Jerry's father is in no one's best interest. Oh, don't act like he's above doing that and just acquiring a Morty from a different universe. Thinking there's more to this world than news, entertainment, life, and video. Now I'm gonna make a giant bomb, plant it in a city, and then have the suit autopilot the bomb into space. Boom! Everyone will think Pissmaster sacrificed himself. As powerful as the arts of theatricality and deception are to the uninitiated, it's still a bad idea to model your convoluted plans on disappointing comic book movie climaxes. I'm tempted to second guess a lot of that, but I think you might be nailing it. Wait, what? The man just told you he's going to plant a bomb and hope the suit can save the day, and your response is therapy, FTW. But he's piss master. People change, Jerry. Thinking that because it's possible for people to change, then it means we're required to let them back into our lives. I can't stress enough. I'm eight years old. I have no idea what I'm doing. And yet, you somehow have a perfectly fitted explosive ordnance disposal suit and some sort of orphan infrastructure established. Look, I know the show's aware of this, but setting up your own jokes like this is asking me to suspend my disbelief as if it were a small family of elephants dangling 5,000 feet in the air from nothing more than a particularly overused elastic band and a crossed finger. Also, does Orphan Island not realize you can be orphaned at all sorts of ages and not just as children? In fact, more elderly people are orphans than kids. Chew on that, the internet. You were Pissmaster the whole time? Obviously not, Jerry. I put the suit on once Pissmaster killed- Rick will now very obviously backpedal and claim that he was Pissmaster the whole time and everyone will buy it despite it being utter bullshit and not making any of the sense. I guess they just really trust Rick. And or they know there are only two minutes left and we need to wrap this shit up. Why would Rick even prop me up like that? Jesus, Jerry, Rick did something nice for once, okay? He's obviously trying to change. You mean, obviously the show is trying some sort of redemption story arc that has never worked in the past and isn't working now. The man discards people and worlds like toilet paper, uses them to clean up his own sh** and then casually eliminates them. I bet he doesn't even look at them before he flushes. What? That's what people do. How are you supposed to know if you're clean if you don't- Wait, Morty, you have to promise not to tell anyone, but your dad made Pissmaster kill himself. Ah! What the hell? He killed himself? Kids. Wait, you kept the suicide note? Morty would be excellent at what the f*** is this episode even trying to tell us about Rick's psychosis sins. I have a pitch. We're not going to add Scarlett Johansson. Not adding Scarlett Johansson. Why are we waiting in line for food? Rick asks this instead of the very obvious, why are we waiting in this wildly inefficient line for food? Look, any good business should have a grasp of basic queue management systems. And in a space this confined, your basic hardly structured queue just isn't going to cut it. At the very least, this asteroid should have barriers in snake formation to maximize the lateral space. But really, this calls for an e-ticketing system where an order is placed, the customer returns to their vehicle, and is called up once their food is ready. Ideally, considering everyone is driving here anyway, a multi-window drive through situation would be the dream, but come on guys, it's just a cartoon, I'm not that nitpicky. Rick, you're gonna spoil your appetite! That's a weird way to say I'm gonna stop being hungry by eating food. Right out of the gate, Rick would be a season 2 episode of Rick and Morty at TV Sins. 
What a wonderful thing to say. <laughs> I was merely inspired by the wonderful thing you said. The comment section of every TV Sins video somehow makes it into the episode. Now, for those of you who haven't paused, I know you're the ones that have been leaving the comments, and I see what you write, and I would just like to say... Thank you! Your adoration for my brilliantly executed wit and expertly crafted comedy stylings is obviously expected, but still appreciated nonetheless. So, the sin as always is me being excellent at TV sins. Well, at least the mystery of the long line has been solved. What kind of assholes go to a food truck to order this many, um, burrito sub witches? How nice it will be for you to eat what you are willing to stand in line for so much sooner. Trying to incept the idea into someone's head that they should be happy about the way you've treated them because of how you feel about it. I'm not sure which vehicle warning light this is, but I'm sure it's one of them. Dear fellow. Littering the ground with your unwrapped lettuce-filled, um, hot pockets? Good day. Chainmail that is this ineffective against a f***ing sword. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Rewind that sh Without a word of warning, Sir David of Mitchell is either teleported out of the blue by an external force causing him to drop the food, or he deliberately drops the food and teleports them back to the sun. Either way, what the f*** was the point of this trip if all the food has been left behind? Why did Rick put this portal on the floor? We've seen portals appear out of thin air many times, so it's not like they require a physical surface like portal portals. If he'd used it normally, then he and Morty could have run through it without stopping. Six seasons. Six seasons this has been bugging me. Our lives are never ending, but not even in the dumb vampire way where after a while you hate it. Well, that's a pretty bold statement to make. Are you speaking on behalf of everyone? Even what looks like peasants who don't get fancy armor and swords? And how can this be something you truly know until you've lived for millions of years and are endlessly suffocating through the heat death of the universe? Hmm? It is the home of the Solar Scepter, around which all worlds revolve. The men who keep it safe are admired by all and live as gods. Admired by all? Then how the f*** is Morty only just hearing about them? We'll learn that there are people living on all the planets of the solar system, all of whom are aware of the Sun Knights, yet the most populated planet in the solar system hasn't got a f clue? It's a terrific and painful sacrifice we all make for the most important and powerful job in the universe. Careful how you're throwing the word universe around, sir. You're not even the best drummer in the Beatles. Wait, I may have my star star punchlines confused. No, 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 the sword has already seen Blade and loved it. You'll be fine. Introducing us to a larger sentient Blade doesn't make it any less of a recycled concept. I'm a drunk, I'm a psychopath, I'm a murderer. Rejected lines from Meredith Brooks' 1997 hit song somehow make their way into this episode. The show's acting like Morty's more upset by the singing of these nights than he is by the fact that they only have honey to put on their pancakes. Jerry, Beth, and Summer all appear to be chewing and swallowing despite having a plate of intact pancakes. Why is breakfast such a challenge for this show? Yeah, so there you have it. Traditions suck ass and your most foundational beliefs are total bullshit. Morty's lecture, though strikingly similar to the experience of taking a college-level history course, for some reason includes a diagram that presents all of the planets on the same orbital ellipse. And a room full of space travelers lets him get away with this. I just used your computer phone to search despair. Bullshit you did. This phone is clearly on the History of New York podcast, and even if the rim prices there are bad enough to have this pop up when you search despair, it's certainly not the first hit, or even above the site with the demotivational posters. So if Rick and Morty need spacesuits on the moon, are we saying that the asteroid at the start of the show had a f***ing atmosphere? Haven't you seen, like, all of the universes? Exactly, so why would I hang out on Pluto? That's some Jerry League sh <gasps> You take that back! Pluto has had a rough time enough as it is without that sort of slander. Do the Knights of the Sun plan to protect Mercury from this chaos? The Mercurians choose to ceremonially cut off their right breast instead of their d And I don't know if this was a low-key way to raise awareness for breast cancer in both women and men, but that's certainly the reason I'm pointing it out, so I'm removing a sin because the animators gave me the opportunity to do so. But also, the animators let this scar migrate from the left in this shot to the right in this shot, so I have to add a sin again because they gave me the opportunity to do so. It's all you, pal. This fireworks. Don't I have, like, authority over this Sons of the Moon meeting? Looks like Morty went to the King Viserys school of asserting your authority. Santa? What the hell is that? I'm the Earl of Earth, goddammit! The Earl of Earth has no idea who Santa is. How can you be the Earl of Earth and not understand the true meaning of Christmas? Venus questions the legitimacy of this king's authority! I've been trying to put my finger on why this episode isn't quite landing for me, and then this line suddenly hit me like an unannounced 10-year time jump. I think the episode shot for Game of Thrones, but accidentally landed in House of the Dragon. 
Now, there's a chance that they sabotage their own episode as a meta way to have a pop at how boring the Thrones concept is in and of itself, but that would be like me publishing this video without any of the punchlines, and I get accused of doing that enough as it is. Um. Writers realized there was no British noble title that began with the letter N, so they just gave Neptune a silly voice and called it a day. We won't dare play the song out of fear of angering some pink guy, but Goodbye Blue Sky is currently soundtracking the Solar War, so the sin as always is Ruby Tuesday. Is ye old neutral zone on the moon? If so, why are the Sons of the Moon okay with this? And if it's because the Sons of the Moon moved all their operations to the sun, why haven't we started referring to them as the Sons of the Sun? Santa Claus is not looking on the bright side of life in this scene. Technosplaining your type's position. Typenosplaining your war crime's position. What is this? Vat of acid again? We weren't thinking it was vat of acid again till you brought it up. Then we did think it was vat of acid again because you brought it up. Then we thought it was less about doing vat of acid again and more about doing self-referential callbacks because you think we love that sh**. Then we thought maybe we'd like it if you did do vat of acid again because as it turns out, we might love that sh**. And then we thought maybe vat of acid again was just a metaphor for trying to love again after being burned one too many times. Then we thought, what's vat of acid again got to do with it? Who needs a vat when a vat can be broken? Morty, this family's got enough clones and robots in it. I'm not sure if Rick is using in it as an American way to confirm that one or more of their family members are robots, or if he's using the British slang in it as a bit of filler to elicit agreement for Morty. But what I do know is that this episode has far too many not funny jokes in it. Living on the sun has turned our veins into triple bonded carbon. So try this tale on for size, Mortaniel. We can't OD! Well, sure, triple plotted veins will do the trick, but didn't you guys say you were mortal and only died when you chose to? Wouldn't that be a pretty solid defense as well? Also, who, while on a sun-adulterated heroin binge, stops for any amount of time to confirm the composition of their veins? I'll give you a fake with three layers of fail-safes. Yeah, but if two of those fail-safes start rubbing against each other, it could really undermine the whole endeavor. Also, why not just let Morty cut his dick off and then grow it back for him later? Not that I want to see this. I'm just saying, we've seen Rick grow parts of bodies, clone entire bodies, and change the entire genetic makeup of a species multiple times. Growing back one penis should be a cakewalk. We're gonna make your dick so fake, buddy. Is a thing Rick said to his grandson in this episode. The signal! Sir, the Knights of the Sun are once more! Everyone starts destroying their weapons as soon as the sun signal starts without confirming that all of their enemies are doing the same or that peace is actually at hand. This is like ending your crime spree in Gotham after seeing the bat signal without confirming that Batman isn't just tied up with the Joker or some sh**. Okay, it's not exactly like that, but at some point the criminals of Gotham should realize that the f***ing bat signal doesn't mean sh** for them. And if Batman is chasing after petty thieves, then he should look at where he's dedicating his resources. I mean, f why does he even attend bank robberies in progress? All the f***ing money is insured anyway. The f*** does the bank care? Yeah, yeah, I know the money will get used for drugs and weapons and stuff, but is a glorified nightlight really inspiring that much fear in hardened criminals? What was I sending again? Did your covert disguiser really need that very visual notification that it's been turned off? Also, why can this hologram be deactivated at the touch of a button, but not reactivated at the touch of a button after Morty goes through the dick scanner? Whoa, a sunspot! What, where? Something, something, something. Morty's pixelated clone dick slinkies down the stairs. Improv the rest, is how I imagine this scene was written. Okay, well, go on through. And of course, by prosthetic, we mean witchcraft a little witch is funny and all, but this was clearly designed for a humorous reveal and not to actually fool anyone. I'm not even sure why Morty's pretending this one was gonna work. We even checked with a royal ladle to ensure it was real sun, not just them hiding beneath an vat of fake sun. Show thinks it's funny that it was vat of acid again this entire time. Showing favoritism. Coming right up, three losums. How about ten years? In jail. Oh, sh if you were about to arrest him for trafficking these creatures, did you have to open with ordering some to be eaten? They get their poor little heads punctured all so that you can have your big gotcha moment, you selfish bastard. This is like f***ing Batman deciding to disappear on Jim Gordon mid sentence just so- Hey, don't you ding me off, I've got things to say! <laughs> Skipping your cold open and intro. How dare they change the format of their own show? I see the lights Jerry hung around the roof of the house in Rattlestar Rick Lactica are no longer part of the arrangement. So here's a sin for pissing all over Christmas traditions. And here's another sin for pissing all over continuity. And here's a third sin for, well, just pissing in general. Rick Santachez here with <laughs> gifts from across the multiverse. Come on, people. St. Nicholas was right there. Although I would have also accepted the Dutch variant, Sinterklaas. 
Also, pandering to the misguided idea that your captive audience will appreciate you traveling the vast multiverse to acquire gifts that they think they'll love while failing to realize the hollowness that often comes with obtaining things you once thought were unobtainable. Or, more simply, pulling a multiverse of madness. For Jerry, an extra-dimensional version of Miracle on 34th Street. <gasps> I love the idea that in the entire multiverse, the best gift Rick could find for Jerry was a f***ing movie. It brings me comfort knowing that there just isn't the technology out there to give him a tolerable personality or a few extra brain cells. Also, is that a f***ing VHS tape? And for the people young enough to ask, what the f*** is a VHS tape? Watch your language and get the f*** off my lawn. Morty's only going to use this very honorable weapon in designated Jedi zones. Hearing this caused the media object between my ears that Jerry is missing to wonder, how did this lightsaber make it into the very not-Jedi, not-Disney designated zone of Rick and Morty? Wait, does Disney own Rick and Morty? All right, I got, let me see here. Okay, we've got Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Damn you, Discovery. Here, I'll, I'll do it myself. No! I know that for the most part, Rick and Morty fly by the seat of their AI-controlled pants, but on this occasion, I really think there should have been some firm ground rules in place before laser sword playtime. Simple things like no running in the house, or no arguing over who gets to use it next, or no leaning on one of the greatest weapons in pop culture history to make your finale more entertaining. Haphazardly storing the able to slice through metal laser death stick right next to your definitely not stronger than metal taint adjacent intangibles. Okay, we overshot it. Good problem to have. Still doing the ear roll? I told you we should have gone to 10! No, Morty, not 10! Rick is right on the money here, and how does Morty not see that? Obviously, there's a very important story-based reason for Morty to go to floor 10, but labeling the button with a sign that says Morty should definitely not go here at any point during the finale would have felt less contrived than making Morty a total dumbass. Rick! You dumb f***ing robot, you had one job! A job that you, you dumb f***ing human, could have made a whole lot easier by not putting an unsecured stop to your secret lab in the f elevator. Why does this lab even have an entrance to stumble upon? We're expected to believe that Rick would rely on a Rick bot to keep people away instead of just putting this lab somewhere completely void of life like the moon, an asteroid, or Jerry's skull. You gave him a f***ing lightsaber for Christmas? It's almost like someone designed me to be 22% more thoughtful than right. you. He lightsaber is his definition of 22% more thoughtful? How is gifting one of the coolest pieces of technology ever created equate to 22% more thoughtful than putting your grandchild at risk on a near daily basis? Move aside, Morty. I'll put up with living in the anus of a space lizard if it means I get a f***ing lightsaber. The presidential Blackhawk is landing on the lawn. Who dropped a lightsaber perfectly f Vertical. How close do the Smiths live to the damn White House? I can buy that the president is somehow monitoring their house for shenanigans, but he managed to get here within minutes of shit going sideways. I mean, shit going perfectly fing vertical. You know what's in the hilt of that thing? Kyber crystals! Okay, nerd. I mean, right? Plus, it's not kyber crystals. The lightsaber's power source is clearly the incoherent ramblings of a man who, 20 years after, didn't realize he'd made the greatest movie ever and decided he needed to keep tampering with it like a little kid and make Han solo not be the kind of guy who shoots first whatever it is when it hits the core it's going to cause a chain reaction that destroys the earth how the f do they know what effect a fictional gadget's going to have on the planet's core and how does this thing even exist its presence presumes that somewhere in the multiverse there either exists a universe that exactly emulates the lsd induced fever dream of a man in this universe or a universe where inspired by said fever dream someone created a lightsaber for commercial use or their own enjoyment both are possible, but either way, how the f*** does the president of this Earth know what a f***ing kyber crystal would do to the planet's core? George Lucas doesn't even f***ing know how they work. Fans turned on him and started giving any knucklehead with nerd cred a shot and churned out these irredeemable cash grabs. Half pretend to be satisfied, half sh** on him. The president's little diatribe here makes me realize that half the internet would be excellent at Star Wars sins. But I'm not telling you which half. It's the worst Christmas ever! Oh, well, one positive, Morty, is that your feet haven't fallen off of your body from frostbite after standing outside barefoot for the last couple of minutes. If I wanted the government in my house, I'd buy an Alexa. Right? What kind of an idiot would be dumb enough to do that? Hey, uh, Google, is uh, the government listening to me? <clears throat> I'm singing, I'm singing a song, I'm your assistant and I'm singing la 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 la. <laughs> it's so funny cool what was i saying i'm no expert but it seems we got a a certain amount of time to build a big drill ship saying this when there's a literal time remaining counter behind you good luck finding a good scientist on christmas i mean christmas doesn't take away a good scientist's ability to be good does it 
And yes, I'm sure he meant to say, good luck finding a good scientist to come down here on Christmas. But he didn't say that. And I'm the type of grinchy asshole to make sure that gets pointed out. All right, genius. I give you permission to make our drill shit fast. Calling someone a genius who's adorned in nothing more than a lab coat and boxer shorts while playing with a yo-yo. Then you say, but Mr. Narrator, yo-yos are fun. And then I say, watch your language and get the f*** off my lawn. Vertisaber, state your prime directive. To stay vertical. And yet, Vertisaber will almost immediately not be vertical. Progress report. Vertisaber, do you copy? Do I have to respond every time? I know this is leading to a joke about the dangers of AI technology becoming too clever to follow our orders, but is Rick really dumb enough to instigate this? He's looking directly at a visual update of Vertisaber's progress, and yet he's still pestering it every few seconds as if he's Jerry wondering why his grilled cheese sandwiches keep breaking the toaster. Let's play a Christmas game. Christmas games. That's what happens when you let people in and they stop respecting you. Skip. Sorry, was that disrespectful? Approaching the lightsaber in T-minus... Now! T-minus now! Sorry! And this apology, continuing for several more seconds, means that there actually was a T-minus amount of time he could have shared, but didn't. Stop making a mockery of the T-minus system. Movie tension isn't gonna falsify itself. This franchise raised me. I own Star Wars, not you. I own this, not you. Once again, Rick and Morty hold a mirror up to the dangers of toxic fandom by showing us how easy it is to feel like you own a franchise because you watched it first or you liked it before it was cool. I applaud them for shining a light on gatekeeping culture and the tendency to turn fandom into a competition instead of a celebration. Of course, you might have missed that if you're new to the show and haven't bothered to watch every episode and purchased all the comics, video games, and other ancillary media like me, a true fan. I would be honored if you would carve the ham this year. I would be less sin happy if someone in this family would acknowledge that they have zero clue where Morty has been for the last few hours and maybe if one of them was concerned about that fact. Also, putting fruit on meat. Stop it. You're not my grandpa. You're a f***ing robot. I'm not sure if I should send Jerry for just going ahead and cutting into Rick, even though Jerry couldn't be 100% positive Morty was telling the truth, or if I should remove a sin for Jerry taking the initiative for once. I'm pretty sure there's no God that would forgive me for removing a sin for Jerry, so I'm going to go ahead and play those just in case there's an afterlife odds. I'm just glad I'm not the one that ruined Christmas. I mean, you did make your family aware that Rick was an imposter bot, and they were perfectly happy and content with not knowing that, so you didn't not not ruin Christmas. People of Earth. Hmm, that's never good. I'm not here to play... The president, who is on TV, pauses so that Beth can get her line in. Will we launch the White House into space? Well, I'm busted. But other than comedic timing, there's really no reason you should be. Was the lack of gravity in space a surprise? Did the genius minds who managed to turn the f***ing White House into a f***ing spaceship also forget to tell the president that making this broadcast at the exact moment they lose gravity was not a good idea? <laughs> Scream all you want, Rick, but this unholy monitor monstrosity is totally within your power to change. Why has this map been spread across multiple monitors? Look at all the gaps he must be missing. If they're zoomed in to compensate for any gaps between monitors, that's even worse because then the whole thing isn't to a consistent scale. Oh, so now there's gravity on the White House. F*** you. Look at him, lightsaber hand. Which means the president already had access to the lightsaber technology, so why didn't he just have one made for himself instead of going through all the bullshit? of stealing Morty's. You think I want 30 low-run TV series with bad CGI? They film everything on that one big green screen. Says the cartoon. A robot with lightsabers for eyes. God definitely can't see. So this droid wasn't tested, like, at all? Some asshole just sent the first draft to print without thinking, hmm, I wonder if we should beta test this first, as if they're working on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> yeah, shove that topical joke in your will immediately date this video pipe and smoke it. Star Wars rules say you have to forgive me. Actually, the Star Wars rules say that Jerry has to swoop in and throw the president into a bottomless void where we miss the next 30 to 35 years of Morty's life, and instead of seeing any of the cool sh** he does, just skip straight to his green milk addicted retirement years. No! no. Also, you could probably have a Portal X Machina sin in just about every episode, but this one seems more insane than most, so here's one sin plus the other 50 we should have already given in previous episodes. I should have included you in my sh**. So we're clear, no one should ever be included in your sh**. That's your sh**. It's personal and also biodegradable, I think. Ooh-wee, what a season, huh? Mr. Poopy Butthole callbacks aside, here's one more reminder that Rick and Morty would be excellent at TV sins.
You're a very nosy fellow, kitty cat, huh? You know what happens to nosy fellows? You want me to buy a subscription to the Saturday Evening Post? No! Not a word, not a word, not a word now! I went into a future dimension with such advanced medicine that they had broken leg serum at every corner drugstore. I'm sure that in 1985, plutonium was available in every corner drugstore, but in 1955, it's a little hard to come by. He's got some kind of disability or something. Is that what you want us to say? I do? Implausible, I know, but I like to imagine that he had sex the night before, and now a little bit of residue is blocking his urethra. Oh, jeez, Dad. Y you know, that's a lot to drop on a kid all at once. <laughs> Good girl. I love you. Oh my god, he's trying to tell us something. That is so awesome. Sexual hang-ups in the pleasure chamber are punishable by death! Off with their heads! You will walk when it is time to walk. You got that, you maggot motherfucker! We'll come back tomorrow, maybe they'll be gone by then. You better get out of here before somebody sees us. Introducing Smart Dogs, the first dogs trained to train humans. Mr. Spicoli, you're on dangerous ground here. You're causing a major disturbance on my time. Are you saying there's something wrong with my gear? Get to the digestive tract. He's coughing! I'm possessed! Dum dum dum, <laughs> Christmas oh, drums. Sing it. Here come the drums! Oh my god, it looks like a huge... Pecker! Oh, where? Yeah. Wait, that's not a woodpecker, it looks like someone's private! Whoa! There's always a bigger fish. Zygerian scammers, Morty. The galaxy's most ambitious, least successful con artist. That doesn't make sense. We're good, streaky! Yeah! Look at that old lady. She's she's walking a cat on a leash. Yes! See you in ten minutes. I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife. And those words on your dick. I'm gonna go away Unless you start using topical cream every day I'm a white boy but my neck is red I put Miracle Whip on my Wonder Bread Well, we're back to our roots Driving the same streets my grandfather started on Oh, but times were simpler back then, weren't they? Because people had integrity I looked at the trap, Ray You're out of order! You're out of order! The whole trial is out of order! I've dreamt of free selling El Cap for 10 years, and every year it just looked too big. You've come to fight as three men, and three men you are. What will you do without freedom? Buckle up! Your, your driver is a snail? Hey, Jessica. Hello, Peter. What's happening? I throw balls far. I'm gonna f all of you! You know, son, you're not a kid anymore. Oh, no. I go to health class, Dad. I already know all this stuff. But what people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. Biochemically no different than eating large quantities of chocolate. There's something special about you, Morty. You reached out and you touched it by the heart. Rip my clothes off and mate with me for life. It's really important in this pose that you arch your back and keep it flat at the same time. You, you're, 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 you're just a little creepy creep. Person. You're just this penny-stealing, wannabe, uh, criminal man. So, we're just going to pretend this isn't happening? I'm not saying that's a bad idea, just asking. I drive a Dodge Stratus! <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I think I hit puberty. Should I cut the cord? I think it's Linguini. Can't take this anymore! I learned it by watching you. I came here to do two things. Eat eggs and nothing. And I'm not out of either. Will you please not marry me? I choose Veronica. But imagine if he came back with something actually useful for the girl, and then he came back two minutes later with some self-respect and some dignity. But one of us is dead corn! Ah, oh, no, the corn! Paul Newman's gonna have my legs broke. This sh is delicious. Oh. <laughs> you eat pieces of for breakfast? It says you can't eat anymore. Eat sh eat sh eat sh smug smile. Definitely eat. Tell you what, friends, if nobody comes down and buys a car for me in the next hour, I'm gonna club this baby seal! That's right! I'm gonna club a seal to make a better deal! No, I'll do it too, cause I'm crazy! Man.
woman. And now trunk men? Man, you must be out of your mind if you think I'm gonna get in this dirty ass trunk. Hi, I'm a trunk person. I am not an animal! I am a human being! What is my purpose? I brought you into this world. A machine that can think and feel. <laughs> <laughs> we are laughing! <laughs> I want an apology. Nay. Nay, I demand penance. You're watching right side of the bed. I'm Grayson Chisholm. Take him to Plutonimo Bay. You can't handle the truth. Homer, I told you this morning, no guns at the dinner table. F you. No, 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 no. F me. F you. Bring up the holograms. And I hate to get all Andy Rooney about it, but... When did bright-colored plastic cows, pigs, and rabbits get to be art? Coffee time! Yo, 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 yo! That's what I like to hear! You wake up, it's time for coffee! Advertising! Wow! So, people need help figuring out what to buy, and then y you help them? Cheese. It's milk that you chew. You know, Jerry, I'm not gonna tell you that these will increase in value or even hold their current value. The truth is, you bought them because you like them. They have value to you. That's what matters. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! Speaking of disasters, Dad, we are leaving you in charge. Ooh, someone has a serious face on. It smells like Thai food in here. Have you guys been f***ing? Every weekend, Jacks and Roses have their titanic experience in this car, and I have to mop it up. Oh, that's not right. I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured. The beacon was activated. And Rohan will answer. Are you okay? Yeah, that's gonna f*** me, you. So what we'll do is we'll rig a bus so that when it goes below 50 miles an hour, it blows up. What the f*** is that? Oh god, now there's three of them! There are too many of them. What are we going to do? How misguided are you? I feed you a couple of bullsh** legal precedents, and there you go. You jump on it like a bitch in heat. How's it going, Bill and Ted? Ted, it's us again. So that's how it's gonna be. Y'all wanna play? Okay, then. I've got my eye on you, Jay Quiller. That's right, Mrs. Smith. Give in to your anger. Let the hate flow through you. They take their balls and they dip them in cocaine. I wanna dip my balls in it! Are you Crombopulous Michael's target? Very good, Tin Man. The world can be one together. Cosmos without hatred. Stars like diamonds. those guys do in, a, in, the, in their fancy boardrooms? I take quaaludes 10 to 15 times a day for my back pain, Adderall to stay focused, Xanax to take the edge off, pot to mellow me out, cocaine to wake me back up again. You do understand I'm telepathic, right? Pick a color. Blue. Pick a number, 17. All right, I'll call the two grand, I'll gamble. Don't splash the pot. And in my club, I will splash the pot whenever the f I please. <laughs> What is that? That's what we're gonna find out. Balloon Summer, Balloon Morty. I don't like chicken, and I hate clowns. Oh, yeah! No! Gary Clarkson! We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. But Uncle Steve taught me how to ride a bike. Steve! Buttons don't work better if you hit them harder, and foam fists don't make you strong. What's my father ever done that's so great? School superintendent? Big whoop! There's only like 800 kids in the entire county! Now I believe someone has a final exam to attend. Wesley? Marmalade is served. Uh, Marmalade! Loma, king of roof! That's rock, Loma. But you still can't be in our band. But by helping Punky win TV contests. You're hassling, switching lanes with a car by my side. Shut up, Hammer Eye. Shut up, Amish Cyborg. What is this, 90s Conan? In the year 2000! Face, a final frontier. 
A giant head has entered Earth's gravity, triggering climate change and natural disasters we thought were impossible for at least another eight years. Look at the size of that boy's head. Time to go, Morty. Uh, where? The Pentagon. Yeah! Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. You're gonna want to put them on that giant speaker system at your sonic testing facility at Area 51. Guess you'd like to see the big tamale, huh? When God deals you an 11, you don't fold. And you always double down on 11. And what's your plan, General? We still have the nuclear option. On my word, we can launch a missile at every one of those heads in the sky. Hey, you better find yourself someplace to hide and keep praying nobody ever finds you. What's now that? you're thinking with portals. In this universe, there's only one absolute. Everything freezes. Ice tea. What's with these people, man? Lemonade. Read the sign. Lemonade. The best ice cream in the multiverse. I had some ice cream, and I'm gonna eat it all. No, stop! Don't kill him! I thought about our dilemma, and I came up with a solution that I honestly think works out best for one of both of us. That just sounds like slavery with extra steps. We live in a society where honor to distant memory. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Now slap on these antenna. These people need to think we're aliens. Right, right. Somebody said alien. She thought they said illegal alien and signed up. Nothing you do matters. Your existence is a lie. Yeah, you too. Incredible turbo team. I think it's okay to dream, Morty. I'm gonna go make some wooden stakes. He's got a cold. Hunting a vampire with my grandkids! Now this is not gonna be pretty. We're talking violence, strong language, adult content. Surprise, mother All right, everybody. This next one's coming straight from the heart. Making the lyrics up right off the top of my head. Let me out. What you see is not the same person as me. My life's a lie. I'm not who you my children take feast on martyred flesh! My home planet is far away and long since gone. Please excuse his lack of decorum. His enthusiasm outweighs his discretion. That's right, assholes. Take my penis. But they'll never take our freedom! I didn't know that there were bugs out in space. You mean bugs? I hate bugs! Boy, you want to give me one good reason why you would steal a Snickers bar. The nougat? Why don't you have some candy bars as well? Shut up. I like candy. Also, if you tell your mom about this, I'll purge you. Are you threatening me? My bunghole will not wait. I see shit like that for breakfast, Morty. But if you don't do it, I say it's because you're afraid of your own primal instincts. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. I squant my family. I... What? I do. I squant my family. Oh, Frank, you disgust me. You disgust everyone. You know, you're not being very supportive of a bird person on his big day. How about this? Shut your mouth, or I'll kick your teeth down your throat, and I'll shut it for you. Squatch this, mofo. Not using it right, Joe. Ah, oh, sounds like you and my dad have a long history together. Wish I could say the same. With all due respect, what the f are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not right. You know, when I first met bird person, he was... Listen, I'm not the nicest guy in the universe. And for the record, my name's not Ted Peterson. It's Han Solo, named after the man who made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. And I am a burger, like my father before me. Also, I want to tell everyone here that I've got a pretty huge New Kids on the Block tattoo on my back. The heads are warped, but f you guys, it's funny. How it feels to chew five gum. Stimulate your senses. Welcome to Earth. He may have manifested some sort of butt. Allow me to share with you a motto I believed in throughout my life. Nobody who is an ass man can be all bad. Maybe I just want you to care if I run away yelling. It was just like Sonny said it would be. Nobody cares. 
So if you really want your grandpa back, grab a shovel. The one that won't let you down is buried in your backyard. Dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole. Welcome to McDonald's. Can I take your order? I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. It's a trap! <laughs> apples, apples, apples. It's my vagina. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity Stone. It's because losers look stuff up while the rest of us are carving all them DMs. Belief, like fear or love, is a force to be understood as we understand the theory of relativity and principles of uncertainty. Kill me, please. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. How come you guys dress like you're in a theme park stunt show, but these guys wear khakis and hockey jerseys? This is the way. After the boom boom, some adapted to the new truth. You speak the true truth. And he wants more! And the hosters giving them exactly what they want. I'll be right back! Deathstalkers, bring me his flesh leather! Sorry my grandpa stole your god and ruined your car. You don't turn your back on family, even when they do. I am Summer. Summer, state your deal. You already know my name, and you can see that I'm a machine. I don't know why I'm crying. Why are you crying? <laughs> There's no crying. You know, is this the first part of some kind of magic trick? Illusion, Michael. Mm. Trick is something a whore does for money. God damn it, I love myself. Cause I love me, love me. Dad, I would like you to tell me what's in the syringe. Quit f***ing around and give it the shot, come on. Okay. I'm a pickle when I feel like it, so you asked. Well, actually, nobody on this planet ever really chooses each other. I mean, it's all a question of quantum physics, molecular attraction, and timing. It's Maximus, renegade star soldier! That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. It was a classic case of guy on the ground. Obviously, I came here last night during a blackout. Oh, man! So this is what the zone feels like. Oh, analyze this! Vance, stay calm! Wake up! You made a deal with a force that's bigger than you. When the time comes, they're gonna ask you to pay what they feel you owe them. It's for the greater good. The greater good. Valima. Valima. Ah! Surprise, motherfucker. I'm gonna lay my head gently on your shoulder. Maybe we can cry, hug, and maybe even slow dance. Don't patronize me, Dean. Dangerous. Oh. Rick Sanchez. You son of a motherless goat. Finally, monsieur, a waffle thin mint. Now, f off, I'm full. The device before you is one of sacrifice. A sacrifice of blood. Mean would be shooting you, Jerry. This is saving a bullet. Do you comprehend the value of the bullet in your barrel? I tell you, fellas, this is the life. Bo -bo -bo -bo. Let's go. In and out. 20 minutes adventure. Four to six days later. Hey, uh, you mind if I put on some music? Not at all. Bird's a word, a bird, 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 bird. The bird is a word, a bird, bird, bird. Hey, Morty, remember yesterday when I couldn't play the trombone? Well, check this out. It's not, not quite my tempo. What's a knockout like you doing in a computer generated gin joint like this? Woohoo! I'm out of my awkward state. John, one thing I can promise you, even in this market, is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I asked them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. Uh, yeah, I think we actually have the audio for his speech here. I just got a free churro because my mom died. The election's got these yellow shirts more riled up than a picture day Jessica. If you're gonna get nasty, I'm gonna leave. Yes, slow Rick, tall Morty. I said reading is good. Can we start the story now? See all you fresh-faced kidlets sitting there in your neat little rows? And you're all just pods. Pods, waiting for your instructions. From the Ricks and Mortys that believe in this Citadel, to the Ricks and Mortys that don't. You're screwed, thank you, bye. What's this? The Spice Melange. They say for your wish to come true, you have to give up something really important. Yeah, but you know what? This one, this one right here. This was my dream, my wish. And it didn't come true. 
This is the story of a boy with scissors for hands. Return the truth, Tortoise! You have no power over me. What the hell is this? A center for ants? You want thingamabobs? I got 20. But I do have a thing at six. Oh god, do I have to keep looking? Them grab boys don't kill him, I will. Who wants a smoothie? Hey. What are you talking about? A smooth like a, a drink or something? Listen, I've been giving you a pass because I'm charmed that life finds a way. But if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but uh well there it is. Well, here's the problem right here. A mutated P36 immunosuppression gene that renders them immune to all poisons. <laughs> what is that smell? Ooh. It's poo-poo with a dash of caca. I suppose you're wondering, how do I sustain myself? I am evil. Therefore, I am lonely. <clears throat> well, that didn't go as planned. I respect your right to believe I pushed you. When you marooned me on that godforsaken spit of land, you forgot one very important thing, mate. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. I roared, and I rampaged, and I got bloody satisfaction. Tell him Rick and Morty just blew off America. Hey, phrasing! Yes, 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 you save the world now and then. And America returns that favor by not holding the two of you accountable to its laws. Diplomatic community! Wouldn't go well? Can you elaborate? Because of the implication. to take out this kind of threat you don't like my plan that's good give me another plan but don't tell me we're backing out doctor who in this mother i have the power of a thousand cowboys running through my veins right now morty would you please accompany me to for bojulon prime for death crystals you don't want to sell me death sticks master good idea morty it'll get us through these asteroids sooner sir the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3720 to one he wants to give all of our martinis to a family of immigrants. You don't know how to drink your whole generation. You drink for the wrong reasons. That's not an integer! Oh, f you, science! All that's left are these sh Kirkland brand Meeseeks boxes. Kenneth Kirkland. What's with the strut? You think you own this school? Nope! No matter what, you got to strut! Stop. Those were my husband's last words. He says... Tell her she's wearing the shirt that I spilt the margarita on and the earrings I gave her for Christmas. I guess I gotta learn how to live in the moment a little more. And that's why you always leave a note. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Cork. I'm kind of like the leader in here. Rule number one in app development, son. Never follow the rule. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I created the event horizon to reach the stars. She's gone much, much farther than that. Tell him what you told me. This can't be happening! You can't be here! It doesn't make sense for you to be here! I refuse to believe that you are here! Ounces are a thousand. A balls 200 grounds 80. It's all pre bagged And I tell you like I tell all my boys. If you caught it any more than it already is, you can say goodbye to repeat cost. Time to be free. What the sh Adventures of Jerry and Morty, huh? Put her there. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I started today disgusted and embarrassed to be your son, and then later I thought we were gonna die because you're a loser. No notes. Why? Ten thousand years will give you such a brick in the neck. You forgot the power glove. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. Respect the c Heistatron, state your prime directive. The Draymonds are not a subject for philosophical debate. They are a people. Your life, as it has been, is over. From this time forward, you will service us. 
Well, let, let's hear about this heist movie. This is your basic mortgage bond, all right? The originals were simple. They were just thousands of AAA mortgages bundled together, guaranteed by the U.S. government. Do you indulge in volcanic fumes? Devil meter. It makes you behave like the village drunkard in some early Irish novel. We'll reach the boundaries of Fantasia. Do you know where they are? I have no idea. I summon thee. Come from the farthest space. Through wind and darkness, I summon thee. Stone monster! Stick that up your ass! See, that's your problem, Jason. You are never serious about the craft. You'll shoot your eye out! You'll shoot your eye out! Power of 12 feet! Oh, oh! I take it all back! And ever since that day, I have hated magic and all those who practice it. Shadow Jacker, you haven't come out of your masturbation cave in eons! Let me show you how to break your d three ways. It's a, it's a cat! That is not a cat! But what do I know? I wasn't born into the god business. I am god. I'm dying, Rick! I think I'm dying here, man. My mom and dad are Can you recognize the sound of a man's pants filling up with rain? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Merry Christmas, bitch! I'm in a glass case of emotion! What the hell? Put that thing away. Now, I don't want to tell you again. Snakes! Time travel? I'm starving! I couldn't hear you over my own screaming. We've talked about this. Can you Photoshop your life with better decisions, Jerry? I have created things that will change the world for the better. For instance, here is a monkey with four asses. Oh, that's funny. You're gonna look funnier sucking my with no teeth. So, why did you date Rick Sanchez? Anything you'd like to eat? Turkish delight? Why is there a dead man in the sky? If it's any consolation, he had very few loved ones. Maybe what matters is to love yourself first and soar. Child of air and land, with wings and hands. Yes, you're a bird and a person. Guess who's got two penises in all the agency? Did you make a penis? Dude! Release the Kraken! Glory to Glorzo. Totally! Welcome to Costco. I love you. Give a little yeehaw! yippee ki -yay. Mother Nice, Sporty. Give a little yeehaw if you want. They, they always do a little yeehaw like a cowboy. Yo, oh, that's a mouse! Come on! Louder! I don't sequel. It's called integrity. Sequels suck. Hey. By definition alone, they're inferior films. Ready to form Voltron! Activate interlock! No, no, th no, this is like torture, no! I, 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 I hate being in my car! I drive a Dodge Stratus! What is this face you're making? You... Well, that's my face, sir! You know who I am? Don't you even know who my father is? Ugh, you are a snob and a half. And then little Tommy Flip Flam's running down the hyperloop. His ass is on fire from xenon fluid. I got a rash so bad on my ass, I can't even sit down. You know me, I can't complain. Great story, boss. <laughs> really detailed. We're all stories in the end. Freeze, mother bitches! I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god. It's my birthday. No. <laughs> way. I'm gonna start beating the out of you in the next five seconds. And you're gonna swallow a lot of blood for a fucking billfold. But father, I have dreams and courage and the name of an excellent cosmetic surgeon. Fear not, someday word will reach you about the success of me, Jennifer Love Hewitt. The gorillas just went wild. They jumped all over his body and threw him around like a rag doll to get to those blueberries. Hey, let me talk to him. Will you, would you live for me? You want me to read? I'm reading text. What's the difference? I am. First, you take the gram. You stick the chocolate on the gram. Then, you roast the mallow. When the mallow's flaming, you stick it on the chocolate. Then, you cover it with the other end. Then, you scuff. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! It's a house! No house! A plague on both your houses! Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Elsa. Your other hand, honey, I can't hold you! To catch a predator. What the hell? I'm Chris Hansen. I want my molecules back! Sources tell us these aliens who call themselves the new Galactic Federation will blow up the planet. And I, for one, welcome our new insect overlords. 
Jerry, do you agree that the use of puppets makes you seem dumb and crazy? I don't think crazy is a responsible word to you. I said I want you. you you're not a clone. And who is that? John Cocteau stole. <laughs> Why would you make a clone of me just to send the clone into space? Well, stop saying Hawaii in there. Father of the year. Piss off, ghost. Stop it, stop it, please, I beg you. Hey, over here, look at me. Maybe you should put some shorts on or something if you want to keep fighting evil today. I like sitting next to you, Sean. It makes me look so tough. I'm, I'm scared, Morty. I can see the end. Cold, I'm cold. I'm so cold. Actually, your father and I have been very sex positive lately. We've been watching pornography. Hey, man, got a big box of porn for you. Is that Mr. Nimbus? Nimbus? I hear you can talk to fish. Right there, sugar hoof. I'm moving a little slow tonight. I had a hot pocket for dinner. You will be the one to end our pain. To the pain. Decoy family? You made more clones? You're clones. You're copies of people out here in the world. What? Clones? What? Copies? What are you talking Why? about? My spinach pus. Saved them. That's oh, great. Crazy. Good job. Uh, very good job. Watch it. They're still hot. What the f*** you think you're doing down there? You're making decoys? You make a copy of a copy. It's not quite as sharp as, well, the original. We can work this out. Just stop trying to kill each other. The mistake you made was you killed my friend. So... I'm going to kill each and every one of you. And the only disappointment in it for me is that I only get to do it once. You ever make a copy of a copy? I like pizza. I like it. <gasps> nice beaver. Wait, who the f is that? I am the Borg. They're heading for Vegas. Vegas, baby, Vegas! Where's your costume? This is my costume. I'm a homicidal maniac. We got a baby, a science baby. Science baby. Oh, what a cute little pink bunny rabbit. The Langoliers don't, don't even exist. You just made them up. Storming your castle on my steed, m'lady. Mi corazón es el fuego, Julio. Stop talking like that, I can't understand you. Everybody look at the moon. Everybody see in the moon. The moon is white, it's milky white. Everybody look at the moon. Oh. Your powers combined. I am Captain Planet! This gay sex with my dad is terrific! The line must be drawn here! This far, no farther! How are you doing that with your mouth? Collect the whole set. Last chance to pee on me! If I had to, I'd pee on any one of you. I'd like to ask you a few questions. We're touching Rick's stuff. Summer, he said no. Nuh uh uh. Nuh uh uh. Please! God damn it! Hate this hacker crap. Low life, butt faced miscreant. Butt faced miscreant. What if Sydney killed Casey and Steve? Why would she do that? Maybe she had the hots for Steve and killed them both in each other's rage. You're just moody, you got stuck with a marlin. Give me that daffodil fish! Give me that fish! Nerds. Nerds! <laughs> This is worse than Omashu! Locate the president's chip. Roger, roger. What's our vector, Victor? I'm here today at the, uh, UN, because the Earth has been attacked. My military advisors at the Pentagram have managed to do the impossible. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> We're three across the bed. Not a stitch of clothes on. I made it to Shell City, and I beat the Cyclops, and I rode the Hasselhoff, and I brought the crown back! Whoa. I think my life is like flashing in front of my eyes. <laughs> Since when does this house care about alien lives? We don't even watch British television. You sound like you're from London. Go, go, Power Rangers! You're going to the center of a volcano. I immediately regret this decision. Sometimes enough is enough. What? All right, aunt. Enough is enough. We're offering to help each of your families complete their full go try yeah. in exchange for some concession. Why do you have to talk to me like that all the time? Right? Like I gotta know something. 
Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Remember that time in Puerto Rico when we picked up those two, uh... Well, I guess they were prostitutes, but I don't remember paying. Oh, f*** you. A wise man's life is based around f*** you. The United States of America is based on f*** you. In my ass! Do you mind? Oh, not all at once. And not instantly, to be sure. Are you sure you don't want to come with us? Oh, I wish I could, but I don't want to. Excuse me? Did I pick that name? I have so many names. I am indeed down to clown. I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay I just made. Why was my ninth birthday party in a pine tree? What you are looking at are memories. In this case, pertaining to one individual. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. What? I want you to think about what you've done, Kent. And from now on... Stop playing with yourself. It is God. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> Lost Germany. Lost France. If we lose today, we won't get the fight enough. I know the pressure on you is enormous. Two minutes to drop. Candy citizens, we are going to war. I have crossed the horizon to find you. That, that, that's how we lost our cable guy. Well, maybe I shouldn't have come at all. Jerk off! Stop those portal boys. That's what they'll call us. <laughs> go, go, gadget arms! Mm. Wait, are you my father? No, but I stole your egg and mutated your brain. Wow, somebody's been busy. I, I did it because you hurt my feelings. I learned it by watching you. What? Yes, Log. All kids love Log. Yeah! Starlight. Mission accepted. What we can do is break his age in two places, remove the middle, and graft its ends back together. That, that, that sounds really violent. Jerome never questioned my commitment again. I took my mind off the pain by reminding myself that when I eventually did stand up, I'd be exactly two inches closer to the stars. Hey, you were supposed to be my lift home. How will I get out of here? In uncertain times like these, I think it's important for me to say my tiny little nipples went to France. Four stones, four crates, zero stones, zero crates! It's just as well, I lied. That second seat's a toilet. Then I'll see you in hell. My brains are going into my feet! And love. Why do I have a reality of origin? Because I'm weird, isn't it? Watch yourself, it's the claw! <laughs> Ooh, the claw's coming at you. You stabbed me with a potato peeler? I got it! Sorry! Shoot him, you dumb f Hey, Mr. Goldman Bach Majorian. St still alive, huh? Well, what's up? Now, my story begins in 19 tickety two. We had to say tickety, cause the Kaiser had stolen our weird 20. Rick was always right. Humans need more animal blood. It keeps the spine straight. You know, never thought I'd say this, but... If we put a tax on soda, I mean, what's next? Income? Can't we just go back and fix it? If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go insane. Maybe let me kiss you finally? I'm fine. I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. Correction. What you don't have is a head. I'm not entirely sure what you're suggesting. I'm entirely sure you're entirely sure what I'm suggesting. I'm a 14-year-old boy in a video game! Oh, yes. oh, I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. But your kids are gonna love it. Yeah, look. It's not the Messiah! He's a very naughty boy! Oh, oh, walkie-talkie. I'm walking talkie. Are you walking talkie? Instead of handing me an unloaded gun, she'll hand me a... Oh, hit the kayak, the buckets! Let's just put our guns down and let's settle this the f conversation. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Gail strikes me as a very beautiful woman. But you know, there's a little tension in her voice. Could be one of two things. Either Gail is nervous or unsatisfied. I find this is usually the biggest help. Mm. Why are you so into Pino? I mean, it's like a thing with you. We get to say anything to each other. Things we'd never say to anyone else, even ourselves. Could Houston be misinterpreting the data? Hell no, secrets are great. For instance... I was doing the bloody disco a hundred years before any other f***er. 
seriously, you two? Barkley's been running some unusual programs. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. I agree, for the record. We made a mistake. Hey, you've never been to a breakfast orgy? They didn't have churches in your time. Oh. Been having him do crunches while I sleep. I work out. Hola, mamá. ¿Cómo lo llevas? Speak English. Who wants cake? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. So anyway, get back to my story. I had like two of those seven-layer burritos. Let's just say they didn't schedule any bathroom breaks in the middle of my niece's christening. Why are you wearing that suit? Why are you wearing that stupid man suit? That's fair. Hit the sheets, David Noise. Ah! Night person! Three charges too much! You know, fortune cookies only come true if you eat the cookie first. You sure that doesn't sound right? You're gonna be eaten by a big greasy monster. Have a nice day. Why are you dressed like Morty? That guy in a little coat. That guy in a little coat. These are two shoe boxes. That's in the box. Pain. Can I just tell you which box I would put my penis in? Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. Ship, favorites playlist, track one. I'm going to do a terrific show today, and I'm going to help people because I'm good enough. Mr. Spicoli, you're on dangerous ground here. You're causing a major disturbance on my time. Dinosaurs are back. Batu, Barada, Nick Toe. Hello, I'm Dr. Sheldon Cooper. Welcome to Sheldon Cooper Presents Fun with Flags. Your dinosaurs thought you were dead. Now, you pay attention, old rooter. The great circle of life has begun. But you see, not all of us arrive together. I do think it's kind of funny that you're all basically Jerry now. You take that yeah. back! You think I'm gonna side with you over hyper-intelligent creatures operating way beyond your comprehension? I have more in common with them than you. We don't need so-called superheroes. What Empire City needs is more cops. And a Hooters. It ought to be... here. But it isn't. Gravity is pulling all the stars in the area towards this spot. Now please welcome your host, an old science guy who got rid of the dinosaurs, Rick Sanchez! You'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards. Thanks for solving that murder, guys. Not many people know I love swamp bass. Oh, oh yeah, no, you don't want to wear those over here. Things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! His name is Story Lord. What kind of stupid name is that? I'm your worst nightmare. Stop the prime time! If I suck your blood, I'll be... What is my purpose? To chew bubblegum and kick ass. No more a prick than you, friend. Well, I'd like to take a moment to review the several ways in which you're a douchebag. Yeah. I can't hold them off, Rick, because there, there's too many! Game over, man. It's game over. Happy? You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. It is I, Cookie Magneto. Go f*** yourself. If you fight this guy, I'm either an asshole for not helping or an asshole for helping. What do you say we cut the chit-chat a-hole? Beware my power. Green lantern's light. Oh me, oh my, can it be? A giant piece of shit I see? Yeah! Wait, who are you? I'm Batman. Well, Thor's taking on a squadron down on 6th. And he didn't invite me. Orphan Island, a city populated entirely by orphans, now sits on the brink of doom. It's a hard knock life for us. I found him dead and I, I put on his suit, but look at this. He literally blames your dad. Wow, the plot thickens. Didn't even know you had a plot. Now just cut off your penises and throw them into the sun. Not, not quite my temple. This guy's the king of the sun. Oh, wait, wait, when did this happen? We are now the night to say, Icky, 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 for time, room point, but I'm sorry. What is this? Vat of acid again? I understood that reference. Come on, Morty, stop asking what you're asking, and let's just get back to our crisis. By all means, Dr. Selden, speak. I admit, I wanted what you once had. Brotherhood, tradition, stability, purpose. I just... Didn't want to cut my dick off for it. He's beginning to believe. That walkway needs those knights. Those knights need a king. And that king needs no dick. But you're not king. Yeah, 
Go tell everybody your reward's going to be cutting off your own d Okay, well then I change my answer to just ignoring the question. Rick Santachez here <laughs> with Dad. gifts from across the multiverse. Oh my god. Yes. Presents are the best way to show someone how much you care. <laughs> wow. Here, I'll, I'll do it myself. No! No! Wait, we live over a cool sushi spot? Get a shot of my head! Tomo, Tomo. Not now, though. And I lost my lightsaber, and now it might destroy Earth, and you're unloading all this Gen X hatred on me for even wanting one, and it, it, it's the worst Christmas ever! Jesus, Joseph, and doggy style, Mary! That is a pile of dog sh Okay, that could have been worse. Oh, that's not right. Way to show us how it's done, Rick. No notes. Oh, oh, oh. Worst crossover ever.